kind of suffers a little bit. So, I mean, we've seen it most notably with like Snake versus Samus. You know what I mean? Like Samus can just literally zone Snake to death. You know, some of her stuff breaks through his walls. And of course, the offstage gameplay does not go in Snake's favor. But no, Link needed it. Maybe Raze knows that. Maybe it's time to see what the Dark Pit's talking about. I mean, yeah, like you said, it, Link versus Snake seems like a slightly tough matchup for him. So I, I understand why he's going for the Dark Pit pick here. Try to get in there, play a little bit aggressive. That's exactly what he's going to be able to do right out the gate. He's not letting him land down on the ground. And when Snake does have a pretty okay ability to get back down to the ground compared to other characters just because of the grenades alone. But against a character like Dark Pit, who can just continually juggle you in the air, sometimes it can be tough, but now he's got the advantage. Oh, yeah. And I like the up close Ooh. and some of the earlier percents from Pit and Dark Pit. You know, their low percent combo system is phenomenal. But I sometimes worry about the Angels because when they are at these higher percents, what are they going to do to KO? Because now it's the Snake Show. He knows Grenade into stuff is going to do some damage, but maybe you might need a little bit more than Grenade because Raze is playing crazy right now. Oh, my goodness. Spike. Bro, getting the spike with Dark Pit? Not the easiest thing in the book. No, sir. Oh, great reflect. Get off of me. Oh, off the backboard. He's backwards now and gets right for underneath the up air. That side B is kind of risky to go for with Dark Pit. I mean, he was in a good spot to do it because, like, Kanaji was off stage. Okay. Catches the jump, gets the up tilt. But bada bing, bada boom. But if if, if Ray's manages to go for a side B and Kanaji shields it, that puts him in a huge wide opening to get punished for whatever Ray's, uh, Kanaji's desire is. Yeah, and Ray's getting a little too jump happy right there. You know, the. You know, some of the great aspects about Pit and Dark Pit, of course, come out of like their aerial options, you know, forward air, stuff like that, especially up close and personal when the percents are in like that low to mid range, you know, they do some phenomenal work, but, you know, can't get too jump happy up till it exists in this game for that exact reason. Great grenade into back air and then kind of shimmies one right to the ledge just to force him to go for the neutral get up and another up tilt right up the you know where is going to result in Kanagi going up a stock here. I mean, Raze was either going for like a grab or an aerial at that point, and Naji saw that the aerial was coming out, so okay, if you're gonna play, I'm gonna hit you with my own anti air the up tilt, you know? But now he's got him off stage. Now it's the time to start looking for some kill confirms here, you know? And, uh, you know, Pit, Dark Pit's got like a before of him, right? He can land like a down tilt, a grab. Side B's also one, but if you whiff that, be careful, because that, that is a huge commitment, more commitment than an F smash, because Dark Pit smash decks are pretty safe to go for. Yeah. But not even getting in close enough to go for anything too crazy. Reads the spot dodge, knew he was going to do it. No Nikita, just goes for the double. Oh, there's the Nikita I spoke to soon. Wanted to cook him first. Nothing wrong with that. Okay, again, another neutral get up. He knew he was going to go for the neutral get up, so he spot dodged. Such a smart option. Nice down air, connects that into an up smash. I dig it, I dig it, but he's already at one. 46%. Literally, if he takes one more grab, that could almost be a guaranteed kill. He tried to side B it. Like, I respect that. I respect the decision to side be the Nikita missile because I legit thought that's what I would do. I legit think that would work, but mm -hmm. it backfired and it, he couldn't get rid of it. So he exploded. Love the game plan. And I on paper was like, oh, Raze has pit, dark pit. You know, those characters can get everywhere at once. Great footwork, pretty fast. You know what I'm saying? Snake, not with a lot of options if there aren't platforms in existence on stage. But it was, we actually seen that method kind of flipped it was kanaji who took advantage of the fact that there was no platforms you know i i'm kind of at a loss for words here kanaji kind of having something in his toolkit you know literally and and you know figuratively for every scenario um i love the dark pit switch but i would like to see it maybe on another stage i don't know how i felt about battlefield let me see how he operates if there's platforms yeah maybe maybe some more room to play with as well but uh, here we go you know i mean kanaji his uh off-stage game, his advantage, pretty good. We're going back straight back to Final Destination. He believes in this stage. But the thing with Dark Pit is once he's off-stage, his recovery is pretty predictable. Like, his up B has no hitbox on it whatsoever. He, like, gives a huge tell when he's going for it. He may have a lot of jumps to play with, so he mix up the timing when he goes for it. Once he does it, like, he can still get caught by a Nikita missile or a grenade. And we're seeing that a lot coming out from Kanaji. But now, the same thing's coming back to him. Ray's trying to, you know, get this edge guard against Snake as well. Because when Snake goes for a low recovery, predictable as well. He can get that easy hit off there. And he is dominating. Hold on. There was no stage swift happening here. He's at 105%. Oh, oh, he shoots him off the top. He snipes him. He scores. Wow. Oh my. 
goodness. Okay, maybe he just needed a game to get it going. Whatever the case, whatever the switch was, I am certainly into it. But let's see how well he can milk this stock because you know we've seen him do great in that first stock in the last game, and then you know, uh, you know, Kanadu was able to just kind of slow down the pacing of the game with the projectiles. You know, the grenades. You know, they demand a lot of respect. Of course, Nikita off stage too. You know, you know you're in control of the neutral when I'm Nikitaing you. Is that even a word? Damn it, it is now Nikitaing you off stage. It is me, he is you. It is all of us, but gives him with the kick. Doesn't need any key to that at all. Just goes for the down smash kick, knocks him off the side. You know, it, it may not be the uh, planting of the bomb anymore, but it's still a very good tool. Okay. With, oh, cross up there. I don't know if that was on purpose, but cross up nonetheless. Lands on the other side. The down smash. Oh, he should have been faced the other way, but you know what? Though? Still has a percent lead. Oh, my God. Lord. That's all you need, to down throw into kill get that aerial and you'll, you're noticing that like i've seen a lot of these smash stacks coming out from uh raise it's they're so safe that kanaji has to punish the air the spot dodge after it. it's not about punishing that move it's about punishing what comes after and i like that little interaction right there raise hell bent on putting on some percent he just throws a three aerials right out of grenade disadvantage he doesn't care if he keeps resetting lord jesus and off to the heavens you go dark pit said i will see you later Great stuff right here. Ray putting himself on the board and keeping himself into this set. Cause the way that last match ended off, see, I was I was a little afraid. Dude, I mean he was pretty much going ham there at the end. You saw all those he connected the down air. Down air is such a sweet move to learn or to land when you get the sweet spot with it with Dark Pit because it puts your opponent at such a like juicy spot to get caught by whether an up smash, a, another grab, another aerial or even just another down air. And he was just playing around that shield because he knew he can get away with it. Because he, I feel like Raze was playing around Kanaji's wanting to go for up tilts. He, Kanaji wanted the up tilt, so Raze was playing around the top of it and managed to put him into a shield instead and was able to get away scot-free. So good recovery, no stage required, no, no stage counter pick required. He just shook him straight back to FD. Now I'll see what the stage is gonna be for Kanaji. He's got stage advantage here. Score one to one in this race to three. What are we going to end up going to? PS2. Great, great stage for Snake. Yeah, still a good stage for Snake. Okay stage as well for, you know, Pit and Dark Pit. They can they can do some damage here. Oh, great. Reflect. Send a message early. You're not going to be able to just throw grenades at me this time. Now, historically, we've only seen him go for, like, Reflect really off stage. Um, and unfortunately, because of that, he's eating a lot of uh, Nikita's just because he missed times, you know, when he's going to go for Reflect. But... Tossing it out now, let him know. And you know, PS2, like I said, it's an okay stage for Pit because Pit doesn't really have a bad stage or a good stage. He likes platforms, but you know, it's just stages are stages to him. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Back throw tosses him off, 76%. Uh, uh, you're gonna see this a lot. Time and again, Kanaji's going to be recovering high because Snake does not want to be caught down low, especially against someone who has that many jumps. Okay. Another dash attack, and I like that back throw from before. I mean, you just gotta be fearless at the ledge right now. You know, Kanaji has infamously used like grenades at the ledge to cover himself out of like either hits or throws. That grenade kind of fell off stage there that time, so being fearless kind of paid off there for Raze. Okay, cooking the grenades. Yeah, he said, look, if you wanna, you wanna play the game of chicken right here, we can actually play it. I got grenades galore, my friend. I saw Raze was playing the long game there for a second, so Kanaji eventually just had enough, got up, up close and personal. Trying to go for a read, gets the re-grab. Just forward throws him, not high enough percent to get the kill, but gives him plenty of time to start cooking. Gets the grenades, gets the C4. He's at a very scary percent. If Kanaji lands a grab, he is dead. Speaking, oh! Oh, wait a minute. I, I guess maybe he just messed that up because he could, he could have easily got, okay. This is side B. Kanaji could have easily gone for a pummel down throw up tilt. That would have been, that, that was guaranteed, I think. Yeah, maybe just uh, you know, a little too movement happy. It happens sometimes. You know, sometimes you just, and I hate to use this word, but sometimes you just start moving with Snake. You know, you, you know, your grab reads are real. You know what I'm saying? You know how to read which way they're going to tech in and out, and you just start to feel yourself. But I don't know if this is the time to bring something new to the table. But that's to do it. I was going to say back throw might do it, but yes. Yeah, just that, the, go for the guaranteed thing. Oh, Ooh. dear. My goodness. No. No the way. Down air off stage again, landing another spike. And that's exactly why Kanaji does not want to be that low to the stage. Okay. A lot of projectiles being used here. Yeah, getting a lot out of these projectiles. The, the grenades, you know, holding shield and then tossing out Nair afterwards. Very great situational awareness. And 
Very smart to be well aware of your percents as well. You know, you just can't quite toss out that for free. You need to know how far they're gonna fly when grenade connects, that way you know how to punish accordingly. Bro, when you see Snake approaching pit, like, you know you know something's going down. Like, he has to, it's because Raze knows he has the lead. Mm -hmm. So he he knows that Kanji eventually has to approach because a Snake with a, at a deficit, stuff like that's gonna happen, right? You get the down throw into the guaranteed back here. Is he gonna snipe him again? No, we're not gonna be able to get that curve just yet. Manages to fall out of the up smash, but falls right back into the up air, out of the uh, frying pan into the oven, as they say. You know, and I think what's kind of hurting Kanaji here is the fact that Ray's has so many jumps. Um, we've seen it there most notably in that final interaction, you know, being able to just kind of fake him out, make him expend the option, boom. You've spent, you know, a move, you know, whatever. I don't know what you did, but you did something incorrectly because you thought I was going to go for the double jump. Then, Lan, I got one more in my arsenal for you. Lands properly, does what he needs to do. Now, the down throw into the back air wasn't enough to get it done. And I actually like the option from Kanaji just to hold grenade, but kind of let go of it a little too early, and that resulted in him getting up aired. So that's okay, Francis. It's still best to fight for all the Kanaji fans out there. We got potentially two more to go, depending on how this goes. Yeah. Maybe. Ray just needs that one more game, one more win, get that last W, guarantee him a spot in the winner's finals. And you know what's interesting, Rod, is that we have two dark pits in top four here, in, or winter semis alone. Yeah. Like, that's that's a little bizarre, right? Let's just not see that too often. <laughs> I'm with you. I dig it, though. I, it's, it's nice to see the character, because, like, this character is literally just fundamentals. Mm -hmm. Three, okay, here we go. Two, Kalos. One, Kalos, go. potential final game here for Kanaji. Let's see if he can get it back in order. You know, a lot of space to work with. You know, depending on what type of snake you are, that could be good for you, but that also could be very bad for you. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, you're not going to outbox snake. You might want to get the heck out of there. Yeah, you see that jab, you you get out of dodge. Already has him at 88%. And how it seems to be working out very well for him. I like that he keeps going for the same option on the ledge there, or uh, Kanaji does, because it's a good option. Like, you drop the grenades, so you prevent... You kind of, like, again, you, you force him into going for, like, a roll or a different option off the ledge. Because if you go for neutral get-up or get-up attack, you're going to get caught by the grenades. So those, those options are just negated completely. That's why he keeps going for that setup. Oh, yeah. Turn around, F-Tilt. He's off stage again. Now, also, you talked about it right before this match started, but, you know, we didn't really get to see much of it come to mind. You know, Ray's off stage, really struggling to come back there. We haven't really seen his up special get punished. You know, we've only really seen Kanaji work around side B and down B out there, but I'd hate to speak it into existence, but it's certainly something Ray's going to have to stay on the up and up about. Yeah, Ray's going back to shooting the arrows. I mean, like, when, when, when Ray's goes for neutral, it's either him shooting arrows from a distance or him trying to fish for, like, an aerial down tilt or a grab, you know, because th those are gonna be like this is gonna lead to his bread and butters. Okay, look out! Then get a missile, forces the roll out. Gonna give up a lot of stage control in order to do that. Catches the landing. He's really good at doing that. That up air has so much like it lasts so long. Very meaty attack. Here we go. Oh, I like the up smash attempt. Got to get up underneath Snake. You know, Snake kind of grab. Oh, this. never mind. Oh my. Gets himself cooked. Yeah, I mean, I was going to say kind of a sitting duck, but it was actually Raze who was the sitting duck. There we go. Managed to connect that back. Gets the back row into a dash stack, but managed to call, uh, knock him out with that smash attack of his own. Here we go. Two stocks apiece. Back to the low percents. You can see Kanaji doing a little bit more cooking with the grenades, trying to like... The thing is, when when, when Raze finally gets a hit in, when he finally gets a down tilt in, that combo is not true. Kanaji's going to pull out a grenade. And it's going to disrupt the combo. And I'm sure that's infuriating. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it should definitely be, uh, it's definitely be a little frustrating to, to work around. I mean, I don't blame him. But, you know, great thing for Ray's here. He's kind of regained the lead. You know, he's extending it. But the problem is that this is not a game of lead extensions, you know, in terms of percent. You've got to figure out a way to get the stock taken. And, you know, just honestly, Kanaji's been the better stock closer here this game. My goodness, but... And the important thing to note is that Raze has to be the one to close out the stock, but in a safe manner. You saw that C4 being placed. He's purposely playing around the C4s when they come out. He's going for a very low recovery. Ops to go for the wall jump. Gets back on stage by a miracle. Oh, no. Gets back on the ledge. I mean, he saw an opening. I would have gone for that forward air, too. But if it was in a bad position, but that's okay. Managed to turn the tables on him. 163% on Kanaji. Raze just needs one stray hit from an aerial. Dash attack will do it. That'll get the job done. Kind of wondering if that interaction on the left side of stage was forced. I mean, he goes for the bow and arrow, forces him to fast Yo. recovery, 
and then goes for the spike. I don't know if that was big brain or if that was his luck of the draw, but wow. Ray's playing out of his mind, but let's see if he can try to close this out. Downer on shield, catches the spot dodge. What are you doing? Get that grab, you're gonna see a lot more down throws coming out into the up airs at this percent range. Good trap, gonna put him right down on that Kutz grenade. Get off me move, Nair. Oh, he knew he was gonna air dodge down, he knew. Dude, this could be the set. Right here, Ray just needs one more hit. Now he's gonna fight for his life. Nikita missile using the down B to like just negate that missile completely. That was smart from this just to drop the grenade. He knew he was gonna go for an attack that was gonna detonate and not go for like neutral get up or roll where he could have gotten around that. So very, very smart here from Kanaji. And honestly, 109. I know we talked about Snake and how you know difficult it is to play from a deficit, but with how well he's playing, these grenades have been a thorn and raises. <gasps> oh my goodness! He Don't called get... out the roll! with the forward smash, dude. Okay, now he's at 167% barely surviving. If he had like 10 more percent, that would have been the game. What a call out at this moment in time. And now the stretch, all all the uh, cards are in his bank. The ball's in his court, but was that a Nikita? Was that the C4? Was that the grenade? What was that? Did it, did it expire? Are you kidding me? I think the Nikita missile, ex or not the Nikita, I'm sorry, the C4 expired. I, because I think it was like on top of it. I, I, actually, I'm not too sure what happened. He just exploded. When he had all the momentum, he had the advantage, he had him off stage, and just what a way to go. Imagine being raised and you're like, okay, I gotta get back to the stage, gotta play safe, I can't let him get momentum, and he's, how'd he die? Like, I just got back, I'm on the platform, where'd you go, hello? I mean, I heard of being in control of your own narrative, but that was just a little too ridiculous. You know, you usually wanna wait for the other side to try to KO you. You don't wanna do it to yourself in this game, but regardless, that's neither here nor there. Unfortunately for Kanaji, not able to move forward the way he would like to, raise is gonna, Move. I mean, honestly, Rage was already playing so well there. I mean, I don't want to say, I mean, I don't have the stats in front of me, okay? I'm not a statistician, but I mean, Dude. I like you're already up that much. You're probably going to win, but Kanaji kind of was cooking a little bit. I'm just, he had know. the advantage. He he was literally controlling that stage. He had Rays off stage. He was in control. He had the power. He called him out, out a roll with a forward smash, Rod. Like, he he had the mental game down. So I I, I honestly believe if Kanaji didn't self-destruct there, that he would have took night, taken that game, I think. There's a possibility. It's, oh, that that just hurts. That hurts to see. I mean, you get really close games like that. You know, you see, you know, both players, they're doing one thing in game one, but come game three, four, five, you know what I'm saying? They're totally different players. The mindset is in, they're locked and loaded. They are, they're accounting for everything on stage, but then they're not accounting for themselves. It's so unfortunate, man. That's tough. But I mean, it's not the end of the world. Kanaji's still in loser's side. He's Even if he loses one more set, he's guaranteed top five. He's going to be facing off against someone later down in the bracket. But, you know, while we're uh, doing all this, we can check out to see what's going on, on the other side of winner's semis. we got Ichigo fighting off against Fried Rice. Now, this is the set we were talking about, kind of hyping up a little bit earlier. Yet another dark pit. Now, if Ichigo wins this, that means winner's finals is going to be a dark pit. Ditto. That's crazy yeah. to me. That is actually kind of wild. Again, the character variety that we're seeing here because of Smash World Tour is certainly something to marvel at. I mean, yeah, Ultimate Course has brought out most characters, you know, in a competitive format, but to see this many different characters at this level is, is just such a beautiful thing. But yes, you know, again, let's talk about the head-to-head. -head. I know we talked about it before, but we'll just kind of give them the rundown again for those who are just joining us here. You missed a lot of great matches, but it's never too late to jump in. Ichigo versus Fried Rice, you know, Dark Pit main. Pikachu main. No secondaries on deck. You know, I talked about it before. These two characters demand your undivided 100% attention on the stick. Especially if you've made it this far, there's probably a good chance you don't have a secondary. And that's okay. One side's been active since 2016. The other one was born through the dark ages of 2020 on a line of gaming. Rank number two. But then the head scratcher part is, how much do rankings really matter? I mean, I've made it this far in bracket, but I'm unranked. I, you know, how do you even approach somebody like that mentally? Like, who are you and what can you do, you know? And you know, there's like, how much experience do these players have against Pikachu? That's another thing. Cause like, if I am a believer that if you don't know how to fight against Pikachu and you're playing at least a somewhat decent one, you're gonna get, you're gonna get rocked. You know, like, mm -hmm. like they, they, they will overrun you very quickly. So hopefully Ichigo knows the matchup and is able to, you know, Put on a little bit of a show for us. We saw earlier that Fried Rice took out Jay Dizzle, the top seed for the bracket, the person 
fated to win if there were no upsets, but he was the one that caused it, you know, fighting off one of the best players in the whole like region. I mean, he's not ranked himself. Like that was kind of a crazy upset. Let's see if he can try to lightning strikes strikes twice here. See if he can pull it off again here in winter semis. Fried Rice facing off against Ichigo. Let's jump right into it. Pokemon Stadium into. Showtime. Okay, first Pikachu of the, uh, I almost said evening. Honestly, these days, I don't even know what time it is. 3 a.m. feels like 3 p.m. But anyway, Pikachu's it's here. Time. Yeah, right. Time is a construct, all right? But look, Pikachu's here, and it's showtime, all right? Bringing on early percent, slight percent lead, but I'd like to see... You know, some of the Pikachus prove some of the theory crafters incorrect. You know, people think Pikachu not quite as good online just because of some of the precision you need. I'm a believer that Pikachu is good on offline. It don't matter. Pikachu can get it done. And you know what? We're, we're, we're kind of seeing this uh, good uh, Pikachu gameplay coming up from Fried Rice. And already has him on the edge of the stage. He gets caught, clipped by the side B. But because of his fantastic recovery, able to get back on the stage. And there wasn't much of that Ichigo could have done in that situation. You know, Quick Attack, sometimes you just got to respect. Yeah, you definitely got to respect Quick Attack. I mean, not obviously the strongest move in the world, but it can certainly pop you up and put you into some less than favorable situations. But both of these two players, you know, despite them coming this far and obviously being absolutely just destructive in bracket, they are showing each other a lot of respect and a new neutral neither side really trying to overextend it great roll away pikachu gets that one hit and they run up on you you know what they're looking for okay the up air here we go now at this point you know like fried rice could be looking for some uh, kill confirms here get a grab get an aerial you know, so something to like set up for like a potential thunder follow-up or you get the down air into up smash i mean we saw we saw uh, Raze do the exact same thing. We're going to see Ichigo do it as well. Find himself uh -huh. with the lead here. Gets the Nair. Going to take him for a ride. 28% off the edge of the stage. Okay. Down throw. Okay. Can't quite get the follow, but does read the air dodge. Gets the forward and gets another one too. Getting a little jump happy. I understand, you know, pit forward area. I get it. You know, dark pit rather. That's what oh, you're no. supposed to do to cover yourself, but good. Lord, the Thunder Jolts at the ledge of the stage completely spaced on the no hitbox aspect on the recovery of this game in this matchup. Pikachu destroys characters like that. Yeah, especially when you gotta yeah, hug the wall like that. That's gonna prevent you from hugging the wall. But Thunder Jolt's like a really good tool for Pikachu in this matchup because, you know, it's a great neutral tool. It's gonna have to force Ichigo to respect it and like, you know, try to avoid it or go for the factor. But hey, you know what? He's gonna land another downer. He's gonna land another up smash. Is that all he's gonna bring to the table? Because it's working. Yeah, Ichigo playing completely out of their mind right now. Back, oh my God, back it right into dash attack. Fry Rice stuck into a corner here. Gonna have to try to figure out a way to swing themselves out. There's a dash attack, wow. and. Surprisingly enough, not seeing that move KO. And then did you just try to go for a Flecker into down air? You are a mad person on the sticks. Wow, had that connected, could you imagine? Bro, Ichigo's DI? Coming back onto the stage, still alive at 158% against the likes of Pikachu. At this point, he could, Pikachu could just sneeze on him. Like if Fred just goes for like an instant burst dash attack or try to like force a grab, that's exactly what he's gonna do with the uh, Thunder Jolt. Gonna get a guaranteed kill off of the up throw. That's why I'm talking about this, that projectile for Pikachu is so good. Because it can force shield stun. It can force you to jump at a shield. If you jump at a shield, then Pikachu can catch you with a forward air. So like that Thunder Jolt pretty much spelled the end for Ichigo's stock. Yeah, it's definitely uh, some very tried and true fighting game stuff. You know, you just like, there's a projectile coming. Do I hold shield? Do I try to get out of the way? So if I jump, of course, I'm not covering myself. I can't cover myself, but there's a chance they can probably grab me. Now, most cases, you know, you probably don't have much to worry about, but Pikachu, you know, gets so much coverage, just so much leverage in the neutral, like just up close. And so you really have to watch how Pikachu is coming at you. Oof. That side B looked like he was just trying to mash out of the grab and then that input came out. Okay, up tilt. I'm not gonna get too much mileage out of it. Now he's looking for the, because, okay, Ichigo's at that prime percent where Fred Rice lands a down tilt. He can set up some great tech chase shenanigans. He better have that tech ready to go. If you don't have tech against Pikachu, you will explode. Yeah. Pikachu would definitely blow you up. You know, we've seen is, pretty much every Pikachu at every caliber go for something like that. He's fishing for it, too. You saw him just dashing back and forth. He wants that down tilt. He's still at that percent. Okay! You know what? If you can try to tech chase me and put me into a situation where I don't tech, I'm going to put you into a situation with the arrow. The arrow put him in that situation, and he got the kill. Ichigo taking game number one. Pretty solid. Yeah. You know, turning nothing into something. Um, You know, the great thing about... 
you know, characters like Pitt is that people aren't expecting you to be able to convert off of your arrows. You know, I feel like his arrows, their arrows don't get the same respect as like Young Links. And obviously for good reason, you know, Young Links, you know, we've seen what Young Links can do. Okay, I don't have to even talk about that or I don't want to bring that type of bad mojo here onto the stream, but you know, what do you mean I, bad mojo? It's a mojo. It ain't good mojo, but I guess it's far from bad. Rod, do you not like Young Link, bro? Come on. I, you I tell mean, the I'm truth. not the biggest fan, but you know, he is here and of course he's a character that demands. I love Legend of Zelda, so you know, there's just that, but wow. Young Link, whatever. But anyway, you know, Pit, Dark Pit, they just have those arrows sometimes. I feel like people don't put enough respect on those arrows' name um, until you see moments like that happen. Okay, let's jump into game number two here. Fried Rice with the counter pick stage-wise. Going to be obviously sticking with the same characters. We did see earlier on that they don't really have secondaries. So, and that's totally something that you can A-OK do, -okay do in a fight in Smash. We're fighting games in general. Kalos, I mean, fantastic stage for Pikachu. Kylo's wide open spaces. Got a lot of room to work with here. Oh, he said, we out. See ya. Okay, I would say in most cases that's okay, but not versus Pikachu. All right, Pikachu's looking for that. And I've seen Dare take the lives of many. Okay. Okay, Pika loops. Yeah. Once you get that grab, like they're going to be coming. I'm shocked Ichigo didn't ban this stage. This is like Pikachu's best stage. Yeah, I'm very surprised as well. I'm <laughs> sure the chat is very confused. But, uh, you know, it could also be a comfortability pick. You know, that's one part of a matchup that doesn't get talked about enough is, you know, sometimes a player is just comfortable here. Maybe they've been practicing on some of these stages that they don't do so well on, and they just know it's time to time to shine. One thing I want to comment on is I am digging Ichigo's arrows. Like, every time he, like, lands, like, an aerial against uh, Fried Rice, whenever he puts him on a platform, he tries to get a tech block, or a jab block, rather, with uh, the arrow. And he's been pretty consistent with that. I love the control. Okay, I was scared for a second, Austin. I thought you were going to say I'm digging Ichigo's outfit, the red dark pit, because all I'm going to say is just, ew. All right. What do you so mean? I'm, I'm, it's going to leave I it at that. I think it looks nice. Dark pit in, in general is a nice looking character, but that red outfit, oh, they, that needs some TLC, but that's neither man, here you, nor just a hate. You're just a hater, man. It's okay. I'm a hater from across the pond. You know what? Yeah. <laughs> you know, right, I'm just going to get. <laughs> Man, that's all it. That's all it is, man. But yeah, man. Um, obviously, this match I'm still very close here, and they're. It's a testament to how great both of these two are. You know, neither side really trying to give up a lead. Neither side giving each other too much in a neutral. Great air dodge away, and the patience. Ichigo, that was your time for a grab. Okay, going for the down B, trying to give himself some uh, mobility in the air, kind of like slow down how, how slow he's gonna go down to the ground but here we go 129 to 123 very even gets the grab that's gonna kill on the edge of the stage you got to be very wary of pit's ability to just grab you and forward throw you at the edge of the stage if you're at like a one 100 to 120 percent range like that'll probably destroy you yeah it's one of those uh one of the stronger forward throws in the game you know right up there with i think oh god who else has another strong i know bayonet is just pretty ridiculous at some later and young links is pretty ridiculous as well so oh my yes. god Dash attack is just as ridiculous, or hell, maybe, depending on who you ask, even more forward air. Yeah, Pikachu's just tossing the head around right here. He's just like, look, I know that whenever, whenever I toss this part of my body around, it does damage, so here it is. And uh, Fried Rice, you saw, he was like landing kill confirm after kill confirm, but just couldn't like solidify it, right? Because he went for the, the up throw into Thunder, which would work, except for Ichigo's DI, I was able to DI out of it if you just hold out. But here we go, back off stage. Ooh, he catches the quick attack. Wasn't able to confirm into a grab. I know he was looking for it, though. He would have gotten a lot more damage off of that down throw into Nair. Yeah, and I feel like, you know, as Pikachu, you're so used to being able to press buttons on your opponent's shield, you know. I think when you see a character like Dark Pit and Pit, they know how important it is to hold shield and then go for either an option out of shield or try to go for a throw because they get such great things out of throw. That was really smart right there from uh, Fry Rice just a moment ago to understand, yeah, I have pressed one too many buttons. I need to cover myself because he's going to try to grab me. Can't let that happen. Man, something I'm noticing is that Fried Rice wants to get the neutral started with Thunder Jolt, right? Like, that's like Pikachu's number one move for trying to force options out of you. Ooh, but he just can't get away with it. He keeps going for the reflector. Wow. So, like, that, that, that option is just gone. Yeah, quite literally. Oh, my God. Okay, I thought he was going to land around to the up smash. I feel like he was sniffing it out, but didn't attest for how small Pikachu's body is. Okay, forward air. That's right, you're off stage. Losing the Thunder Jolts on the wrong part of the stage for that to matter, though, my friend. I, the arrow placements was so smart from Ichigo. Good back air, still going to be able to live. 
It was so smart because he was able to prevent Fried Rice from setting up with the Thunder Jolts off the wall. And these guys cannot get these kills. Like, they are living forever. Kalos, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, seriously. Look at the pressure up, up underneath. He cannot stay up there for too long. There's that strong four throw that you were talking about before, Austin. But I would like to see a bit of pressure. Dude, remember what I said. If you know how to fight Pikachu, you might be able to contend. And I think Ichigo knows this matchup. He has been calling out the quick attacks again and again. Being able to call exactly where exactly he's going to land. And be able to get a big punish on him. Just goes for a simple back air that would have been safe on shield. But Ichigo let go. Maybe went for a jump. Or Fred Race might have gone for a jump. Here we go. 162%. Literally, Fred Race needs a grab, an up throw, or just dash attack. And we'll opt to go for the dash attack. Try to get him out of the, the Thunder Jolt. Because the Thunder Jolt would have hit him. That would have been a guaranteed kill. But he shield through. Yeah, there no, again, very hungry for the dash attack. Definitely. And a slower character would have certainly got grabbed there just a moment before. But again... You know, Ichigo, knowing how well to play out of shield is something that I feel like Fried Rice is not quite used to. Gonna have to try to switch it up just a bit here because the timing from Ichigo has been so good here. I mean, delaying aerial attacks, just really trying to force you out of shield here, especially at the ledge. See, yeah, a lot of backers coming out, but they're not coming out immediately though. They're waiting. Dude, I think Fried Rice is like struggling here. He doesn't know how to get this kill, right? Because a lot of his options seem to be limiting to well, like dash attack or grab you because both those lead to kills. So it's like, are you going to hold shield or not? And he just can't seem to get the right option until finally manages to catch the grab as he lands down right on top of him, kills him with the up there for pummeling him for a bit and puts him into his last stock. Now, here we go. Narrow loops. This could start. Oh, okay. Good escape. I mean, Dark has got a lot of jumps. He's going to be able to get out of there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Landing comfortably up on that top. Ooh. A little hesitant on why he wanted to come down on stage and i understand i get it you know when you see pits back to you you know it's going to come out it's just a matter of when you have the time and ichigo a little bit better a little bit quicker at the fingers on the punishment that fried rice in that last game yeah dude stabbed him right in between the eyes with that back here and uh gonna go into this next game here ichigo up two to zero fried rice the ball's in his court now he's gonna be able to go for this counter pick again will he just go straight back to kalos i mean that was Again, that's probably one of Pikachu's best stages, but it looks like Ichigo didn't really care that much. The reason that stage is so good for Pikachu, mind you, is because of those Thunder Jolts. Because if Ichigo's off stage, I mean, we're selling it right there, they're going to hug the wall, and it's a straight wall. And Dark Pit's recovery is pretty linear if he's recovering from low, but we just didn't see him in that situation too often. So it didn't really come up that much. No, it did not. Um... You know, both of them, too, when it comes to, like, the offstage pressure, they're not really giving each other any sort of leverage. And, and it looks like there's a lot of pride on the line, too, because we just keep going back to the same stage. So, I mean, if Ichigo can get the job Last done stage. here, yeah, literally, then I guess it, it doesn't matter here. But I think Fried Rice has something left up those Pika sleeves to bring to the table. I don't expect a 3-0 this late in the bracket. Okay, side beyond to the ledge. That's a, sometimes a scary option. I mean, you want to go first. You don't have to recover from the low side. But if Fried Rice calls that out, he can get a big punch with a shield or just call him out with a down smash, thunder jolt, whatever you want. Mm -hmm. okay, I didn't recognize he got the quick attack. That could have been a free up tilt. A little bit too slow. Getting a lot of mileage off in there as well. I don't know if he's beating him to the jump or what, but a lot of these are connecting. I feel like, you know, Fried Rice, I mean, this match is still semi-even at the starts, but it just always feels like each goes just a little ahead here. But Fried Rice, though, yeah, all you really need is just kind of one hit to convert into a multiple hits. I know each goes not giving it to him for free, but I'd like to see Thunder Jolt move, uh, use a little bit more. You know, figure if you keep tossing it out, that might condition Ichigo to try to hold, you know, his down special out to try to reflect it. You know, once you see that come out, get in there and do what you got to do. That's absolutely right. You gotta go in there and do what you gotta do. Because that's what he's trying to do right here on the platform. 83%. F-Tilt tried to call it that neutral getup and mistimed it, so he's not gonna be able to uh, get that kill. Because it's, it's it's less about which ledge option you're gonna go for and what timing you, you commit to the ledge option. Oh, yeah. So just mixing up your, your timing can do so much wonders for your disadvantage. Here. Okay. Landing with Nair. We haven't seen a lot of that. I don't know if he's maybe a little fearful of, you know, pits, dark pits, excuse me, out of shield options or what. But again, another backer at that ledge. That conditioning is real. And I don't even understand what he's doing. I mean, you know, I don't think he's doing anything any differently than what any other top player, like both of these two, would do at the ledge. But that backer always finds its mark. Little Wait, delayed. To be honest, 
But Rod, he's just playing safe. Like, he, he's just throwing out the back air at a space where if he hits his shield, Ichigo won't get punished. And Fried Race is just kind of pulling the trigger a little bit too early so he gets caught by it. Yeah. And unfortunately, you have this deficit here. And I got to say, Ichigo, you know, just I think the nature of Dark Pit is to, you know, kind of play the long game. You know, you don't really get too many hard, stray hits. You know, you're really chipping away constantly at the opponent until they lose that stock. So, um, you know, I guess with the exception of maybe taking a, a character with a less than favorable uh, recovery system off stage, most dark pit and pits are like, yo, I know I'm going to have to hit you a lot before this stock is gone. So that's where my neutral is kind of surrounded around. Oh, my God. He is so good at catching those quick attacks. He is fantastic at that. Ichigo knows this matchup, and he has taken it to the bank. Go down here. Oh, oh no. You don't want to go out like that. That's super unfortunate for Fried Rice, but that's going to be Ichigo taking the set 3-0, solidifying his spot in winner's finals for a potential Dark Pit ditto if, you know, if he ends up going the Dark Pit route. But uh, unfortunate ending there. We saw the back air as he was like falling down to the ground. He really wanted to get that stock, but it just, back air is a long commitment move for Pikachu. So unfortunately he was too low, fast falling already, just fell to his death. And that was going to be the end of this set. So congratulations to Ichigo. He's going to move on to the bracket. Yeah, Ichigo played completely out of their mind. Um, you know, every aspect of that match was covered, you know, just due to how he approached the neutral. Um, you know, most notably, knowing that I am Dark Pit, I am, you know, whoever, whatever other characters he plays, you know, if it's Dark Pit, you know, Dark Pit, knowing that you have to play the long game, you know, you don't have those meaty attacks. I mean, you, you know, you have side B, but you know what comes of that if you miss, you know, you need to only toss out moves like that if you know they're going to connect. For the most part, knowing how to convert off a bow and arrow, knowing, you know, how to convert out of your aerials, delaying back air at the ledge. I mean, just imagine being at the ledge versus Pikachu. Even when you're winning versus Pikachu, it kind of feels like you're losing at the ledge. Knowing that you have to just, all you gotta do is just turn around quick enough, toss out back air and close it down. That, I mean, wow. Each, I, if I had a hat on, I'd tip it to you, whatever, but you know, you get where I'm coming from. Great stuff. Okay, guys, that's going to be it for our block right here. But before we go, just going to do a little bit of a recap. Ichigo beat Fried Rice just now. Raze beat Kananji. So you're going to go into your top eight still. The whole bracket's going to be ha happen up later on. So I think we got Sepro fighting off against Extra currently. Kananji's still in the bracket. But right before we go, guys, I do want to talk about one more spotlight here. We got Couch Warriors coming in. They are now a fully-fledged national organization across Australia, dude. They are coming in, bringing in the community to a positive light. It's their national circuit that's combined online and LAN events with amazing pricing throughout the season. If you want to check out more, you can go head on over to couchwarriorsleague.com. It's where you can catch all the action. We want to you just you know what's cool about the Smash World Tours, they're doing this good job of just like shouting out like the the grassroots events, shouting out like the 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 local events, you know, putting that that on the table, Rod. Yeah, it's always a beautiful thing to see. Like Aussie said, you can catch all the action there on that part of the world. Couch Warrior Leagues com and of course you can catch all the smash world tour action here twitch.tv slash vg boot camp they are going to be your one-stop shop for this they, they're literally like the walmart of smash they have literally everything for every smasher's dreams okay all you gotta do is just stay tuned in keep hashtagging swt 2021 stay in the conversation make your voice heard trust me there's more to talk about there's more smash coming your way please friends don't touch that home button we'll be right back with some more action right after this
Well, hello everyone. Welcome back. Uh, got some new casters on the mic for you guys, and we're gonna finish off this tournament strong. Of course, I'm TSM Charles, joined by what it do, you boy EE -E in the building, ready to hold it down for uh, the Oceana side of the Smash World Tour, which I'm very excited for uh, because if you guys have actually been keeping up. You'll see there's actually a lot of talent on the other side of the world, which we're getting to enjoy. Uh, I personally think it's uh, it's pretty sick. All things considered, and I know a lot of people are probably like, oh man, how are these guys staying up? Uh, a lot and a lot of coffee. I'm not even a big coffee guy, but this guy, Charles, he's my roommate. He's yeah. really got me into that kind of mindset now. So that's where we are. Oh yeah. And of course, we're going to give a quick run on just in case you guys are just tuning in, catching up everyone. This is the Smash World Tour online calendar. Of course, right now we are... You know, we're doing a little world tour, so right now we're in Oceana. Um, you know, last week we're we're uh, at Mexico, and that was really fun to watch. And of course, this tournament is also just as fun to watch. I mean, like, I mean, we're gonna have a dark pit ditto in winners finals. I don't think anyone was really expecting that. Crazy, but, bro. But yeah, it's Crazy. It's, it's wild. Of course, uh, you know this this world tour. It's not just one one and done tournament. All right. There's a bunch of different phases. Yep. And of course, I think everyone is just looking at that phase three um, because that is going to be, you know, that's planned to be offline. So it's 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 really sick. Um, I love the whole structure of this thing. And it, it's really cool. Just kind of like going around the world and, you know, really spectating and watching all these different regions like you know, like just their meta game in general, right? What's their place out? What characters do they gravitate towards? Well, so yeah, dude. I mean, we're about to have a dark pit ditto. Like, who the hell like saw that coming? Like, at this deep yeah. in bracket, like that is absolutely absurd to me. You see the schedule right here, guys, for uh, your top thirty-two, top sixteen, and top eight, which uh, we are a part of actually. And we have the LCQ is also taking place uh, as well. So we're gonna kind of. It's actually kind of good uh, for this to be happening because it'll kind of allow the LCQ to kind of catch up. Uh, before we get into this, so we got Rays versus Ichigo. You can take a look at what we got going on here. Uh, my man Ichigo is just about that life, bro. Secondary, none, non existent, crazy stuff. Meanwhile, you got on the other side, Rays, he does secondary dark pit, so that is a ditto. Uh, that could potentially be the case if he doesn't opt to go link, which we've seen a couple times. He doesn't open with the link, and of yeah. course, he does play pit as well. So, a couple different options on the side of Rays. Uh, Ichigo, though, a character loyalist with the dark pit, and I'm okay with that. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, was I kind of trying to bait chat into saying, you know, we're going to get a Dark Pit Ditto? Kind of, but it's a possibility, right? Like, kind of trolling, but kind of not. Like, it is a possibility. I think it'll be super fun to watch Dark Pit and Pit, both characters that not a lot of people remember, but one of our first quarantine patches actually did get buffed. There's a very specific DI mix ups that this character has. Um, mm -hmm. Um, mainly, probably one of the bigger buffs was the buff to his down throw angle. So, um, you know, forward throw obviously being the kill throw, you usually want to DI that in so you don't die. But there's certain percentages. Oh, we're getting, yes! We're getting the ditto! Yes! Come on, y'all. I know it's go. late somewhere, but this about to be great. Don't even Ooh. act like you ain't excited, baby. Dark pit. Where them pogs at in the chat, baby? We got a dark pit ditto to open things up for our our our, our, uh, our bracket block. I say that. <laughs> My God. That coffee ain't kicked in yet, but we still out there, man. Let's get it. Let's get it right now. Yeah, and cool. this is a character that it, you usually don't see it at this level of play, mm -hmm. but I will say this right now. Very, very clean dark pit play coming out from both of these players. I was personally very, very impressed. Um, of course, you know, there's all the down air extensions. But like I said, that down throw is the biggest buff because there is that DI mix up of like, do I DI this into, you know, don't die from forward throw. They And then we've seen this setup many times from both these players throughout the bracket. You do the down throw into the back air and it kills. And yes. the only reason why they're getting that back air is because they're DIing in so they don't die from forward throw. It's a, it's a, it's a really cool 50-50 DI mix up. Um, something that they kind of took away uh, you know, there used to be a lot more of those, but I feel like they're slowly adding them in into this game. And it's really fun to see. I was gonna say, yeah, like those are, and those are the kind of adjustments and changes that you're okay with, right? Because it, it, it essentially, fundamentally, like you're just giving the character more options. That's always a good thing to kind of have them be able to work with, especially at this level, right? Like this is where you're probably thinking like it could be a little bit of a mean game, but no, I'm telling you, bro, if you've been keeping up with this tournament, you know both Ichigo and Raze have been exceptional in their performances. This bracket has seen a lot of 3-0s, and uh, I don't expect this to be one, but it's definitely going to be a bit of a nail-biter on all games, I can imagine. 
Oh yeah, of course. And ooh, tried to get the drag down into the up smash that probably would have been a KO. Um, but ooh, <laughs> hit him with the Pyra. <laughs> you think you think Pyra was the first one to do down air up smash? Uh, get in line, Pyra. All right. <laughs> Dark you know was what? doing it way before you, all right? Dark Pit crawled it so she could run, okay? Honestly, yeah. running away with the game right now. That character's broken. Anyway, we're not seeing her <laughs> on display just yet, though. It is a Dark Pit ditto uh, that has been quite entertaining already. I'm not sure exactly who's leading in the prediction side of things. I know chat loves to get involved in stuff of that nature, but uh, this one is still anyone's game. No one really pulling ahead just yet. You still see the higher percentage, though, on Ichigo. Which could ultimately favor my man Raze. He's trying to come back to stage get, or keep him off the stage, I should say. Nice clean play thus far. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I mean, just to note in the chat, if, in case you guys don't know the okay. differences between the two pits, of course, um, it's going to be mainly the side B and the neutral B. You see, the arrows can't really uh, drift far up and down. There's less control on it, but it is stronger. It does do more damage. And of course, there's side Bs. Um, Dark Pit will kill off the side, and Pit will kill off the top. But Dark Pit's definitely uh, being stronger, Ooh, kind of cheesy, darn. but of course that forward throw. That's and great. that's the great thing about this character. A lot of people say this character's honest, and like, I kind of agree, right? Like, there's no ridiculous damage output. You know, you got your little two to three hit combos, your standard mm -hmm. 20 to 30% and all that jazz. But this character has mixed because down tilt and down throw send at very similar positionings. And on top of that, they also have like threat from, you know, just forward just forward throw being a kill so in terms of like corner pressure pit is definitely one of those characters that and you have a pretty decent dash grab it's not like a tether or anything like that so you get to really be very aggressive and i think australia just in general is known for being aggressive region i mean you guys have kind of seen Dude, it all night so it's it's a uh, really does is attack like that is what that is honestly one of the reasons i was like oh we get to have like an actual oceana side of the bracket like that is absolutely dope because just knowing these players like you can argue like it's harder for them to like come over here maybe and have success just because of how people play uh, like little bitches sometimes but for them okay just playing like grown-ass men just charging in the battle it is a sight to see and something i truly do appreciate my man Ray's he's trying to make this comeback a reality right now he is trailing a considerable amount that percent is not exactly favoring him but still some time to get this job in okay especially like when you start to think about you creeping into max raids that's a scary situation i don't care who you are yeah, I think Raze is actually in the favor here because there's enough rage on Ichigo where his confirms won't work. Raze, I can see a, oh, a confirm being online, but no, lost. the spaced back here will close it out. Raze, he lost. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> he sorry. was coming back. Oh my god. It was be Listen, Ichigo versus Raze, hell of a way to open things up. Loving the action that we're seeing early on. Really good stuff. Now, that does beg the question, though. Okay, that does mm -hmm. beg the question. Mm -hmm. Will this be entirely a Dark Pit ditto? Yeah, I mean, mm. so far, I mean, Ichigo kind of showing, like, that That wasn't, like, that was still close. It was. But it, it was. wasn't, Very like, so. super last dog last hit. You know, there, there's, like, last dog last hit, like, when someone's just like, yo, that was last dog last hit, though, and you're like, I was at 50, and then the other right. guy's like, yo, but I had max rage, though. That was, like, one of those <laughs> last dog last hits. Okay, yeah. all right, so there's those kinds of last dog last hits, and then there's actual last dog last hit, where it's like, dude, we're both at 140. That was so crazy, right? Like, so, um, I, I don't know. Ichigo definitely kind of looking like he had the upper hand there. We'll see if Raze brings in the link or not. Um, I will personally say that I think Link is a better character, like overall. Okay. Um, not really gonna tell you, like, that doesn't say anything about the matchup, really. Who knows, right? Um, but yeah, I mean, those, those, like I said, those pit buffs are coming in nicely. Obviously, you're not gonna be able to kind of compare the buffs because, you know, in a ditto or whatnot, but we'll, we'll see. I think I, I feel, I have a feeling the Link is coming out. Oh no, we're just gonna stick with it. Wow. Okay. Maybe Baited just a, a little stage bit. Switch it, up here. Yeah, whenever they leave the arena, I'm always like, okay, I mean, I know stage is always a thing, but I'm like, are you gonna that character a little bit too, you know what I'm saying? Always, always just gives me calls for pause. But no, we are going to continue on our Dark Pit Ditto ways, switch things up with that scenery a little bit. Heading to Small Battlefield. All right, honestly, I don't think people realize Small Battlefield was added to the game after the pandemic. We haven't seen this in offline play. You realize yeah. that, Charles? It's yeah. crazy. I, this game, like I said, is very different like in terms of just like from a year ago right mm -hmm. so it's really cool to see all the different regions like really kind of come together and we can put eyes on them and just like see their meta and it's just like look at this this is so cool and with all the changes too i just gotta say this because this is hilarious i don't know like if the chat is memeing about where ichigo's from but somebody said ichigo 
is from a Karakura town. A man of class right there with the bleach <laughs> reference. You got a lot of love from me, bro. Just had to shout you out real quick. That was hilarious, okay? The, we're getting the real factual, you know, <laughs> you know, backstory on this player. You know, oh we God. would tell no lies here on this show, right? No lies. Twitch chat is undefeated. Anybody tells you different is lying to themselves. Oh, raise. Watch that percentage, my man. 136 after he's still keeping it alive, but no, that drop down back here gonna seal the deal ray's picking up where he left off in that first game and i will say this i'm very impressed with ichigo's ability to you know pretty much get all your bread and butters and stuff but i think he what really like set him apart in terms of gameplay he really knows how to find the back air when his confirms and when his 50 50s are offline and i think that's really gonna you know take you really far with dark fit because it just things can get awkward right when they're out of those throw mix-ups those oh, yeah. pi mix-ups out of those uh 50 50s and there's the mix-up there it is right there and that right he had to hold left because he didn't want to die to before throw. if he was holding right and he got forward throat he was just dead so that's the right there mm -hmm. right that's the situation where the 50 50 mix -ups. yeah that was honestly and honestly like the perfect time Mm -hmm. It's good delivery. And now look at how the tides are kind of turning a little bit much more on the even side of things. And that is what I'm really just enjoying right out the gate is these two, we're just seeing a slugfest, man. Like these two are just straight up scrapping. And that's the kind of gameplay you don't always necessarily get to appreciate. But when you got two characters like this that can be very aggressive, two talented individuals like Razor and Ishigo put them on display, it is not going to disappoint by any means. Yeah, and this is this is no disrespect to Raze's Dark Pit, but like when I watch Ichigo, I, like I know him. this man mm -hmm. mains Dark Pit. Like this okay. dude puts his heart and soul into this character. We see all the little niche multi hits. I've even seen Ichigo for like hit one of fair right before he hits the ground and then goes right into grab. And you know that grabs buffered. Like he's fishing for like very like niche and specific setups mm -hmm. like that. That's how you know it's a character special. Obviously, Raze is a link main. So I mean, you know, nothing against him or anything, but it's just I, I just feel like Ichigo's bags of tricks just goes a, just a little bit deeper you know with this character it makes perfect sense because it's like you know as we highlighted before the match even took place like we were like yo this fact that ichigo like this man is a tried and true he doesn't even have a secondary on deck like he embodies this character and i think for the most part it's paying off i gotta give credit to raise though he's been doing an excellent job keeping it incredibly close and that narrative has not changed throughout this second game we are last stocks only about what three percent separating them right now big opportunity for raise to get himself on the board it be facing that O2 barrel. And as you can see, the past 20 seconds for both of these players fishing for either grab or things that lead <laughs> into grab. Um, Ooh, obviously, this that. character has very... Oh, look at this! Wow, Yeesh. what a string from Ray's and abusing the multi -hits. The thing I literally said that, like, you know, Ichigo had Ichigo over me was like, all out. right, hold on, Charles. All right, I know, I know a thing or two about multi-hits, all right? Oh, my goodness. Sit him down, wow. send him out. Ray's with the... Excellent coverage on that left side, too. He did not disappoint. I mean, it's crazy. Like, we had just highlighted how evenly matched it was, how Ichigo is perfectly embodying this character, and Raze was just like, hold all that. Hold all that the hell up. I got yep. something to say about that, and that's going to knot us up one apiece. Dark Pit got the fist out, man. He's like, bump it. Mm, G feel Gs. That. <laughs> feel that. Respect. Yeah, and I mean, both of these players, you can already tell the combo game on them is... Like they just know this character. They're they're abusing platform extensions, but not mm -hmm. just standard platform extensions where it's like, oh, I just do a you know a rising aerial, reset my jumps on the platform and go for like two more aerials or something like that. That's like kind of like your standard combo extension, just abusing the fact that you're resetting your jumps. But they're drag they're using the nair to drag the character back down with the multi hit, get another grab, go possibly, and then from that grab, you know, you're getting the extra damage from the grab into a double aerial extension. So much damage and. Yeah, honestly, like, I mean, they're they're just making Dark Pit's combo game look very up to par with some of the other, like, high slash top tier characters. I, I would say that from what we're seeing, like, they're just fully optimizing it, right? Like, this yeah. is like, yeah. if you're going to play this character, this is kind of like the level you need to be uh, hovering around to kind of yeah. just maximize your opportunity. I mean, it's no secret how these guys got the winner's final. Like, I think that's one thing, like, somebody comes in and maybe overlooks, like, oh, we're in top eight, cool. Maybe this is like a loose quarters match. No, this is winner's finals. Uh, there's a ton on the line, and the delivery that you're seeing right now, right off the gate from my man Raze, is not to be disrespectful. Love, he might have found some extra little magic off that last win in game number two, Charles. He is cooking right now. 
Oh yes, this momentum is uh, hasn't gone away, and for Rays, he will ride that all the way to the end of the set if he has to. We'll see if Ichigo can figure out some way to kind of break up some of this momentum and get some of it on his side, you know? Right, absolutely. Very important to get that offense set in and going. Oh my goodness, but going, going, gone off the left side. Rays delivering sub 50%. This is the way you want to start off a game three. Wow, Ichigo, you got to pull it together. Yeah, complete control. Um, the pit players that there's not like a crazy amount of pit players, but the pit players that I know of, mm -hmm. they're very comfortable. They like Battlefield. Um, really good for setting up up smash situations. We've already seen what this character can do with the platforms as well with these combo extensions. So um, no surprise to see oh, Battlefield wow. being played in general. But right now, honestly, Raze just has complete control and he is not letting up. The arrow goes up. The swords are going that. out. Bro, like, he's where, one what's step happening? ahead of him. The last 15, 20 seconds, he has been one step ahead of Ichigo in every Every attempt he has made to separate each other. Like, that is insane. Wow, Rays is just on another level right now. Oh, yeah. And there's that single hit forward air. Very, very nice. Even confirmed it into the down tilt. But there's just so much rage, and that's the thing that can be a little bit of a struggle with Pit here. You see, like, kind of in kill confirm range, but it, with the rage, it's just so hard. And Rays with the almost max rage dash attack. Three to one stocks. What's happening? And no rage, and he still can't get the confirm. He's too high of a percent. My goodness. Don't do this to Rage. Come on, yeah, man. He is falling. He is falling apart right I, now. And I, I, you know, it's it's just like you, you don't necessarily expect it. Just off again, what we highlighted before this set even started to take place. But I mean, it should go. Listen, he is down. I don't want to say he's out, but I mean, it, exactly. Look at listen. I've always been the most realistic one on the mic. Okay. If I think okay, it's over, okay. I'm just gonna let it. I'm just gonna let you know. Okay. You need to start thinking about your counterfeit, bro. Before it's a three-one. All right. I'm just keep. I'm gonna <laughs> just keep. Oh lord. Effort, right. Oh man. Raze also has very low rage, so that combo was very, very consistent in that situation. Another down throw or down throw could do it, but right now Ichigo needs to get a little bit more rage onto mm -hmm. Raze and then slowly work his way back in. I mean, his name is Ichigo, man. Maybe, maybe we're gonna get an anime moment. I, I don't know, bro. I don't even think you could call or you could call Orihime. You could call all the casters. I don't know. Whatever. I ain't even finished the damn series. Then no, there ain't nobody then in there strong enough to bring this one back. This is an absolute. This is an assault. That's all I'm yeah. seeing right now. Good lord. That's Raze that is just pit lives matter, man. Good God Almighty. Raze just has to find this uh this back air, and I mean Ichigo doing a really good job. But like, how long will it last, right? Like. It, it's so hard. Yeah, even an up air. There's going to be so many arrows that can close out the stock. Ichigo trying to use every single one of his jumps to get out of that situation. But guess what? It's the ditto. I got I got those wings too, buddy. I was thinking the same thing. He's like, okay, well, let me go ahead and just track down your little flight patterns. Because I can do the same thing and just put an end to that easy peasy. Well done uh, to Raze. He is definitely showing up and showing out. So Ichigo, back to the wall. Going to need a big response in this fourth game coming up. Yeah, Ray's looked untouchable that second Fish, stalk. Huh? Um that Fish. that first stalk was very, very close, back and forth. And then Ray's just like, whoo, he was feeling himself and just played every single situation perfectly there. Mm -hmm. Um and I mean we'll we'll probably have a stage switch up. I don't see Ray's switching off dark pit after winning like that so okay nah, <laughs> okay. nah, nah but nah. you know some people they'd be throwing out some wild ones maybe the link came up but yeah like let me keep it interesting like people in the chat like i got points on you fool you better, you better, <laughs> you better stick to who the hell winning i Do love that. the point system for like uh for all Texas, these tournaments it's, so it's, it's it's so funny right like i, I don't know <laughs> and even like seeing people in the chat like if uh, they switch up after like yo can, can i get my points back though redeem the points I'm like, dang man it's, it's like that out here with these points man mm -hmm. That it is. It ain't no it really, joke. It, it's great because, for, especially like for competitive events like this, it just adds another element for the chat to kind of be involved in and enjoy. It. And I, I personally, I'm all for uh, whatever gets good chat interaction. I am 100% about that. But we're going to talk about interactions. We got to mention what we saw in that last game. It was basically just the Ray show, the way he dominated that. So Ichigo really going to need a big response. Looks like he's already delivering on that, even as my sentence progresses. But there is the response immediately from Ray's. Not going to allow himself to be overwhelmed from the jump. Great job on that carry. That was beautiful. And it, it's going to be really hard for either of these players to kind of get horizontal arrows off stage like that, just because there's not that much flex in where you can control it. So yeah, the reflect there is like very, very easy to get. You're going to have to be very careful when we have a taunt. Um, I, that looked like a whoopsie taunt because he like he did not finish that taunt. Mm. 
Okay. Ooh, is it the nice. up smash? Yeah, that's I up. think Raze could have teched in that situation there. Um, I did. I think I saw the little platform blast, but to be fair, that up smash still covered like you know, three out of four options anyway. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, just like those very keen situations where, I mean, that's just what makes fighting games in general so hard. Like, see right there, he, hit, he got the tech on that platform and you just got to be ready for it, right? And yeah. it, it just happens so fast because like you're literally playing neutral and you're like, oh, wait, you got to tech something. So yeah. it's tough. And it, it can be forgiving, but you know, there's a reason like the game's best, like their reactions is just on a whole nother level, right? Like that is just something yeah. that, and it kind of comes with, you know, tournament experience, playtime, all that good stuff practice it does come with all those things um for sure but don't you know don't get it twisted man somebody misses the tech or something like that they, they ain't no scrub baby they ain't in winners finals for no reason okay things just happen to take place but keep in mind charles it's, fun it's funny i keep saying that and i'm just like oh my god just watching like they just take turns just actually beating the hell out of each other this yeah, is it's <laughs> it's crazy. It's it. This, so is, this is mad fun to watch. Oh, the down air! I don't armor on what, son? He just capped that all the way down to the blast zone there, and he is not finished. Keeping this momentum up, already ninety percent. That was absolutely disgusting, and that honestly could be the nail in the coffin if Raze is able to continue this momentum and just kind of push it uh, to the absolute limit, which is apparently what he's looking to do. I mean, you see the lead he's got on right now. Okay, looking for a good response. He's Ichigo trying to catch the landing. No, Ray's not giving it up for free. Looking to continue his offense. And he's just, all at this point, he's just tacking on damage, right? And even if you think about his percent, 110, that's still pretty modest, all things consistent, Charles. Oh, absolutely. And I love how Ichigo and Ray's are both trying to fish for some of these parries into down tilt or even like spot dodge or parry into down smash. Um, yeah, Pits. Pit and Dark Pit's down smash are extremely fast comparatively to other smash attacks, so that's why you see them go go for it so much on, uh, you know, like a punish option or like a quick option right there out of spot dodge. Oh, the parry, but the cross-up raise is still on oh, this second man. stop. Can you make it back? The, oh, that, you know, that one, oh, that's a tough way to go. But, but, like, it was like Raze had the lead, right? Like, it, it wasn't one of those, like, heartbreaking SDs. It's still heartbreaking, obviously, but it's not like, oh, yeah, I'm at zero and you're at 150 and I SD'd. Yeah. Like, so, um, that one, uh, you don't want to see it like that. But the entire set, I just feel, I, I feel like it makes up for it just because it, it was so fun to watch. They were going back and forth. Obviously, you know, some arrows were being chucked, but for the most part, they were just playing so up close to each other. It was really, it was really sick. No doubt, no doubt, no doubt. Good, I mean, just a great winner's finals all the way around. And honestly, when, you know, how many times are you going to see Dark Pit in a top eight, let alone uh, two Dark Pits duking it out in a winner's finals? That's definitely a treat for us. And hope you guys enjoyed it as well. Saw so a comment or two asking about the location of the event. This is actually online qualifier, if you did happen to miss that part. So none of these guys are together in person. So no masks are required, if you are wondering about how this is being contested right now. But uh, either way, we're still bringing you this good quality action. Shouts to the Smash World Tour, VG Bootcamp, all the people in the chat, and just all the world. And I, Charles, I have to do this every time because we're on the World Tour. Chat, where are you guys from? Drop yes. some locations yeah. for your boy in the chat. I there you go. Where you at? All right. Where y'all yeah, then I'm being nosy. I'm going to dash you. <laughs> you, you know what you know what we, we can we can we can tag along to obviously we're both living in um socal but okay. we we are from different areas i'm from hawaii so mm -hmm. that's really cool um you know it's funny actually uh hawaii and australia have very similar play styles so even like just watching throughout this tournament i'm like dang this this reminds me of like some hawaii smash <laughs> oh, going back home and seeing them duke it out you love yeah, to see yeah. it. you love to see it all right a lot of people in the chassis long island georgia taiwan australia sydney oakland i'm sorry to hear that uh arizona dang. philly Australia, okay. Mexico, nice, nice, nice. In your bed, nice. Oh, in my bed, okay, interesting. All right, well, we'll definitely have to do a sweep of the room before we get done with this top eight. I'll tell you oh, that right now. Dang, all right, we out all here, right. man. Quebec, noise, noise. Puerto Rico, a lot of good stuff. Appreciate all you guys sticking around and rocking with us for sure. We got our next match coming up. It's going to be Kin Kinaji versus Luma. Did I say that right? I feel like I didn't say that right. Kanaji. Kanaji. Yeah, yeah. I'm going with Kanaji. Naji versus Luma, and <laughs> and okay, this is this is actually really interesting. Um, he's, I guess he has to be living there, right? Because he's from Japan. So, um, yeah, uh, active since 2019. 
course, we have Luma active since 2015, so around the, you know, Smash four times. And we've got mm -hmm. some interesting secondaries on the table. Um, Pyramithra secondary, which, like, I'm just going to guess your favorite game is Xenoblade, right? Like, obviously. <laughs> um, and then even, like, Luigi and Mii Brawler. Super, super interesting. Like, their mains are very, like, common yeah, meta characters, but... Yeah, we got some spice for the secondaries. It doesn't seem it's kind of weird, right? You got Palu as the main, and then your secondaries are Luigi and me, bro. Like that's, no, it doesn't seem like uh, the most conventional thing I see. But hey, it's worked to this point. It's got them this far in the bracket, so I'm certainly not questioning it. Meanwhile, on the other side, uh, Kananji. I, I'm a big Snake fan. Love Snake to death. One of my mains for sure. Um, but Pyra and Mithra, that's the character I'm just looking forward to seeing a lot of action out of them. So if that happens to get pulled out at some point, I will not complain. Yeah, yeah, definitely already kind of start, like, right out the gate, both Pyra and Mithra. Like, they just feel like they're going to affect the meta, right? Like, mm -hmm. whether you think they're top 20, top 10, top 5, or best character in the game, like, at the end of the day, any character that's going to be that high in, you know, the tier list is going to affect the meta game, is going to add a bunch of uh, different matchups, and they definitely add a whole new dynamic into the game. So, I, in, my, in my opinion, very, very fun to watch. Um, of course, Paul Tana. Uh, did get those nerfs, so she did get her tether grab taken away for Palutena. And yep. um, other than that, just like a couple frames knocked off on stuff here and there. But I mean, we saw Chad last bro. week. Come on. Yeah, Cal yeah, we saw Chad. We saw Chad last right. week just get fourth place. Yeah. Like fourth, okay, yeah, yeah. you're fair. Your fair isn't as yeah. Dominant. You're just rocking okay, people with Palu. She's yeah, still your broken. grab range is a little shorter. It's ah, you get have nice. a normal you're grab. <laughs> You're good. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I'm not sure if anybody is rolling when they ask this, but uh, like some players you might not see because this is on the other side of the world, the Oceania online qualifier, yes. which means you're going to see uh, regions like uh, New Zealand and Australia competing. So some of your like American favorites won't be a part of this, but a lot of talented new faces for you guys to enjoy uh, for sure. That's why, again, got to appreciate everybody uh, for staying up so late and rocking with us. If uh, your time zone is like ours, we're 12.30 a.m. over here. Uh, mm -hmm. but we're full of life, full of energy, and full of hype. Let's get it. Yeah, and I think uh, Kananji actually probably just lives in either New Zealand or, or Australia or another Oceania region, but he's just probably from Japan. Obviously, that can happen. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I, I, that might have might be like some like kind of confusing, but yeah. Imagine the um, big brain play, bro. I'm just going to fly over here and win this qualifier. Oh, dang. Wow. Mm. Wow. All right. All right. I see you. We, we, we cutting corners out here, huh? <laughs> Whatever it takes for the world tour, baby. Anything to get the job done. Here we go, guys. Losers quarters. Oh, and Luma is opting for me brawler out the gate. So we're not even going to see that Palu open up. It's that. Oh, I like that church hat right there. I think my aunt has one just like that. <laughs> Yeah, whenever I see a me, it's just like, what kind of troll costume are we gonna get? This this was not too bad. Just got you know, got the flower hat. I'm just rocking out. It's I, it looks like the default like sword fighter um, character. Uh, I'm not even gonna pretend like I know which one. Like me. <laughs> <laughs> me are, but I'll tell you what. The thing about me is, if you've ever watched this game, you know, anytime there's a me at this, you know, this deep in the bracket, just mm -hmm. expect some nuttiness. Like something's going to happen. Like, it's okay, almost just, inevitable, right? Yeah, and I, I actually know a decent amount about this character. Um, it's it's fairly popular. Um, of all the Mii's, Brawler is Brawler is the best by far. Um, yeah, yeah. Just scouting out the up Bs. Uh, there's so many different things you can go with. In terms of, like, how important the move is, like, Brawlers usually take the same neutral B and down B, which is, like, the, the discount flip jump. And then um, for... Well, I, I think they always take that, but like the up B is like the most versatile one. That neutral B is pretty good, even out of shield is pretty quick. Um, the up B that he has right now, I don't know the exact name of it, but it's the quickest one. So like out of shield, it's really quick, but it doesn't have like the range as Soaring Axe Kick does out of shield. So really interesting build here. Obviously, Mii's have the option of even switching, um, depending on the character. But right now, this Mii is getting kicked up and blown up. Listen, Charles, you said something about switching. The only thing that you might need to switch is this character selection because this me ain't it right now. My man Kanaji is handing out the business. No. It is looking oh. oh my god, hey, bro, you gotta be kidding me. I, I feel oh so god. sorry for Luma. That that oh. is dude, that he did not deserve that. He literally landed his move. Then Kanaji like somehow that got out of it. it, and then Luma 
got blown back for the down B. Like, that was so yeah. You got punished for it, man. It's like back in Brawl. You got punished for making the right read against Meta Knight. That's how broken that character was, okay? Yeah. Y'all kids are lucky these days, okay? Oh, yeah, you don't you don't know what true pain is. You don't know what true oh my pain God. is. Well, you know, we can make the case maybe, uh, maybe Luma does because right now he is getting absolutely destroyed. Akinaji with an excellent effort in this first game. I'm telling you, man, Snake is, is still one of the most deadly characters in this game. Don't anybody uh, fool you about that. And I love the movement, Matt, we're seeing right here. Just mm -hmm. a nice mix between offense and defensive options. Kind of reminds me of MVD uh, in that regard. It's so skilled, yeah. and just the movement is just pristine. My goodness. Yeah, the, the the great thing about Snake is, well, I mean, this isn't so great, but like his general like base stats aren't great in terms of movement, like air speed, walk speed, run speed. But the the way he compensates for the air movement is he just does like B reverse tricks with the oh. grenade, with the C four, and of course, <laughs> when when a Snake's gonna close out the game, we already know what moves coming on. All right, it's that up tilt. Pretty much, dude. That was, whoo, that was art. That was literally artistry. Excellent oh, yeah. job from Kanaki. the way he was working that uh right platform as well. Just weaving in and out, going on the platform, off the platform, just making that grenade wall. It was just way too hard for him to get in. Um, maybe another move set could help. Probably another character. Uh, I I, I would suggest the character switch over the move switch, but uh. It, it can be hard, right? Like, um, I don't. I, I think one of the bigger things too is like, I don't know if that move set is particularly good against Snake. It depends on if that up B he was using knocks Snake off the Cypher so you can kill him high. Because, mm -hmm. yeah, it just didn't really feel like he had any vertical threat. And you need vertical threat against Snake because Snake's always usually like most of the time they're gonna double jump, instant up B, go really really high, and they're gonna be like, okay, well, what's your threat vertically? And my mix up is like I have like B reverse mix ups on landing, right? maybe go for a trade but yeah i mean it just didn't really feel like luma had threat in those situations and because of that kanani is just able to get back on stage where you want to be with snake where he's just like ridiculously broken right because you know the big weakness of snake is when you can like really push that advantage state on him and yes. then just he finally can crumble and die wait did, did we? we what wait hold on a <laughs> second. now somebody changed but i don't think it was the yeah, yeah, Kanaji we, wants to he kinda wanna flex with some DLC. I see you. Alright. Alright, alright. Yeah, alright. I mean Oh wait, I, wait, we got okay. the space one on though. Wait, is this guess, is this a different moveset? I'm actually curious. Like this could be another moveset. It could very much so be listen, if you're gonna change something, I mean if you're not gonna change the me itself, like you're still part of that me, yeah, change that moveset up a little bit. I don't know, we'll see. Uh, we'll get an opportunity. But our first look, uh, since we've been on the mic at our newest DLC, uh Mitha right now is going to be leading the charge. A lot of Pyra last weekend. That was really exciting. Like a lot of oh, Pyra Mexico definitely loves playing some Pyra. Yeah, they do, bro. For good reason. She is about as hard hitting as it gets. And when you're all stage against her, I pray for your ability to dodge those insane mini hitboxes because she don't play up B. Going to send him mm -hmm. on his way. Well done. And then the immediate switch back to Mitha to stick into the blueprint of what makes this character so powerful. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Don't be knocking on my shield just like that. I'm Pyro, you respect this up B. It kills you very, very early. Almost getting the Nair extension there. And the up B to get out that closing damage and in a very aggressive side B coming out from Kanaji. Oh and my oh, God. Yeah. yes you are. Yeah. And that, that, that switch and that change is just so seamless. Like you just don't see it coming. And by the time you're hit, you're already <laughs> pondering what you're gonna do on this next stock, which in the case of Luma is his last one. He's being absolutely dominated on his counter pick charles my good yeah yeah that was a that was a very clean switch in a pirate at 60 percent and it was like oh did i hit down there you're just you're a goner see you later yes, sir. Pyra. and <laughs> i mean it, ooh, the up the out of shield is that your life center stage okay is gonna stay alive are we gonna hit a meaty option the neutral be very hard to punish but with the up the out of shield come out for me brawler so we know that up be still the same maybe just the astronaut helmet for the power up the up smash is not gonna kill just yet though okay bringing power back up probably looking for that queen oh no what wait what oh. That was that was uh, taking me to game I, three di. I did yeah I did not think that was gonna I don't think that should have killed either. 
No, that was horrible, uh, DI. Abru- <laughs> I was gonna like abruptly ending will, my sentence. I will 300% confirm that was. <laughs> let's get into game three, DI. All right, like, like you know, like there's some there, there's some situations where people will just run off. Okay, that's obviously like the most obvious like indicator of like I give up. There's also giving up on on hit. There, oh there's different God. stages. All right, there's different levels to this. Okay, there's so many different ways you can give up, yeah, and so that's one of them. Into the blast zone. He said, "I'm out." Yeah, he was just like, he was like, yeah, I'm ready to change characters. You got it, bro. Like, there, there's no way you stay brawler, right? It, this, there's no way you stay brawler here. Unless you're at this the point. Brawler was the, a secondary, right? Brawler, yeah, was, brawler a secondary. was the secondary. The Palu was the main, right? Right, like, well, you can't be that, that die hard about your brawler, right? Like, your secondary brawler, there's no way someone's that stubborn where it's just like, bro, don't ever talk that smack about my oh, secondary DK. brawler. Oh. All was right, DK even on the, on the? Was DK even on the secondary? I thought, I, I, know. I thought it was. I thought it was Luigi and Brawler. I don't remember seeing DK. It was definitely Luigi and Brawler. I mean, okay. It kind of kind of looks like Luigi. He's like green. Well, I've oh. I've heard that DK has a, a pretty decent <laughs> matchup here. That's just that's just what uh, I've heard. Uh, yeah, yeah. If you guys watch a uh, voice YouTube, he actually hates this matchup. <laughs> yeah, I was wait, I was trying um, to I was trying to get you to point it. <laughs> he love you, but. <laughs> But um, I, I like just thinking about it. I, I, I feel like uh, I feel like Mr. Pyro should win. Just like thinking of the tools and stuff like that. Um, but you know, who knows? Could be wrong. Um, but we'll see here. We're definitely getting some more of that data, and I think that's one of the most exciting things about just Smash Bros. Tour in general, right? We get to get all this data on these new characters, these new patches, and mm-hmm. dude, what a mix right there. I love Kanonji's like mix of defense and offense at the right times, and that neutral beat is going to KO, and you even saw the drift back, the slide mm-hmm. back, to make it really hard to punish. Kanonji definitely showing he knows all the ins and outs of this new DLC character. Absolutely, and just, again, just so impressive to see these players just so efficient with this character so early in its young meta and definitely seeing kanaji is not disappointing really luma if anything my brother you've just made yourself an even easier target to hit for everything that kanaji's is throwing out because he has already proven that his combo game is just so efficient and just like the look at the, like just everything he does just so clean no ways to move it everything with a purpose and that is going to be a three stock lead at the moment luma my God, bro, he's getting, he getting beat up just like a Luma. I'm like, where the hell's pa- Oh Lord! Oh, I will say this: right I completely me. respect. Uh, I completely respect Luma going for the uh, look left taunt into um, can- taunt cancel forward smash to the right. Completely respectable Wi-Fi tactic from there, and I, I think I, I think it's, I think, it's <laughs> <laughs> I think it's very obvious that Luma does not care right now. <laughs> I don't like. I think this is one of the cool things with Smash 2. It's like sometimes you can kind of just tell how someone is like just emotionally just through their gameplay. And I don't know if Luma's about this right now. <laughs> Didn't even see the main come out, obviously, right? Like throwing out multiple taunts. Maybe he's just having a good time. Maybe he's kind of just over it. Who knows? But uh, know, <laughs> definitely good very to funny to watch. Do. Yes, my lord. <laughs> and even well, when you see fun. Rex come into the game, like, geez, man, how'd that guy get in here? <laughs> Who invited this guy to the party? <laughs> Oh my goodness. Well, there you go. Your escort to the blast zone, courtesy of Pyro. Well done. Kanaji with the swift and dominant 3 0 in this loser's quarters affair. My lord. Yeah, and at least we got to see some uh, valuable data. Of course, the Pyro and Mithra versus Donkey Kong matchup, as we all are, were just surprised. Wow, Donkey Kong loses yet another DLC match. <laughs> Well, he'll get in. Oh. He'll get in there one day, boys. He'll get in there one day. All those diehard DK mains and players just, just keep hope alive. Keep hope alive. <laughs> Dude, that's how I, I kind of can relate. Um, as as a Fox main, it's like every time a new DLC comes out, I'm like, how is this character gonna give me? Like, like it's it's just something. It's always just some new dumb thing that's just like, wow, now I'm dying at 30 off stage to this weird <laughs> new mechanic. Like, it's wow, silly, Sephiroth right? down airs me, and I'm not even getting two framed anymore. I'm getting hit before I even grab the ledge. Like, I'm not even close to it. Can't do anything at this point. Why am I even being selected? I mean, is this is you guys just hate me this much, you know? <laughs> it but really on the makes real. You think. On the real though, the, I, I think all the new this uh, the season two um, uh, DLC pass, the character pass, super banger of a pass. Nice. Uh, 
yeah, I just, every single character that's come out has been really cool, unique. And I, I just think uh, they're really going to shake up the meta. So there's, it, man, it, it, it's, this game is so different from a year ago, man. It's, it's actually just wild thinking about. And like, these characters are so impactful to the point where they're just like adding like new concepts, new mechanics. It's so exciting to see. I think, I, and you know, like I couldn't have said it any better because really what it does, like us, us getting the world tour back on track, shout out to everybody involved in that, and having the ability to really have our online qualifiers, it's just it's just setting up the hype and the excitement for when uh, they do actually compete in person, right? And it's going to be like, a, as you said, a completely different game, but it's it's a, half the fun is getting there. And I really enjoyed getting like last week with Mexico, outstanding region. We're getting treated to some great gameplay. Uh, from the folks out there in Australia and New Zealand, this Oceania side of things. So it's just been a W all around. And uh, I can see why we have so many people uh, still awake, hanging out and rocking with us, man, because you know, you're getting treated right now uh, to some very aggressive and fun play. I see Fried Rice is actually coming up next. That's pretty cool versus uh, yeah. Seb Pro. Seb Pro. Is that YouTube guy? Chat, help me out. Is the YouTuber who was in, he was playing Lucina, is he still in or did he get eliminated? I am not sure. I don't have, I can't click the bracket right now, so I'm in full screen. So somebody let me know uh, if you get an opportunity, because I would love to be aware of that uh, if he's coming he, up at some point. He is, uh, or if you're talking about Pop T1. Yeah, Pop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Pop, uh, he did lose. Dang, he, so he Oh, did, Pop is out. Up. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah, he, he I like nice, his Lucina. Nice. He was a cool guy. Good the Lucina nice was clean. Place, the Lucina was clean. Nice. Good stuff on the, good stuff on the ninth place, bro. Good stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, honestly, Just, any competition. Content creator doesn't mean you can't can't throw down all right that's true leave that to the commentator all right <laughs> oh but he did qualify so that's cool oh nice oh good stuff all right there you go all right guys don't go anywhere on the other side of this break we will continue on with some smash action for you it's going to be seb pro taking on fried rice we'll see you in a couple of minutes
All right, guys, welcome back to the Smash World Tour. We are over on the Oceania side of things for this online qualifier, featuring the talented regions of Australia, New Zealand, you name it on that side of the world. We got it right here. Your boy E.E. E. Charles, we're holding it down on the ones and twos for the comp side of things. And we've already had a really, really intense and explosive start to things, including an insane Dark Pit Ditto, which was our winner's mm -hmm. finals. Just a lot of good, aggressive, talented play being displayed so far. And I hope, the, uh, hope, honestly, all of you are enjoying it. Take a look at how our scheduling has been working out. You can see that top 32 bracket matches you guys got to enjoy earlier than that top 16. And we crawled our way all the way here to where we currently stand. That is our top eight. And later, of course, after this top eight is concluded, we'll have some LCQ finals for you guys to enjoy. And uh, really just kind of get all these qualifying rounds just filled in and know who's going to be going to that next level. Of course, man. VGBC cutting right to the chase, starting things off with top 32 on stream. Just giving you guys all the juiciest of uh, Smash content, of course. And here is the rest of the calendar. Um, of course, this is a world tour, so we're going all the way around the world and look at all of these regions and sub-regions that will be qualifying for this particular structure. Of course, right now, we are qualifying for the regional right the regional finals and yep. then once we go through the regional finals there will be that much players selected from each region and they will complete in a 32 man bracket that will be that is planned to be offline so super hype um that's like the, the finale of it all how everything's like coming up together really like has that major feel again right so uh yeah it's i've been much super needed excited too. yeah it's, yeah it's honestly so needed when you just think about like everything that's been going on but finally some light yeah. at the end of this dark tunnel we've been in for a little over a year so keep those spirits good guys and we'll keep up the good matches because right now we're about to have fried rice taking on seb pro you can see no secondaries on the side of fried rice when I mean, you play pikachu do you really need them but on the other side my man seb he's like you know i'm a rock with this rob but i got the min min too just in case All right, i like that Yep, yep. Both characters uh, definitely trying to play that keep away game. Rob definitely having a little bit more success in these boxing scenarios. But yeah, Min Min, another character that was the uh, first DLC of this, you know, second season of DLC. And definitely a very different character. Uh, very keep away. You, you essentially are like this uh, sword character that has like extreme range, obviously um, a bit amount of end lag. And of course, you can move and do some of the tilts. But we'll see if that comes out or not. Um, I feel like Pikachu would do pretty well versus Min Min. Um, so we'll probably see the Rob. But I mean, if Pika does, dang, this sucks. Pikachu kind of does well against both Rob and Min Min. So we'll see what Set Pro goes with. Usually in scenarios like this, it kind of like depends on like how badly Pikachu beats yeah. um, either character. And like, I don't know, sometimes you just got to go with the try and true main, right? I definitely know Rob's are not fans of having to go against Pikachu. Like he, yeah. he should definitely be a thorn in the side. Like just so quick that small frame. There's a lot of things that can make it difficult for Rob uh, to really get in there and um, just kind of have his way with Pikachu. Like sometimes he can't be accustomed to. But honestly, he'll have to do. Uh, you know, he'll just have to do his best to find his footing. I mean, you gotta give a lot of credit to this fried rice guy. Like you saw it on the. Our graphic we have there this man he's unranked like he's not even ranked right and he has made yeah. it this far in the bracket just causing all kinds of disruptions like I, I mean my hat's off to him man like if they didn't know your name before this event they damn sure ain't gonna forget it afterwards so it's, definitely something for step pro to keep in mind and i believe it also said on his uh on fried race's card that uh started playing or started like competing in 2020 so that's yeah, like he's a newer he's a newer guy yeah. like super that's new <laughs> like very he might have been in quarantine when he started playing i don't even know like <laughs> yeah yeah so it's it. a it's pretty crazy so um very interested to see this new blood kind of just like make make waves in the scene here for the oceana region already like he's secured a spot in top eight already qualified for the regional finals as well so we already know we're going to see more action for fried rice but we'll now we're getting to the point where we're fighting for that seating right and and a little bit of that pride right like just being able to say you you know got first at the smash mm -hmm. world tour qualifier for oceana that's it's a little something, something to be proud of, you know? And that's something I think a lot of, I think still like some of the players who like aren't at the top, top upper echelon still really so appreciate, right? It's like, you know what? 
Yeah, sure, I like getting that seed in. Every time you get some prize money involved, too, that's also great. But what about that pride, baby? What about those bragging rights to say, you know what, bro? Hey, congratulations on getting third. I was first. What you got to say to that? Whole lot of nothing, okay? And I eliminated yeah. your ass, okay? That's what it's all about. That's that competitiveness that I feel like is missing sometimes. So I'm ecstatic that these two seem to be duking out. And honestly, given that they're all separate, pro though, he is trailing a considerable amount. This has been all fried rice from the jump. Looking to get back down, but the interception from Seb Pro, that up air, going to have no problem just backing Pikachu at that percent. And that light little frame of his is going to do him no favors. Yeah, even with the higher ceiling there on Town City, not enough. Uh, got crossed up on the DI there. Uh, Rob up air, probably one of the hardest, harder moves. I won't say hardest, but like definitely one of the harder moves in this game to like know where and how to DI. And it's it's almost some, like most of the time it just feels like you're kind of guessing. Um, well, when you can catch them off guard, it's just like. Oh, perfect. absolutely. And that's exactly yeah. what we just thought. Yeah, so um, obviously this is uh, <laughs> Rob. Well, pretty hard from Pikachu, as we've seen for the first two stocks. Uh, Seb did get the yeah, mixed up um, on that down throw there. Uh, that's that's how Pride was able to get that thunder on the right side there. So we'll see. Uh, I mean, the one great thing about uh, like one of the bigger pros you have to take advantage of is you know make it really hard for Pikachu to get that kill on you. Oh, and try to get the spike, but he got yoinked down himself. I think that he like he did. I think he would super load that spike intentionally because he thought he was gonna try and recover immediately. But through the thunder yeah. route to maybe catch Zeb, thinking, Ooh. okay, maybe I can get the spike here. No, I feel like that was a calculated uh, execution on that bait. Like that was really good on the part of Fried Rice. Hats off to him, Zeb, bro. Got some work to do. Oh yeah, absolutely, and that that was a very creative uh, reversal there. Um, even uh, using the double jump as well to kind of like rise up with that thunder, very necessary, just because thunder can be so laggy. Here comes the narrow loops, doesn't completely catch that second wave. Um, Might have been too much rage. Rage does affect those narrow loops quite some bit. And oh wait, okay, and with the quick attack and probably one of the Pikachu's strongest tools and why a lot of people think this character is if not the best like at least top five um mm -hmm. that quick attack you can really get out of so many sticky situations where a Absolutely. lot of characters does not have that option and like the fact that it crosses up shield as well so it's like you get two zips they can go in so many different directions and you're crossing up shield as well uh it's just such a good yeah, quick attack's insane. It's basically, oh, I'm in a tricky situation, automatic reset. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm in there and then I'm out. Like, it's, it's one of the reasons that this character is just so, uh, so strong. And, and still, even to this day, I'm surprised uh, that we don't have more, even more high-level Pikachus. I don't know if people just don't want to invest the time because the character, I mean, the character, I think, could be pretty oh, demanding. Uh, but wow. you wouldn't know that looking at Fried Rice. I mean, he played that like it was nothing. No disrespect to Seb Pro, but that JD2 yeah. stock does say a lot. Yeah, the Rob might need to get shut down and the Min Min might need to come out here. I've heard like I've heard multiple Robs say that Pikachu is their worst matchup. Like and, and they would rather fight Pichu over Pikachu just because like they can randomly like sometimes kill Pichu at like fifty or whatever. But yeah, like Pikachu, you have a little bit more weight and you're just like consistent. You have all these multi hits and you you just like really combo Rob and you put him in so many bad situations. t also a really good projectile to pressure Rob where they like to go low with the gas. And if like, you, then you start forcing them high and then that's how Fried West is able to get so many of those thunder scenarios where he just like forced them high, the threat of thunder or like a fair, there, there was just so much threats that, you know, Sepro has to deal with when recovering and usually Rob's not pressured that hard. Like, not a lot of characters in the cast. There are character, other characters other than Pikachu that can do that, but not a lot of them can do that. So, it, it was rough, my guy. That it was. So, I mean, hey, you know, all those, I mean, all those reasons and then some you can you can imagine uh, could be a reason to switch things up a tad bit. But no, it seems like even after game, I mean, if you're thinking, if you're set pro, you're probably thinking like, okay, well, you know, okay, he didn't have any percent on him, but it was last stock. And I do get the counter pick this time, right? So mm -hmm. maybe he's kind of thinking like there's still some opportunity to really, uh, really wait. What the hell? And Hello? it is a game five set. Oh so my god! So there is, is that one void? more game. You know, you can, you know, you can throw away one game. You know, get a little more information before you really go into the, the gritty parts of the set. You know. Absolutely agree. There's definitely some room for error still available. Town you know, City is our pick. Amazing. Yeah, I'm surprised he's going get back to, to the same stage. You know, I'm very, I'm very 
impressed with the confidence Seb has going back to town and city after game one. But game one was really close. Yes. It was a last stock scenario. It really was. Um, but you know, the problem that I'm seeing right now is it's almost like the start of this game is looking even worse than that first game we saw. Now we're seeing, okay, he's getting a little bit of a pickup. And Danny made me eat my words off of that great combination, just stringing that together seemingly out of nowhere and maybe boy that's why he's thinking to himself i still have full faith in my character because no matter the percent i'm in i might be down but i'm damn sure not out oh boy though see you oh, what the <laughs> 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 oh man this is a little, little little quick guest appearance but of course um yeah sev is he's winning he, he th th this was surprising i'm surprised he stuck with the rob and um, I feel like, oh yeah, that should be just stock there. Yeah, even though you're super heavy, and that that is something they did like kind of pseudo buff, right? Like the the fair uh, being a little bit more consistent. How did that grab? Wow. In all things, I mean, just the way this thing started, I, I thought this was, might have been a quick wash in game number two, but Dev Pro just like, again that five seconds that he was able of magic, he was able to string together on that first stock compass completely changing the tide of this and really kind of putting uh, fried rice more so on the defensive has to kind of think twice on how he's going to get in looking to stream together some damage but man you gotta admire Seb Pro using those down so great defensive options holding himself on the right side not really giving up any ground and almost at a it's pretty much a stalemate at this point nobody willing to overcommit for good reason on both sides yeah I, I present to you rob top the hardest item to pick up in the entire game i don't know why it's so hard like the hitbox on it is so gigantic but uh why would, yeah why would you go out there like i don't know what uh Fred rice was thinking there like obviously he's gonna throw that up there and you ran yeah, right into yeah. it pretty much just handed that stock pretty much consider that a, a birthday gift at this point Jeez. yeah and i mean honestly the second stock was bought like well from fried rice but it's just hard when pikachu does not like when pikachu has too much rage for those early percent loops it's, it's really hard for pikachu to get like significant damage that's where the that's where the character can find like itself a little bit consistent inconsistent but right now no double jump i think the thunder would have been so good there might have killed probably not but oh, damn my, give me dude, assist that's... okay Okay, call in the Rob top because, wow, that man had the up smash prepped and ready. You couldn't even see the top on the screen, all right? That's the top, you couldn't see it. Good. He just he knew he, he knew where the top was, and yeah, that up smash was perfect. The only person who knew where it was was Seb Pro. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. it. And that's the only person Pretty who needed much. to know, ma. Bitches, yeah. ma. That's it. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> Great. The return on the top, the investments came through and man set pro get on the board with rob something that like i guess we, we kind of like made it seem like it was really hard like really like maybe not impossible but like i said i've heard i've heard top level rob say that pika is the their most hated matchup or like mm -hmm. they think it's worse but obviously like um maybe some other robs play it different they play it better who knows right so i think seb definitely coming out here showing that even though rob doesn't have like the best matchup against Pikachu. He's out here. He's making it work. Exactly what it is. Faith in your character will take you far. And again, I, I was as I was speaking to Void briefly, I was thinking to myself, like, the fact that he does have the counter pick, as well as knowing that it still went the last stock in that first game, he's probably not that down on his character just yet. And nor should he have been, because that was a great response that he had in that second game. And already kicking off the third, putting on 35, make it 46% of damage unanswered up until that point. But some easy strings from Pikachu gonna easily make up that percentage deficit. All right, this is, I've, like, no shots. No shots at Oceana, mm -hmm. but I'm gonna tell you guys right now. You guys should not let, be letting Pikachu go on Gallows. Like this is this is just some professional insight. Do not let Pikachu like <laughs> badness against Pikachu. Yes, okay. this is. I I I feel like most people will say that like this is like Pika's best stage, if not like one of the best stages. You look like the platforms where they're at. It's so perfect for T Jolt camping. Um, Pikachu has a wall jump, so they can wall jump Thunder. And then on top of that, the wall stages are really good when Pikachu's in disadvantage because you can throw a bunch of T jolts into the bottom wall of the stage and they crawl up and it's yeah, like you're pretty much calling in Doom missiles. Like mm. it's broken. <laughs> Definitely not the stage you're accustomed to seeing Pikachu try to uh, get handed. Oh my goodness, great snipe there. Not enough to take out the stock, but certainly put fried rice in a compromised position. Oh, I thought that was going to be a pivot grab. 
try and take him out with the F throw, but no. Looks like Fried Rice is going to be able to get back on the stage. Keep this battle roaring, but that Nair is not going to do you any favors. See you later. Seb, bro, he's on it right now. Mm. Okay, going to jump, air dodge right out. And I, 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 I definitely see, like, Rob is also good on the stage, right? And with the big blast zones, we can definitely see Seb Pro abusing um, the character's weight. Um, you know, Kalos just has very, very large blast zones, and it's just a really good stage for projectile characters because you just have a you have a lot of real estate um, to work with. Like the stage is just large itself, the blast zones are large, so even heavier zoners can do well on this as well, and even just the platform placement. But oof, we got the confirms on deck, the single hit of Nair one, or or just like just the Nair into the drag down right into the up smash. It's the crazy thing about Pikachu Nair. Um, you you want it at early percents, you want it at later percents, you can just confirm it's either tilts or quick grab for combo damage, Ooh. or, oh my goodness, wait a minute, are you going to get off the stage and oof, landing right on that platform? That was a scary situation they found himself in there. Honestly, I wasn't sure if he was going to like commit to try and go back down there or what's happening, but right now just needs to get back to the stage, finds a way to get there safely at back air, not connected from Seb Pro, but Seb Pro, give him credit. He is applying so much pressure to fried rice, he doesn't know where to go, if anywhere is even available. My goodness, yeah. finding some saving grace, a little bit of alleviation on that left platform, but it has not been an easy fight for him to try and get some semblance of control back as those lasers come flying, the gyro going out there, and wow, what a parry. If he got that down there, probably would have been the stock. Oh, absolutely. Right now, Set Pro is looking like he is pretty accurate on these lasers, especially when they're fully charged, even bouncing them off the ground. He's got all the tips and tricks to hit all these shots, and it's uh, it's really sick to watch. Um, but we got Fried Rice with the max rage. Uh, Pikachu is definitely a character that usually doesn't benefit too much from it, but I, I mean, at this point, they're both so high in terms of percentage, it's, it's going to be Ooh, hard. And nice. Wow, he goes for it with the tech! Wow! I thought he was all but finished, but no, Sepro fully aware of his surroundings, using that okay, wall okay. to his advantage. However, will not survive yeah. going up top. There's no wall there, just doom and gloom. Yeah, I was going to say, are we going to get both of our players to like 200% if so? That's wild. Oh, the top coming okay. through, and that I actually see. helped so much in terms of percent. <gasps> but yep. this is the grab there, Sepro going to get away from all that pressure. So this has been another 20% easily, if not more, but finding a way to just narrowly escape 162 for this Pikachu. That's stock on borrowed time, but the time keeps on ticking even after the laser follow-up. Wow, Kalos just really, really benefiting Pride right now. I mean, it's not too often that you see a Pikachu 178 getting this much uh, equity out of a stock, but he is making the most out of it. Except oh, Pro, yes. what do you do? What is your response? How about that Nair? Same way he took out the first stock. Gonna be the answer to the second. Oh yeah, absolutely. Eventually that Nair will get the KO there. Um, unfortunately for Sephiroth is that it was at a very later percent. So, you know, we see Fried Rice just rack up so much damage at this point. Some Most of these trades usually not in favor of Pikachu, but with this lead, not too bad. Okay, we get the drag down into the down smash. Probably won't be enough here, but look at all this damage that is getting racked up on Sephiroth. Try to go low here. Don't want don't to give up too much control of the stage. Does not get the up smash on the Bruh. dragon. Oh no. I don't know if that would have killed. It was Rob, but like you're still missing out on a damage and a potential win, right? Like, oof. Roll, dash attack. Oh no. Oh man, this is looking you thought, one more bro, close man, oh, man. oh my god. You don't have to imagine. See it for yourself, folks. The back air to clear it out. 146. Set pro that, got a stock, still got a chance. That right. was a that was a tough one to swallow. Not sure what happened there with Fried Rice. He had the Nair, the Nair drag down, and like I said, pretty much at any percent you get that Nair drag down, you get any kind of follow up. So you know, I don't, I, maybe, I don't know what happened, but. Um, Maybe he just kind of froze up there, but Seb is going to take complete advantage of that. And even though he was down like pretty much like 100% plus, he brought it all the way back, hit those confirms. And yeah, he got he got that back air towards the end, right at the edge of Kalos with all that rage is going to clutch it out. There you go, man. And honestly, doing it in a, a matchup that is not favorable for Rob. So he knows the whole time he's fighting against Fried Rice that is an uphill battle, but still finding ways to rise to the occasion lost that first game but bounced back convincingly uh in this in the next two man this is really good for set pro setting himself up to maybe take this set 3-1 we'll see what fried rice has to say about that however 
Chat, you guys are wilding out, man. You <laughs> you guys are trolling, saying it's offline, but they're using an arena. <laughs> like, come on. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm reading, Chat. I'm just like, y'all True just... degenerate hours going on right now. Right? Oh, <laughs> no, definitely on some demon time. Chill. I'm not mad at you. <laughs> I'm not mad at you, but I definitely see some demon time in the chat, boys. I'm right there with you. Okay, you see my DMs. Anyway, let's see this match right here. Game number four. Back to Kalos. We go. Pride Race. Obviously not satisfied with that result. Believe in one of the stronger stages for people who should have resulted in victory. We'll see if the run back can yield him what he's looking for. Yeah, yeah, a fried rice, definitely. It was kind of like a tug of war in terms of momentum, and then towards that last stock, it felt like fried rice was really running away with it. We'll see if you can emulate that for game four, just to, you know, get this uh, game five going, because you already know, I want to see this go all the way to game five. Back here, out of shield, the Tijo tries to come, but the beautiful tech, we've seen it from several, mm -hmm. DI into the stage, but the spacing on that thunder, I swear that neutral was like, just pixels away from hitting him, but the thunder goes off, it gets the hit, and it takes the stalk. Just outstanding ability and skill right there being demonstrated from Fried Rice. Like, he was just like, you know what? I feel like my range, I feel like I got the advantage right here, took it to the limit, gets rewarded with the stock, and now look at this, Charles, just easy, just mm. looping him up, dragging him down, and just tossing him around a ton of percent, making 69 quite nice, if I do say so myself. Oh yeah, that was a beautiful combo there, and ladies and gentlemen, the reason why Robs do not like this matchup, because that happens to them a lot. Uh, they just take a lot of damage every time they get hit. Um, Pikachu, it, like, it's crazy because Robs has a frame 3 air dodge, which is like a standard air dodge. Um, you're not going to have that frame 4 heavy air dodge, but just since he's so large, Pikachu's able to take advantage of that and get crazy huge strings on, onto Rob, but looks like we got Sephiro striking back. We do. Sepro obviously understanding just one game away from continuing on through this bracket. Meanwhile, Fried Rice, he's like, as you said, man, he's eager just as much as you are to get to that fifth and final game of this set. We'll see if he can do it. He has a hell of a lead to back him up. Damn near 100% advantage. But we have seen some insane comebacks already uh, throughout these matches. And I'll tell you what, last uh, the last match itself was crazy with Sepro. Can he make magic, though? Again, lightning strike twice. That's the question right now. 134 has to play the super cautious, and I think Fried Rice is well aware of that, but credits to Sepro being as aggressive as ever, Charles, really rising to the challenge and not straying away from the fight. Still got to close out this stock. Um, Kalos is very good for Pikachu, but there is certain weaknesses that Fried Rice will kind of avoid there. Getting the kill on Rob with the edge guard at around 150, not too bad, honestly, because, like I said, the one chance that um, Rob has in this matchup is if he can get to like that 180, just have it really, really hard for Pikachu to get that confirm and you know just kill Pikachu ridiculously early because of the weight. Um, obviously, you're going to try to abuse Rage for that, but the way Fried Rice has been playing, he's just not letting him set up that situation. He's playing so damn well. And he is. And honestly, these are, this is this is the kind of gameplay that you need to see when you're eager to get to a game five. Like. Just kind of play, not with desperation, but with like the, the sense of urgency. And that's, I think, exactly what we're seeing. And it doesn't help either when you got Kalos as Pikachu. Like, as you said, like, there's just so many reasons why he should dominate this one. And you can honestly argue uh, it was a blessing that Sepro was able to, to squeak out the last one. But I don't know if that's going to be the case for this fourth encounter. It has been all fried rice, about 90% of this match. We are kind of coming down to the waning moments back safely coming back aggressively too with that forward air i like it a lot trying to catch the landing but no sepro not giving it up for free this up there charles mm. that was a big one 129 yep. slim chance but a chance nonetheless we've seen this situation before aka literally last game so uh you never can count a rob out this character is uh the defense is very nice in terms of just like spacing with nair or just tops in general but this character also has crazy zero to deaths this character also has down as a boxing option this character just kind of has it a little bit of everything or maybe a lot but <laughs> so you, you just say, you be like careful the the list. <laughs> yes <laughs> But the dash attack with punish is not enough. 190% on this robot. Try to snipe him out of the air with the thunder. The air dodge to get back. Wait a minute. You just got to watch out. The up throw could do it. Yes, do it does. I was going to say, if that doesn't put him away, then all right. I don't know what will at this point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Monka S's will start coming out in the chat, man. It's just like, get the Pikachu, get the kill. But Pikachu got the shades on the hat looking cool. Um, mm -hmm. 
But we are here, game five, yes, like sir. I wanted. Yes, 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 yes. Please and thank you. Um, I will be very interested if we see Sepro take it back to Kalos. They're both 1-1 on Kalos. Um, I, okay, so like earlier in the set, I said it was like, yeah, Pikachu would just like completely stomps on the stage. I can definitely see like the things Rob can take advantage of on Kalos, mainly those big blast zones. Um, I think that's honestly a really big deal. That dash attack, he probably would have died on like almost a, a lot, on a lot of other stages that dash attack would have killed at that last stretch, but he like lived, right? And like, it kind of gives Rob those like second chances with the size of those blast zones. So if Rob's able to get back on stage, uh, we've seen how early Rob can get the KO on Pikachu, right? So. Not about it. And I think too, like you gotta consider like just the fact that this guy's gyro setups have been in incredible as well. So there was a lot of yeah. different ways uh, that could have unfolded, but credit, uh, credit to fried rice. Uh, getting the lead, not letting it get away from him, and getting himself an opportunity to still win this set because we have, as Charles said, a game five for you folks. Um, especially like earlier on in the brackets when we were seeing a lot of three O's, it's nice to see some uh, some game fours and some game fives really just kind of up in the ante for a lot of these players. Oh yeah, absolutely. And I mean, right now everyone's qualified, but you already know, man, we're playing for the pride, we're playing for the seating, and that seating is going to be a very big deal, honestly, going into the regional qualifier. So. Yeah, um, of course, here we are, game five. I'm just very excited to see what stage we have here. Um, I want to see where Friday wants to go. He instead opts for, instead of using the uh, large blast zones that Kalos brings, he's actually switching it up, going into a tri-plat, and we're going on Yoshi's story, uh, the smallest blast zone of any legal stage. So yeah, just extremely small blast zones. And the only other thing is there's still that wall so Pikachu is going to be able to like use that, but we've seen Seb actually use it to survive a lot of Pikachu spikes. So maybe right. the wall kind of more beneficial for Rob, so he doesn't really have to worry about that drop zone edge guard as much. Oh my God, uh -oh, bro, wait that a was minute. nasty. That was all happening off of a hell uh air. Oh, he make it back? Make it back. He should be fine. Yeah. Okay. okay, okay. Have enough gas, but definitely had me shook a little bit. Nice, clean mix-ups though from Seb Pro. Mm -hmm. He's trying to put himself in a position to succeed, not doing a bad job about it. And Charles, I agree with you what you said about the, the walls and just like the technical ability and stuff like that. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I, I could definitely see that being super beneficial to Seb Pro here, but he has to use that quick attack to go up. Ooh, that shield getting whittled down. Gotta be careful. Fried Rice, he is under duress right now. Maybe trying to put some separation between them, but he can't even get himself back to the stage long enough to really make a difference. The mix up, Ooh. let me go in, let me go out, but still the How stock are you remains. Alive? <laughs> How is Fried Rice doing it? No okay, way he's Fried again. All right. For real. All right. I'm going to say, real. Charles, we got to look into that controller a little bit. All right. Yeah, well. Man, that bullshit is back again. I don't know. This Throw SD is insane! <laughs> turbo <laughs> button. Man, with the turbo what? button. Oh my god, bro. What was that? Credits to him, though. I mean, he really went the distance with that stock. Unfortunately, though, ends up losing it. And Seth Pro, really not worse for wear. I mean, 84% guess that is high, but still, he's going to be living quite a while. He ain't got no, too much to fear right now. That boxing game of Rob coming out. And look at what he's doing. He's pretty much cutting off Fry Rice's options and trying to corner him. All right, finally though, getting an opportunity to get back to the stage and maybe get some offense going. Gonna need it yeah. big time. Sephiro has just gotten so much out of the center stage control. Um, playing it like pretty textbook, and it's just it's it's textbook, but it's clean. So yes. for me, for me, always always a uh, fun to watch, and just like the way he's doing this corner pressure from the center stage is so well. He's covering all these horizontal approaches that he's um, got, but the downer not spiking, not a chance for attack does get sent out. He's going to be able to make it back on edge and still just surviving here. He's almost an entire stock up. A nair side will definitely do the trick here, um, and we definitely see. Set Pro's counter pick, like coming into play, it's just oh, really coming alive. Absolutely, man. I mean, you couldn't have scripted any better uh, thus far for Seb Pro because he is really just taking it to Fried Rice, who, to my surprise, is he has had no answers thus far. Quick attack pops him in the air, but really just can't find any of those fatal glancing bros. <sighs> oh. Even the fair failing him in that situation, yeah. bro. That's how you know things are getting rocky. Yeah, that's. That's always a tilter when you're like down and you finally get that one kill move you've been like waiting for so long and it just like doesn't work. But not too much damage will get tacked onto fried rice here. The dash attack will connect and wait a minute, we might have some loots. But like I said, it's just hard to set up the loops with the rage. Um, really, really difficult. So you usually have to opt for like just some kind of double aerial, you know, like a full hop and a, a double jump aerial combo to like end it off. It's uh, it, it's rough. Your your damage output 
getting cut down this much by because of the rage you have. Um, and and Sephiro really just abusing that with the lead because he does have that because he has a lead. So really just kind of snowballing out of control here. Yeah, seriously. I mean, two fried rice is credit though. I mean, every little every hit does add up. He is kind of creeping and crawling. There's been a few opportunities that Sephiro might have had to close out the stock that he's letting escape him. And just like that, I mean, 116 for Sepro. This is still anyone's contest, Charles. And it's sure as hell didn't seem that way about 20 seconds ago as Fried Rice connects with the forward smash to surge into the lead. 139. Can he go the distance right now is the question. Yeah, and right there, Fried Rice just says, hey, it's my turn. And Sephiro was like, wait, but when is it my turn? And Ooh. Fried Rice is just like, did it, didn't let him have his turn. That whole entire stock, that whole sequence. But... Sepro answering back with the forwards to air offstage to punish the side B recovery. And we have a dead even game. Game five situation here on Yoshi's story at that. Man came back from down an entire stock, 100% deficit. He has the will to win. I respect the hell out of it. The plan from the jump was working out for Sepro. But you know what? Not all plans, they, they don't always work out how you, how you expect it to. And I think that's what Fried Rice is kind of uh, displaying right now. It has been a complete turnaround. You see Seb just in there trying to get some hits to connect, but the counterplay at the moment for Fried Rice just too good. He is looking in a strong position to maybe take this fifth game despite how it started out. Yeah, and again, like just on these triplats, the center stage is so controlled. We see whoever just like has the stage control really con kind of controls the pace of the game here. That isn't going to be it. I don't even think like there is a tech where you can dash back and get the tipper. You should get what? the tech here. Yes. Yeah. And okay, okay, okay. Zepro is not giving up just yet, but this up smash will definitely do the trick from the confirmed white rice. will take it over Zepro. What a comeback. That was absolutely insane. Again, the man just trailing from the jump. It looked like it was over early, but just forced his way back into the fight. And damn it, if he didn't earn that, I don't know who did, man. Congratulations to Fried Rice. He will advance on. And he's going to have a challenge, though, Charles, because he's got to go against Kanaji in the next round, who's been absolutely insane from what we saw. Right, right, of course, with the snake, with the uh, Pyramithra, and wow, that was a hell of a set. Um, Sepro did not miss a single tech on a down air, and, um, you know, it was, I, I love watching sets where, like, everyone's just playing really clean, so you really just get the most out of the entire uh, match or the entire game. It was just so cool, and uh, Sepro really, he really made him work for it, and yeah, that was it, it. And the fact that it was on Yoshi's too, it, it just kind of like made it more tense because both of them could just die earlier too, right? So it was it was a really fun set to watch. I really enjoyed that for sure. Shout out to both players, man. You're both fantastic. You, you gave the crowd an excellent show. Um, no doubt about that, man. No doubt about that. So we appreciate that. But whoo, good grief, man. It was it, That was one of those sets too, man, where it was like hard to catch your breath because so much mm -hmm. was taking place. You know what I'm saying? And that's where you could always kind of appreciate that kind of play, so good stuff all around to everybody involved so. yeah and even like uh it's just it's crazy because even the australian or oceana like play style coming into play right we even saw it in sepros rob like very aggressive a lot of fairs coming in right so it's like uh that was really fun to watch and they were just always so close to each other there was always kind of some scrap or some interaction happening and they they were both like very willing to like go off stage and just like really throw out that pressure so it was really yep. fun to watch but of course returning back to the arena of course fried rice and like we said fried rice versus kanaji a man kanaji active since 2000 it, look at these look at these youngins right here Mm -hmm. One active since 2019, the other active it's since wild. 2020. That is insane to me, bro. Yeah, that to be that... this talented and so new uh, into mm -hmm. the space, like good stuff to both of them. I mean, you know, nothing but respect and love out there. Uh, and that's how you kind of know that you're in for like a really, really good showdown uh, between these two. So we'll get those predictions up for you, chat. I know some of you are you know you're in recovery mode okay i know some of you are in recovery mode you had seb pro taking that didn't come through for you <laughs> you gotta find a way to win them points back well we're gonna get an opportunity because you will have a chance to bet on this through another prediction which will be happening right now wow go wow. ahead well first we gotta, we gotta pay out we gotta pay out first 
Oh, okay, okay. We gotta, okay, gotta bankrupt some of y'all. We gotta bankrupt some of y'all. <laughs> right. And then we'll put that prediction up for you. Jeez. Yeah, and this will this will be this will be a fun matchup. Uh, we'll see. I mean, Kanan, Kanaji definitely went with the Snake Game One on his last set, so I'm assuming we'll see the same thing. Um, Pikachu Snake is something uh, a matchup we see kind kind of sort of often. Um, obviously, Esam and MVD is probably like the highest level of you know this matchup that we've seen. So it's like, uh, yeah, it, it, it's interesting. Um, Pikachu definitely has a lot of tools to hit snake off his cypher that is probably one of the more valuable things whenever you're talking about like a snake matchup there's just some characters that they don't really have an answer so if you don't have an answer to cypher low oh my goodness <laughs> snake is going to be very rough for you but pikachu definitely has that answer yeah so pikachu gets him off stage expects some good things to happen on his part snake though when he's on stage you got to wait through that minefield that it can really put up all those explosions and as he demonstrated the last outing that we saw, like he has no problem just kind of tricking you, almost disoriented, uh, disorienting sometimes the way he just kind of does his setups. Like a lot of good mix up and sh movements and options of that nature. So I think uh, I think this has all the makers to be another great showdown. So chat, uh, again, shout out to you guys. Hope you're doing well. Make sure you get your predictions in. I know it's late, but we're keeping it great. So you ain't got to hate bars. I know I do this on the regular. Dang, all right, all right, all right. All right. All right. Dang. Dang. Worry about it. <laughs> but, uh, nah, oh, but real man. talk, man. Real talk. Appreciate y'all. For sure, for sure. Here we go, though. I ain't gotta talk too much. What? What's up? What's it up? What's is, up? It is late, you know. Uh, oh yeah. So yeah, yeah. It's if, you guys are, yeah. if you guys are if you guys are sticking through, you know, maybe maybe you're not for most channels, so it's 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 getting a little late. Ooh, so thank late. you for staying along. And wait a minute, do we got some oh, DLC God. hype on Ooh. the on the screen though? Ooh, the double parry in the back here. Fried rice. Excuse me. Fried Rice said, let me go ahead and just set the tone real quick. I'm stopping all your ish. Try wow. and stop me, baby. You got all them little combos too. Best what, baby? You didn't need DLC to get a combo fiend like myself. Pikachu trying to put Pyra on, or excuse me, Mithra on notice early. Yeah, right now, uh, Fried Rice kind of exposing Kanaji's uh, Mithra, but we'll see. Mithra does has some sauce too. We'll see if we can get some openings here. Get the drag down there. Here's an up tilt into Nutra. Try to get the back air extension, extension, but not gonna get it here. The ledge trap as well, and definitely fried rice is punishing and doing a really good job of just stuffing out these side beats. Okay, oh, that force smash was so missed. close. I missed by a hair, so catching a little bit of a break. But here comes. Honestly, mm -hmm. this could be your comeback right here, right, in Tyra. Especially yeah. when she's throwing out right the hitbox and you come back. Like, if that connects, oof, that stock is gone before you know it. Oh, no punish on that high side be there and the directional air dodge, and you are done. Yeah, yep. Throwing that aerial, definitely uh, going to go th very, very low. This character does not have a good recovery at all. <laughs> definitely uh, not. Yeah. Definitely below average. It's uh, one of the few chinks, I feel like, in the armor of this character. Because yeah. like, yeah. this is an exceptionally good character. But that recovery, yes. And Pikachu, obviously one of the characters that does a good job sniping out recoveries uh, and exploiting weaknesses like that. So that's actually going to be one thing our Fried Rice can certainly hang his hat on. But not even really needing that to be the case right now. We see these loops. Wow. And he is definitely accumulating that damage. Sticking with the Pyra, though, is my man Kanaji. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, just to stick it out here. Are we gonna. Oh, no you're done, son! <laughs> wow, that was so clean coming out from Fried Rice. And he might have actually held down on that side B2 just to make sure the uh, hitbox was just lingering right by the edge. It's very similar to like how Diddy Kongs will do their flip kick into the edge of the stage and then double jump out just to have that very meaty aerial for that two frame action right at the edge there and it is going to reward fried rice with a three to one stock lead here and honestly kind of kind of freeing up this pyramithra combo right now there ain't no kind of about it this ass with the charles call <laughs> it is okay because we all see it on the screen okay chad ain't gonna sure code it neither am i this has the makings of a potential three stock right now no finally fried rice able to remove or excuse me Kanaji able to remove that stock off fried rice, but man, you gotta wonder at this point, is it too little too late? You know the kind of combinations that Mithra can really string together, but I mean, you gotta get the hits first, man. <laughs> like, fried rice has been 90% of the offense. 
Yeah, we see a lot of up tilts coming out from Kanaji too. It's just not really working out. Pikachu, one of the shorter characters in the game, you're gonna have to start throwing out maybe some forward tilts, maybe even some down tilts. We do see them come out, but yeah, just not really, like, just not getting anything started. Do get the switch to Pyra here, trying to go for the YOLO like down air up smash could kill at this percent honestly. Okay, we're gonna up B. Ooh, does pop a little bit above. No punish coming off of fried rice. And the dash attack is going to just obliterate Pikachu at 40 or whatever percent you were. What? Okay. All right. I mean, not quite over 159, though. Gonna need to get that damage. I think when you, if you see... Okay. Oh, that'll do it. I was gonna say, you get Pikachu to round 50, bring out Pyra. I'm not willing to count this one over. Yeah, and that... But, that up you know. coming out from Kanaji was just a not really lined up. I know you were trying to avoid that T-Jolt, but sometimes you just take that T-Jolt because it's better than getting headbutted in the face yeah. for the stock there. Um, yeah, it, it's just hard. It's hard to recover like perfectly with these characters when their recovery is so, so limited. You just really want to avoid that little pop-up and like kind of space it, right? Space it so you're like snapping the ledge, but you're not overshooting it too far because you don't have a snap on that little pop-up on the way up. So you want to make sure you space that or you will get punished for it like Fried Rice Show. If you're Kanaji, what are you thinking here? Are we sticking with Mithra Power or are we switching oh, up? You're, We're gonna... I'm, I hope, I hope you, wow, okay. Oh, okay. Hmm. Okay. Well, you know what? He I does have it. the counter pick here. He does have the counter pick. So, all right. We're going to take any kind of platforms just flat out out the equation yeah. okay not even a thing final destination so you know what you're gonna combo me you're gonna whoop my ass you're gonna do it straight up okay like, you got nowhere to hide for the most part but kind of a little deja vu and how we're starting things off as far as uh fried rice goes i uh, easily go ahead and just string together that quick 63 but here comes nifter and as we said this character is very very strong in the combo game too and he's gonna need to be because he honestly it was the damage output on the side of fried rice that was just such the deciding factor in that last exchange yeah K kanaji has to be a little bit where a little bit more wary of how you throw out some of these oh no oh wow they almost suck oh, wow. wow the upgrader almost gets it as well pyra There's just doing an incredible amount of work mm -hmm. no i thought a dashback forward smash was coming but the forward tilt doesn't get the stock but the future <gasps> will yes. get it that's so Ooh, okay. good and that's right there you see perfectly where Pyra can truly shine when you have to come back to the stage just good timing good options and oh. great decision making really putting Kanaji ahead in that situation now he takes the lead trying to recover here Pikachu making it difficult love that trump mm. right into the dare and back on Very clean. footing we go crazy stuff yeah, and you knew Kanaji wasn't ready for that because he's probably so focused on like just not getting hit going to the ledge. I like that mix-up coming out from Fried Rice saying like, hey, I'm not even going to edge guard you. I'm already, I'm snapping the ledge like literally right after you. Um, very good spacing on Kanaji's up be there. That's what I was talking about. Just getting that little hop up, but just snapping the ledge, not going too mm. high. Good damage though coming out from this Pyra. And honestly, Kanaji's Pyra just seems like he's just better with Pyra. Like, I, I was going to say, I feel like the Pyra is the bigger threat than the Mithra, because usually with Mithra, it's just like, okay, just all about getting that damage at those lower percents. It really doesn't seem like the combo game was as solid, but the decision-making all around with Pyra, I like what I'm seeing out of that one. However, not going to matter, as that Thunder is going to take care of that stock. And yet again, put Fried Rice up. Yeah, and when push comes to shove, which girl's out? Pyra's out. That's all I'm saying, because that Mithra switch happened, and he died like five to six seconds after. Like, maybe just keep the Mithra down. <laughs> like, switch it back, brother. Switch it back. <laughs> yeah, just switch it back. <laughs> you have the option. Oh, but here comes the Mithra. Oh, okay. No falling there on the reaction to roll there. Oh, the switch! Because you're actually going right through the switch there. That was just funny. My goodness. I'm trying to just find anything. Okay, <gasps> up B. Yeah. That yeah. will kill. Yeah, that will kill. Wow. Very good reaction to the DI there, there. But yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, um, right there, Fried Rush tried to like DI in to get mm -hmm. like to pop out of it, but um, you are able to like drift in or out. So, you know, really good it, uh, reaction it's a there. Slight drift though, right? It's a slight drift. Very slight. It's, very it's slight. so impactful, as we just saw right there. I mean, that was kind of the difference maker, as you so eloquently highlighted. So, final stocks on both of our competitors. Oh, oh my God! Like it, man. Out of nowhere, bro. Dealing the game with a perfectly timed dare. Wow. That that was clean, and I I will say this right now. That was just like that was straight up 
Squirtle like hitting someone out and switching to Ivysaur and daring. Like we literally just witnessed the same thing. That was just so funny to me because like the forward throw, and this is um not a lot of people talk about this kind of stuff, but forward throws that send at a very messed up angle is like good. And when I say messed up, like Steve is a great example of an incredible forward throw because when you're cornering someone or ledge trapping someone, forward throw is going to be your more common throw. Like it's very easy to set up because you're running into the corner and just forward throwing them out, right? Um, instead of like setting up with a roll, which is like super obvious, you're trying to fish for back throw. Um, but the these throws, like any of them that send like straight horizontal or even like straight horizontal and down like Steve is, it's so good for setting up for like two frame situations because your opponent has to burn their jump so early to even set up for a point to get back on the stage. Obviously, Pikachu has a plethora of options of when they can quick attack to ledge. So it doesn't super apply to Pikachu, but that just makes the dare even more hype that Kanaji got it because it, you got it on Pika too. Like there's so many recovery mix-ups in that situation, but he knew exactly when and where the quick attack was coming. What was the common denominator there that we kind of pointed out midway through? It was the fact that he relied more on Pyra than Mithra, right? That was yes. his go-to. That what I believe was truly the difference maker. And, and honestly, what we're probably going to see about 70, 80% uh, going forward is definitely going to be the homie Pyra, especially in those uh, tricky, sticky situations. Uh, I know a lot of the chat was just taken aback by what just took place there. Listen, that's something that this character is capable of doing routinely. So don't sleep at any part, any time, despite any kind of deficit she may be facing, there's always an opportunity to bring it back. Ooh, almost getting out with the foresight, but by being back to stage, very safe here. I will say this, I like when Kanaji brings out Mithra. Like, he tries to bring it out when, like, he's in a corner or he's, like, kind of doesn't have the greatest stage positioning for some kind of interaction. Then bring in Pyra, and it's just like, okay, there's nowhere for you to run, right? Like, I've got you cornered or I got you on the ledge. Bring in the Pyra. Now you, like, have to try and actually fight me, right? Because the optimal thing to do against Pyra is she's just slow. So you just like run away from her and you oh, that that wow. covered so many options and you even saw Kanaji drift back with the neutral beam. So much coverage and it's so damn powerful. Too strong, gotta pay it the respect. My goodness. Mm. Oh, hold up. Jab lock though. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> easy jab lock, easy finish, and easy conversion. That's how we do it. And I will point out there as well, Fried Rice did do the tech of the slight, you, you do a dash back in the forward smash because when you get a jab lock like that, um, you want to get the, like there's a sweet spot on Pika's forward smash, but you're usually too close to them. So you can do it, but it won't be a lot of knockback. It'll just be good damage. But right there, Fried Rice set up the jab lock situation, did a slight dash to the left and instantly forward smash spacing for that tipper, getting that KO. Ooh, hold up. Okay. Nice, I like that actually. A little bit of a delay, tries to catch him. Okay, getting past the T-Jolts. Very nice lingering hitbox there with the side beak. Great for covering normal get up and jump there. The up tilt anti-air as well. Where like like I said, Kanaji is just setting up situations where it's like, oh, you're Pikachu, you have a bunch of multi-hits, like let you wanna trade? Like I'm gonna I'm gonna start I'm down. doing some trades. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly, because you just get the best like out of the situation. Okay, okay, here's right. back here. Exactly, yep. And really, Fried Rice's biggest out here is just abusing that recovery. Like, this, this character, he needs to get Pyramither off stage and just, like, totally obliterate them off stage. Ascent, all you really have to do, I feel like, against Smith or Pyra is outplay the double jump. Where's the whiff punish? He set himself up in the air, not able to get a powerful punish, but the lingering hit of that forward smash will catch the normal getup. That's exactly what he needed to. Like, okay, I made a mistake here. Okay, A doesn't work. Plan B in action and actually rewards himself with the stock. And now look at this, tacking on the quick 21. I like that answer. You understand he's going to use those blades, try and come in swiftly. Let me drop down, throw a thunder to intercept that. Very smart. Didn't get it on the second attempt, but still 42% of the attack on. Make it 58 and still climbing right now, Charles. This is the opportunity Fried Rice has been looking for. Okay. And I yeah, feel like say, when's Pyra coming back. I feel like right now a lot of players when they're fighting versus Mithra Pyra, they they respect uh, they respect Mithra side B way too much. Like I'm gonna give an example. If Mithra side B's to the ledge, like Fox has enough time to just shield by the ledge, drop shield down smash, and hit 
Mithra for doing her side B to ledge. Because it really? doesn't snap. There's a lot of hang time. Right. So I'm pretty sure Pika could, like, shield there, um, let the side B go off, and then just drop shield down. So obviously not as good as a drop shield down smash from Fox. But still, just, like, I, I just feel like a lot of people don't know how to punish that. And, oh, that was so... If he kept charging the forward smash, that would have been it. Has been the knockout blow, but not quite yet. Getting a second lease on life, 110 right now for Kanaji. Oh, gets, <gasps> oh no! Oh, but he fell out. He didn't get the, he didn't get the final glancing blow. Oh my oh, God, bro! Just, that's it. Oh, okay. So Pyra is heavier than Mithra. So right yes. there, Mithra would have gotten KO'd. Who barely avoided thunder using the switch as an air dodge instead, but the Mithra's yeah. out. You're lighter now, and the up smash will KO. Probably would have KO'd Pyra as well, but. Tried to snatch him up with the dash grab, but Fried Rice was just up in the air, ready for that reversal. Jeez, that is such a... Oh my, it seemed like there were so many shifts and twists in the ending of that. Like that last 10 seconds, we weren't exactly sure who was going to come out on top. But it is Fried Rice getting the 2-1 advantage over Kanaji heading into this corp game. My goodness. I'm pretty sure that was Fried Rice's counter pick as well, right? Fried Rice's counter pick to Kalos? Or like, I'm assuming so because... Yes, Kanaji won he, game two. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Yep. So we'll Rice. see what counter pick we go to. Um, obviously, uh, Fried Rice's most popular counter pick was Kalos. So, you know, if you guys ever have to fight Fried Rice in tournament, you know what stage he really likes to go to. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I mean, obviously, not a secret for a Pikachu player, right? Um, we've seen many, many top level Pikachus opt to go to Kalos. Very, very strong stage for Pikachu. Um, very, very, uh, there's just a lot of benefits for Pikachu. Um, and we, we, we've kind of been talking about it, so I'm not going to be a broken record and repeat them. But y you all know, you all know, Pikachu kind of slaps on Kalos. Um, we'll see if we still have the Mithra Pyra. No, the snake is coming out for Kanaji, and it might be one of the reasons why the snake might be coming out is. You know, he, he does have this counter pick coming into game four, right? I was going to say, luxury. yeah. You get this, you kind of get, yeah, that luxury, kind of like a, a comfort pick of sorts. So, okay, let me go ahead and just run it with my snake. And then you also have the thing where you had um, Fried Rice get accustomed to just kind of playing against um, Myra, uh, Mithra, excuse me, Mithra and Pyra, like the entirety of this set, right? So right now yep. you throw him a little bit of a curveball with the snake, which you're also equally, if not more, talented with uh maybe we just had some concerns about the matchup itself but this could very well be the surprise factor that gets us to a fifth game yeah yeah and i mean you, if you guys did join us in the very very beginning of this set you did see that uh kanaji is actually a snake main so mm -hmm. the mentor fire is a secondary um hard to kind of I feel like it's pretty hard to commit, like, oh, hey, uh, my Mr. Oh. Pyro is my main, right? It's oh hard my. to commit. Wow, bro, shooting star combo, sending ass to space right there. Lord have wow. mercy. And see, that's another thing that's really strong against Pico. Now, um, I talked about this matchup earlier. If you go low, you just you have to respect the fact that Pikachu can knock you off and just spike you with the downer. Well, guess what? If you go high, Pikachu literally has like a vertical projectile that spikes you down and is a kill move. Like, what more can you ask for against a character like Snake, right? Where it's like you don't want to contest him when he's got the grenade coming down, but when you got a literal projectile just coming from the sky, you get him down. That's perfect. Facts, facts on facts, and wow, Fried Rice has really set himself up in this fourth game. Honestly, at this point, he can just kind of you know, slow it down, take his time here. Obviously, something you really uh, do prefer to do against Snake, who's just so good uh, with the setups and just really kind of taking control of the field via all those explosives uh, that he can place. It really just kind of hurts you where he wants to go. But Snake doesn't really have that luxury, Charles, when he's trailing like this, right? He has to make all the big plays to try and cut this first stock down that fried rice has been enjoying uh since this uh since this match began but that back air will finally put it to rest 69 percent on kanaji not too bad considering this is snake he's quite heavy but as we yeah. saw in that first stock man stocks can disappear a little quicker than you might expect oh yeah especially with pikachu being able to like just cover snake for going high um good stuff on Kan kanaji to get that drop kick back here to get the stock oh the down smash this shouldn't be it but this is great stage positioning he's gonna go high but we have the threat of thunder and there it is fried right it's gonna snipe him right out of the sky doesn't even drag him down just takes him off the top what a play, what an edge guard. Fried Rice just setting that up from the beginning. Now you see the T Jolt coming out, just really gonna make it difficult for Snake to contest. 
in neutral. So this really for fried rice, I mean, you couldn't have scripted it any better or asked to get a better position in what could, what is your closeout game right now. So Kanaji, all the pressure now falls on your shoulders to find a way to get in there and really just make up quite the deficit. Ooh, just comes through with the neutral air. Nicely done. Gonna leave a couple of those grenades up and then get the explosives flying. Oh my God, that up air was delicious. And just like that, 108 on fried rice. Nikita following, not gonna be able to connect. But that up hill sure as hell will. And we are not done yet, Charles. Oh yes, then that that kick came with the swiftness there. You can't, you saw him come out of the platform, and I was like, "Are you even on the ground?" But the up tilt was out. <laughs> he was ready with that. So really good stuff. The grenade trades all in favor of Snake here, even though the percentage is different. It's not the same. So I would say it's like pretty even right now, um, just because you know a couple, a handful of trades, and Snake's just back in this. And of course, you know Snake with rage, just an absolute comeback monster. About that, man. As we've already seen, like it was looking extremely grim, but just one beautiful sequence was all it took for Kanaji to keep his hopes alive. 112, but still he fights 74 for Pikachu. Okay, now if you're if you're fried rice, you're starting to get some second thoughts right now. Where are you going? Straight to the plasto, Kanaji pulling the trigger. Go figure, man. That was just insanity, bro. Did he? Sheesh. Did Fried Rice not hit him that last stock? Like, dude, that I, maybe, was like, maybe, crazy. Maybe a T-Joe. Maybe. maybe a T-Joe. Yeah, maybe, maybe a T-Joe, but dang. Kanaji just complete control of that last stretch of that game four. And now here we are again. Here we go again, EE. -E. We got a game five situation here. Two very great players. We saw the snake come through and it was looking a little wobbly, but Kanaji was able to pull through exactly at the last moment where he could have, honestly. It was just back to the wall. I've been keeping my eye on the chat. I see a lot of people want the rat exterminated, okay? Dang, all right. When you want an exterminator, all right? Snake's not a bad guy to call, okay? You got the guy who comes in with the, like, the little mouse traps or, you know, the gas or whatever. This guy has a goddamn bazooka, okay? I'm taking him every time. I got homeowner's insurance. I'm not worried about a hole in the wall. Just <laughs> get rid of the rats. That's it. That's it. Yeah. That's exactly what he's thinking right now. I don't think Snake. he's switching back. I think he's sticking with Snake. Yeah, I, I definitely I feel like he's sticking with Snake. Like, you played so damn well on that last stock, it would be a tragedy to just throw that momentum down the drain, right? Like, you're you're feeling your Snake right now, and I feel like you go into it, even though <laughs> the counter <laughs> pick could be rough. <laughs> yes. Counter yes. pick stage could be rough. We'll see where we're going here. It will be fried, fried rice's counter pick. It looks like Town and City is the pick here. Honestly, not looking too shabby here for Snake. All right, well, let's find out. Game number five. Weren't sure if we were going to get here based off how that last game was unfolding, but this Kanaji, just an absolute genius in his execution. Got to appreciate that. One of the, the great snake mains, clearly, that we have in this game, among others. But see if it'll be enough to carry him even further throughout this bracket. You guys are just tuning in for some reason randomly at late as it is uh <laughs> this Welcome. is the yeah right this is the smash world tour uh oceana edition getting to enjoy the talent out there in australia and new zealand so shout out to them yeah no, i definitely uh you know you know it's crazy um a consistent character we've seen this is now week two of the smash world tour online qualifiers uh this is the second snake we have in top eight of a region um we also had a snake qualify in mexico as well alan so um yeah. really sick to see all the different snakes all different styles i love how kanaji is like um, grabbing the grenade then shooting a nikita off and then like Ooh, usually wow. after nikita wow, the dash tag is gonna get the ko there I definitely not an option we see kanaji opt for it too much well it was so good because he stopped for half a second right he knew he was gonna be able to just kind of catch exactly where it was going yeah, just and like it that. Did, oh, not, whoa, no. did not disappoint. Okay, okay if they if he connected with that, that might have been a wrap. Oh my god, could not see he's not wow. necessarily getting the follow-up he wants, but he knows where fried rice is going. So keeping that in mind, I uh, kind of inside his head a little bit here. 168. Gonna do some mix-ups. Yep, a couple clean B reversal to get him back to the stage very, very safely. Keep an eye on that C4. If you are fried rice, you certainly need to. Go for the up throw, and he's gonna go for a ride. That will take care of that first stock. What an effort that took. 
Oh yeah, absolutely. Kanaji did not make it easy, and because of that, already 87% here on to Fried Rice, the down throw, and the, oh, the roll man. away is the second time he's gotten that off the down throw into the up tilt KO. Kanaji just knowing exactly where Fried Rice wanted. Well, that just surprised me because in that situation, like, I almost would expect you to anticipate he's going to go forward because he's thinking, okay, that's the only safe place you think you can go, right? Like, I'm actually surprised. Right. Uh, he was able to get that follow-up, but kudos, hats off to Kanaji. And now, right now, these trades are only benefiting Snake, I assure you. This is not where Pikachu wants to be. He could very well be in the last moments of his tournament run. Yeah, and these Thunders are not hitting as much as they were in the previous games. That was a very, very big deal for uh, Fried Rice getting these high recoveries from Snake. And, I mean, Kanaji is just abusing that. We see him go high every single time, and he's wrecking up so much damage. Can... Fried Rice keeps the dream alive to stay in this tournament right now, and Kanaji is just saying no. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that Kanaji is thinking, all right, I pretty much got this one wrapped up. I'm one solid hit away. However, one hit away from tying things up. So the stocks right now, even, however, the percent's telling a different tale. Quite the discrepancy on the part of Pikachu, able to survive that false finish. Nikita not going to be enough, but I can't imagine, Charles, another hit from Snake will not put this game to rest unless... Are we going to make a play? Are we going for broke right now? Fried rice! You got to hit the thunder. Oh, he... <laughs> <laughs> you went for the thunder, but... Got oh, him. Just let it go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even... Usually, you need to be at that 160 mark for the up combo. Mm -hmm. Right, right, but he does, he can go into forward tilt and it's mm -hmm. guaranteed and it will kill some certain characters at the edge right there. Like we saw that set up at certain percentages, it's all, there's a snake chart out there, you, you can find it. But yeah, essentially, really, really good stuff from Kanaji, really just understanding that he could go for the forward tilt, he'll get the KO, just end ending the game right then and there. No more second chances and Kanaji just closing that out so clean. All right, let me pay y'all, hold on, choose outcome, Kanaji, oh. there you go. <laughs> there you go. The payouts. There you go. There you go. The EE -E Stimmy. The EE -E Visu Stimmy. There I you got go. you, boys. There you go. The stimmy hits, man. <laughs> stimmy wow. always hits. No doubt. Hey, but you know what? I got a hats off and nothing but respect uh, for Fried Rice. Came in here unranked hype. Just Dude. doing damage, bro. Had a hell of a run. What a run. Gave Kanaji a run for his money, even down to the wire. Uh, to get to that game five situation. So uh, respect to both players, but Kanaji will be advancing. And that'll uh, bring us up for our losers finals next. So we out here just kind of doing the damn thing, boys. Hi, everybody. Oh, yeah. Hell, yeah. And like like you said, just shout outs again to Fried Rice. Like, even if someone thought, like, the upsets in the beginning of the bracket were all flukes, you, you just you can't, you can't say anything. Fourth place. Just an amazing run, very sure. clean Pikachu. We saw so many like loops and um, platforms extension, just really clean on the combo game and very clean at like just setting up those thunder situations and man, just again, really, really good run. But it looks like we're probably going to have some dark pit action once again. I mean, I know when me and you got on the mic, we had that winner's finals dark pit ditto. So we I really up, want man. to see more. <laughs> I want to see more. It was, a, it was really fun to watch. Yeah, for sure. That's how we open things up. All right. But I uh, got to give a shout out, of course, to the homies over there at Couch Warriors. Check them out at CouchWarriorsLeague.com. Uh, really just kind of like become an official staple as far as like online, offline type beats go. And um, honestly, for being in a situation we are and just wanting that good community growth and, uh, you know, organizations that can kind of foster that, got nothing but love and respect for them. So make sure you check them out right there and give them a follow on a Twitter as well at Couch Warriors. They and I would appreciate it. But guys, do not go anywhere because on the other side of this break, we have our losers finals coming up for you. We'll see you momentarily. Stay tuned.
Hello, everyone, and welcome back. We are going to get right back into the bracket. Of course, we are coming up on Losers Finals, which is going to be Ichigo versus Kanaji. Um, we've had such an exciting top eight so far, yep. and I'm glad that we're casting it because it's just it, it's obviously like viewing it something. But like when you when you when you get to cast it, it just feels a little different. -y. It does feel a little bit different. It feels really good, too, because um, Oceana has not disappointed uh, just honestly in just not even like just the hype, but just like the intensity, like they're so aggressive. Uh, we're seeing like some unorthodox things, like for instance, like in, if you didn't see it in Winners Finals, we had a dark pit ditto. It was insane. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like we've seen some really clean play uh, between Snake. We've seen uh, Pyramithra obviously make appearances. Pikachu, Rob, like just some really fun characters that have certainly delivered on all fronts. And that's not going to stop anytime soon because as Charles said, um, we are going into our losers finals. Ichigo versus Kanaji. Kanaji, he has been on uh, a little bit of a tear here running through this losers bracket, but could that be halted right now? Going up against Ichigo, who you have to imagine, Charles, is very eager to get another shot at Ray's, who sits in Grand Finals, just chilling. Yeah, and I, I keep wondering if uh, Kanaji's main is Snake, because we've definitely seen more of the Pyra and Mithra. I mean, it was, like, kind of close, but I feel like we've seen a lot of Mithra Pyra uh, coming out from Kanaji. So Fair. definitely wouldn't be surprised if we see a game one here, but it was the tried and true Snake that clutched them out of that last set, right? Couldn't agree with you anymore. And you got to wonder if the snake has the hot hand coming into this. I mean, you could argue that Pyramithra was just more so because, you know, okay, Pikachu could be a little bit of a problematic matchup for snake. But it looks like, no, he's going to start off the same way that yeah. we saw him in the last exchange. Pyramithra is going to be leading the front. So we'll see what Ichigo has in store for this. No Dark yeah, Pinto right now. You got a different look. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, no cap. That was like the funnest set of the night for me that that dark fit did it was fire like it was it, it was, was so really fun Absolutely. so fun to watch but of course um you know mithra and pyra also bring the hype uh both of them or i mean both of these characters really are just gonna have that combo game you know pretty much unlocked for that potential here at around that zero to fifty percent but now we're getting those two pieces we're getting pyra online here and um i just again i just feel like for for kanaji it feels like he's more comfortable on the pyra yeah, that has kind of been the trend, right? A little bit of the theme and the action that we've seen when he is piloting these characters. And, you know, obviously it usually tends to be the other way around. You just see, you know, sometimes Pyro just sitting there for just getting those good closing blows. But uh, don't get it twisted. I mean, if you're okay, you know, to compensate and deal with the lack of speed, like, that is still a very powerful character that can take stocks when you might least expect it. But stocks right now being sniped out, those arrows unforgiving to that very... Uh, I'm trying to think of a nice word for that recovery without saying BS, you know? So oh, oh, it. that that recovery, yeah, it's, yeah, that recovery. I, I believe the word Basuda. you're looking for is trash. Yeah, trash. It's okay, yeah, it's trash. It's very, very yeah. trash recovery. Um, yeah. It's it's just so, it, it really just comes down to the double jump and like if you have an answer to Mithra's side B, and if you do have an answer to Mithra's side B, like we saw with those arrows, it's pretty much shut out because Mithra's will usually double jump to set up that situation. Like these characters recoveries aren't that bad if they're hit off stage on more of like a higher angle, right? But their vertical vertical recovery is just so bad. God, yeah, at least much to be desired uh, to say the least. Maybe kind of like almost, you know, uh, sort of like a check and balance for these characters. Oh, how goodness. strong they can be on stage, but on stage or off stage, it doesn't really matter. Ichigo having no problem dispatching the two stocks, finally losing his first one, but still gonna enjoy a nice little lead that as you can see, Kanaji hoping to chip in there. And now they're just kind of trading blows back and forth. Nobody not necessarily getting the advantage so far on this particular stock, but the lead obviously in favor of Ichigo. Oh, hold on, sit him down Ooh, with Pyra. Thought yeah. he had something there. Try to maybe get a potential air dodge read there with that forward smash. Very zealous, but I mean, um, honestly, kind of needs some some big play, right? And I, I just feel like whenever Kanaji is in this situation with the uh, Pyra and Mithra, like just incredibly behind, it is the Pyra that feels like kind of bails him out of those situations where he's kind of turned the tides. Going back. Drag down oh, onto wow. the platform, the extension, but the back air doesn't follow the DI. The up air tries to go high there, but there it is falling out of that Pyra up B and just really giving Ichigo another chance to continue this pressure. Yeah, no seriously. forward smash. Oh, Not at all. Wow. This is. Oh, 
Okay, oh, no. yeah, I was gonna say the footstool would have at least maybe tried to set up a nice follow-up, but that not gonna be an op option that presents itself. And right now it is all Ichigo all the time. Ooh! <laughs> Oh my god. Where you are you? The air dodge to bro. the platform, the what? traps, the setups, that was so clean what coming out on? from Ichigo and what a what a stock to end it off that game number one versus Kanaji. Uh might need to be uh calling in Snake right now. I don't know what the radio signal is, but you, you might need him pretty quick for this game number two. Get those communications back online, okay? We need some goddamn help down here right now, bro. <laughs> my lord. Dark Pit just putting on a show, opening yeah. things up with an incredibly dominating performance here in Losers Final. So that was the first game. I got, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of with you, man. I gotta imagine that the snake is, is due to make an appearance any moment. Yeah, yeah, I, I think so too. Um, like maybe he doesn't like this matchup particularly, which is why we saw game one. Maybe he was just experimenting with Pyramithor game one. But yes, there it is. The main is coming out for Kanaji and on the counter pick as well. So definitely um, not the greatest start to the set, obviously, but still have a lot of wiggle room. You're definitely not down 0-2. So. All right. Let's get it. All right, Pokemon Stadium 2 one. is the pick. All right, gonna pretty much go to like one of the more uh, neutral stages in the game. I mean, I, I feel like a lot of this is probably the most common place to like start a, a game. So fairly neutral grenade will actually save Snake there, breaking up that combo. And that's that's the thing about Snake grenades, man. They're so good in so many situations, right? Neutral, you know, just even just when you're getting comboed, you can just pull them out. Just really just stop a bunch of nonsense that's happening to you. Oh, for sure, man. Now, those grenades so many times, like, you'll see snakes always make sure they got one out there or at least next to them because they know against those combo-heavy characters, that's going to be a saving grace. And as you pointed out, yes, it's something that kind of broke up uh, what was taking place earlier on on this first stock. But nonetheless, we're looking pretty close. Well, watch that ledge trap, and Kanaji does it incredibly well. Always making you second guess where you're going, but you already know where he's heading, Charles, right into the blast zone. Getting caught up by that C4. Excellent placement and execution as well. That is probably like as a player is like the most irritating thing because it's like it's so common, it's so simple, but just that double jump bait, right? Like uh snake's coming down, he lays the C4 and you're like, oh I'm gonna get you, and it's just like double jump out, then detonates it, and like you're literally right at the C4, right? It's uh it's so simple, it's a mix up that's been been used for so long every even since brawl um one thing to note though that arrow um i think we saw this matchup a little earlier and uh we've seen ichigo get kills off the top with the arrow snipes um coming upward and i believe even like the horizontal arrow i don't know if you have to charge it so much but i think i saw it hit snake off the cypher so having a projectile like that mm -hmm. that's like that quick that'll hit snake off the cypher is very very strong I'm um, obviously going to be limited in the amount of control because you are Dark Pit over Pit, who has like a lot more controls over your arrows. So, very interesting. I do want to see some of that arrow usage come into play. Um, maybe we'll see it a little later on this game here. But yeah, so far, I mean, just really, really close here. And Ichigo kind of clawing his way back here in this deficit. Oh, man. But I, I was going to, you were talking, I was going to yeah. say, like, I don't know if he's seeing me <laughs> right there, man. Oh my goodness, Kanaji, this snake pick not disappointing by any means thus far. My man Ichigo just trying to find the answer. It's like, okay, I have to put my hands on him real quick, but I gotta make sure I'm doing it where there's just no grenade present. And this opportunity right now when you got him having to come back to the stage. No, gonna get back safely. Love that dash attack as well. Nikita, and look, watch out. Always look at the placement, always has the grenade. And that right there kind of stopped Ichigo. Uh, from landing sooner, which could have gave him a little bit of uh, a, some time to strike, but no, always with the solid cover. That has been the difference maker, but up air should seal it off, and yes, that will be it. Yeah, good stuff here. I, I feel like Ichigo getting a little bit more acclimated with these grenades. I, I would say like some of the decisions he makes around them mm -hmm. aren't the best. And he's definitely uh, not the greatest at keeping track of C4. C4 is how he lost stock one and two. Yep. You got to be really aware of that. Obviously, very demanding. <laughs> it's not an easy thing to do. Trust me. <laughs> I'm keeping track of like all the <laughs> explosives and even like things like up smash and stuff like that. And then on top of that, you got the C4. And he's also being able to be reverse all this. There's a lot going on. So definitely it is a tough thing to do, but you're going to have to do it. That extra jump, save him for the C4. And even the orbiters are going to shield him from that aerial. They're really good stuff staying alive here. 
Yeah, I think you argue too. It's like exacerbated by the fact that like he knows he has to kind of approach. He has to play the catch up game at one thirty one. Mm -hmm. So that's just something that Kanaji. Let's look at the way he just maneuvers, man. These B reversals are just so sensational, and it can be a little disoriented too because you're like, okay, well I'm, I'm counting down. I know how much time some of these grenades have on them, but if I make one error, I'm just getting popped up and put myself in an even worse predicament. Right there, feel like that was the time to strike. Tried to force it with the forward smash and all. Kanaji knowing he has to do is just shield and retaliate with a very clean up tilt to get himself on the board and tie us up one apiece. Yeah, Kanaji definitely had uh, the lead the entire time, but if that forward smash connected, I, I don't think Kanaji would have been dead, but he would have been in a really, really bad position, and Ichigo definitely could have potentially capitalized off of that and sealed out that game for himself. So still, still very, very competitive, and yeah, I mean, this set is just back and forth um we see K kanaji bringing in the snake and it's doing mad work for him so super glad about that um i don't think we'll see ichigo go a different character but i definitely think a stage uh counter pick will be a big deal for him Ready? Go. Whew. chuck does it feel like 2 a.m to you i don't know i'm i'm not i'm not feeling wind i'm, I'm not just gonna sip I'm this coffee chilling. and keep talking <laughs> Fair enough, my man Coffee Master over there, baby. Let's see who's going to be the master of a small battlefield making an appearance in this set. Nope. Yeah, these, these platform extensions are going to be phenomenal for uh, Ichigo. Um, he did have access to them on PS2, but these platforms on small battlefield, you have the same platform layout, but the platforms are a little bit bigger. So they're going to be a little bit more consistent in that regard. Trying to get the air dodge trap with the arrow up. I like that idea. You know, you only have one air dodge. So um, just really burning those resources from afar and being able to like close the distance to get a punish afterwards. Very, very good strategy in general, like against all characters, especially good against Snake. Air dodge it back, smart stuff. And then just trying to put some space between them. Able to do just that. All right, here comes that grenade play. Oh, yeah, really which one really is he throwing at you, right? Playing, like like you said, the way Kanaji is setting it up and also just kind of like baiting him to think like oh yeah you're safe around there for my grenades but you forgot about that c4 on that platform there but there's the throw mix up i was talking about earlier when uh when we had that you know dark pit diddle just some of the buffs that pit got and that throw mix up that 50 50 is gonna do wonders for ichigo and keeping everything mm, close but geez. catches the double jump put the feet on bro for real yeah Kanaji, and kanaji's ledge trapping game is insane yeah, and and it, it kind of like I, I feel like it like is a one of the bigger reasons is his grenade control. The way he controls his grenades, the way he like it feels like he's mixing up which grenade he's throwing at you, and like even just because it feels like that, that you already know that's threatening, right? Like the fact that you're like it's he's making something that's already kind of hard to do, like keeping track of both grenades even harder. That's just something to be you know very aware that is very strong as a player to do, and. Yeah, I mean, it's just so back and forth. Both of these players, look at how close the percentage is. It's crazy, too. And it's really interesting to see, like, how close it is because a lot of the times, just because of, like, how the grenades are situated and just, like, the explosion and stuff like that, it seems like Kanaji should be, like, overwhelmingly in the lead, right? But that's just not the case. Ichigo is still going toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. He wants to have an opportunity to maybe get rid of that stock. 149, so stake on brawl time. That air dodge going to uh -oh. be very, very costly. Be careful. Don't let, that, don't let the Cypher take you out, bro. Oh, my God. So he escapes the up smash, but Kanaji with the wherewithal to just trap him forward a little bit and connect with the up tilt. Great awareness on his part. The fact that was a punish, like, actually makes me angry. <laughs> like, that is, like, tell him, Chuck, tell him. What? That was so crazy. The scoop hitbox doesn't combo into the explosion. You feel like you get out and then the foot is there. The up tilt covers it anyway. And you almost would rather get hit by the up smash than the up tilt at that point, right? Uh, at least the at least the first seems like it was it was warranted. The second was just like, well damn, I like where the hell you want me to go? Yeah, yeah. And again, that just really goes to show how ready Kanaji is for almost every situation like how you know like that's such a weird situation to be ready for but he was ready with that dash follow-up no but the up air, when the cross-up di he gets the ko off the top wow okay like did I'm not really expect standing. that to kill but ichigo must have soaring up 2-1 now in losers finals my goodness that was so good because you even saw the drift 
at the very end. Kanaji starts the or um Ichigo started the up air and waited a little bit, just gave it a little bit of a stagger and then drifted to the left. So Kanaji thought he was gonna be on the left side, but be because Ichigo drifted to the left, he ended up on the right side, which is why you saw the DI just go straight up there. If that in that honestly, that's a situation where you could probably just hold down or do no DI and probably live because you know pits up there in that situation probably is only going to kill with a cross up so very like very intricate niche situations happening there and i just love the fact that ichigo went for that cross up because it could just go for the, like it can take the stock right it, it can really just you know catch someone off guard yeah there's no negativities to it essentially right like yeah e will you take a paternity test all right you're done <laughs> <laughs> oh man, we are definitely entering DGen hours. So again, like I've we had said enough, earlier, LT. I gave you some chances <laughs> to calm it down, and you keep talking. <laughs> but if you guys have been sticking around with us for this long, thank you guys so much. Uh, obviously, it is a world tour, so we're gonna have some crazy different time zones, right? You know. But I, like, like I said, I've been having so much fun watching uh, just Oceana play because the, the play styles are just so aggressive. And even just mm -hmm. the characters we have, the character diversity in this top eight has been so fun to watch. Not about that, man. It has definitely been something that has not disappointed. Kind of in a lot of ways, like what we saw last week, too, uh, over there in Mexico. So definitely draw a couple of parallels for sure in the way things have really broken down. But... It is really all or nothing right now for Kanaji to keep his tournament hopes alive in this one. He's been exceptional uh, in the way he has really done a good job of controlling the stage and kind of the flow. Ichigo, though, he has found ways to weather the storm time and time again to put himself on set point right now, eager to take care of business in this fourth game. And I got to imagine, Charles, after what we saw in that second game, probably keeping more of a closer eye on where that C4 could potentially be working. Yeah, yeah, and I, I'm actually very interested. The up air will connect there. <laughs> Dude, hold on. I just have to say, he had both grenades on the right side as well as the C4. Yeah. Like, Where'd Ichigo you go? had nowhere to go but up, and Kanaji just knew that. Oh, my God. So, and yeah, he, he also had the C4 over there, too. Like, the way it, it look at this ledge trapping is he just came in on his second stop. What? Ha what? <laughs> He's already just. Whoa, the footstool. <laughs> what is. Dude, okay. This thing is. This deck is so deep, dude. What like, in tarnation, bro? Seriously. Oh my lord. He's like really worried. fast too. Like how? And then like one grenade drops low, one stays on the stage. Are, are is he doing this on purpose? This is crazy. You can't tell me this isn't calculated. I could never replicate it, but goddamn sure respected Nikita bouncing him off the side of FD and right into the blast So, Oh, put him okay. down. Is that okay. your problem? Lord have mercy. <laughs> Dude, okay, very similar to uh, very similar to Mario. If if a Mario is forward airing a lot, they they're just feeling themselves. And the same applies to Snake. Very similar forward airs. The, if you see a Snake just forward airing like that, they are just like they are in full like combo mode. Seriously, like bro. they just want the clip, dude. Kanaji is something special right now. We are being treated to a performance at the moment in this fourth game, and I gotta say, it's looking very very likely that a game five much deserved is certainly on the horizon. Okay, get back there, picking some aggressive options. Okay, I like the fact that Ichigo, even though he's down, still not shying away from the action. 136, he knows one strong straight hit a snake could potentially take off this stock, but still he continues to put up yeah, a fight. This, this counter pick is working so well for Kanaji. I thought, I was like, at first I was thinking like, oh man, where is he going to put his C4 now because he was using it on the platform, but who needs any platforms? Look at this dominating game number four coming out from Kanaji, and whew, you got uh, you got to be sweating if you're Ichigo, right? Coming into this game five, um, having that much momentum on your side, where do you take him? It sure ain't going to be final, I'll tell you that. That's true. Yeah, that's, that's, one, that's one run back we're going to avoid for the rest of this set. Uh, maybe I'll catch you next week somewhere at a local, yeah. okay? But right now, we're going to have an opportunity to take him somewhere. You're going to be a little more comfortable on. Um, however, I do not imagine that we're going to see Pyro and Mithra again at all. So wherever you go, keep in mind, you're going to have to be dealing with a very potent and uh, clearly seasoned snake. Yeah, and I, I didn't think the uh, the platforms not being a 
factor in that last match would make that big of a difference, but apparently it did. Not having those combo extensions um, opened up to you because there's no platforms on FD, right, is a, is a pretty big hit for the combo game for Pit and Dark Pit. And I, I think we like kind of felt it there, right? Like there yeah. Ichio got sure. those openings, but he didn't get those extensions that really like even if it only does a little bit more damage, you gotta think stage positioning wise too, right? Especially if you're fanning him to those like side platforms, then getting a follow up after that. Like even just damage positioning wise, even just like confidence, right? Like sometimes you just do a hype combo right and you just you know you, you it's a little saucy right you just get that little confidence boost that, that's also nice too so um definitely we're probably going to go to a stage with platforms i'm assuming we're probably not gonna, it's not going to be anything like kalos more like I'm, I'm trying to think like platforms more towards center stage maybe even a smashville pick here find out no need to wait game five no, okay, okay. Yes. Okay. Yep. Yes, two. No. all right here we go guys who do you got do, what do you foresee taking place okay will it this be kanaji one. the legendary snake main incarnate or perhaps this dark pit warrior in ichigo does not have a secondary by the way who will be victorious who will meet rays in grand finals you're about to I'm about to find out that answer right now. I'll tell you what, just based off the first 30 seconds or so of this match right now, it's looking like Kanaji has a date with Rage, but I've never been one to doubt Ichigo. We've seen him make some comebacks before. No reason to think he can't do it again. Able to land safely, but look at that right there. You see Kanaji, he's just trying to stalk, okay? Just kind of bait him into going somewhere and just catch him off guard one time to finish off that stuff. Yeah, Kanaji always likes to set up the cook grenade and wow, the drop kick getting that first stock, not getting too much damage. I mean, it looked pretty grim for Ichigo, but it was like maybe he can avoid the kill hit, but man, Kanaji is able to sink the bear and find the stock. This is so huge for Snake. When you're able to play in a position like this for Snake, you are already you already know there's a smile on that Snake player's face. I'm saying, bro, Ichigo, very, very talented, incredibly skilled, but right now finds himself at a deficit. I'm sure he was not expecting the face so early on. Really gonna have to figure out a way. Okay, pops him up. Not gonna be able to get anything to really capitalize. And notice again, the grenades always so present. Even on uh, what it looked like, he was gonna that follow up off the throw to get the back air a few moments ago. Like the grenade interrupted that, right? It created a trade situation. So at any given point, it just seems like Kanaji just knows exactly what he needs to have at the right, uh, right place, right time. Oh yeah, absolutely. Ooh, barely oh, avoiding wow. the air, but <laughs> you're gonna run out of jumps eventually. You're gonna catch these feet and up we go. Ichigo now on his last stock. Kanaji still sitting pretty wow. with three and uh, there's snake stocks at that, man. Like, you know what is... the crazy thing about this is? Like this is the best practice you could want going into Grand Finals because you know what Ray's has that has been so dominant for him. It's the same damn character. And this is the performance you're delivering in game five about to go against potentially another dark pit. Now he does have other characters. That is something to keep in mind, but how right. tuned up and fresh will they be? That's, you know, or tuned up and ready to go is the question when they're coming in fresh like that. There's still a lot of unknown variables. Now I'm not trying to go ahead and just skip past this match. I know it's still possible for Ichigo to bring this one back, but it, it's gotta start somewhere. And he has just kind of been pinned down. Like, really, his offense has just not been a thing. Look at that. All right, yeah. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop myself from going towards the C4, but the big boot's still going to put on a ton of damage. And that oh, is all she rolled. Uh, Steph yeah. Curry with the assist, bro. That day was like, damn. go ahead, baby. Get that triple dub. Yeah, Nasty. and that was off the second grenade being set up at the same time. And he had the awareness to react, get that finishing blow. What a clean, clean snake game coming out from Kanaj. Uh, but wow, I'm like, it's it's just like, it was so clean and like, it was just so dominating, right? Kanaji just didn't let up the gas and it really just felt like he had center stage control the entire game. And Ichigo just could not get anything started. His offense completely shut down. Yeah, dude, that was, that was about as, as nasty as you're gonna as you're gonna see. And and you if you're Kanaj, you couldn't one, you couldn't want a better losers run. Two, better you couldn't want better like just a warm-up and just a confidence builder heading into what you're about to face here in grand finals up against Rays. And I'll be honest, as good as Rays is, the way Kanaji is playing, I would not be surprised if we get a bracket reset and we end up with two sets instead of one.
Yeah, Kanaji feels like he's getting better as the tournament's progressing. Like, his movement seems to be, like, faster. He, like, the setups seem like faster it's just crazy and all these setups it just either does like a buttload of damage or he's just getting the ko out of it and he's just knowing exactly where to put his up so he's playing so damn good facts on facts my man so hey guys have it if you've been with us from the jump since we hopped on our block you already know uh, what raise is about he won winners finals earlier in the dark pit ditto so he's been kind of chilling and just waiting for his opponent which you see here is kanaji only been around since 2019, but what an impact this young man is certainly having on this tournament that we're seeing at the Smash World Tour. Secondaries including uh, Pyra and Mithra, which we've seen a little bit of, but I gotta imagine the Snake is certainly gonna be the opener. I would be stunned to see otherwise. On the other side though, my man Raze, obviously maining the Link, but it's found a lot of success at this tournament with the Dark Pit. Will that continue to be the theme or could Link be making an early appearance as well? All those questions, Charles, and so much more are going to be answered in just a few moments. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I really want to see after. I feel like if you're raised and you saw Losers Finals, uh, I think the leaks link is coming out for game one. But but we'll see. We'll see. It's a uh, it's a toss up. Um, you know, Raze did win the Dark Pit Ditto, which did go to game five. Very exciting uh, winner's final set. If you guys didn't catch that, make sure to check out the VODs on that one really good really good set yep. but yeah um if we do see link snake there are some interesting interactions so links uh links down b his bomb will detonate off of like any fire move so a lot of snakes like grenades and stuff like that they count as fire so they can detonate that bomb um so we'll see we'll see if we get that matchup though i think link snake will be a very fun matchup to watch all right well you think i believe it's pretty much that a simple chat the predictions are going to wait hold on are the predictions up or are they paying out right now i think the predictions are up. okay never mind making sure man if i gotta drop it myself i don't mind doing a little casting and modding just let me know <laughs> let me know i got y'all covered it's all good it's all love Whew. man it's been, it's, it's kind of crazy that we've uh it's kind of crazy that we've actually like been up this late and still yeah. like this energy level right like yeah I'm, yeah it's it's I'm, it it's fun it's a lot of fun yeah. games to uh i feel, watch I feel fantastic honestly i feel fantastic yeah. honestly and i think the thing that at least for me like you always call me a nutcase because i stay up to like four or five a.m anyway and then wake up at like 10 mm -hmm. yeah this is just this is normal hours to me yeah true definitely <laughs> but like, even even like to be fair like even coming to this part of the night having this much energy that's like hard to do and even for like the players right being able to have that like stamina and be able to play in the bracket for so long it's uh it, i've definitely seen players run out of gas so um but both of these players definitely don't look like they're slowing down any time soon but here it is we're gonna kick things off and it looks like race is going with the dark hit but bro, how did we end up on FD? Have you yeah. seen what Kanaji's been doing on this stage? <laughs> did you watch the last set, Ray? Any? Oh, okay. Wow. I am surprised to see that FD was what we ended up striking to. But you know what? That you know, maybe that just kind of goes to show what Ray's is thinking, like how confident he is in himself. He's like, look, right. I'm not like Ichigo is a great player, but I'm not the same. Okay, I'm in Grants for a reason. Let me show you what that reason is. He's in control oh, right like now. You see? Ooh, look at the struggle hits. from Kanaji trying to land, bro. Yeah, ooh, the drag down. Wow, getting it into the explosion, trying to hunt down for the kill here. Right up into the run-up grab. The upper almost connects, and he's lining up this downer. No, the bear, but it doesn't connect. Instead, he gets hit by Kanaji's bear. Oh, no. Okay, able to go for this double double hammer. Double oh, ho, 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 Kanaji. Dang. Great anticipation, and that C4 just happened to be in the right spot. Seems to be a little <gasps> bit of a theme for him, right? He used a grenade to recover as well, and absolutely, yes, he just... And it's funny, because Ray's did a double roll into it, right? Like, the way, where Kanaji is placing these downbees is just so spot on, and he's getting the KO for it, too. Okay, that forward smash, he definitely wanted dash stack. Um, that's, like, a pretty common input for that. Uh, but nonetheless, still racking up this damage. Already 60% on the raise in the corner. And we've seen this corner pressure. We've seen this ledge trapping setup coming out from Kanaji. It is definitely nothing to soft at. 
Yeah, really honestly, there's kind of just nothing new at this point, as we've seen so many times. Okay, Raze. Seems like oh. when Raze, knowing he gets Kanaji up in the air, tries to exploit that, that grenade, though, causing all kinds of havoc. Oh, and what a maneuver! Just wow. goes past Dude, the little he lined shield. That up. Exactly. He lined it up. It's like, I'm going to drop this straight on your head, and that's all there is to it. Kanaji. Wow. Exploding out the gate. Oh my god, bro. That Z drop with the grenade, too. How does this man do it? I hate to sound like a fanboy, but I'm just so enamored and impressed with just the way he controls this character right now. Oh, absolutely. Even like like you said, with the uh, oh, he's gonna get sniped. No, um, that definitely would have been a KO, but the up air follow up anyway. So, again, Ray's kind of showing off that dark pit vertical pressure on the high recovery. And we talked about it earlier, right? Just um, if you could, if you have vertical pressure like that, it, it's very strong against Snake, particularly because he likes to go in that general area. And oh, we got the drag down too, but you have to be really careful with pummels whenever you're comboing Snake like that. You usually don't want to do a pummel just in case he pulled out a grenade. Grenade is a frame one option, so it is uh, one of the few frame one options in this game you've got to be aware of. And there are going to be like little niche situations like that where you get a grab combo, but sometimes a grenade can come out, right? So you don't pummel, don't detonate it. Um, but nonetheless, it is tick for tack. It is so close. Oh my goodness. I love the fact he was able to commit and go for that grab. Okay. Gonna get the Nikita kill there. Oh my goodness, knowing that he has to move that grenade. So many options Aye. being covered right now, but how are we gonna land safely? Be reverse away from danger. Look at yes, we are. Huh. <laughs> so, nice. so good. Okay, there's the tech oh, grab the roll. Patience. Such good patience by Ray's. Expecting the spot that gets it. This could be the difference maker. Oh <gasps> no, he tried to make a hard read, didn't quite get it. Yeah, wrong target there. <laughs> got the got the explosion, and there's the C4 setup. Don't take yep. your eyes off of it, because that could be the ending of this game. Number one, this is so close down to the wire. He's standing right on. Okay, okay, you got him. <laughs> oh, man. oh wait, the pummel, and is that, that hit one. It. Yes, wow. yes. Well After over that. Down that could affirm range. Yep. Yeah, he he just did a couple extra pummels just to be sure. Mm -hmm. So really good on. Kanaji's part to, you know, that extra insurance can never go wrong. And that was such a close game, number one. I can see the set going either way, but I feel like we're going to see these two characters the entire set. I, I don't know. I just have a feeling. Hmm. I don't know. I feel like I feel like at some point, Ready? I feel like at some point, Link's going to make an appearance. The Link, Maybe if Link it ends up getting sent to a second set, but I could, you know, yeah, I definitely think he's going to, He's gonna hold on to this dark pit as long as possible, but uh, then maybe again, I just really wanna see him. There's a couple different ways you can look at it. I'm not gonna lie. Okay? I would like to see him make an appearance at Grand Finals. I'm not gonna cap. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, we've seen so much of the dark pit too, right? So it's like, it's like crazy how many different characters we're watching, and even even Link definitely has so many unique tools that you can bring to the table for a character like Snake. But man, right now it's just Kanaji just has that perfect. Um, mix of just like oh i've got like my setup game and he knows exactly like when and where to throw the aerial not even just staying grounded with the tilts and i think that's what makes snake really hard is like when and where are you going to throw your areas because there's so much more control right and look at this you got to get through the minefield to get back to the center stage who gets the down air but able to is it nice. is it coincidence it. at this point <laughs> I, I don't really, when it comes to this guy, I'm not sure I really believe in coincidences, if that's fair to say. Right? Yeah. yeah. Like just, just just his execution alone has been something. Nicely done, okay, just takes his time, waits for the landing. It's like perfectly okay, you know, if we get a trade here, we get a trade. Oh my god, bro, he knew that grenade was in hand. That back there was so cleanly delivered. This is the kind of start that Raze needs to have and see if he can kind of capitalize off that. Yeah, and I love how raids, like, there's so many times where snakes will do that. They'll grab the grenade, go to ledge, and you'll sit there, wait for them, and then they can do, like, a normal get up while the grenade explodes. It's, like, you know, the week one stuff, but um, it's very effective. But I like how raids countered that with a trump. Like, I'm going to trump you, take away your intangibility, so now the grenade's a threat to you, right? Because it's right. about to blow up. So, beautiful counterplay coming out from raids, and we saw so much damage that he got, but is it all going to be for naught? He can't get this stock off, and right now, um, Kanaji just has so much rage and still surviving. Can he get the snipe with the arrow? Doesn't look like it. And how many B-reverses are we going to get all the way down here? Still sitting at a 100. Oh, now 78. 
Bam, oh. yep. Second time's the charm on that one. Nicely done. All right, Those Robin arrows. Hood. I'm saying, bro. We out here? We ain't talking about that crappy app either. <laughs> <laughs> throw that out there real quick, man. Coming back, we live it. Ooh, down is okay. You're really disruptive here, Raze. We connect. Yep. Cool. And he re he's in love with that Nair, I must say. Yeah, and this is crazy. We're on we're on final destination again. Really, um, Ray's. I, I feel like Ray's kind of low key flexing over here. Like, oh hey man, uh, hey Ichigo, you weren't able to close it out on this stage. Let me show you how. It's done. <laughs> Gets right to the point, pretty much, right? Yeah, yeah, and I mean he's he's doing a fantastic job. But wait a minute, never sleep on Kanaji. Look at this, just like that. It's a matter of seconds already in the lead. The kicks are coming out, and these aerial placements. I just have to point it out again because they're so on point. They are. Oh, the drag down, but he doesn't combo into the grab there. It's a huge tech chase. Oh, a sparks flying on that down air oh, as well. That man loves that down air, bro. And he is not disappointed. Okay, let's trap game. Let's see how efficient it is. Oh, nice enough. Catches him with the dash attack. And maybe trying to rinse the repeat. There are so many things going on on that <laughs> left side of the stage. You don't even see that nair sending you into despair. Well done from Kanaji. That's going to be a 2 0 lead for him. Who put this man in losers? That that's a very very good question. Yeah, who because, put Kanaji in losers? Um, Chat, um, help me out. Dude, <laughs> it, he he's just playing like he's playing so fast, and I love how it's like. Look at all these projectiles. Look at all these projectiles. I'm kicking you in the face. Like it's so. He it was Rays. Rays did it. Wow. So the run back. So even right there, Dang. Kanaji. Not only having, uh, you know, the ability to just really take that loser's run momentum and carry it over, he's also fueled, right? Fueled by a little bit of vengeance here. And I think he's kind of delivering that and firing on all cylinders right now because Raze is looking like he's about to eat that 3-0 unless this game number three can go a little bit more in his favor. And look at that, Charles, right back to FD. Could stubbornness be playing a part of this one if you're Raze? It could. I'm looking at the bracket right now. They they fought each other in winner semis, and Raze did take it 3-1 over Kanaji in this specific matchup. So okay. definitely seeing some run back action, but it just feels like Kanaji is like kind of just clutching it out over Raze. You know, like uh, even that last game, Raze just looked like in control the whole time. That last stock, the one that matters the most, you just saw Kanaji turn up and just completely destroy him on that right. ledge trap on the left. Oh, okay, hold on now. We're good, we're Wait good, we're good. Wait a minute. Yeah, that Cypher got some distance, but playing around down there too long now. Yeah, and it, I, I feel like it really comes down to this. Can Raze, like, finish off his stock, right? That I, I feel like that's just been a thorn in his side. It's uh, He's doing really well in terms of neutral, the early game, the mid game, but when it comes to, like, time to close out my stock, uh, it's uh, Kanaji with very, very good defense. Very, very good DI and just really avoiding these snipes. We did see one horizontal double snipe last game, but hasn't been really able to snipe him off the top. Yeah, seriously. And really, like, you put that on top of the fact, like, it's just like, yeah, I mean, that, that point you make about closing out the stock is just so important because, okay, that should be, yes. But it's, it's just the reason it's really allowed, like, Kanaji, like, you let him hang around, you let Snake hang around too long, but like, you know it's inevitable that he's going to go ahead and just make up that damage deficit. Like, that's just not a problem that Snake has. Like, this character right. is really just be putting on the pain, and that's going to be an easy connection right there, bro. Not going to miss that flight. Kanaji got you covered. Yeah, just seamlessly getting the stock where it just feels like Raze has to, like, work so hard to get the certain specific situation, then finally gets that one move. And then, like, you just see Kanaji just set up some grenades to do, and it's like, oh, one blew up, and I was shielding, like, let me just up air you. <laughs> and you're dead. Finishing <laughs> yeah. it off the right way. And I, I will say this, like, Snake's, Snake's disadvantage is not the greatest, right? So definitely, um, it could kind of trail back more so on Rays, just like getting certain one of these situations and maybe playing a little bit too passive, right? Like you got a ledge trap, you're throwing out two arrows instead of like getting up there, getting in position to possibly get like an up smash or some, something going on. But Rays fading back, trying to catch these like really greedy, like high recovery, or they're not greedy, but like just high recoveries onto the stage. There's no platforms, right? So catching landings is a lot easier on final. Facts, 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 facts. Oh, chucking them off, all right. 
Making it back safely. Yes, okay. Able to avoid. Nice, a nice attempt by Raze. Oh my goodness. He'll get it on yes. the run back though. No need to time it. Just flick that C stick down. Take care of business. So Raze finally able to enjoy a very comfortable lead. Only 49%. Make it 63, but still in a very favorable position, I would say. Oh, absolutely. And I mean, I, I feel like he's been in this position before, aka last game. So um, again, he has control of um, of this game. He just has to play it really safe. Um, just really for Snake to kind of like try to apply aggressive pressure with this setup tool. It's still possible, but it is makes it a little harder for Snake here. Doesn't get that tech chase. That's a big W here for Raze. It seems like Raze, like the entirety of this match, at the very least, he's been more patient than I feel like the first two games. Absolutely. From what yeah. we saw, like, and that difference in patience can be such a game changer and really could be what he needs to get on the board. Not trying to get 3 0 into the loser side of things and have to run this all the way back. Give yourself an opportunity. Naji has proven to be a thorn in his side so many times throughout this grand finals. Oh, man. Safe Even you. Securely. Yeah, even using the Nikita to land. Oh, very beautiful forwarder to beat out the Nutrier. I feel like Rays might be catching on to some of these aerial approaches or these aerial setups. Um, the four, wow, does pop the grenade. Um, and look at all this percent. How many projectiles can I throw down? I'm saying, right? Like everything just coming down. Oh, yeah, oh. there's the pure reverse. And it, again, it can be hard to keep track of these grenades. And. We might be getting into this very spooky situation here. Uh, Max Rage on Kanaji. Oh no, oh, God, oh man, bro, this, this is, is this scary. is deadly. Yep, we we saw this sled trap, right? Mm -hmm. This sled trap game is so strong. Ooh, maybe, maybe a little bit of space, and it is enough. That arrow, that one arrow that just you know hit Kanaji a little bit back, so the pressure wasn't too overwhelming at the edge of the stage. Ray's able to squeeze through, get on the other side, barely get that back air. And I feel like, of course, the back air was the big deal, but the arrow is what set it up. The biggest setup that he might have had thus far throughout this tournament because it was looking it was looking grim for my guy. I'm not going to lie. Ray's has been sensational, but this tear that kanaji has been on since we've had him on throughout a couple of sets in this loser bracket has been damn near unstoppable. Uh, again, you couple that with the fact that he really wants to take out Ray's period, considering that's who put him in losers. Like, there's just kind of all kinds of elements that really just kind of build up and make this such an excellent and outstanding uh, grand final showdown. But Ray's able to get on the board. Needs to take two more in a row to secure the tournament. Meanwhile, on the other side, Kanaji's just thinking, okay, just one more to get to that reset, and I know anything can happen. So, will that take place here on Small Battlefield? Let's find out right now. Same characters. And I think you, I think your call earlier was right, Charles. I don't imagine there's gonna be any character swaps for both these guys. Yeah, um, it, it's it's like even like win or lose. Usually, like when you're just like looking out for character swaps in general, it's kind of like you want to see how comfortable the character or the players look on the character, right? Even if they lose, you, you I mean, and and you've competed as well. You know, so it's just like you, you kind of like know that feeling, right? Like you can yes. even see it in people's gameplay. And it just feels like both players just, uh, they, it looks like they're very comfortable. Win or lose. So yeah, exactly. I, I, and I that's just, the big thing right there that you said, win or lose. It's like, okay, well, I don't feel like I'm, even if I'm losing, I'm not getting blown out, right? Like I still believe I have a chance here. Right. And that's just having confidence in your character. That's honestly what that comes down to. And Ray's maybe demonstrating that perfectly. Excellent mm -hmm. job on getting rid of that stock in what, under a minute. Definitely came to play. Okay, with the follow-up, no double jump coming out from Kanaji. Oh no, like this this is where you you don't want to get steamrolled game four. Like <laughs> that's the one you don't want to like you can get steamrolled game three and then like kinda <laughs> lose game four sure. if you were to pick one of the two to get steamrolled, but not four. Okay, okay, right. so all right, keeping it close to his chest here. Kanaji making sure it doesn't get too out of control this game, this game four. Okay, be able to land. Yes, we are. And then immediately get the grenade in hand, throw out that Nikita. Oh, got to be careful. Yeah, he is dealt. When he's in situations like this, you know he's going to be trying to trap you, and he's always going to have a grenade present as well. So raise. Be cognizant of that, not get too wild or crazy. I like how he did that, just taking his time, not trying to force the punish on the Nair. That is one thing. That's one thing that this man just loves to throw. Like he is a nair fiend. We actually saw it win him a game. I think it was game number two. It actually yeah. won him. 
Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and like, I, I just love the combination. Like, not only is his nair placement alone really good, just the way he uses projectiles to kind of condition you to go, to, to go into certain areas, and then he will try to meet that area with a nair. Um, yeah, and I mean, Kanaji definitely, like, it feels like that's a very big part of his game plan and play style. Ooh, but that forward throw, one of the very few killing forward throws in the game. Um, a forward throw that kills is just like, in my opinion, a lot more broken than a back throw that kills just because you can use it offensively. Like when you're corner pressuring or ledge trapping, that's so valuable of right. a tool to have. Ooh, so right nice. now... Okay, good decision, yes. Okay, finally mm -hmm. making them pay for coming in with those nares. Okay, so he does have to charge the arrows a little bit to get him to for the air, for the dark arrows to hit him off the cipher. Um, so it's not just like a you know on the fly arrow. Okay, an air dodge, yep. With the reflect as well, Ray's looking really clean out here with his anti projectile tech, um, using the arrows, using the uh, down B as well. Just reflect. Oh, almost catches that landing with the air dodge. Is gonna get the trump here. Oh, we have a regrab, but no punish coming out from Raze. That could have been the game right then and there. But we have another chance here for Kanaji. Can he seal that out on this ledge trap? No, Raze gets back on the stage. The duck underneath the arrow. You saw how fast that was, and he went forward. That was so clean. That was amazing. And I, and even if he does like end up losing here, which is looking like it could be the case, like dude, it, it's what you said. Like getting blown out is not what you want to see. Uh, Raze is gaining nothing but confidence and momentum, and he's going to take that game cleanly too stopped to send us into game number five. Don't think it's impossible for this backdoor 3-0 to come to fruition. Raze is absolutely feeling himself and maybe starting to remember exactly why he's in this situation in winners because he did put Kanaji in to losers earlier in winter semis. Yeah, he did uh, take it 3-1. And I mean, it's starting to come to life and you're kind of seeing it now, the gameplay that was needed to put this snake on check with the Dark Pit. Um, I I wonder what stage we'll have next. Um, Kanaji has tried a bunch of different stages so far. Um, he's gonna have a third chance here to pick another stage that will bring him the victory, but will it matter with how well Raze has been playing these last two games? I, I don't even know. It's, it's gonna be rough. He's riding so much momentum right now, and he's looking really, really clean on this dark pit. Man, Charles tells no lies. Game five. Chat, is this it? Is this the decider? Is this where it ends, or are we going to overtime with another set? All those yeah. questions and more will be answered right now. We got our game oh, five. Wow. <laughs> the approaching Nikita, I've seen it all, man. <laughs> Kanaji just really does so much uh, interesting things with Snake. And it's actually crazy how much fares he's landed, like, off of a full hop setup. It's a uh, it's very interesting gameplay. Um, very diverse, but it's working. And it's like, it's just, it feels so creative and innovative. It's really fun to watch. Some facts. Okay, oh. Nate ooh, doesn't get followed up from the up there though. Here's the beer reverse and keeping this corner pressure on the Kalos pick. Definitely, uh, definitely interesting. Both players have a lot of room to work with. You see what Ray's does though? Like, he, like he's not falling for that bait anymore that comes in when he just jumps in and just be reversals out. Like he's just like, I'm just staying stationary. I'm staying put and I'm not going to give you like any free opportunities to kind of a whiff punish or anything like that. I like that adjustment that Raze has made. And all these trades, is he going to reflect oh, the Nikita? Wow. No, <laughs> did not touch the shield. He just like wiggled even... down. And yeah, got you, saw how, uh, <laughs> you saw how he wiggled it down there. That was actually godlike and he needed to do that so it didn't hit the down beat coming out from Raze. Very, very calculated and just, I mean, at that point, it's just a straight matchup knowledge. That was so Great. nice. No tech. No double jump either. Ooh, There's the, the air dodge. Raises. Another tech. Can we get another turner? No, he down tilts on the platform. He definitely wanted to drop down down here. But the up air comes out regardless. Raze will keep things even on this game number five. It all comes down to this. That it does, man. Great stuff from Raze. Oh, grenade actually running interference. Could have been maybe a little bit of a benefit, but come on, Raze. Got to figure out a way to kind of quell all these explosives. <laughs> Arrows. Nazi, I'm saying, right? It's just like, let me just chuck them out. Like, if this is what it takes to get it done, take a look. That C4 in the center of the stage, too. I thought Raze might have ran right into it. I'm not to go opting not to detonate. Nicely done with the reflectors. And just like that, 
a nice combination of offense and good defense with reflectors has evened up this game. At least made it damn sure closer than it was a couple seconds ago. Oh, yeah, that absolutely. Dude, snake is so terrifying. We're just like, okay, I gotta land, try him with the down air, and then just like he just moves here, just like, oh my god, up to this coming. Yeah, what kind of shenanigans being, is this? Being next to the snake during these percentages, not uh, not fun at all, and it's just crazy because Kanaji knows that, knows you're gonna want to drift back, knows you want to drift back in the air, and he just calls it out with the neutral, gets the KO anyway. This is big damage. Wow, going for. The throw into downer, usually you see an uptilt follow up after that. You get the snipe off the top, very good. Avoidance coming out from Kanaji and is able to get back on the stage, stomping on him, and look at all this damage is racking up for him. Seriously. Up there, not quite enough. 150. This snake is living. Raise is hunting, though. Would love to punish this landing, though. No, great B reversals, and of course, the explosions to cover that. So. Honestly, oh, this is scary, man. 71%, you don't want your percent flying that oh. low, but he's going to send them no. even lower. Oh, no, this is, that was literally the worst time to take a... I mean, you could have won the game right there with two stocks, but in that situation, you do the classic brawl. I'm going to ride this lead to the very end, and he, it's, it's like I get it in a sense where it's like he'll never expect this. I didn't go for the whole set, but like... Maybe there's a reason why you didn't go for it the whole set. Oh my god, bro, this is so terrifying. Yeah, and not it's oh, oh, no way. You thought you got him with the grenade, but I'm telling you, man, the way Kanaji just sets everything up, like you, you, you reflect one thing, but did you reflect the other two that are flying at you too, man? Oh. And Wow. Man, dude, that is so unfortunate, bro. Cause you know Kanaji's lead trap is godlike. It's like, okay, send it, send it back to him, but you can't account for every little thing. That's the thing. You don't have to worry about just one option. There's like three you have to account for. Oh my oh, yeah. lord. And that that counter, the the orbiters are very good, but we saw earlier, even in um, just within this tournament, we saw the Nikitas, the up smashes, hitting that dead zone in that counter, right, right above Pit, like right on top of Pit's head, in the middle of the shield. So hitting that weak spot and setting up those situations, you know, Kanaji did it on purpose. So just really good stuff, closing things out. So we are going to be going into a grand finals reset. It's not over yet. It's not over yet. Um, Kanaji is going to have to seal it out one more set. But man, I, I, it's so it's such a toss up, right? So both of them are one one right now in terms of sets like within this tournament. So this final one is going to be the third set. I hate to take this away from our caches we have coming up next. I mean, I just would, I would feel terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, we're not going to sleep tonight. It's fine. <laughs> Guys, one more set for you one in the main set. bracket of top eight. It is a reset, and it was a hell of a, a journey to get there. I mean, credits to both. Honestly, it's like Ray was going to get that backdoor 3 0, but Kanaji just held on with everything he had and was able to will himself the in Shulk. this position. And now, all that just to bring out Shulk. <laughs> <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> Let's see what the, the Monado art. Talk to me, baby. What you got? My man Kanaji, he's been you almost feel like this isn't even gonna be like typical show, right? Like just because of what Kanaji's already done so far, but mm -hmm. very I mean, this interesting is... curveball he's throwing out here. Yeah, and this is uh Oh you know, he, he got it with the snake, but and we saw the Mithra Pyra in action, right? The only character we didn't see on his card so far is the Shulk, and we are we're, we're gonna get to see it right now, Shulk. Definitely one of the harder characters to play. Very different slash unique tools with the Monado Arts. Um, the biggest one in terms of strength is probably the Shield Art. You're able to actually activate it during hit stun, so you literally can break out of combos like that. Um, no other character in the game can do that. No other character in the game can act during hit stun. So very unique thing to Shulk. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, right now, very tick for tack uh, game right here. Both going both... Uh, Back and forth. Yeah, I'm 
just wondering, like, obviously, like, it was the snake that, that brought him to the dance. Like, could like could this have just been, like, just give him a different look, like, early on in, like, the second set? Like, okay, you're accustomed so much to this fight and dealing with snake. Like, what are you going to do against Shulk, uh, which I'm also incredibly confident in, and just, boom, busted that boy right out of there. Yeah, and I, I just Ain't generally delivery. feel like, like, Pit's kind of like a, um, like an almost sword character, right? Where as, uh... My man Shulk, definitely a full-fledged swordy in uh, Ultimate, definitely one of the stronger sword characters in the game. Um, and yeah, I just feel like he's able to keep him out. And wow, I don't think, yeah, you have to go into another art. The, the fact, and this could be, you know, the secondary Shulk coming in. He had to get out of shield art because your air mobility is actually like very, very bad in shield art. So because he stayed in shield art, he was actually just put in a position where he was so easy to get. Um, so the, there are cons to each art as well, you know. I feel like a lot of people just see the benefits and they don't really understand that there's like a buff and a debuff in each art. Right. I mean, if there was no drawbacks, then why wouldn't you just see a ton more Shulk, you know what I mean? Like, right, right. Shulk is still an incredibly uh, impressive character. It's kind of crazy. Oh, wow. Well, that snipe was actually pretty insane for down here. Nice interruption on the recovery attempt. So maybe Kanazi thinking twice about bringing out Shulk here against Raze, because you already know that Dark Pit is incredibly warmed up and ready to go, and at the moment, not disappointed. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, it, it was looking pretty hot the, the first stock, but maybe the gig is up. All right. All right, Kanaji. I don't think you can get away with Coach Shulk here, man. And even, like, I don't... Maybe Ray's knows this matchup because the fact that he went in a Nair and a jab there, there are shield art-specific combos where you kind of adjust to shield arts, like, lack of hit stun and stuff, and you just go for different alternate routes on combos, and you're actually able to burn out the shield art. Um, the fact that Ray's just knew knew that kind of like makes me think like do you know the Shulk matchup is is definitely not a very common character so oh so much so that we might not even see him anymore ain't that hey, crazy man. <laughs> wow the connection art all right I put up the predictions <laughs> oh, for you guys I don't think anybody predicted that though I don't think so <laughs> all right. <laughs> We shall go ahead. You know what? They've been playing for a while. When you go into overtime, sometimes it's just all about leaving the arena and coming back. It's just like a clean reset. You need a you need a little refresher, right? Exactly. Like... That's just how that's just how the internet works. I think we are all very much so aware of that. So that's not a problem at all. So we'll go ahead and get Rays back in momentarily. But in the meantime, guys, I put those predictions up for you. Sorry, I thought somebody else was handling that. But... Put them up for you so go ahead and just cast your votes and bet on them points that you may have accumulated or those points you just happen to have left over that you're trying to double up before this thing's all said and done <laughs> yeah and uh kanaji is expressing that he is lucky yeah yeah i mean you ain't wrong <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. I mean, I, honestly, for I, I don't know like the exact rules behind. It. I would just set one, you know, two stocks to one stock, like, and just keep it pushing from there. Seems like yeah, a yeah. We'll it. see. We shall see what <laughs> ends up happening. Can we talk about how my man Billy mains DDD out here though? Let's go, Billy, playing the All fat right, penguin. I see that. Respect. They did him his brawl back air back. But, you know. You know, we'll take. It. You know, I actually think Ultimate DG Backer is like the worst one. I actually think Smash Four Backer was better. And it's not brawl, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, we will chat. Talk to me. What time is it where you are? That, late that's actually. Here. It's it's like uh, three oh five. Spent my, oh, uh, I spent last night me. actually, chat. I spent last night, spent four hours watching that Snyder cut of the Dark Knight, or uh, not Dark Knight, of Justice League. Spent mm. four hours watching that. Okay, drama, right? okay. You who enjoy it? Thought, who would have thought this portion of Top 8 has potential to go longer than that? Not I. Not I. <laughs> but here we are. It's crazy. Crazy. All right, I see the... Let's all right, all right. Going. So he is he is attempting to reconnect. Uh, you know, Godspeed in your journey back into the arena, back into the action. Let's show, oh, we'll show. okay. 6 a.m., oh, 7 a.m. in Argentina. Oh, Argentina. Nice, nice. I'd love to go to Argentina sometimes. That's awesome. 
12 a.m., 3 a.m. in Cali. Hey, me and Charles are also in Cali, so we see you, we see you. 11 a.m. Euro gang. Hey, why don't you head on and get some Dunkin' Donuts or something? Omsa's in the chat. What's up, Omsa? Let's go, Omsa. A homie. Big homie right there. Doo -doo. Yo, E.E., -E. can you talk about Kanji Snake and why it's not... Why it's not a lot of grenade spam. Dude, I don't see grenade spam. I see excellent grenade placement. This man is just surgical in everything he does. I think that's why he's so damn good, to be yes. honest. The the grenade mix he has, um, he he likes to alternate between like, okay, I have a grenade in hand, pull a grenade, but am I be reversing it, am I not? And then sometimes he'll shield and pick up like the other grenade that's been cooked and then like throw it at you, but you think it's the one he just brought out right like it's like it, it's so it's so good um and then he'll he'll even set up situations where he like pulls out a grenade grabs it so it's starting to cook then he nikita's right throws out the nikita missile and then right after the nikita missile is done he has enough time to just like throw the cooked grenade and it's gonna like explode while it's being thrown so his opponent doesn't even have essentially time to pick up the grenade it's just literally like a projectile that just blows up so the way he's setting up his grenades and even just manipulating his opponent uh positioning where which is the main reason why he's getting so much nutrients for damage or just for the ko it's it's very impressive mm, back on points right there my guys and yeah. the speed at which he's doing it too is it's just yeah, he, fast it, dude it, like exactly. it's hard to like, keep there's up. a lot of movement behind that like that is that is far from me oh just a heads up raise is pronounced ray z well, i feel like he'd be disingenuous to change it at this point ray z all right cool Cool. Thanks for the heads up. Yeah, literally once. Yeah, never mind. Thank you for the heads up. Better late than never. That's what I always say. Especially if I did. That's All right, so we got a we got an update for Razy's power. Okay. Power socket died. We VGBC. I'm gonna need you guys to get an electrician out there. Stat. Right. If his power socket died, just split it. They're both great. <laughs> wait, wait. I mean, I'd like to see the conclusion of this. I'm not going to cap. These two have been absolutely freaking sensational, but mm -hmm, got to mm -hmm. make a call at some point. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, this is, I, uh, this is you know, some of the things, some I'm of the complications that can happen. Aww, that's cute. But, I mean, nonetheless, nonetheless, I've been having a great time watching some Smash during these uh, degenerate hours. <laughs> Um, we in the it, trenches it, for real, bro. We this late. But it, it's been night. super fun, man. Um, like just this top eight, there's been so many fun matches. We got to see so many like dark pit matches, which I was super excited for. Um, really, and like the fact that they were so good with dark pit too is just so fun to watch. Like all the different combo extensions and dare extensions. Um, you know, you you see that kind of stuff on Twitter, like in training mode, and you're like, yeah, sure, whatever. But like seeing it in action in tournament, it always hits different, right? right. Like. Yeah, good yep. Very relaxing music. Almost music to sleep by. <laughs> Dang it, it was crazy. Dang. It was crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> What? Don't well, put this shit on me. <laughs> <laughs> right next gen. No, oh, what's up? <laughs> How y'all doing, man? We are. We just living. We just chilling. We are just chilling. Smash World <laughs> Tour, baby. Okay. Okay. All right. So in uh, the production, giving him about four minutes. We'll see. If he oh, cool. gets across the finish line into the arena in time for that run back. And if not, well, it is what it is, right? And we'll move on. But, I mean, nonetheless, he's qualified. So, um, no, like, super big issue there. It's going to, like, worst case, the seating's, like, you could have been one seat higher. But uh, I think, for the most part, everything will be fine. And even just, like, even this last chance qualifier as well coming up sure. um after yep. this potential match that could happen um super exciting to see all these players qualify for their regional qualifier 
which, you know, once you go through that, depending on the region, you can get a slot into the 30, the final 32 man bracket offline. It is going to be the, oh, it's like going to, it's like crazy because the way this is all setting up, it's like, this is going to be the premier like offline event to like kind of bring us back and transition us from like this Wi-Fi era into, you know, the future offline meta. It's, I'm right. super excited. I think basically too, and I have a really good, like I'm an optimist. I'm, I'm keeping a lot of faith and I have a lot of hope that we're actually uh, going to be able to have those, you know, those offline events and stuff like that within this year. A lot of positive things are already taking place. So uh, yeah. I'm on the, the positive side that, you know, and, and, and it helps too that it's invitational style too. I think that's yes, that's, like a, the that's a big one. Thing. Yeah, that's a huge yeah. factor. So uh, obviously fingers crossed that we'll be able to make that happen. And uh yeah, I see the chat saying that he's back. Let's go. Sweet. Good stuff to raise. Beats the clock with a couple minutes to spare. So it looks like the Rays versus Kanaji battle will roll on. Uh, not sure who gets the victory for game one. Yeah, I don't know if it's uh, okay. played out again. Played out two stocks of one stock or or what. Um, we'll see what the TO's decision is. Of course, definitely. Uh, that is, that's probably the one of the harder things about being a TO, obviously like just organizing tournaments and stuff is just hard in general, but like making those like kind of split decision calls, right? Like, oh, someone tripped over a power plug and the game went out. So like what happens now, right? Like you have to make a call on like if someone, if they replay it or, you know, or if they do replay it, how they replay it, right? So shout out to all the TOs that are out there that make it happen. Definitely a, can be a very thankless job, but there's, you know, so important. They're essentially like the backbone to the Smash community and the ecosystem. True. Can't run them without it. So, so we do appreciate them and, and many others. And obviously uh, the viewers, of course, because, you know, who the hell wants to play if nobody's watching? So shouts to all of you guys, nearly 3,000 strong, still up. Uh, no matter where you are, man, we do appreciate you uh, rocking with us and having a good time. So uh, Kanaji versus Ray Z will continue momentarily. Yeah, the dark pit versus snake. I mean, it's it's been it's been a real treat to watch both of these like just characters. Both these characters are really fun to watch. But like even like just that Oceana play style, and both these players have their own like unique niches as well in terms of just like the way they play their characters. Um, it's it's really cool to implement like see them implement it, and it just feels like they've been kind of powering up as the night has gone. Keep doing what you do. So, I hear this guy's back, Ray Z. Where is he at? Ah! That is the million dollar question. Let's go, my guy. Ray Z, uh, the I predictions, mean... Chat, the prediction still uh, should still be up. If it reset or something right. happened, let me know, by the way. And I'll remake it. My bad. Let me know. Hey, oh, it would have been really cool to see uh, Little Z compete. I don't know if he was like just busy today or whatnot, but yeah, I know Little Z from Oceana, so that was really cool. And even um, it was really cool to watch uh, Pop. I know Pop is also a content creator. He got ninth with uh, yep. Lucina Ness, so that was really cool. That was really fun to watch. Mm -hmm. Un cancel and remake. Are you talking about the lobby? Well, I'm not in charge of the lobby. That's a that's that's staff. They know all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. I'm uh, I'm just a chat goon like the rest of you. I just happen to have a voice. That's literally it. <laughs> the jig is up, it. The jig is up. <laughs> Hoser Games, thanks for subscribing to the channel with your Prime. Let's See go, that, buddy. Appreciate the support. The prime coming through, yeah. We're obviously we're just getting the arena set up for these players. Um, I believe like if the arena is like up for so long and there's no games, it'll just shut down. So that's probably what happened. Um, getting another arena up for the stream, so for so you guys can see the matches as well as us. And yeah, then we can get right back into it. I I, I imagine no matter what, I think the Shulk's getting put away. I think. You know what I mean? Because we, we saw the show game one, but it just was kind of doing 
well, but not so much during the like. The not as well as we as, as we might have liked. Yeah, yeah. I think that's fair to say. But I mean, nonetheless, no matter what, uh, a reset did happen, right? So um, we'll see. We'll see. We can take it all. I mean, and then there's only you know after a bracket or after yeah after a reset for grands. Um, that's pretty much going to be the last set for this bracket at least. And you guys still can stay tuned for the last chance qualifier bracket, which I believe four players qualify from that for Oceana into the regional. Um, so yeah, there's there's a lot more Smash action coming up even after this grand final. So make sure you guys stick around for that. All right, Ooh. so we just got the announcement. Unfortunately, Ray-Z has been DQ'd. He took too much time, so it is what it is. Congratulations yeah. to Kanaji. He's going to win. Uh, he'll finish first place in top eight, and then Ray-Z will have to settle for a second. So, unfortunate. I saw a lot of people in the chat saying that he was coming back. He was on his way, but unfortunately, it did not pan out that way. So, uh, it is what it is, but hey, nonetheless, the matches that we got, especially that first set, was insane. Uh, second yeah. one looked like it was on its way to be a banger as well, but it is what it is. So congratulations to both our top two finishers right there. Uh, you're both winners in my book. I'm sure the chat feels the same. Oh, yeah, and everyone that you guys have been watching are qualified as well, so they're fine on that, but... We are going to be moving on to the last chance qualifier. So essentially, um, if you played in this first bracket and you didn't qualify, you get put into the last chance qualifier bracket, you know, new fresh bracket. And the top four of that will go ahead and also qualify in to the regional qualifier for Oceana. So that's going to yes. be super exciting and make sure you guys stay tuned for that. Yes, and also, chat. I, I I typed it in there. I did refund your points for that prediction. I'm not going to pay out via DQ. So, say that real quick. <laughs> okay. All right. But uh, before we get out of here, guys, Couch Warriors, make sure you show them some love. Uh, really, just being an essential part, uh, especially over there, um, on the Oceana side of things, and being able to just kind of foster and enable good, positive uh, growth and expansion within the communities. Like they are certified, legit. Check them out at Couch Warriors, uh, CouchWarriorsLeague.com, and of course on Twitter at Couch Warriors. As we have Hazmat talking while I'm giving a spiel, but that's okay. He doesn't know he's talking. But we love Haz. And he's coming up next. There you go. Wow. Let's go. Haz and Koopa. They're going to take you through the rest of this night. Uh, me and Charles. Go to hell to bed. That's pretty much it. So, hope you guys enjoyed the commentary block. It was definitely a privilege uh, for us to deliver it for you. If you liked what you heard, make sure you follow us at Evisu and at Charles Thorn underscore. And uh, yeah, that'll do it for us, Charles. Any last words? Yeah, I just uh, just had a really fun time. Um, always a pleasure to commentate with you, E. And yeah, I mean, you guys enjoyed the last chance qualifier bracket, and we're we're out of here. Peace out. Peace.
All right, right guys, guys welcome, welcome back. back. The final leg of our bracket today. It is the last chance qualifier fi qualifier finals. Sorry, a little early or late here, depending on how you say <laughs> it. And that is quite a tongue tire. So, thank you so much for sticking with us throughout this whole adventure here, working through uh, the bracket today. It has been phenomenal. I'm joined here by Koopa. We're going to be taking you through uh, the last leg of the bracket. Koopa, four more members of the bracket today will be qualifying for the next step uh, in the regional bracket. So, what's going to be exciting? Yeah, no, what's been an excellent tournament so far uh, is going to end with a bang as, you know, four out of these last eight competitors are going to qualify uh, for the last chance to qualify. Of course, as you see here, you know, uh, 12 have already qualified through the, the main bracket. These last four will fill out the rest of that top 16, which will take place uh, through that regional final. And then through that regional final, uh, you see how the rest of the field of 32 uh, will be filled out for the Smash World Tour, uh, Smash World Tour finals. Uh, in person. So one lucky uh, member from the Oceania region uh, will be part of that uh, group of 32. And it's a shame it's only one that has. This group of, has been, yeah. uh, it's just been nonstop action all night, man. These players are great. As we've taken a look at our, our schedule here today, again, um, you know, top 32 is, has, uh, you know, led its way all the way here through a exciting top eight. And now me and Haz are going to be the first to wish you guys a good morning, depending on what part of the world you come from. And we are <laughs> going to be, uh, you know, taking it home for these last chance qualifiers. And uh, I, I can't be more excited, man. This is going to be uh, a great time. Yeah. And, you know, on a personal note, too, I'm so happy to be here because I had spent uh, a few summers ago. I spent two weeks in Sydney, Australia, and I met some of the local at the time Smash 4 scene there. Uh, and I still, you know, keeping, you know, solid Internet contact with some of them. Shout outs to Luso, uh, Ben Gold, of course. Uh, Kristoff and a lot of the awesome Sydney scene that I met kind of down there, uh, Lincolnus, there were just so many, the scene that I met, they're so kind, like they were just so nice, they showed me around Sydney, um, and they were just fun to play against, and honestly really, really talented players, so kind of the thing with the Smash World Tour that it, I'm so happy to see, and we already saw it with the first round of Mexico, it's these regions that have some really strong talent, they, they get the their chance in the spotlight here, so I'm really excited to see um, what the Oceana group can come up with in the bigger bracket. So should be good. Yeah. Not for sure, man. As we take a look at our schedule uh, through these next couple of months here, uh, we're in week two of 10 here in the Smash World Tour online calendar. And we had the Mexico uh, Ultimate Online Qualifier uh, last week, which of course was a lot of fun. And the Oceana region is coming through uh, in and then some uh, with the action. And again, we take a look at our stage list in case... Uh, you know, you were just waking up or, uh, you know, coming back from a lunch break or something to tune in uh, to what we have here. And listen, it's been a very character diverse tonight. It's also been very stage diverse uh, tonight has. We're seeing a lot of variety in uh, in stages. Uh, you know, the, the players in the bracket today are definitely not afraid uh, to mix things up on their own counter picks. And I think that's made a, a huge difference so far. Yeah, it's cool, man. I mean, that was one of the things coming into Ultimate that I was really excited about. Obviously, you know, they unlocked so many different stages from so many different past games and including uh, the hazard and hazard list kind of variations. So it's nice to see players taking advantage of that. Not not only is the cast huge, but so the roster is huge, but so is the stage list. So we're going to get right into it. It's going to be Maple Mage against Shrix. It is going to be a Fire Emblem battle here. Byleth versus Roy. I was told Shrix by the chat. Chat, if that's incorrect, please correct me. Uh, you know, don't want to mess up someone's tag the whole time. So either way, we're going to get into game one here, Koopa. This is a best of five, and it is a qualifier match there. You can see in the corner, it's going to be a big one. Three, two, yep, these first four matches are going to be uh, for qualifying purposes, and then it's all up to the seeds at, uh, at that point. But listen, man, there's a lot riding on this game right here, and it's going to be an old-fashioned uh, Fire Emblem Ooh. showdown uh, between Maple Age and uh, Srix here on Smashville. Mm -hmm. And a lot of this is going to be Roy trying to get in, obviously get that hilt of the sword, the good spot of it, connecting with Byleth, but Byleth has so many good tools to kind of keep you out. So Roy, more of the, the rush down kind of sortie here, whereas Byleth is going to use all the different weapons that she has in her arsenal. Nice <laughs> call out there in the jump, angling that up. Very nice job. Maple Mage on the board early here, Koopa. Yeah, there's your shot of espresso in your coffee this morning, Has Good morning. It says the forward smash. And uh, I totally agree with you. You know, on paper, you would assume that Roy, you know, with as fast as he is and how strong he hits up close, uh, might overwhelm the slower uh, uh, moving Byleth. But, you yeah, know, this character has seen some changes, man. And uh, Byleth has a lot of range to play with, as you see. Uh, mm -hmm. So Srix already finds himself down in the hole right now. So let's see uh, what the answer is going to be. 
Yeah, it's kind of the design choice behind Violet. Is like she has all these different weapons for all these different scenarios. So like, I think the idea is she's supposed to kind of be an all-rounder, but you know, she really is that distance even we've seen. But Roy, so powerful in his own right, uh, Shrix shooting right back there. Double-edged dance, that's D-E-D -E -D dead. Uh, confirming that one. It's so, dude, it is so strong on this stage. It's so strong on Smashville. Like, I know that it's going to be a good stage to kind of zone out and, and box a little more with Maple Mage, but it's so scary. The uh, double-edged dance on this stage is just deadly. Yeah, no, that was, uh, that, that move is one of the best ones, uh, in the game for a reason. And that is a second, uh, regular, or a jump from the ledge that got caught by a forward smash there from Maple Mage, yeah. though. If you're Strix, you're definitely, uh, you know, potentially going to keep that in mind. Maybe not rush off the ledge immediately. A great catch with the neutral B right there, and a spike to finish it off. Mercy has smash. Oh my mm -hmm. goodness. Mm-hmm. And you want to talk about down under, right? You know, there it is. <laughs> right down. Sorry, I'm so sorry. Uh, anyway, <laughs> come in here. Second suck is gone. Maple Mage trying to hold on here. Nair, though, Shrix in a good position. Ledge trapping has been good for both players. The jab a little late there, but it's still holding on to the advantage state here. Yeah, no, uh, Roy at the ledge, again, uh, is where this character can make or, or break a matchup for you sometimes. And you see uh, Srix, you know, despite not getting the uh, the initial jab uh, conversion there, you know, able to keep the combo going, but mm -hmm. reset back to neutral here. Okay, up air. Dude, I love that up air from Violet. I think it's one of her best moves, honestly. It lingers for so long. It has good power. It's just a really, really good tool. You don't want to get caught under it. But there you go. Shrix again. Jumping in the corner seems to be a thing for both players. I think it's just kind of a Smash Ultimate thing, honestly. So you're going to be covering an option. That's a popular one to look for. Yeah, no, 100%, man. That was, uh, that was a great catch right there. And, you know, despite the fact that, uh, you know, Shrix has been treading water this first game, mm -hmm. you know, finds himself within striking distance here. Uh, you yeah. know, what's, what the answer is going to be. Yeah, he's, you got to be feeling fine about this because you have Byleth at the ledge, you're Roy in the corner. Could have been a KO there if you confirm that jab. Maybe, maybe a jab back here would have been close, honestly. Oh, back air though? Okay. Good angle. He's got to recover. Roy. One thing about him is his recovery can be exploitable for sure. We already saw a dunk uh, from Maple Mage already. See, see if you can get it again. Yeah, oh, you see Maple Mage uh, going for the up smash, maybe trying to anticipate a roll there. Uh, but Roy with Rage, man, especially at the ledge, like you said, on that smaller stage. You know, if you're Maple Mage, you're definitely not uh, in the comfort zone right now. Oh, no, is that going to be it? It is. That's what I'm wow. talking about, man. The double edge dance at the ledge on the stage. I think this stage is just brilliant for Roy, honestly. Um, I think it's good for Violet, too. Like I said, uh, her spear and her, her bigger weapons in her arsenal are going to be covering a lot more ground because there's less of it. But Roy, that boxer, you know, wants to get in type of swordsman, really, really making it work out there. Brilliantly done there by Shrix. Because it, it looked tough there, Koopa, in the beginning. He lost the first stock first, he lost the second stock first, but then took the all-important third stock first. That's the one that really matters. That was clean. Yeah, no, that's just your, your textbook. You know, these uh, super explosive characters with... Uh... You know, a variety of kill confirms at these, uh, you know, late pers uh, you know, these late stock percents and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, Roy is is so scary at all percents, and again, Maple Mage did essentially everything right there. But, you know, lead trapping is where uh, the battles were won for both of these players, and you mm -hmm. know, Strix just coming out on top there, and you know, uh, Strix was coming through through the actual, you know, through the last chance qualifier bracket. So he's, uh, they've been a relatively, uh, you know, unknown <laughs> for the most part of this bracket, and they are within arm's reach of qualifying for the uh for the in-person big dance yeah like we said koopa this is a qualifying match so every game is going to matter that much more they've both been playing for a long time today and they wanted to mean something and be able to qualify and play more of these bracket matches because like like we know smash world tour is the the biggest stage in smash right now and everyone wants to play for the ultimate final prizes that we have on the line so both these players trying yeah. to represent their their region as well as they can. Shrik's there. I mean, dude, it was just a clutch double edge dance, honestly. And I feel like there were a couple opportunities on both sides to get a little more when the opponent was on the ledge. And I think we're going to see that get cleaned up here a little bit in game two. Yeah, we'll see if we go to a potentially bigger stage here uh, to maybe give Maple Mage a better chance at those late percents uh, to yeah. figure stuff out. But, you know, it could we could see a run back as well. Not sure. Uh, it looks like we're going right back to, to Smashville here, Hazmat. So yeah. I guess Maple Mage feeling, you know, just as comfortable in the stage, uh, you know, uh, in this game than they did in the last game. You know, it mm -hmm. could just be a matter of, okay, you know, I made a bad read getting off the ledge. Uh, 
and you know I'll make those adjustments as we progress here. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, you got to change the game plan and not the floor plan. Really close match. Not like you got two or three stocked or, or anything. You know, Maple Mage, uh, they kept it you know very respectful, very close. Actually had the lead for most of the game, so it's just closing that last one out, which is really important. Okay, double. Ooh. Yep. Jab forward smash. Oh man. Maple Maze was very close to the Roy there. Trying to get him off stage. It's going to be a reversal, though. Very nice. I think it was a depth of around 50%. Huge, huge up B there from Maple Mage. Yeah, that was definitely a, K a, a heat check edge guard right there. Um, after a pretty good start right there for Srix. But again, great awareness for Maple Mage. You have to be careful uh, you know, when you're chasing Violet off stage like that. Because uh, I feel like people can forget that the, the Tether can can ruin your day like that. But mm -hmm. Strix that letting it bother him, going right back to work on his ledge trap. Yep, backing away a little bit. Respect has been earned from that up B for sure. Strix is Strix is gonna be given a lot more respect. Forward air though, just barely not KOing. Roy with zero rage, zero percent. Has got touched, okay, get off the ledge. Out of my face. There. <laughs> okay. Ooh. Wow, that was such a quick uh oh jeez. Uh arrow cancel right there. It was so fast. Okay, yeah, I like, it's a, that's like a deceptively like uh, quick cancel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Maple Mage. I like the patience from Maple Mage at the ledge here too. Uh, they're playing it very safe, very calm at the ledge. Kind of attacking a lot here. So Shrek, so finally able to take that sock out. Living the two o two on Smashville against Roy. Get out of town. That's crazy. Yes. Yeah. yeah. No. That. That's. It, it's funny. We talk about how explosive. Uh, you know, Roy is in that last game, and then you know, Maple Mage getting uh, a lot of work and then some out of that stock. And you see, again, oh, it's the same scenario again, Hazmat, but you see uh, Srix learning from their mistake the first time, not overextending yep. uh, offstage for the sake of getting the stock early, but instead just opting to reset the situation. Mm -hmm. Again, I feel like Shrix, I think he could he could stand a little further back from the ledge. I feel like he's he's really standing on top of it. I think that's why some of these jabs aren't connecting, or unless he's looking for that jab forward smash again, but we'll see. I feel like the position, he, he can mix it up a little bit there, but either way, he's doing a good job. Already brought this back. Reclaim, reclaim the lead after kind of throwing away, uh, going a little too deep off stage against Violet and getting snagged up by the upbeat. Ooh, okay, the down tilt to set up the tech chase scenario. Stuck in the corner uh, with nowhere to go, and uh, mm -hmm. excellent awareness with the forward tilt uh, from Strix here. Okay, again, aggressive option off the ledge there, Maple Mage. I mean, I don't blame Maple Mage for doing that, because if it's consistently working, why change it up, you know? Yeah, no, for sure, man. And, you know, here we go. Uh, Maple Mage trying to get this back in the thick of things, trying to go for the Okie Doke with the arrow. Uh, interesting yeah. stuff right there, but uh, Strix is just kind of running away. They've had stage control. Uh, pretty solidly uh, for the entirety of this. Uh, it feels like for like the last like minute or so, but it's been very dominant all game. Oh, did you see that setup right there? So you go down, you uh, you ledge trump with the side B. I think uh, I was gonna say I think that might be it. Wow. Honestly, despite the fact that up B does have some good distance on it, not quite enough. Again, Shrek's taking another game here, two in a row, Koopa. That was pretty dominant there at the end, especially after kind of throwing away that first stock. This is this is looking like trouble for Maple Mage. Yeah, no, I I totally agree. And you know when you lose stocks like that, you know so early, uh, over you know a, a slight uh you know overextension, uh, it can really kind of deflate your uh your game plan there. But you know Strix uh did not let up at all. You know the. Their ledge trapping was excellent, and uh, you know you saw it for a majority of the right side of the stage, and then you know to close out the game on the left side. You know Maple Mage uh, was not able to generate you know the same sort of offense they were able to uh, uh, last yeah. time. So uh, mm -hmm. listen, the, the ledge proves to be a, a make or break situation for some of these people, man. So yeah, it's huge, dude. Well, game two. I don't know if Smash was the play here. I feel like I feel like. If you go Smashville Game 3 and you lose, you're going to regret that and really like double back and think about that. At least I should have tried something different. And I think in Game 2, I understand you're like, you know, I made this decision. I'm going to commit to the stage and just change my game plan. But now it's like, man, I don't know if this is really working. I know Smashville. Roy's really like Smashville. Like, that's, that's just kind of a thing with it. So we'll see what happens here, man. We'll see. Yeah, Maple Mage in the chat being like, all right, comeback time. And hey, listen. <laughs> like... Call Call your shot. Shot. I love it. Let's go, Maple Mage. Call your I shot, believe. man. Babe Ruth. Yeah. Reverse 30? Okay. Is it, I've, seen crazier, yep. I've seen crazier stuff happen tonight, man. I like when I like when the players jump into chat, by the way. I like that. 
Be yeah. Well, best of luck to you, Maple Mage. It is tough coming back from a reverse Rio, especially when we've been playing all day. This is certainly a marathon match, but it is a qualifying match, so let's see what Maple Mage can come up with here. Yeah, no, it, it, listen, man. Um, I, I'm curious. What time actually is it uh, in Australia right now? It's got to be like, like... I think they're 13 hours ahead, right? So is it 7.43 p.m.? I think yeah, that's what yeah, it is. It's, yeah, it's probably around like 8 o'clock over there, so... No, it's it's a little more than that actually. Oh, because we had um, daylight savings, so it's actually th yeah. No, I said thirteen hours. I was right. No, no, more than that. Fourteen. Yeah, like fourteen. Eight forty-two p.m. According to someone in the chat. Nine forty-two in some. In nine forty-two, yeah, that's what I was saying. It depends on where you are, obviously. Yeah. Thanks, chat. What's going on, chat? I hope you guys have been having fun. I've been watching the tournament all day. Yeah, chat's, uh, been, chat's been on fire tonight. You guys are. Chat's been hilarious. Two K strong at six in the morning. Who would have thunk, man? Nice World Tour bringing everyone out. This is great. Anyway, Maple Mage, by the way, making the switch to Karin. Okay. Yeah, I saw Maple Mage, you know, combination of characters throughout the bracket include Violet and Corrin. It's definitely that, that kind of slower archetype of Fire Emblem character who has a little more range. So going to Battlefield 2, I like it. I like the I like the stage change more than the character change, though, I'll be honest with you. I yeah, think, I think uh, the stage change is amazing. Ooh! Ooh, okay. But, you know, despite the stage change, uh, still kind of the same game for Maple Mage right now. Uh, he's having a hard time getting out of the corner. And while I do agree that the stage change is necessary, a change of scenery means us in his roots right now. The double edge uh, dance uh, coming through in spades. Yeah. Maple Mage at the ledge. Stand maybe a little cl too close there. Might have, might have over space a bit. Now they're off stage looking for a counter. Can't find it. This is going to be dangerous for Corn. Good path there, though, by Maple Mage able to hold on to the stock. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure what Maple Mage is, is uh, I guess, making up for maybe mobility to keep up with Roy. You are throwing away uh, some, you know, recovery options, uh, you know, yep. since Korn's recovery uh, is, you know, pretty suspect. So mm. we'll see how it, it, it uh, strikes out here. Yeah. Okay, Ooh. getting the confirmed dash attack in the bag air. Good job catching him schnoozing on the platforms just a little bit. Uh, Dare yeah. I say the back air is nice, Hazmat. You can go ahead, man. I think it's early enough, you know. <laughs> the mods are asleep. The back airs. Mm -hmm. yeah. nice back air. <laughs> Spam back airs are nice. Yeah, <laughs> mods are asleep. Type back airs are nice in the chat. Uh, uh, Maple Mage, yeah, that was good recognition from them. Uh, I like the corn pick. Okay, another dash attack, too. This is working. Look at the empty hop and the down tilt. This is a good gameplay. The corn's really coming to life. I'm liking what I'm seeing here. Yeah, no, listen, man. this character still has some sauce, uh, you know, when corn's able to get their hands on you. Nice Baron chat. <laughs> See, I told you, I'm gonna delete it. It's there. Oh, okay. Pin into. Uh -oh. oh, just let him go and go for the tech chase. Interesting idea, but there was no capitalization. Maple Mage unable to make their mark there. Uh, Shrinks. <laughs> Jeez. Shrinks again on the hunt here, trying to close this one out. 3 0. Yeah, but the forward throw will at least set up another edge guard attempt here for Maple Mage. Mm -hmm. Uh. Get a, a bit of an overextension right there with the forward smash. Could have been a miss input, but you know, here we go. Uh, Shrix going right back to work here. Ooh, uh -oh. going for broke. Uh -oh. Oh, oh wait, he dropped the stock. He couldn't make it back from that. Hold on, I'm gonna watch the instant replay in the other in the other browser. Because I was watching, I was watching Maple Mage to see how they would recover. Yeah, no, uh, looks like Shrix just uh, went for broke right there. It just was not yeah. enough. Yeah, and Maple Mage was forced to use the back air too, obviously, to get the better positioning. So good good heads up play there by Maple Mage because it's easy to lose your mind in that position and kind of forget how to recover just because, you know, backs against the wall. But Shrix oh. on the hunt here. Good tech in by Maple Mage. Scary. I think Shrix read that last time, so that was a scary oh. tech in, but it worked. Yeah, the tables have uh, definitely turned hazmat, and we are uh, basically dead even here. Uh, oh, wait a second. Hold the on. will connect. Oh, no oh, way. the charge? Hey, oh, no. Ooh. I always forget that corn's like watery. You know what I mean? Like, like <laughs> corn's drink out water. Like, that's her thing. Uh, like, I always Roy's fire. The, yes. I always forget that the corn's F smash is also a chainsaw. Mm hmm. <laughs> yeah, like, think of the two things we just said, and that's the character, but. Maple Mage said it in chat. They might be onto something here. It might be a reverse 3 0. That's what they're looking for. And you got to think. Shrix has to be thinking about that one stock that he threw away jumping off stage. Um, a little haphazard there. I think he thought. I think I think they thought they could end the game and the set right there. Not the case, though. Maple Mage able to recover, make it back with a back air into the up B. Very, very clutch stuff. But now 
you got to work against Trix's two counterpick stages. I definitely think we're not going to see Smashville from here on out. Yeah, I agree. And like, listen, man, you, as Michael Scott once said, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Yeah, so, Michael Scott, uh, Wayne Gretzky. That's true. Yeah, Wayne <laughs> Gretzky, so, Michael Scott. Yep, either way. <laughs> Listen, I, I I applaud the effort. You know, at, at this point in the tournament, when you know, you're you're on tournament point, might as well go for broke. And yep. hey, some, that's that's just the game you play. Sometimes, sometimes your opponent makes a comeback, and sometimes uh, you have to play a fourth game. So you know, we'll see how it uh, shakes out here. Yeah, I you know, and I think it's very commendable Maple Mage switching to Corin uh, when they are backs against the wall down 0-2. I think that really says something. I think Maple Mage should took a little sock in that. Like maybe Corin isn't as strong as Byleth. I I don't think so. Like especially the you know just kind of a, I, I don't really think about those two characters a lot. But with the recent buffs of Byleth, I just and I already kind of thought Byleth was better. So I don't know, but it seems like Maple Mage is making this work. So. Yeah, and even Corrin is a character that saw some changes, you know, throughout the uh, the patches so far. So, you know, I think uh, the jury's out. I still think the jury's out on Corrin. <laughs> I still think this character has, like, some utility and stuff like that. But, yeah. you, know, uh, you know, listen, it could be a comfort pick, you know? You, you never know. There's so many characters in this game, man, that sometimes you can just... I feel like you can pick up a character that you might only play, like sometimes and be able to like get away with it sometimes Ma maple mage is so ominous in the chat maple mage focus up for your match it's almost time to play game four <laughs> coming up here shrix versus maple mage shrix switching to the gold color too i don't think he had that last time that color always stands out to me underrated um, color by the way this is the it was great. i feel like everyone used it in melee like you know what i mean when you were a kid like you fire yeah. a melee you pick roy because he's got the cool cool fire sword and then he also has the gold I like the one. I like the purple one with the red cape. That's personally my favorite one. But the one with the red cape. Oh, the red one. Yeah. No, I like the, the other one. So he had two blues in melee. Um, if you remember that, I like the, yeah, yeah. the first blue and then a blue with a white cape. And I thought the blue with the white cape was sick. I don't think it's ever been back. But Roy has some amazing palettes since Smash Four. But either way, <laughs> cat either coming way, with, cat coming through with the Roy is sick. Shout Roy out to the, Yeah, shout out to the little Mac main uh, cat. Hey, all Little Max and Smash, well, Smash 4 and kind of carried through to this game, kind of played Roy, but Ooh. another jab into, ooh, okay, that might be a stock here, back here again. Maple oh. Mage, nice, good trade. Wow, no magnet hands on that Dragon Ascent. Very nice shot by Shrix, cleaning up the offstage play. That's what he needed right there, Koopa. Yeah, no, and, and I'm sure uh, that's what, you know, Maple Mage has probably been trying to accomplish every time they've gone off uh, for those gnarly edge guards like that and, you know, uh, got the favorable trade right there, so... Uh, mm -hmm. Definitely the break you're looking for if you're if you're uh, Strix right now. Um, did I say maybe Mage before? I apologize, man, Strix. But... You're good. Don't worry about it. Six in the morning, baby. The sun's coming up. It's all cool. It's <laughs> almost seven, actually, so we're getting there. Oh, geez. Forward smash the other way. I think if I'm Strix, I'm taking that as a sign. I'm chilling right here because Maple Mage is certainly swinging for a KO. Just wait for those options. Off stage again. Drop down counter, maybe? Okay. Force to go low. Good job by Maple Mage there. Low, low recovery is working for now. Ooh. Wait, what? Oof. Wow. Interesting stuff right there. I don't know how you could follow me in real life. I don't go anywhere, man. It's quarantine. Yeah, it's a counter. It doesn't work, though. Is he going to make it back? Okay. Again, oh. we get that forward smash. I like that coverage because I feel like you could react to a roll, too. Maybe not on Wi-Fi. Or it would be harder on Wi-Fi, but... Double-edged chance? Nope. Yeah, one solid hit, uh, you know, for Strix here, and they're uh, right back in the driver's seat. But Maple Mage has shown that when their back's against the wall, man, they're, uh, you know, they're uh, very solid at getting the job done. Oh, wait okay. a second. Ooh, that would have been nice. I like the idea on the second pin. Mm -hmm. Ooh. All right, favorable trade right there uh, for, you know, Maple Mage right there to at least avoid harm's way. For the pin again. I love the cancel on that too. The dash attack though, gonna clean it up. Shrix again in a position where he's one sock away from closing out the set. But we've seen this a couple times so far, Koopa, and he hasn't been able to do it. Maple Mage being very pesky about it. Yeah, and just like that, uh, Maple Mage has already put on a quick 60 on his last stock. Again, Roy, so dangerous, man, when they're able to uh, get any sort of momentum. Ooh, that's like a reach? Wow. The chomp? Are you yeah. serious? Oh, oh. oh, the Roy Classic. Oh, the Classic. Wow, <laughs> that was two explosive hits back to back to end that set. No, Maple Mage no, versus Shrix. Roy versus Corn and Byleth. Very, very fun set to start this one off. That was a good one, Koopa. I mean, there's been a lot of great sets throughout the day. We had a Dark Pit <laughs> Ditto 
in winners finals, which is just insane. We've seen Meat Brawler on the screen a couple times today. It's been really, really nice. And we've seen Ben Gold's uh, Wolf. Like we've seen a lot of cool stuff today. Um, Australia, you guys, or, or I mean, Oceania in general, there's been a lot of really cool players on the stream today. So it's been really good. Oh, hi, Mark. Not for, not for sure, man. They've had some great nicknames for, for Srix and Nick Cat. I saw some Srico mode. <laughs> I saw a pickle strick, <laughs> which which was a good one. Uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, you, you guys know how to get down in in the chat in, in the Oceana region for sure. But anyway, yeah. that that was a that was a great shot right there. And I believe with that, uh, Srix is qualified uh, for the uh, offline portion of the uh, yeah Oceana uh, finals. So very nice. Uh, that was awesome. So uh, congratulations to them uh, again. Uh, great sets of great set. Uh, yeah. And yeah, they're, it's just adding to what's already been an incredible talent pool today, Hazmat. Uh, the main bracket was an absolute uh, bloodbath. Yep. Like we said, we saw great character diversity, d dark pit dittos in, in winners finals. Like, where does this happen? Like, <laughs> we, we, this don't say pickle trick. It was good before that, guys. Don't say pickle trick. Stop it, chat. Um, <laughs> what was I gonna say? Couple, couple questions. Yeah, uh, is it is Raze right? Raze, Raze. What's up, guys? Uh, they, were, uh, he, they were saying Rise. Uh, I know Charles and, and Ray. Were, they were saying Rays, but chat kept trying to correct them. But I mean, it's, okay. it's written like Rays, but it's, it's I think it's Razi or Raze. I think it's Raze. But he had to DQ out of uh, Grants, uh, unfortunately, because he was playing on fire. Yeah, it's Razi. There you go. Or you guys are trolling me. Either way, that's what I'm gonna say. Razi. Thank you. Thank you. Um, he had to DQ, which is unfortunate, but it was a great Grants. Uh, the first set was really, really good, but we couldn't make it back. So. Yeah, yeah. but. So it's been a great event so far. Um, Crazy, oh boy, okay. we're getting to this. Okay, Google Maps. <laughs> Toon Link and Young Link is who he's been playing today, and Ghost, who was a Bayonetta in Smash Four. I know that because I know I know most Bayonetta's from Smash Four. Um, well, I watch them play a lot. Obviously, I study a lot of Bayo because I played her myself. But Ghost is a sick player from the Smash Four era, going with the Me Brawler, and then also uh, playing Min Min as well. I saw so sticking with that kind of really good DLC uh, character vibe, but also. The Me Brawler with the the thrust uppercut is what I've seen a lot of today, which is just an insane, insane upbeat. So, um, we'll see what Ghost can come up with here. It's gonna be tough, I feel like, for Me Brawler to kind of close the gap in on uh, Young Link and Toon Link, though, Koopa. Yeah, Ghost it's has gonna, got like. Yeah, no, uh, for sure, man. It's gonna be a, a hard fought battle for sure. Uh, and also, see, Google Maps has a secondary of Ice Climbers there, and. You know, both these uh, two members of uh, the South Southern Australia region, uh, you know, rank one and five respectively. It's going to be a, a hard contested match, man. And you know, uh, yeah, I keep I forget who I saw talk about this recently, but I another character I feel like the jury's out on is one hundred percent Toon Link. I still feel like this character has okay. a lot of uh, utility and stuff like that. You know, it, mm -hmm. you're overshadowed by you know two other links for sure. But you know, this yeah. character is still. Uh, you know, it's, uh, the, the awkward combination of, of, of floaty and, and light. So, you know, comboing uh, Toon Link is a pain. You know, projectiles like uh, Boomerang and Bomb are obviously pesky, uh, as always, and stuff. So, I don't know. I feel like a character like, uh, you know, like me, Brawler, that, you know, can... I feel like an approach for you, you know, uh, only a certain amount of ways. Uh, it could be a little tricky for Ghost, but listen, man, we'll, we'll see how it shakes out here. Yeah. Question from the chat is, can these people still qualify? Yes. So we're in the, the last chance qualifier bracket. So we played through the main bracket and we already had our qualifiers uh, through there, like our main qualifiers, but there are four more who can qualify through this last last chance bracket. Um, and this one should be a qualifying match. The first four matches that we have. So the first one that we just had that Shrix qualified through by defeating Maple Mage 3-1 was a qualifying match. And then we'll have three more after that. So great question from the chat. Um, yeah, it's good okay. to know because I, I love uh, the Smash World Tour, but I know there are so many matches going on. It's kind of hard to keep track sometimes as, as to where we are and, and what's going on. So, chat, don't be afraid to speak up. You know, we're happy to guide you. And, and I like because <clears throat> when we did the Mexico part uh, last week, uh, we had just, you know, we played through the bracket like normal. And so the last couple sets were, were for seeding, which is important, obviously. But now today we're kind of ending with um, the last chance qualifiers, which to me are, are pretty much the hypest matches that you can get because these guys... These players know uh, there's something on the line that they're playing for, so very cool. Yeah, no, I could have said it better myself, man. And uh, and th that's also just been one of my favorite parts about just commentating at home to begin yeah. with is a lot more of an opportunity to like interact with uh, with chat yeah. and stuff like that. I love that chat, man. Yeah, I do too. When, <laughs> it's funny when, too. It's funny because even just like different channels just have different vibes for their chat. 
You know what I mean? Like commentating a tournament on Master and Gaming or, or, or VGBC or, or whatever. Like there's just kind of a different vibe. Smash World Tour brings entire different regions into those other channels. And it's just, I've been having a lot of fun. I mean, last weekend was fun too, but the, the, the Oceana uh, chat has been just amazing. Yeah, no, it's, it's been a riot all night for sure. Um, <laughs> Cracking me up. <laughs> it's, that's the energy we need, man. Like I said, we are, we are, uh, you know, we, we get an, we, an early look at the sunrise right now, so we need all the uh, the boost in, in energy we can get. I'm almost running out of coffee. Really? I ordered some right before this. I'm feeling yeah, good. Yeah, I, I, I have I have like half a half a half a thermos left. I'll be good. When is when does the match start soon? Good yeah, question. Dude. Just waiting You'll for everyone. <laughs> Listen, if you can, just follow, you, <laughs> follow the did GPS. You, <laughs> did you notice their favorite game by the way, Koopa? They have the yeah. same favorite game. What are the odds? <laughs> You know, I gotta say, I'm very surprised at the amount of people that love Xenoblade uh, that have been popping Are up you, so uh, Dude, people love that game. Or they love that series, I guess I should say. I don't know, it wasn't for me. It was just too much... Uh, I, I like JRPGs, but it was like one of those, like, yeah, I spent 500 hours and, like, just beat it or whatever. Like, it's just too much. Yeah, maybe in the next pandemic I'll play, uh, <laughs> I'll play a JRPG. Yep. I'll play Xenoblade, but... Oh, don't say the next one, man. We gotta get through this <laughs> you're, one, you're so, right. You know... <laughs> Put MSN yeah, no. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, but Xenoblade, I've, I've played a bit of Xenoblade 2, and, and it's a fun game, but I, I it's the same thing. It's not it's not for me. I like it, though. And, and listen, Pyro and Mithra are fun. The, those characters are legitimately yeah. fun. Yeah, wow. when they got announced, like I I tried playing the Xenoblade Chronicles, and I just couldn't get into it. And then when I saw another character was announced, I didn't, didn't even hear their game. I was like, eh, not really interested. But then... Seeing like just when I saw Mithra move the first time, I was like, "Dude, this this character's insane!" And then Pyro as well, you know, kind of like a Ganon attached to it. All right, but here we go. Has yes, that. He, We're yes, he it. qualified. He qualified in the main bracket. <laughs> I feel like you're trolling me. I can't trust the chat. But it's gonna be Ghost, uh, who I've watched played Smash Four before, uh, and I know is a very good player. I know chat is hyped to see Ghost. Then you also have Google Maps on the Toon Link, which I like to see because you don't get to see a lot of Toon Link, Koopa. Like you kind of saying. Uh, not a whole lot, of, uh, not a whole lot of love for this character because you know Young Link exists, regular Link, all that good stuff. So we'll see. Yeah, the only Link, uh, the only Toon Link that comes to mind to me is the, uh, I believe the one from Canada. His name is Excalibur. Uh, whose, whose name comes to mind? Uh, okay. I'm, I'm sure there's others I'm forgetting, but they had a pretty decent performance at one of the Dream Hacks uh, in like late 2019. So, again, this is yeah. a character where it, it's, it's definitely it could be a blind spot in your arsenal. Uh, yeah. If you're not careful, but right now Ghost is looking uh, awfully yeah. comfy right now. Has. So it's looking like shot put uh, for the neutral special, faint jump for the down B, like the, the zero suit, the diet zero suit basically, which which makes sense because I know Ghost likes to go for the thrust uppercut, which is not the best recovery move, but if you have the flip jump from zero suit, uh, the zero suit kind of kit, that can work out for you anyway. The back air though, smooth stuff there, good spacing from Ghost. Yeah, I feel like boxing with the with, uh, with the me brawler could be a little bit awkward because of, you know, your your uh <laughs> You're an anthropomorphic avatar character, so your uh, yeah. your your uh, limbs are a little stubby, and mm -hmm. you know uh, Toon Link is uh, still in a phenomenal character, keeping you at bay. But the yeah. added benefit of yeah. having that down B, uh, the diet flip kick, uh, is gonna yeah. uh, pay off in spades for Ghost trying to break zone. I like I like the way the Ghost is playing here too. Ghost has a lead. And is not approaching too much. You know what I mean? He's playing nice and chill. There's no need. You got the lead. It's on the other player to approach. And, and that's something that Toon Link can't do very well. Definitely great at setting up a wall, camping, putting up a, a barrage of projectiles. But and the way Ghost is playing, the, the counterplay here is perfect. Using the two platforms on, on PS2. He's doing a great job. Tech situation scary, though. Good good catch there by Google Maps on the dash attack. Got to finish off this stock, though, because I think Ghost is playing phenomenal right now. Ooh, great use of the uh, that long-lasting Nair hitbox right there from Ghost. Mm -hmm. Just trying to... Google Maps is trying to find their uh, way to their destination, but having a rough time uh, you yeah. know, connecting to Killing Blow. And this is, I Ooh. guess, the problem you run into oh. as... Uh, oh, <laughs> yo, that was sick. I love oh, my it. God. Okay, looking for the shot put and the flip kick. Okay. Or, you know, whatever you want to call it, really. Faint jump is actually what it's called. All right, all right. For some more shot puts is the way to do it. Baiting actually looking for a fake kickflip. Look at that. Going back around the tricky movement. Ghost, again, 
It's about setting up a couple of different things. I'm going to move here twice. I'm going to do the same thing and condition you to kind of look for me in this position and then do something completely different. It's it's really good early stages conditioning. I like the way Ghost moves with purpose. Like I'm a big fan of the way Ghost is playing right now. I want to see what Google Maps has as well. Got to put it. Got to take a stock first though. Yeah, I don't think I've actually ever seen the the me brawler down B kill like that before. This is that's new to me. Mm -hmm. As you see, this. Ghost having a big lead here, so yep. you know they they can just opt to sit back and you know throw some shot puts. And you see, Ghost also not afraid to play around with the items as well. Uh, you know of uh, Toon Link also. Ooh, but gotta gotta gift right there. Uh, did Google Maps and they almost choked it away, but able mm. to uh, get uh, the follow up there. So finally on on the you know on the board right now, but. Uh, it's gonna take a, a little bit more of a comeback right now, as Yeah, and this is the problem is that Ghost has built up such a big lead that Google Maps did a great job cleaning up that first stock. He's gotta do it all over again on the second stock. It only has 5% so far on Ghost. Here we go, got a good situation here. Up tilts, looking for a couple back airs. Okay, 51, that was some great damage. Google Maps coming to life, Koopa. Yeah, no, uh, listen man, it, it, all it could take is a couple of uh, exchanges. You know, from from Toon Link to really get the damage uh, circulating. You know, boomerang yep. into forward air, and you know, bomb confirms in, into forward air. You know, still very much a thing. Ooh, but a great catch of the shot put right there from Ghost as they're continuing uh, this onslaught right here. Ooh, and the, <laughs> that was kind of a cool uh, zoom and kill screen. Not gonna lie. Yeah, you got to like... be so careful. That thrust uppercut is just it's it's super deadly, man. It is just a ridiculously strong move. If you get caught in the wrong spot with it, you just gotta... It happens kind of quick, too. Like, it's kind of... I don't want to say hard to react to, but kind of, honestly. I don't know if I'm, I'm being biased as a Ken player, because that his short you <laughs> takes a while to go through the whole, all the animations. But it's pretty quick, and if you're getting hit by it, you probably weren't expecting it. You probably aren't ready to DI it, so... Nice shot by Ghost. I love the game plan, Koopa. I thought, you know, getting that early stock lead especially, and just playing around the platforms and, and playing those mind games uh, with the flip jump was just super good. Yeah, no, that was that was excellent stuff right there. And um, also, the the chat also brought up a couple of other uh, Toon Link maids I could think of. I forgot about uh, Ryza suit, the the Japanese oh, yeah. uh, Toon Link uh, Rima, another one that comes to mind as well. So this character definitely has some representation. Yeah. Just you got to you might have to stay up late at night to <laughs> to catch it yeah. sometime. But chat, true. I mean that that that's a strong. That's the thing I really like about uh, the thrust upper because it's a strong anti air. It's quick. And uh, Ghost saved it. He did not take any stocks. He didn't really swing with it, actually, that whole game won uh, until it was time to close out the game. So now we're seeing a switch to the Young Lank by Google Maps, and we're going to Smashville. Okay, so a change of bolt. Um, let's see how this plays out, man. I think he's going to try to create. Yeah, I, I like this already. You can see projectile users love this stage. Uh, I love it personally as a Belmont player, the suplex. Nice job. Um, yep. Because you kind of create this tunnel, like they have to approach you in some way. You throw the boomerang, is it going high or is it going straight? And if you guess which way they're going, they either have to hold shield or, or get hit by it. So you use the boomerang to cover one option, and then you just neutral B the other way. Like, the game plan is pretty straightforward, but it's really strong. The problem is, Ghost has some really good item play. He's not afraid to snag the bombs out of air and use them against Koopa Maps. Great parry, I gotta say Koopa, the, the start-stop uh, movement from Ghost is incredibly smooth, and uh, like, it's hard to believe that this is being played. Uh, online, you know, it's just it doesn't look like uh, any any amount of uh, online is affecting Ghost's movement. It's not. Yeah, Ghost is definitely uh, plugged uh, directly into the Nexus right now for sure. Uh, that the, wow, the Nair is enough to get the the job done right there. Incredible. And yeah, I agree. This stage choice is, is such a great stage for uh, for Young Link. Any sort of uh, any sort of projectile that can like you know. Uh, any projectile user like you were bringing up uh, when they're able to control space under the platform is just so hard to to get in on. Uh, and again, uh, Ghost has been doing such a great job getting a, uh, around these projectiles and capitalizing on those uh, those hits up close. Uh, mm -hmm. So Google Maps again hasn't really been able to generate those like uh, those long-winded and for never-ending you know young link combos that you you've you know known to see so far in this game. Mm -hmm. Okay, pressure the ledge here. Okay, a little basketball dribbling. I like it. Google Maps coming to life. The drag down. Good conversion there. I love Young Link conversions, man. He's got a pretty tight window on those, so good stuff to Google Maps. He still needs to close up the stock, though. 
Yeah, that's, that's the the hard part you run into sometimes, man. Uh, you know, fortunately for for Young Link, they you know did give the character a kill throw and plenty of kill confirms at at, at high percents in, in recent patches. Mm. So you know, all it's, it's a matter of time of whether Google Maps can get his hands on Ghost or not. Ooh, okay. I did not think that Ghost would snag the ledger, but the Magna Hand's coming in clutch. Very nice job though. Google Maps still cleaning up the stock. Probably a little later than he would have liked, but it's okay. He's starting to make a comeback here, Koopa. It's looking decent for him. Yeah, like I said, man, all it takes is one string from Young Link, and you suddenly find yourself at 60%, 70%. So all Google Maps needs is no one way. run. No get that done, But nope, Ghost, uh, Ghost getting the job done, man. Uh, excellent job uh, from them. <laughs> so that was up there just onto the platform. He almost did it again. Ghost is insane. Yeah, and no doubt they're, they're holding on to that oh. card until like these later stocks. And wow, that uh, that had some yeah. reach. Good lord. Ooh, oh, wait a second. Okay, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Something's going on here. Okay, good Ooh. movement there. And the down air to cover. That was really, really smooth from Google Maps. Back on the board. Koopa, that's the thing. Is like Google Maps, you know, he's behind by a little bit kind of since the start of the match, but he keeps it very, very competitive throughout. Look at that. Just He could have had the lead there if he got that down tilt. Up though. He, he, I can't believe that didn't kill. Yeah, there's this. Uh, it looks some sus the eye on that. Uh, on that upbeat, so Google Maps getting a second lease on life here. As, I think uh, it could have been a lot worse, honestly. <laughs> I think it definitely could have been death. <laughs> Down tilt, okay. Oh, what? What the heck? What did I just see? Whoa, I know whoa. it was the upbeat, but you just want. Wait. Oh, wait. no! Okay. Too early in the morning for this shenanigans. Yeah, no, I know. Gotta relax. Okay. Good air dodge through the boomerang, actually. That was good recognition. Gotta be careful yeah. here, ghost. Ghost gonna be careful with the approach. I love the wall here from Google Maps. Gets caught with the Nair though. Koopa, this could be the game. Yeah, it's gotta be careful. Ooh, and there we go. The Nair again is enough to get the job done. That me brawler Nair has. Yeah. That is a that's a menace. And, yeah, um, if I if I had to put money on which move was gonna end the game, it was gonna be a Nair on either side. You know what I mean? It's great for Young Link as well. So nice job yeah. by Ghost. Great recovery there at the end too, Koopa. Yeah, no, that's how the game started, and uh that's how uh you know where uh, the set will end, as or not the set, the game will end as Kanga goes or Kanga Ghost uh, goes up uh, two games to nil here uh, on Google Maps. And Chad did correct me uh, earlier. I, I believe Rise of Two plays like twenty different characters, and I feel like Toon Link might be one of them. Um, so okay. yeah, if, if my information's off a little bit there, I I, I apologize for that. But uh, yeah, we'll we'll see if uh, there are any other characters that uh, that Google Maps can can pull out. Uh, but this this me brawler from from Ghost has looked uh, phenomenal so far. Has yeah, man. You gotta say Ghost. Shout out to the crew, Kanga Esports. It's got Jay Dizzle on it, one of the top seeds in the bracket today. A young link player too. That has to be you know coming in clutch there because him and Ghost are what? Google Maps. He's all over the damn map with the characters that he's picking because you went <laughs> Toon Link, Young Link, Ice Climbers. What is going on here? Yeah, the, the destination is definitely rerouted here for, for Google Maps, so we'll see if, uh, what's the change will be here, and... <laughs> <laughs> Everything's like funnier. Oh yeah, please keep going for that suplex, that is simply incredible. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm sure that's a that's a strat in this matchup. Go for the suplex to break up the climbers. Uh, yeah, that that that's every that should be every character's game plan against the ice climbers. But these characters are together. Just suplex them. Yes. Ooh. Super, and, <laughs> suplex and then them. you bait out the blizzard. You just uh, shot put instead. The game. The the plan is simple. That, that's all it is. This is great. Yeah, and I imagine that the suplex does a pretty good job. Uh, you know, breaking up the climbers. Uh, and there we go. Just watches. Nana do something. Oh, that hit both of them. That was a two for one right there. Like, what, what do you What do you do when your brother's getting suplexed? Like, I wouldn't just stand there personally. That's what Nana does. Nana always, I feel like, makes like the wrong choice. You know what I mean? <laughs> and Nana just can't, she can't help herself. It's just, it's just the wrong choice every time. Ghost okay. letter deficit for the first time. The ice climbers are working. Koopa. Oh, never mind. All right, tied up. <laughs> That's all it takes sometimes, man. And listen, like I said, the game the game plan against this character is 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 pretty standard across all characters. You know, you want to break up the climbers when they're together, 
uh, if your desyncs are, are, are in, you know, are are good, you will do a lot of damage. Ooh. As you see right here, very mm -hmm. a nice conversion there from Google Maps. Ice climbers, like arguably, I mean, you could argue a couple things are the best move, but I think they're up there universally is like one of the best moves they have in their kit, and it's, it's going to combo so smoothly and nicely off of that center platform there in Smashville. So nice shot by Google Maps, man. I think the counter pick's good for these characters. Got to be careful. That's super, it's so funny that when you suplex one, the other one just watches. I don't know why I think that's so funny, but it's just hilarious. Okay. Okay, gets the rapid jab there. Immediately just breaks it to climbers. Mm -hmm. but, ooh, but, oh, uh, I, Google Maps was just a little... I think he tried to forward air there, which was a little slow to start up. He hit the right call out. Up B. Gonna keep them separated. Yep, do it again. Why not? The up B's working out a couple times. <laughs> Ghost trying to close out the set now. The double up B. Ghost saves those up B's, you know, in his back pocket for as long as he can to, to kind of surprise Google Maps. <laughs> I can't handle that. <laughs> you can't handle them. I feel like most things are funny at 7 in the morning. That's just, that's, that's incredibly funny. <laughs> Get Nana. Oh, jeez. Nana jumped, actually. That was super smart. And by super smart, I mean, like, the obvious thing that you should really do. But, you know, Nana did it, so the bar's a little lower for Nana. Yeah, when, yeah, when you're the AI, a broken clock is still right twice a day, so <laughs> there's, there's still... Mm -hmm. Every now and then, Nana has... Uh, the AI has its moments. Yeah. All right. Gonna play it patiently here. Getting grabbed, though, with a forward arrow. Okay, I like it. Good conversion. Oop. Try, yep. Yeah, trying to generate some offense here. And again, the suplex just absolutely messes these characters up, man. Uh, it's so good at separating the climbers in a real low committal way because even if one shields, you still hit the other. Like, it's it's pretty great stuff. Mm hmm. Well, of that bait, too. When you have the ice climber separated, it's easy just to swing and hit Nana and take the damage on her. But if you can bait and, and hit the, the Popo instead or, or the leader, whichever one it is, I think that's really good, too. Okay, gonna make it back. Nana holding on, too? Nah, that's gonna be it. That's gonna be it, yeah. Yes, yeah, so it will be Sopo here, and uh, <laughs> that was one hell of a trade if I've ever seen one, but it will be uh, Sopo here, and that is going to be all. No, it's Nopo. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> you. you know. That was good, though. I like Google Maps. He, he came closer every single game, uh, but that's a 3-0 for Ghost. What a nasty uh, meat brawler. I love the, the up, uh, what's it called? The thrust uppercut was just incredible. Um, what a tool to use. And then also the faint jump um, in neutral was just uh, all the tools uh, that you're using. I think the number one thing about Ghost, though, was just the movement was incredible. He mo Ghost moves with purpose, which is kind of crazy to say about Mies, because when you think about Mies, you don't think about their movement first off. You no. kind of think about a couple other things, but <laughs> use of the special moves and the movement was so smart from Ghost. So moving on 3-0. Uh, nice job to Ghost. And he qualifies. Yes, good, good call to chat. Yeah, good on Ghost, man. That, that's uh, awesome stuff. Uh, excellent display of me, Brawler, right there. A character, you know, you don't see too much of, uh, you know, representation-wise. And that's why the Smash World Tour is great, man. It's bringing together uh, a whole bunch of character diversity. And now you're, you're going to have to throw me, Brawler, into the mix. And, yeah. you know, good stuff from uh, Ghost. We can yeah. do a truck through here to these last chance qualifiers. That's kind of exactly the player you want to see qualify through these things, right? I know Gamer's pumped, obviously. He gets to make the, the YouTube thumbnails with, with the Team Rocket, uh, me, Brawler in it. But, um, I mean, if I'm a top player from another region, I just watch that. There's no way that's that's who I want to fight. You know what I mean? Like, it's not it's definitely not the me, Brawler that, that is uh, relentless. It's just, that's not who you want to fight. There's no way. Nah, man, for sure. Uh, for, but... Chat, I don't trust anything you say. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it comes down to what players do or what they're about, I just don't trust you. Looking exhausted? I'm not tired at all, bro. Nah, I'm pretty I'm good. Feel, I just always good. look like I just always look like this. What are you talking about? Yeah, it's true. I'm feeling good. Um Yeah. Alright guys, so real quick, after those two awesome matches, we're gonna cut to a quick commercial break, but we will be back. Stay tuned.
All right, and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the last chance qualifier here in the Oceania region uh, online portion of the Smash World Tour. I'm Koopa, joined as always by my uh, good friend Hazmat, and we're going to keep the gravy train rolling, Haz, uh, yeah. with Maple Mage stepping back up against uh, SAQ. Yeah, it should be a good one, man. Uh, so that is, yeah, Q and SA is in front of the title. It's just a lot of letters. So, like, when you said that, I was like, who's that? Okay, no, it's Q. So Q yeah. plays. <laughs> What I'm told by production is that Q plays primarily Samus, but also I saw a couple other characters on there, Yoshi, so we'll see who Q is feeling today. And then Maple Mage we saw earlier, a um, couple of crispy characters there, including a Byleth and a Korin, kind of like the, the slower, kind of tankier versions of, of Fire Emblem characters, so it should be an interesting match here. So don't forget, too, that the whole bracket today, so we had the 12 players uh, qualify from the online bracket. What we're working on right now is the four players from the Last Chance Qualifier. We already saw Ghost qualify and tr and uh, Tricks as well, um, so they're also kind of working on playing through their seating and all that good stuff. So as we work through and have all the regional qualifiers, that rolls up into one big bracket kind of there at the end. So there you go. There's the schedule and how you have it, and I'm just excited to watch some good Smash. Oh, Maple Mage also has a Zero Suit? Okay. Oh, right. wow. That's, that's, that's a, a secondary. That's a... Okay. Oh, actually, Zero Suit's the main. Oh, wait. Who are the secondaries? I need, it's an eye chart right there. Okay, I see. Kirby. I see Corrin. I see Kirby. I see Pyra and Mithra and Yoshi. Now, if I now uh, if I read the line lower, I might need a stronger prescription. Um, but yep. Yeah, we're gonna see again South uh, South Australia versus uh, the ACT. Um, and I looked at that acronym before, and I I truly forget what it stands for. But uh, again, you also get an eye test at the bottom of Maple Mage's uh, bio. Yeah, uh, with their favorite game. Uh, their favorite games. Uh, Warrior Land. Underrated Warrior Land series. is a cool one. Yeah, that's an interesting one for sure. Uh, all the other ones are like pretty, you know, all those other ones are, they were in the N64 version of Smash. So like, you know, very popular IPs. <laughs> but the Wario Land, that's a good call out right there. I like that. Yeah, that's a great game. If they make another Wario Land game, I'll, I'll be a, a happy camper. But yeah. That is neither cool. here nor there. Uh, so whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on. Up is down. Pyro is Mithra. And uh, that's not a Fire Emblem character has, but that is indeed Zero Suit Samus. So here we go. Game one between Q and Maple Mage. Uh, winner of this, I believe, uh, uh, moves on and is uh, to the qualify or is qualified. So a lot of stake here. Ooh. I've seen that one before. Okay. The air flip kick not connecting, but the thing that I like so far, Maple Mage not afraid to throw out the down air in instantly. And what that says is, like, this is a five-game set. I'm instantly down airing. You're always going to have to kind of respect that option. So I like setting that pace early on. Yeah, for sure. And you can definitely, you know, see Shades of ZSS doing uh, really well against, uh, you know, Pyra here in particular. You know, ZSS against, uh, despite, yeah. you know, some nerfs, is still a, a menace on these slower characters. And, uh, you know, Maple Mage can definitely have their way with them. Great read on the tech roll in, the nice. down snatch, uh, and the up the uh, will finish the job right there. So Maple Mage getting on the board first. That's kind of a classic. I, I never roll into zero suits, or I try not to. Sometimes you do, you do just because. In this case, you really don't want to. Yeah, Maple Mage definitely looking for that, that tech in. Very nice job by them. So what we're also seeing is that the, the Blazing End getting dealt with pretty well, too. Zero Suit can kind of maneuver around it, like you were saying, Cooper. The maneuverability and the agility of this character, Zero Suit, definitely still her strongest points. She can still hit hard, too, with the upbeat. Yeah, no, just a great combination of evasiveness and speed. Uh -oh. And a great catch right there. Ooh. Wow, and that's enough. Great reach right there on the down smash uh, from Maple play. Mage. Counter play really early on. Flame no oh, ah, drop down, down air would have looked cool right there to end it, but Maple Mage playing it safe instead. Nice, another down air too, I'm telling you. This is, this is long-term conditioning. I think Maple Mage is that type of player where they say, if I'm getting away with something, I'm going to keep doing it until, until it stops working. You know, we saw it with the get-up attacks and all the other stuff in the earlier set. And now we're seeing it again with the down airs above, from above Q. Yeah, so, um, <laughs> you know, there we go right there. As, uh, you know, Q does get on the board here. Uh, but Mabel Mage, you know, uh, definitely a big right now. And great awareness to not go for the tech roll right there. But still, uh, the Paralyzer are going to force a defensive option from Q. And Mabel Mage is just going to continue the offensive onslaught here, has man. Mm -hmm. Uh, don't count these characters out, that's for sure. I'm surprised. This is all all uh, Pyro so far. I've not seen Mithra make an appearance. I feel like Mithra would be important in this matchup, but man, that down air. That down air is something else, I gotta say. That down air, I got some words for that down air, you know? <laughs> yeah, I, I love to be the intern Sakurai played at lunch. That was like, yeah, this is all right. <laughs> yes, yep, fine. seems good. <laughs> seems good, boss. What's for lunch? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're buying. 
Okay, looking for the jab. A B, yep, that should be a punish. Ah, yep, wow, that, that certainly did KO. I was gonna say it might be close, but nope, definitely not. Very nice job. Maple Mage with the Zero Suit. I like the change up, Koopa. Yeah, nope, showing the range right there in characters. And to go back to what you said before about uh, all Pyra, no Mithra. Uh, interesting choice there from Q. Um, you know, I, I you know, obviously you want to find your your ends with these characters to find, you know, which scenarios are best for them. And I would imagine, you know, especially against Zero Suit Samus, a character that can uh, run circles around most characters in the cast, you'd probably want a character with just as, uh, you know, enough speed. Uh, to match it, but I don't know. It could be a preference yeah. thing from, from Q. This matchup looks awful for both of them. I don't know what you mean by both of them in the chat. You mean both Pyro and Mithra? I don't know. I, I, yeah, Mithra I, yet. I, I, yeah, think, <laughs> I honestly think I think Mithra might be the play here. I think you got to match the speed with the speed. Pyro, like you said, Koopa, I, I think you said it well, is they're just going to be out uh, outpaced by Zero Suit. Yeah. Let's see. Maple Mage. Potentially changing the stage or something, so. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to the homie Sharp that's staying up just Sharp. as late as we are. <laughs> What's going speaking on, of people that Speaking of people that play um, uh, a plethora of characters. Uh, yeah, true. <laughs> I hope he's yeah, playing but... these characters too. I think he is, but I'm not sure. He, he already, he's got a lot under his belt already, so. <laughs> he's got, he's we'll got see. a lot of his plays. <laughs> yeah. Whew. All right, let's see what we got here. It's going to be, okay. Samus versus Samus. Zero suit against regular. Let's see what we got here. I like the idea of, of trying out the, the Pyra and Mithra and then going back to the, the main if it didn't work out, so. Maple Mage is Australian sharp. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Okay. Yeah, I, it, like it. I mean, it tracks, but yeah, we'll see if the, if the change the character here is for uh, for Q makes a difference. Uh, you know, so far it's looking like uh, same song and dance right now for Maple Mage. Looking pretty mm -hmm. comfortable. Okay. Pressure so far. Maple Mage definitely not shy to pull the trigger. Uh, with zero suit between down bees uh, or down airs and, and and the up bees too, happy to swing away with this character. Yeah, no, for sure. The, uh, especially you know near the legend of scenarios like that, and definitely I'm sure, especially on the tri plats, you're probably more opt to go for the boost kicks. I don't know if you if ZSS can reach the top platform on Yoshi's uh, from the center with it, but you know regardless, cool. uh, there isn't much that Samus can chase them up there with. A great early release on the boost kick right there. Yeah, I would like to see that down air connect because Q kind of earned it by uh, cutting off the flip jump. That's one thing you really need to do in this matchup against Zero Suit. You can't can't let her get back for free in terms of using flip jump as a, a good defensive tool to get out. Wow. <laughs> Accident, accidental <laughs> offense, man. Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, the funniest thing, sorry, chat. The funniest thing about that clip is that not only was it slight voice crack, but also the ping, like, uh, of my, I don't know what it was, my internet or something. So it was a, it was a perfect scenario. But anyway, back to the game. Two stocks apiece here for the two, the Samai? Samuses? Yeah, that, let's go with that. The Samai? Okay. <laughs> yeah. The zero suit variety and the suited variety. Nair, flip kick. Uh-oh. Way off stage. <gasps> way off stage. Yep, oh, that should, that should, should, should be it. Yep. Randall? Q. Randall? Advantageous. That was the way to do it. Looking for an opportunity there. No, that was a huge reversal of fortune right there for uh, for Q, and that's exactly how the first stock was taken too. That accent, that that down B, uh, ever so cleverly placed from Q, I yep. uh, was able to take the wind out of uh, Maple Mage's second jump there, and just like that, you know, the switch to Samus, uh, probably not conventionally, has worked out so far. Mm hmm. Well, it's, it's the offstage play. And it looks like you're seeing a lot more kind of matchup counterplay. Definitely a lot more familiar or a lot more comfortable with the, with the pick of Samus. So Q mixing it up. Has to be careful, though. You're never out of the woods against Zero Suit. You just kind of are. She can, just, she can take your stocks at pretty much zero at any point. Yeah, well, let's see what the answer is going to be here for Maple Mage. Uh, you know, so I'd say one solid hit away from, uh, you know, from Boost Kick or something will... Uh, Definitely secured a stock here, but almost in the triple digits. Uh, Q looking yep. really, really solid on this on the second game here. Yeah, I like that. It might be a combination of you know I want to try out this Pyro thing in the first game. It just didn't work out. Second game, he's like, you know what? If Pyro doesn't work out. I get my counterpick stage because you ban for Pyro and Mithra. Leave open the good Samus stage of Yoshi's. Gets to go on Yoshi's. Gets to feel himself, and now he has all the momentum. I'm not saying he calculated that out after the first game, but it's a nice, nice thing to a nice backup plan basically. Yeah, no, excellent stuff right there, man. And again, it might not have, uh, 
it might not have initially uh, worked worked out the way you thought. You know, a couple of uh, you know cleverly placed bombs and some great awareness. Yeah. Uh, you know, off stage, and hey, that's that's enough what you need, man. But <laughs> does, yeah. does Q play? The, is, is Q going to play the counter pick when you win game? Because that's gonna that's gonna keep everybody on their toes. Mm hmm. Yeah, we're gonna see what happens. I know in Maple Mage, obviously, in their own right, has a ton of different characters. Okay, and it, I think it's like, gonna be at least a change of scenery. That would be my guess. I don't think we're going back to Yoshi's. You gotta change something up, you know what I mean? Is I feel like the plan there, like, even though they got Yoshi's, you leave that open as Zero Suit because you kind of have the wall to bounce off of and play with. But the fact of the matter is that Q was better off stage than Maple Mage for sure. And that's kind of where Q won the match. So take away that wall a little bit and see if you can just kind of play more on a stage. Try Plat still, of course, good for Zero Suit. Uh, she loves moving around those platforms and comboing off of them. The thing is, uh, you're going to be able to avoid that wall situation that kind of cost you two stocks in the last game. So see, see what we got here, Koopa, in game three. Yeah, no, uh, for sure. And Q looking really comfortable in the ledge here too, using those uh, those long tilts that uh, Samus has to play with and stuff like that. So, you know, ooh, going for the uh, the uh, uh, the no uh, charge uh, shot right there. And this this is rough. This is really really tough. But Samus, I feel like uh, not zero suit, Sam, just Samus, plain Samus, vanilla Samus does incredibly well when she has a stock lead. Like, I feel like she's, she could just lock down and play super defensively, not have to worry about anything. She's weak oh, when yeah. she's behind and has to approach, but this is a position where, you know, you kind of give, give to the stock for free, and now uh, Q is going to run away with it. Yeah, no, for sure, but Maple Mage uh, trying to go back on the offensive here, and I agree, when Samus is, is playing with the lead, this character has so many, you know, tools to play with uh, to keep their opponents at bay, but the Plasma Whip, the ultimate equalizer right there. Yeah. Uh, so great stuff there from Maple Mage, and you know, 78 uh, percent is nothing that for Zero has to to sweat about right now. This character can still kill you at alarmingly yeah. early percents, so you know, definitely Even not out of him, right. Yeah, <laughs> the, the, it, 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 it's so like cliche, but I mean, it, you listen, you gotta gotta call it like it is sometimes. The thing is that Q has shown some good proficiency in this matchup so far, um, cutting off the, the flip jump in the air and avoiding nares for the most part, at least nares that lead to flip kick and early KO. See, even that, like, you can take that. You're not going to get nair flip kick at that percentage, but here we go. Q has to recover from deep here. And for Zare, I like it. Good pressure there for Maple Mage, unable to capitalize all the way, but it was good pressure throughout. Yeah. There we go. Uh, Maple Mage goes for the up B, uh, lands on the platform, but still not out of harm's way just yet. And there you go, like you you brought up in the last game, has man. Maple Mage not afraid to let it rip, uh, you know, on the uh, the boost kick, and you know I'm sure Q's starting to catch on yep. to that. So we get out floating around Q, trying to find a spot to attack. Good trade there for Q, but now he's in the corner. Better damage, but the positioning's wrong. Gonna get the upbeat. No, the back air. I like the back air there because. Zero Suit can fall really fast, but uh, Q is feeling confident. Instead of just going for, you know, a forward smash or something to kind of cover that out, down smash to cover those options, went for the back, fire, the back air for the surefire KO. Yeah, no, just a little bit slow on the draw on that boost kick, but back air for back air. Anything you can do, I can do because uh, we're the same person. <laughs> Canonically, right. but uh, ex excellent stuff right there from Maple Mage. Evening things up, and again, you know, uh, percents are, are definitely within reason here. Oh. oh, oh no! Oh no! Oh my God. I wasn't sure if he took the flip jump or the regular jump, but it looks like it was the regular jump. Flip jump was left, but it wasn't. You know, Maple Mage didn't pull the trigger early enough on the upbeat, and again, off stage was the determiner there, putting Q back on top. Yeah, and listen, that's how we saw you know, two stocks taken in in that last game. You know, uh, Maple Mage probably getting tunnel vision, getting a little bit lost. Uh, uh, you know, probably getting a little bit lost in the sauce uh, going for the edge guards. And Maple Mage just right there to throw out a hitbox. And, you know, it, yeah. Maple Mage getting hit by it. So good stuff. Uh, great awareness as we now have, uh, see two straight games won by uh, Q here. Yeah, it's been pretty crazy uh, so far. I think Q's got to be feeling pretty good. I think stick with the game plan here. I think the air to air um, on stage has been really, really good for Q. And then obviously off stage has been amazing too. So I think Maple Mage. I really like how they play uh, a little recklessly, like a little aggressive. We saw that really work out for them in game one. I think pumping the brakes a little bit here and pulling back uh, could be very beneficial for Maple Mage. We saw a couple Zares connecting there, especially off stage. I think um, pull back and do a little more of that. It's tough against regular Samus too, though. Yeah, no, for sure, man. And we're going to see the... Uh...
the stickings with the uh, the same is here you know ride the hot hand to gotcha here and as q is sitting on qualifier point right now trying to punch their ticket to the big dance uh offline uh from the oceana region uh but let's see if maple mage has anything left in the tank uh, hazmat yep for the up air there okay good pressure i like a i like how maple mage is going for the up airs there not trying to over swing or do anything maple mage knows they need a lot more damage on q where they're ready to take a stock, so just keep the uh, advantageous uh, positioning more so than cashing it out and taking the early damage, so it's good stuff. A lot of charge shots are landing too. Up B, yep, good confirm, great. It broke the grab, still able to run up and get the up B. It's still a quick move despite the nerfs. Very nice recognition there by Maple Mage. Yeah. Played a little and more patiently. Go ahead. No, I was gonna say, that's what Maple Mage was missing in these last two games. Uh, Q was just playing really smart about what to do in those tech situations. And uh, Maple Mage, instead of uh, now maybe opting to go for the down smash every time, is now mixing up with the Paralyzer shot uh, to either, you know, again, force a defensive yep. option uh, or, you know, just straight up get the hit and convert it into a killing uh, move right there. Yeah, it w what we should see here now, Koopa, is a whole different matchup because now, it now it's Samus that needs to approach Zero Suit. So, see a lot of different types of pressure sitting in the corner. Maple Mage is, is a little more poised and confident now. Probably has to do with the stock lead or maybe just uh, this kind of different strategy of mixing up the pacing a little bit. It's working out for Maple Mage. I like it. Yeah, again, the the uh, inclusion of the charge of uh, the Paralyzer shot into the diet has uh, is, is definitely proven to be fruitful so far. But... Again, uh, yeah, you know, Q is Q has shown that they're 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 able to take these stocks in, in uh, unconventional ways and stuff like that. You know, being really aware you know, off stage and stuff. But ooh, trying to go for the catch uh, was Maple Mage, knowing that they probably weren't going to get down to the ground to get the boost yeah. kick. Yeah, I try to scoop them on the way up. I like it. It's it's obviously harder to hit, but I like the idea there. Yeah, Maple Mage has been hitting a lot of Paralyzers here, too. Going to the gun a lot. Yep, you can see shooting it there, too. It's got infinite ammo. You might as well up tilt, though. Good timing. Not a lot of uh, invincibility left on the little ledge hang there at the higher percentages. So let's see what Maple Mage does with this lead right now. Wow. <laughs> Look, looking like uh, Zero Suit Samus combos of old with the double up air into the up B. Yeah, both players just trying to... Jockey for position right now. Uh, that boost kick back to the platform will go punished uh, by Q as they're still, you know, down in percents right now, trying to generate some offense. Yep. See the corner here. Yep, we're seeing the bulk of the neutral B kind of charge shots into the jab. Hold that shield. I'm going to grab you. Pressure the ledge here. Q on fire right now. The offense is looking unstoppable. Not even going off stage. He's going for the ledge trapping. I like it. Mixing it up, Koopa. It's so important to do throughout these long sets. Yeah, no, uh, for sure, man. You gotta keep your opponent thinking and on their toes. Ooh, gonna miss right there at the side B. You know, both players having to be very, very careful. Uh, you know, percents are high enough to where any solid hit, uh, you know, with rage being a factor, could result in uh, death right now. That back air might have gone to the back of the head, but just whipping a little bit. I think it might have been a slight hurt box shuffle there, too, on the grab. I think she kind of crouches just a little bit. I'm gonna watch the replay here, actually. Let me see. Because I think when Zero Suit goes to grab, like she, she kind of gets low a little bit. Just a little bit, yep. Anyway, Maple Mage taking that stock, extending the lead again and reclaiming it for themselves. Yeah, the, the uh, you know, I, I'm sure the, the off, sometimes forgotten, you know, kill option that DSS has at those super high percents uh, with the immediate up throw. So let's see what Maple Mage does here, man. With the stock to play with, Zero Suit Samus is a dangerous character to, to go up yeah. again. Back air though, Q's got something to say. Going to the ledge, forcing him to ledge trap a little bit more instead of uh, you know playing that off stage game, which is working out for Maple Mage. Again, both players having to be extra careful here. Good. Ooh, okay. the back air will connect and only uh, sub 50% on this last stock. Exactly uh, where you want to be if you're Q right now. This is an yeah. anybody game still. Slight delay on that back air there too. Got it very close to the ground. The slight delay there uh, it was really nice because Maple Mage was holding shield, which usually means someone's looking for a parry or, or at worst case, just shield something. So if you throw off the timing and they try to parry, you get a KO just like that. So that was really good timing mix up there by Q. Uh-oh. I also love the cheekiness of that uh, reverse uh, screw attack right there from Q. Yep. Uh, to, to catch Maple Mage, you know, maybe fall asleep at the ledge a bit. Ooh, oh my gosh. I know. Maple Mage was shoving. You know what I mean? Just push him right into a Q. Ooh, okay, okay, rolling. Uh-oh. This will be damage. 
Nice. I think Q was looking for the flip jump the first time. Couldn't find it, though. Maple Mage, again, is having a lot of success here uh, in this game four, going to the ledge, actually, enforcing the ledge trapping situation, moving around it. There you go, though. Yeah, yeah this, this is a percentage, you, you know, it starts to creep in your mind, Hazmat, that you start maybe playing to not lose versus uh, win the game if you're Maple Mage. Yeah, it's, when it comes down to getting the KO, like that, that's a whole different ball game. Sometimes you just got to give that up and be like, okay, I'm not going to get the KO yet. I can win neutral in a small way. Like these Zares or these these uh, neutral bees are really good. Uh-oh. Uh-huh. How oh, that, 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 that not connecting? Oh, no! <laughs> I know. I feel like Maple Mage's got to stay on stage. Just stay on stage. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah, he was very good you, off stage. Especially when you've seen multiple times that uh, Q has been able to you know, 180 some of these stocks when you go deep for these edge guards. I am truly at the edge of my seat right now. Wow. The run up wow. of Smash. Uh, again, the the other often forgot, you know, kill option that ZSS has. Uh, you know, smash. Maple Mage got, yeah, yeah, the up smash. Uh, excellent stuff right there uh, from Maple Mage. We're going to a game well, five. And Q had shown a lot of jumping forward airs, you know what I mean? So in that situation, mm -hmm. when Zero Suit's running and approaching, uh, Q was trying to anti-air Maple Mage, so Maple Mage goes, you know what, I'm just going to anti- He was trying to anti-air Maple Mage with his own aerial, so instead Maple Mage said, okay, I'm just going to anti-air you instead. Um, up, up smash from Zero Suit is definitely a committal option if, if uh, that didn't work. Uh, Q was certainly going to get a punish out of it, so nice job by Maple Mage. It was a good calculation right there. It's We're going to a game five, is what that one yeah. group of. And you, and you saw that Q gave up that roll read, you know, maybe a couple of seconds, uh, 30 or so seconds earlier. Uh, and listen, you, you, if you fool me once on that, shame on me. And you fool me twice, I'm going to up smash you. So uh, listen, we'll, we'll see what the stage choice is going to be here. Um, and we'll see what uh, adjustments each player makes. Uh, you know, you saw a, a much more steady diet of the neutral be there. And uh, that definitely made a difference in, in ledge trapping uh, for Maple Mage. Um, but we're also seeing adjustments on the side of Q where he's getting, where they're getting a, a, a lot cleaner uh, on these boost kick uh, punishes and stuff like that. So we're going to see yeah. who makes the necessary adjustments here in this last game. And I'm going to say, Koopa, I think this first stock means a whole lot. I feel like whoever took the first stock uh, did exceptionally well throughout the rest of the game. So if not, I, I wasn't keeping track of who won. But I feel like it's just, especially in this matchup, where there's a lot of kind of mid-range zoning and forcing the opponent to approach. If you have that lead, you get that extra bit of uh, power behind your pressure. Yeah, it is especially so if you're Samus, you know, uh, yeah. your game plan just completely changes if you're in the lead versus when you're not. Uh, oh, wow, my God. <laughs> that could have been narrowed to flip kick. It's crazy. It's, it's just a really tight window. Up smash, barely living. Good DI there by Maple Mage holding on. Can they get off the ledge, though? Yes. Can they make it back to center stage? Yes, they do. Going air to air, too. You see what I'm saying? Uh, Koopa is that they're mixing yeah. it up a lot going air to air, and it seems like Maple Mage is just winning those interactions more often than not. And you're seeing a lot, uh, you know, nobody's leaving any uh, stones unturned in this uh, last game has. You saw, you know, two upbees at a shield, one to take yeah. the stock right there, and a lot of up smash at a shield now for Q. So definitely uh, yeah. leaving it all on the line here, but still having, you know, a bit of work to make up here. Absolutely. Uh, Bear's trying to scout out a back air too. I like that because you can catch up the bad DI as well, because they think you're just going to go for double. Uh, okay. Oh, wait, <laughs> what? Why? What happened? That could have been a panic air dodge or a buffered air dodge, but you know. <laughs> what score, happened? It'll look like a line drive in the scorebook the next day, but. <laughs> right. You know, let's let's hope that that uh, stock doesn't you know come back to haunt Q in the later part of this game, though. Oh man, oh man. So I, it, that's a huge thing, Koopa, because Q's been so good off stage, especially with Samus, was an excellent recovery. So you just kind of hate to see that buffer air dodge kind of come out. Might be a little bit of nerves getting to him, but either way. Even matchup now, both players are about mid 50s apiece. So we're going to see what they can come up with here, though, Koopa. Yeah, uh, Q stuck in the corner right there, able to find a way out. But Maple Mage doing a great job just putting them, uh, you know, back in uh, harm's way right now. Oh! Uh -oh. <laughs> I love the there, too, because you kind of go for that cross up again. You kind of think up air in that situation. When a Samus is below you and, and they're trying to attack you, you always think it's going to be the up air. The up air is so good. But if you nair right there and you hold the wrong way in the DI, you're going to get crushed. The oh, dash what? attack is enough to clean that stock up. Oh, my goodness. I was not expecting that. Yeah, just barely, too. Uh, she kind of lingered in the blast zone for a second. Like The game was like, yeah, okay, you're dead. You know, like it thought about it for a second. Had that loading time, you know? Ooh, okay. All right, the, the downer will convert right there and able to combo it into the up air. Uh, definitely uh, 
an art an artisan zss combo right there for maple mage uh, okay yeah oh yeah oh no not off stage not off stage maple mage just chill just chill it's fine yeah. <laughs> oh no oh no oh my gosh <laughs> i yeah. gotta applaud maple mage's uh you know just constantly bravery? having their foot on yeah bravery having putting their foot on the gas at all times in these ledge trap situations that's incredible Get out of the corner, the flip kick to the other side. Very nice job on the cross up there. Maple Mage Q, this is a qualifying match. Qualifying stock, actually, Koopa. It's all led up to this. Let's see who's gonna take it home. Is Q gonna clutch it out, or is Maple Mage gonna make another comeback here? Yeah, you're gonna see the soft back air combo into the dash attack there. Gonna give Q a little bit more breathing room to play with. And, you know, the high ground has not proven to be as safe as a place as I'm sure Maple Mage would want, as Q's done a great job patrolling these platforms below them. Dash attack, good damage here. Positioning two, charge shots online. Very, very scary for Maple Mage. Not jumping though, there were two anti-air attempts there. Neither of them worked. Maple Mage, great discipline so far, Koopa. Ooh, you, you see the, the fear of the charge shot coming into play here. Uh oh Oh my gosh. Wow, well, not, oh. doesn't want to give it up. Is that going to be it? It is not. But I wonder uh, if Q. Maple Mage could have pushed Q close to the corner there, made made that a little bit tighter. But either way, wow, the back air going right through the invulnerability of the flip jump. Okay. Again, the air to air. Oh, not <laughs> my gosh. Koopa. Could be I... either of them. <laughs> I am so stressed go. right now. The fair connecting. Oh, he tried to intercept him with a nair. He was a little too slow, though, to cancel his charge shot. You see Maple Mage probably looking for a jump out of the corner oh, there. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I wow. love that. I love that option because instead of going for the kill option right off the top there, you know, you go up air into another up air into an up B or, or like try to get that or up air into flip kick or up air into something else. You wait and you go for the back air, cross up and get, get the kick the other way. Really nice stuff. And that's what I'm talking about when the kill's on the table, you don't have to take it immediately. Instead of swinging that first up air, a lot of other players might have tried to go for the back air immediately or even a flip mm -hmm. jump in that situation. Situation, but not Maple Mage holding on to the KO option until the second hit. That's super smart. That was great. Yeah, yeah that was that was an excellent set from both players right there. And yeah. again, the game one Pyro Mithra didn't work out for, for Q, but yeah. the switch to Samus was able to, you know, right the ship, bring it to a last hit scenario on game five. And God, it's, it's one of those cases where you wish both players could make it or something because yeah. that was just such a, a closely contested set. But Maple Mage will be the third out of four people to qualify uh, for the offline regional finals here for the Oceania region. And uh, congratulations to them. You know, there's still work to be done, of course, you know, in the seating department. But wow, that was a you, you could have asked for a better set. Yeah, uh, there has. That was that was so close between both players. And we're getting close to our last qualifier, Koopa, and it's just been action packed all day. I hope you guys didn't miss a second of it because every single match on stream has been absolutely amazing. We're kind of coming up to our next and final qualifier. The rest of the matches throughout the, the rest of uh, depending on where you are, the morning, the evening, the afternoon, the rest of the matches throughout the bracket. There you go. That covers everything. Uh, are going to be after this one. They're going to be proceeding into the regional bracket, which is also super important. But for qualifiers, this is the last one we got today. You got Coleman on the left there. Wario main with a me sword fight. What's up with all these means going on in the Oceania region? We don't know. And then we also got Google Maps who plays Young Link. Toon Link, obviously, you see there. And, and Ice Climber. So I like seeing the Ice Climbers for Google Maps. I don't know if we're going to see that come out. Um, against Coleman here, but either way, I'm kind of excited for any any matchup uh, that, that is on the table here, Koopa. Yeah, and I love the the addition of the smiley face at the end of Coleman's favorite uh, uh, game series, which is Zelda. Zelda, it's a smiley face. <laughs> yeah, that's my favorite of the Zelda games, The Legend of Zelda smiley face. Col yep. <laughs> the sem yep. Semicolon. Uh... It's like the opposite of the new one. That's like Legend, of, like the <laughs> new Breath of the Wild is like Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, like frowny face. You know what I mean? Like it just looks kind of like scared. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's going That's on? That's funny, but, but, but like, we'll see how it... Uh, you, you, after you. I like the tag, uh, Google Maps. And I was going to say, uh, happy birthday to Giorno in the chat. Giorno69. Uh, so they were birthday, wish, they but, wishing you a happy birthday before. Yeah, I, you know, it's not my birthday, but I, I'm not going to say no to that, so I appreciate it. But happy birthday, <laughs> I Giorno. I know it's really, birthday, because our birthdays are right next to each other, so... It's true. Uh, I really like your theme, Giorno. So, there you go. One of the best teams in all of anime. So you go, Koopa. From what I know, which isn't a lot. <laughs> but in either case, chat. <laughs> Thank you for throwing me that bone. <laughs>
And either, yeah, I had to, dude. Well, I couldn't say it mid set, you know what I mean? Because if players go back and like want to watch it, like I couldn't just be goofing around the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> oh uh, man. Happy happy birthday to us, man. Happy birthday. Um, but yeah, man. Listen, we'll we'll see what what uh, shakes out here. You know, <laughs> Wario, a character that I feel like, uh, you know, how, how did? What, what yeah. do you think the consensus is on Wario? Not at the yeah. Uh, th we we sat with a patch for a couple of weeks. I think people are nervous. Of course, I think anytime a character gets changed, uh, a lot of people abandon ship, which I totally understand. But the people who stick with it, I mean, you gotta look at. I mean, the, the kind of poster child for sticking with Wario is uh, Gluttony. You know what I mean? Like no matter what, played him in Brawl when he was high tier, and then Smash Four, whatever abomination that character was, he still stuck with him, even if he did try Cloud <laughs> a little bit. But Gluttony stuck with Wario through thick and thin. It's paid off big time. So I think you just gotta stick with the character that you really like and one that one that, that fits you. Uh, really well personally, so we'll see what happens here, man. The nerfs, I still think he's a great character. I don't think they like they didn't like you know remove his up B or something like that. Like he's still very playable and very good, probably high tier ish character. So there you go, Wario Pog. That's right. E, -E why are you still awake? What's going on? Oh yeah, you don't go, to, you don't sleep. I saw that. Yeah, he's yeah he said he doesn't go to bed till like five o'clock anyway. So well, fair enough. It's getting close. We got eight. We got eight minutes of VE left, guys. So you know, get you know, uh, make make the most of it. <laughs> yeah, man, it's been a great event. I mean, I mean, just seeing E in chat, like commentary's been great, the competition's been great, and the more we do Smash World Tour, the more. And, and I think the only way I can really describe it is, it just feels like home, man. It feels like you know, really commentating Smash and having you know a a, a purpose. <laughs> you know, what's going on here? I just saw what Phil said in the chat. I'm just. <laughs> Easy. Yep. Anyway, on. we're gonna move on from that one. Uh, yep. There yeah, man, we look, go. This this has been a great time so far. Uh, I've I've been having so much fun tonight. I I can't wait to to visit Australia, in uh, you know, whenever it, it becomes safe and un allowed to do so. Because the scene, if the, if the chat's any indication of how cool the scene is, I I am ready for it. And it's a it's a beautiful country. I've always wanted to visit it. And you've oh, been there yourself, so yeah. It and like I said, I know we have some new people in the chat but i went there a few years ago and it was a smash four scene at the time and, and those people uh competition was stellar it was really really good i forget what place i got uh but either way it was really really good competition for smash four and then also some of the nicest people i've ever met in the smash team which is saying a lot so they made me feel really welcome when i was very far from home and i'll never forget them for that so shout outs to the sydney uh australia smash four scene so either way we're gonna get into game one here google maps against coleman Coleman started off early. It feels like Google Maps has to be annoyed by that because I've seen two players in a row now just steal his bombs away from them and use them uh, very well against him. So, <laughs> I mean, that's the making. That's what you have to practice against these these set play projectile characters, man. It's let you know the 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 best offense against these characters is to how you can play against uh, how you can use your items against them. Is you know what I'm trying to get out of here. And you know, Wario yeah. has some some light item play. Uh, at his disposal, so I'm sure Coleman's comfortable with it. And right now he's looking, you know, pretty alright in the beginning phase of this, of this game. Yeah. I like Coleman's tag too, the high mum. I think that's funny. With the smiley face too. We've come a long way with smash tags. You get so many characters now. This should be a punish right here. Yep, dash attack. Lead strap it now. Try to point it out. I love that because the point is so quick, you force him to shield and you just grab. Like it's it's almost instant, honestly. Yeah, no, for, uh, for sure. As uh, you know, Google Maps trying to get themselves back in the thick of things here. And again, Wario moves so gracefully through the air that I'd imagine it's going to be uh, you know hard for Google Maps to, to hit a constantly moving target. The back air will not uh, kill right there, but getting dangerously close. If you're Google Maps, uh, you, you definitely have to be careful here. Okay, back throw here. Battlefield we're going to be living, which I feel like is really, really good for Wario. The platforms are really good for him, too. But here we go. Coleman, this is where he's going to take off with the stage. A little juggle state going on, Koopa. Yeah, let's, uh, the longer that uh, you know Coleman plays with their food here, uh, the more off of a chance Google Maps is going to have to get back into this. So, great intercept right there. Ooh, goes for the dash attack, but, you know, going to get punished for that. <laughs> hey, can I park this here? <laughs> <laughs> for a dash attack, something forward tilt. 180 is a lot for Toon Link. 
Got to find that KO with Wario. Oh no, instead it's going to be Google Maps fighting the first KO. Very nice job there, man. That's that's what Battlefield's all about, is like just living to these kind of crazy percentages. Is this going to even... No, I was going to say, I don't think you can kill from center stage with a grab like that. Have I ever mentioned how much I love Toon Link's uh, hit stun cry? Because he just sounds like he's barfing every time he gets the hit. It's, it's absolutely hilarious. Wait, actually, I, hold on. I'll have to hear it. Hold on. Yeah, let's, let's think closer next time he gets like thrown a high percent. It's absolutely yeah. hysterical. Okay, okay, I see what you're saying. But, dude, in the meantime, Google Maps is taking off the lead here. There you go. Okay. I couldn't hear it that time because his KO sound actually overrode it. But here we go. We should we should hear it at some point. Yeah, soon. Ooh, well, let's see what the, the game plan is going to be here for uh, Coleman. Again, here, I'd be more scared a couple of weeks ago if I was, you know, uh, around this percent against Wario. But, you know, they did take away a handful of the WAF setups. Nice. So, you know, you, you do have a bit more longevity in these early percent stocks. Yeah. I like that down there too from Google Maps because he kind of hit himself in that sweet spot where they can't really see where your character is, but the magnifying glass isn't up either. Um, I don't know if it was 100% intentional, but I'm sure he, he, he's seen that work before. So, but it was good. Ooh. Whoa! Fair. Nice little convention right uh, conversion right there from uh, from Google Maps. Yep. <laughs> For the bomb, good DI up though. Avoiding the follow up, back air. Okay, Coleman in a good position here. Goes for the little bit of heal on the bike and said, nice job with the conversion there. Google Maps, that was sick. Down throw the bomb into the up air. Very nice. Yeah, no, that's exactly what you're looking for if you're if you're Google Maps here again. Uh, now try to generate as much as uh, of a lead as you can, and they've been doing a pretty good job on these. Uh, Again, these early present conversions, man. Toon Link still has some sauce. Uh, you know, you've seen Boomerang and, you know, forward air and, and the bomb combos still uh, pretty prevalent here. Tether, nice job catching him off the ledge there. Forward tilt, good timing there from Coleman. That's exactly what he needed. Now, I mean, we've seen this one a million times, Koopa. You know, Wario's behind slightly coming around into the final stock for both players. You know what he's thinking? You know what everyone's thinking right now? There's one thing on everyone's mind. Is he going to hit the waft? That's the question. That's what he needs to do. That's his win condition right now. That's why you play the character. You want to be in this exact position. This is prime for Wario. Well, I mean, yeah. it'd be nice if you were up three stocks and nothing. You know, that would also be nice. <laughs> you want to clutch this one out. No, I, I wholeheartedly agree, man. Um, so, ooh. Uh, ooh, but that was a nice little conversion there. Ooh. And great hops right there uh, from uh, Toon Link. Using that top platform to their advantage yep. as Google Maps. And uh, you have arrived at your destination which is a game one win here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very nice job there. Off the top with the up air. Saw up air the second stock too. Conversion off the bomb. That was just really, really clean stuff. That other one was... So the second stock he did bomb into up air. And then he did bomb up air and then followed up and got another up air. So very nice job there by Google Maps closing that one out. Oh, my uh, my stream's a little bit frozen. So, uh, yeah, me too. Me here, yeah, yeah, me too. I think we're chilling. You're still got like the confetti right now, right? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm still uh, on the... Uh... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we got it. What's going on, chat? Yeah, we're good. Yeah, we're we're here right now. You know, we are uh you know, let's show okay. Yeah, we're 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 hanging out here. We're uh we're letting you guys know. Uh Toon Link has been sucked into the uh into mm -hmm. the beam of light. He is uh he's moved he's on. He's ascended. Into, yeah, he, yeah, he's ascended he's ascended to uh uh to CGI animated link. There we go. I actually don't think they. I think this is just a yeah. What's going on? I think we got production here. Yeah. Are you? Oh, are not. you back? Are, are you? Uh... Okay. I, th I think we're. I think we're back. Um, yeah. My sounds like weird. we are. Hold on. I was You're... looking at Discord. Yeah, yeah. We're back. Okay. Um, I don't know if that was a disconnect or what, but I don't know. We'll let we'll let them talk it out. But either way. Uh, that was a really nice job by Google Maps, man. He had to hit some tight conversions there. The bombs and the up airs were super clean. Uh, and in that situation, it's so easy to kind of worry about the waft and think about it and let it get in your head and you drop your own conversions. And, and Wario could just eat away at you mentally uh, kind of in that way. So really nice job. I think we're just going to run it back there. Google Maps gets a W. I mean, the game was pretty much over anyway. So don't really know what happened there in terms of uh, technical blunder, but it's all good. It's all good. Google Maps Damn against it. Coleman. Game two. It's gonna be small battlefield this time though. They did change the stage. Okay. Yeah, man. You never accidentally kicked your router after getting, uh, you know, killed by June Link off the top. You know, my switch does overheat a lot. Uh, so I, dude, I'll play people on Elite and it'll just quit out in the middle of the game. And like, did you just rage quit? I'm like, dude, no. It my switch just it seriously overheats. Like, it just it just catches on fire. 
<laughs> if you haven't seen my combo video, it also happened while I was recording my combo video, which is pretty funny. <laughs> um, but in either I, case... I thought for the longest time you just edited that in there. No, that's me. real. Like, while I was <laughs> capturing the footage for the combo video, that happened. So, pretty funny stuff. But either way, game two is underway. Good lead here for Coleman, but we saw this in game one, Koopa, where Coleman got off to a good lead and he couldn't close out the first stock. So let's see if we can change that game, that part of his game plan a little bit here. Yeah, um, you know, we'll see what uh, changes small battlefield brings here. Uh, right now it's looking, you know, pretty even, but, you know, Google Maps looking awfully comfortable, uh, especially in these juggle scenarios. Yeah, I like the way they use this boomerang. Like the off timing, like if you scare somebody and try to air dodge away, you know, from a back air or forward air, and then you just hit them with a boomerang, you get that conversion anyway, so it's just good timing. All right, back to the ledge is Coleman. Uh, pretty evenish across the board right here. Col uh, Google Maps, uh, you know, holding on to about a you know 30, 40 percent lead right here, but it's it's I'm I'm so I'm always afraid of Wario, man. Yeah, uh, I gotta say that was a great tech in, or a good roll or a good opportunity for Coleman to roll in and lose a stock against Google Maps. He didn't do it. He still lost the stock first anyway. But I gotta point out that that roll situation from a little while ago. It was really nice uh, recognition by Coleman. But either way, Google Maps takes the lead again. As we saw, Coleman got off to a really nice start, but he couldn't close out the first stock himself. Yeah, no. Um, again, kind of running into some some doldrums in these late percents here. Uh, yeah. And Coleman uh, doing a great job, you know, staying evasive, you know, in the air. But what Wario does uh, very, very well. Uh, but you know, Google Maps again, not out of it just yet. You know, uh, you know, let's see what the answer is going to be here. Mm -hmm. Okay, good maneuverability around the boomerang, but it's just like, even when Coleman makes the right choice to get around the projectile, Google Maps is on the other side of it, just making uh, even more decisions that lead into uh, damage. Woo! Yeah, it's racking up. You got the sour spot of that. Oh, what an air dodge. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that would have KO'd anyway, but that was a great air dodge. Can you make it back? Yes. <laughs> there. Blow up. Oh my goodness. He went in instead of out though. That was good. Ooh, you see uh, Coleman keeping the pressure on right here. We're trying to read the jump on the platform with the back air. Coming up short. And we haven't seen a lot of F-Tilt, actually. Uh, especially outside of that one scenario on the ledge. Uh, Coleman's been very reserved with that. And I think that's a, a great move. Uh, especially he's at this uh, high kill percent right now. Smart going over the ledge there. There's a lot of stuff for Coleman to deal with. Like, you know, the re-grab was going to happen if he didn't do something crazy. So that was a really good mix-up to stay alive. And... As much as we're kind of saying that like Coleman can't find the KO, a part of that is because Google Maps understands the win condition. He's avoiding these back airs from Wario. He's avoiding anything that will kill him. Like he'll take these nares or he'll take a forward air on the other side, but he won't get caught by something powerful. You know, he's not getting caught by up smash or that back air. That's what I'm saying. Like he's spacing it out really well around him, capitalizing <laughs> on the rage and extending his lead. Google yeah, Maps no. is playing incredibly. Yeah, no. Uh, Google Maps definitely has the dock open on how to fight. Uh... Yeah. On, on how to fight uh, Wario right now. It's, uh, they're almost to the second century mark. And now Rage becomes like a, a mega factor here if you're Coleman. You desperately have to try to get that stock off. Yeah, it's just going to keep getting worse. You know what I mean? Like, especially the lead. But there you go. A back air getting the punish there. Very nice stuff. But, uh, I mean, if you can get an early waft here on the second stock and then do something crazy on the third, it's definitely possible. No, 100%, man. Ooh, Ooh he just have a jump, he just have a jump. What were we saying? No, I was going to say, uh, that uh, late hit in air, man, I always just get so scared when that becomes a thing. Yeah. And once again, uh, you see that same setup. Uh, once again, the up air will take that stock right there as uh, Toon Link plays us the song of, uh, <laughs> of the wind, and we're moving on to game three here. Yeah, looking really strong here. I think Google Maps, like... The number one thing he's good at is avoiding the KO conditions and just making you kind of feel that spacing pressure that that Toon Link can really put out there. And I know there's a lot of zoning characters in this game, but we've said it a couple times throughout the, the night or morning, whatever, throughout the bracket so far today. But Toon Link, is, he isn't as popular as the other Links or the other zoners in the game, so he might just have a little bit of funky timing on his stuff that you're not used to. So I think that Coleman has some really good movement around the initial barrage of projectiles, but after that... He's kind of getting caught up by the second wave of things that he needs to deal with, and it's just, it's really, it's really hard to do. So, I also, I bet 4,000 chat points on Coleman, so I'm feeling, uh, you know, a little <laughs> sad face right now. Um, yep, yep, yep. So, we'll see. I still have faith, though. I still have faith. He can do it for sure. He can do it. Oh, yeah. It's, it, there's still a possibility there, so I wouldn't lose hope just yet. But, 
Listen, man, like you said, the often forgotten link has proven to be effective right here for, for Google Maps. Uh, they are one game away from uh, advancing on further in this bracket and for to qualify for the offline tournament. This is the last uh, qualifying spot up for grabs. So let's see who's going to come out uh, you know, on top here. Yes, sir. Up throw, looking for the follow up. Couldn't get anything. Trying so to get what do you think? Jump there. Go ahead. I was gonna say, what do you think of the stage change to the other uh, by platform stage? I don't know. Game? I don't know. You gave you gave Toon Link some space to work with here on top of the platforms. Like he can just move away from you. I feel like that's not really what you want. You might be living on. I don't know, man. This is, it's kind of scary. But I don't know what the bands were either. I would have liked to see those. Um, that would be neat. But I don't know, man. I feel like small battlefield looked good for uh, Toon Link, and I feel like PS2 has has the opportunity to, to be even stronger for him. So we'll see, though. See what see what Coleman's up to here. Yeah, I mean, right now it's uh it's this it's this same song and dance, man. That up tilt yep. into the up air has proven to be uh, super dangerous so far for Col uh, for Google Maps as they once again connect on that and they are up uh, you know very nicely right here. Is this potential last game here? These up airs by by Google Maps are so good, and he's so good at like controlling the pacing of the matchup. The second that Coleman gets any sort of momentum going. Feels like Google Maps just either stops it or steals it. Like those are the, those are the two things he's doing. Like he either uh, gets out of disadvantage by wow, what a conversion right there, the turnaround boomerang too. Very nice. That's what I'm saying. Like that was a nice little string. Like Holman was getting something started. No! Look, it ended a stock from Google Maps again. Another up air. How many up air KOs can we get out of this man today, Koopa? Jeez. Yeah, I don't know, man. That was definitely some. Uh, <laughs> that looks like some Southern Hemisphere DI right there. <laughs> that don't, I'm not sure that that. Uh, that should have killed. But listen, yeah. this is uh, a huge lead right now for Google Maps, and uh, you know, let's see oh. if Coleman has anything left in the tank to uh, to make this close. But right now, it's looking like uh, looking like a lock right now for uh, for Google Maps. Mm. I think a part of it is, yeah, a big thing is that Coleman is having a hard time just catching Google Maps anywhere. I think a lot of his he looks he does look for back air a whole lot, and I feel like he's having a hard time landing those. Like, look, he's facing backwards right here too. Yep, there's the back air again. It's like probably his go-to aerial, and it is really good. But even if you throw out a really good option a lot, it's it's going to get countered eventually. And I think Google Maps, since he figured that out after game one, it's just been a lot easier for him. So, got to mix it up a little bit more. It's tough though when you're going against someone with a boomerang of swords, of bombs. Like it's just a lot for Wario to deal with. Okay, there you go, yeah. catching the neutral. Get up. That's a stock. Okay, okay, something's something's happening here. Yeah, listen, you, uh, get your foot in the door here, and with Waft, anything is is truly possible. But yep. yeah, at this point, you're you're forced to use Waft, uh, you know, to make up for a deficit versus being in a deficit. Um, so, ah, uh, you know. oh boy. Well, I used to have eight thousand six hundred points to this channel. <laughs> now well, you're broke. Eh, just cut it in half. I'll listen to uh, chat oh. on the next on the next match. Dan, you win three zero, and you get the pig. Google Maps coming up. Oh, uh, yep. Everything's coming up Millhouse for for Google Maps right now, as uh, they are the last person uh, to clinch their spot here uh, in the yep. uh, Oceana qualifier. So it's all gravy from here, man. So congratulations uh, to uh, Google Maps as they're going to move on into the uh, the seeding matches now, and it's ooh, it's it's, it's going to be so much fun coming up next, as. Yeah, we've watched these players climb through the brackets all day, earning their spot here uh, to qualify, and now. You know, to kind of finish it off, they're going to try to fight for some good seating working into the next bracket. Because as important as getting into the next bracket is, you want to keep that going. You want to keep that momentum going because the competition only gets tougher from here on out. So any yeah. advantage you can get going forward is going to be very, very important. All right, Chad. Yeah, for sure, man. Absolutely. All right, folks. Right. Uh, we're going to be going up to a quick break. But first, we have to give a shout out to the couch uh, Warriors League, uh, a fully fledged national organization across Australia. Uh, the Couch Warriors League is, uh, you know, providing a uh, combined uh, online and land events with amazing prices throughout the season. And if you guys want to know more, check them out on Twitter at Couch Warriors and check out their website at CouchWarriorsLeague.com. Uh, there you go. Well said, Koopy. Yep. Going to go to a quick break, but we'll be right back with some more uh, Smash World Tour action here. It's been amazing all day, so don't go anywhere yet.
Welcome back, everyone. It is all, as you all know, the Smash World Tour, Oceana Online. The qualifiers are done. Now we're looking to talk about the seeding for that next regional bracket. Super important stuff here. Qualifying for the bracket is one thing, and that's great. The next step is to make sure that you secure yourself a good spot in that bracket. Put yourself up for success. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining. Uh, I'm Haz. I'm joined here by Koopa. Koopa, what's going on, man? We had some great matches this morning so far. Yeah, man. Excited. I hope you guys are enjoying the the uh, the the cold open for our new morning show, uh, Coop and Hazmat in the morning. Um, yep. You know we're <laughs> we're here bringing you yep. guys. I don't even think there's midnight oil left to be burned. I think we're just burning eggs at this point. So. I think this is just no. This is just oil. I think we're just, it's the day. <laughs> you know, it's over. There's no midnight. It's over. It's all That's set. True, but yeah, but like you said, man, it's all set. Your field of sixteen, uh, your sweet sixteen for, for this. Uh, uh, for the offline portion of this bracket is already set, but now it's up to determine of yeah. which of, the, of of these four oh, will come out with the higher I seed. Oh, brother! <laughs> I heard, I saw in chat there were rumbles of something happening, uh, and that Shirk shouldn't uh, give it away. But we're seeing Ghost, who primarily was playing uh, me brawler throughout the bracket today, now go to go into the well. It's Ghost and Zombie. Like there's some sort of theme going on here, you know. Yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, I see ghost versus zombies, plant versus zombies. You know, it it, it all I'm sure blends together. You just need Arthur, you know. You got the ghosts and ghouls or whatever, ghosts and goblins. <laughs> you know. Yeah, we got this ghosts and goblins. Yeah. This ghosts and goblins because you got Roy and then also Gob Ghost is the player. You know, <laughs> goblin. That's my man's right there. Shout out to Goblin. So, yeah, phenomenal my... Roy player. Yes, sir. Mr. G. Mr. G. Phenomenal Luigi player. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So, all right, so this is for seeding. Uh, I'm sure these guys have played before. Ghost, phenomenal player. Uh, Shirk's also a great player we saw before. And Steve slash, you know, the Minecraft crew, they're definitely one of those character sets. Very interesting uh, in Smash because initially didn't really create quite a splash uh, in terms of being a DLC character and having results instantly. But as they're kind of getting figured out, I think more and more people think they're a strong character. And yep, things like that, trapping at the ledge is, is one of their super good strong suits. So. Yeah, Koopa. I think these. I think these characters are kind of the real deal. Um, I think their their base game plan is so strong to just sit back and like create space and, and mine materials. I think just that being your floor plan for gameplay is really good. And then they they have some crazy good combos as well. No, 100%, man. Um, like I said, the initial splash wasn't wasn't huge, but you know yeah. the more you look at it, this character's got uh, ledge trapping uh, tools and tricks for days. Uh, probably the best is one of the best disadvantage shades in the game because I can just form land beneath you and uh yeah. they're very very strong oh. you know, there's a lot of cool to work with here um yeah so Cirx definitely has his uh uh yeah definitely has his work cut out for him right now as a uh, ghost is uh putting in all the work right now we, we do we haven't even well i don't know about that i mean it's a pretty even game so far you know what i mean it feels like ghost is very far ahead but in reality i think you know it's still roy at the end of the day he's got the lead too but yep. I think, too, like, we haven't even talked about Minecart, which, in my opinion, if you don't know how to deal with that move, you probably aren't beating a, a, a good or even a decent uh, Steve player. It's just not going to happen. Did I say Sirx? Uh, I meant Sirx. I meant Srix. My bad. <laughs> it's, it's, it's early. Oh, yeah. It is early. That's true, dude. No one can say uh, otherwise. Wait, yeah. actually, people can say otherwise, because where they are might not be early. Might be that's, late. That's, that's true. That's how crazy time zones are, right? All right. Is he yep. just going to opt to just sit back, you know, get some resources in order? Uh, Srix coming up short on the uh, the back air right there. Oh, or throw. Okay, what the? Where did he go? <laughs> he lunged him the heck out of here. See you later, I guess. <laughs> Flushed like yesterday's news, baby. That's uh, that was, that was quite the option right there from uh, uh from from Ghost as uh, uh Srix is now under last stock here in game one, but not out of harm's uh definitely. By, not out of it by any means. Yeah, and that forward throw from Steve, I mean, I think it's just something you have to DI for, and then you react to the other ones. Because the other ones, like, he drops an anvil on you, you have a little more time to react to, but especially with a character like Roy, you gotta give respect to that throw first, so. I, I wasn't ready for it either, though, so. Can't really blame uh, Shirks there. Okay. So, Strix on, uh, you know, cl close uh, to 80% uh -oh. of his last knock here. Oh no, the pain of the minecart, man. Yep, the minecart man. It's it's a Minecraft, and his name's Steve. Okay, up smash. Ooh, wow. that is gonna do it. Okay, yeah, very very fresh up smash.
That is a good move. It's, it stays out forever, and it's got good power. Schmeet. There you go. Yep. Getting, that er getting that early uh, breakfast of... Uh... No, that's, that's it must be bacon, plate dinner. sausage. Yeah, it's true. You know, I had a lot of in Australia when I was there. It was um, and I don't think it was like an Australia specific thing. Maybe it is, but it, uh, it was, I had a lot of kiwi f it, with my breakfast. Like a lot of kiwi. Um, I don't know why. Yeah. I think it was just what my hotel had, but it was really good. But that always reminds me of Australia. Either way, yeah, that's it. That's my very boring Australia story. <laughs> I ate kiwi there. That was cool. You I, you you brought that up before? Didn't you like pet a capybara or something or a koala? Yeah, yeah. I have a picture of me petting kangaroos and stuff like that. Yeah, and a koala, <laughs> um, which is really good. Um, but yeah, that's a great, I also that's a great picture. <laughs> I love those pictures. Yeah, they're great. I love Sydney, man. It was one of my favorite cities I've ever been to easily. Like maybe arguably my favorite. I went to the opera house too. Um, I took the train to work every day after the first, the first day I Ubered to work. And then after that, I figured out the, the BART. I still have my BART card. I still have, uh, whatever the entry level card is there. So shout out to you guys in Sydney. Oh, that's funny. I kept it. I thought it was, I don't know. I don't know when I'll be back. So. I love Sydney. What's so funny about Sydney? Sydney's cool. No, nah, man. Listen, I've had a. There, there's been instances where like I've kept Metro cards that I've like had money on in my wallet, in the event that I'm ever back in that city, and it's worked out every time. So yeah, I wanted to go to um Melbourne. I was supposed to go to Melbourne for work as well while I was there because I was there for two weeks, but it didn't work out. Um, yeah, and I heard Brisbane's very cool as well. I wanted to check it out, but only had so much time, man. But I spent a lot of time in Sydney. I had a great time. So and like I said, the Smash Four scene. Uh, incredibly nice to me there, and they, they made me feel right at home, so it's great. It's all connected. Yeah, I heard I, I heard Melbourne's great, too, yeah. I would love to go back, man. I'd love to go back with my own time, though, you know. Yeah, man. Let's I, do did it. I did pronounce it correct, yeah. <laughs> Melbourne. He's I did, but it's funny. It's it's kind of like when people read Worcester around here. You know, you can tell <laughs> if they're from there or not. That's, yeah, that's... It's funny I because I think with with Melbourne, I think I think someone told me how to pronounce it before I like really read it or like booked a ticket there. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> Melbourne's great. Yeah, and into pronouncing uh, Brisbane correctly as well. No, I did it incorrectly apparently. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh man. Ready? That's how you know I've been there. Yeah, I did Melbourne, but you can tell. But here we go. Is Bane? Is that what I said? Or is that the wrong way? You guys will have to educate me later, chat, because we got game two coming up. Yeah, give us get give us our grammar's lessons. Uh, is while we commentate this game here, so we're going to town and city here uh, for the second game. So what do you oh, make of the stage start here? Wow! <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> Brisbane. Okay, gotcha. Brisbane. Okay, okay. Anyway, anyway. Okay, that was almost a stock right away um, from Sharks though. Yeah, that, that's it's so scary, man. Um, like whenever Roy has me in like a lead trap situation, I'm just afraid I'm always gonna die. So, uh, Strix getting off to a, a you know a quick start here. Uh, Steve unfortunately uh, out of range, uh, you know, to uh, spawn blocks. So Ghost having a, you know a, a little bit of a, a rough go here in the early percent. Mm -hmm. Okay, yep. I like that option with Steve. Like if you jump. And then just throw out a, you can throw out a block or you can double jump. Like his, his jump game is kind of crazy because you have so many creative options that you can use out of it that they might not be ready for. So, yep. back throw going to set up, uh, you know, just a scenario for Ghost to you know, get some more resources in line. Has gold online, so it has the potential to make some uh, some solid weaponry there. Ooh, so jeez, the immediate dive bomb into the wow, that was sick. Mm -hmm. Dive bombing into the platform. Minecart to get yourself, you know, back in the center stage and then immediately dropping the Acme Anvil on him uh, to get the first stock. But uh, Srix even things up with the double edged dance once again. So, yeah, Srix is, hit, I gotta say, his comeback game is really good. Like, he, he's really good at, like, he'll lose a stock and then he'll immediately figure out how to take one. I feel like it's kind of a Roy player thing, but at the same time, it's easy to fail at that as well. So, gotta give, gotta give Srix the credit that he deserves. Ooh, okay, there we go. Those uh, nifty low percent Steve combos, uh, you know, dash attack in the forward air and so on and so forth. And the minecart is out, does not get the spike hitbox though, so uh, Shrix's gonna be able to get Dude. back to this page. Oh I think God. I think Shrix doesn't even know what to do against that setup. And to be honest with you, I'm not 100% sure either. I think you kind of try to wait it out, but either way, he, he can't find the option that works around that that specific ledge trap setup. So expect to see it from Ghost a couple more times as well. Yeah, no, and he's gotten good mileage out of that so far, uh, for sure. So, 
However, despite that, uh, you know, it's it, it hasn't always looked great for, for Srix, but um, he's been able to keep it close for sure. I don't know why that's a... Oh, nice! I like how he switched... Dude, the <laughs> the initial tool he was using broke, and then he switched to the aerial. That was amazing. That was actually... Uh-oh. Okay, he's good. He's good. He's good. Ooh, okay, just missing the grab right there. So, uh, Srix's going to be able to get a punish opportunity, but, you know, Minecart, it's such a, a great multi-purpose move, man. Uh, great for getting out of dodge and for doing that. It's a hitbox. It's a grab box. Like, what doesn't... I, in my opinion, I, I think it could be argued that that's the best move in the game. I it's think, I honestly, it, best sure. special move. It's up there. Okay. <laughs> on the platform, okay, right to the right to the ledge, up there though, good catch there by Shirks. Can't get the yeah. stock though. Trying to get a last call before the buffet closes. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, but here we go, uh, even uh, last stock game here, the diamond weaponry is out, the fine china uh, is here for Ghost, and Srix trying to mount uh, a comeback here to get themselves on the board, but... Yeah, I mean, you wanna... We talked a lot about, like, what the stock lead really means in a match, and for a character like Steve or, or like, Zombie or the Minecraft crew, like, it's just so much bigger because... Uh-oh, man, if that was... I feel like if that was the hilt, the sweet spot, that might have been it. So now, here comes Shirks quietly with a comeback here. Koopa? Yeah, back throw. Does, does he go for forward throw shenanigans again? I no. thought so. Now he will. Okay, hey. Oh, he missed! He was a little late! Oh, oh no! That's the worst thing about mixing that. And then you're at the ledge against Roy. He's so scary. Shirks is good at the ledge, too. Oh, what? Ooh. Yep, that's gonna do it. That is gonna do it. The diamond pickaxe and a celebratory uh, lava block. Is that what that's called? <laughs> sure. Yeah. There you go. Let's go with that. Yeah. Yep, I'll be going from Melbourne to Brisbane. Did that do it, guys? Is that weird in an American accent? That's what I keep getting from you guys. From Melbourne to you... Brisbane. <laughs> you... Brisbane. There you go. There you go. That one I actually don't know. I'm just Nailed saying it. chat's word for it. Yeah. Anyway, 2 0. Yeah, no, that Got was it. A... Nice. Honestly, on, on the like on on the ledge, uh, the Minecraft crew is just absolutely insane. Like you've seen that down smash setup be absolutely ridiculous, but even then that that uh that game ceiling stock right there was there isn't really much that uh that uh, Strix could have done there. Uh, maybe wait out and go for the roll, but even then, like, uh, you know, you, you, I feel like, um, I feel like Zombie would have been a good position to get the up smash there anyway. So it's a rough mm -hmm. go, man. We'll see what adjustments uh, Strix can uh, can make here. So, yes, sir. Is that? I'll, I'll try that one later. Anyway, one, <laughs> <go>. Calgary. <laughs> anyway, here we go. All right, getting the game started here. Game three, Ghosts against Shirks. Two amazing players. They've already qualified. Now they're here fighting out. You know, a little pride on the line and some seeding too that can really help them out in the later bracket. Yeah, man. Listen, like it, uh, it might not seem like much now, but you know whatever sort of wiggle room you can give yourself when it comes down to the, uh, you know, to the big dance, uh, you'll take it for sure. Mm -hmm. But right now, uh, Srix is on uh, looking on the barrel of a, a 3 0 and a handshake here at the hands of Kang uh, uh, Ghost's very own uh, Minecraft zombie. So, uh, <laughs> use his government name, you know? <laughs> Forward throw. Oh, off the. That's what you go for right there. You try to blast him off the wall. That's so smart, man. Because, like, how do you even know how to DI that? Like, that's such a crazy specific thing. Even if you know the matchup well, the block could be at different distances that you have to deal with. So. Yeah, having to, having to uh, account for, you know, blocks and certain combos like that, especially when you see, like, you know, the block back throw shenanigans at the ledge, and if you don't check, you're essentially dead at, like, zero. Mm. It's like... Oh, we tried a footstool. Wow, I like it. I like it. Smart, smart, smart. Ghost, though, I like it. The thing I like about, you know, watching Ghost play, you know, a top-tier character, or, or I, I gotta say, I, th I do think, and I think it's, it's fair for everyone to agree, that the zombie's a stronger character than me, Brawler. But I feel like when you play a lower tier character, you have to be so good at the fundamental core aspects of the game that when you pick up a top tier, it, you see it even more. You know what I'm saying? So good reminder right there. This is winner's final. So winner of this is moving on to the grand's winner side, which is a really good thing to do. Diamonds are out. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> the, the, the nose bomb will never not be funny. But yeah, the diamond yeah. weaponry is out and, and you know here to be played Ooh. with, man. Uh -oh. Okay, whipped it. Okay. 
a little far behind there. Couldn't quite catch up to the cart. Yeah, just coming up uh, a little bit uh, you know, short right there, but still uh, having a lot of resources to provide great pressure. That back air falling off the platform. Diamond strong hands, baby, as uh, Ghost is one stock away for Vincent gone into uh, Grands here and to uh, come out of the last chance qualifier with the highest seed. Get creative at the ledge here, too. Ghost, man, this diamond is putting a lot of work, Koopa. Andy is another one in the bank. Yep, and he, uh, is he going to do it? I mean, he's already at 50, and it's Roy. I feel like he should just hold on to it. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, 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 yep, exactly. Yeah, yeah, definitely a smart move right there. So you got your full resources in hand. Yep, uh, you know, play with your best hand forward. And we've seen that the diamond hit, uh, the diamond weaponry doesn't take much, uh, you know, to, to kill. So, you know, Coast definitely in, in uh, prime position right now. Good job by Shirks there, not losing his mind. Like, it's easy to mash out of the minecart and jump instantly because you're scared to get dragged down more. But either way, at the ledge, Ghost using his Minecraft zombie to take a set. I, I can't believe that's a real thing we still have to say, you know, as commentators. Like, it's 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 kind of, it's it's just insane how many characters yeah. in this game. But love seeing the, the Minecraft play from uh, Ghost. I think he had a lot of interesting setups. Those forward throws were kind of nutty, especially with the block place down in the way and kind of messing up the DI and all that stuff. So really cool stuff to see from Ghost. Moving on, winner side of Grand Finals. Looking for that primo, uh, you know, good seating from the last last chance qualifier. So yeah, yep. man. And 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 Strix is still going to have a chance to go uh, Strixo mode in, a, in Losers Finals <laughs> for sure. So uh, and listen, anything can happen, man. We've seen some some, some crazy stuff today. Like I said, Dark Pit Dittos in, in Winners Finals. Uh, Unreal. Someone lose or a reset of grand finals someone losing because their internet exploded like i've seen it i've seen it yeah. all time, man hazmat correctly uh pronouncing the name of australian cities like, that, that's true that's wild this stream has yep. got a little bit of everything for everyone well been miss brisbane <laughs> that's gonna be the name of your next wow character i'm sure <laughs> it's probably taken but you know what my wow care one of my wow characters names is his name's reeds i think that's such a good name you know what i mean because like i don't know i try to make him like fighting games slash smash adjacent like reads, I thought it was a good name. One of my favorite Twitter accounts is uh, is is bad slippy tags, and I think one of them was it, like that Keanu. That is really funny. <laughs> Keanu, Keanu Reed. Reed. Oh my that's god, that's odd. so funny. Oof. I'm gonna Ooh, reserve that right one. now, actually. <laughs> so, so I'm kind of bummed we didn't get to see the meat brawler. By the way, as much as I enjoyed that that Minecraft play. No, listen, man. Uh, I I still feel like like it still feels like that like. Steve came out just like yesterday, but the character has been out for like a few months already, and I haven't gotten tired of watching his character like play. It's a it's, yeah, it's, he's so much fun. Uh, maybe, maybe like playing wise, like it's not something that like he's, I um, personally he's like. Still mess fresh with, too, fun. you know what yeah. I? Uh, so it's like you, you see kind of new things from. He's he's there's a lot of creativity to the character. He's still pretty new, and he's still a lot of his gameplay needs to be developed. So so that's a pretty cool uh, ledge traps there. You know, going with the the anvil. And, to the down smash, I thought it was cool at the ledge. So, hey, he's just a Looney Tunes was, character. I, he, the plunger and the anvils are insane. And the TNT, he really is a Looney Tunes character. Yeah. Do we have <laughs> is uptime a command on the stream? Because we might. Oh, be maybe. I know. I know. Armor. A dark horse is. Yeah, dark horse is. Uh, it's coming through with the timeage right there. But, twelve hours, baby. Woo woo. When's all right? Everybody in the chat say the last time they fell asleep. Has you go first. Uh, this afternoon, I took a nap after uh, we took the dog on a walk uh, east yesterday. Is that how I say it? Yesterday morning. And then afterwards, yeah. we all kind of crashed and took a nap because I knew I'd have to be up late for this. So it's all good. Yeah, same. I took a nap around like five, six o'clock. And now I've been uh, riding the waves of, uh, of coffee and, uh, and seltzer. And, you know, I'm here, man. And it's been a great tournament so far. Again, shout out to everyone that's still with us uh, in the chat. If you've been with us. You know, whether all night or for the last couple of hours, uh, you know, welcome. Myself and Hazmat are are pleased uh, to be the uh, the vessels to serve you guys. Uh, what's been some excellent smash so far into the wee hours of the American morning and into the uh, into the night, uh, you know, of other parts of the world, no matter where you're coming from. So it's been it's been great. So, yes, sir, it has been great. Uh, let's see. Next, we got Maple Mage. We've seen a lot of uh, so far in this bracket. And Google Maps, we've seen a lot of. Oh, this is a rematch, isn't it? This is one of the first sets that we commentated today. Pretty sure it is. Uh, uh, they or no, sorry, it was Shirks. It was Shirks. I'm sorry. 
Opposite. Yeah, they're playing. They're playing opposite side of the my, well, side my of the bracket. Um, but fair enough. No, yeah. Listen, uh, it, it's been fun so far. You know, Mabel Mage has had uh, <laughs> some very exciting sets so far on stream mm. today, and Google Maps uh, just the same. So, you know, do we potentially see the Zero Suit Samus? You know, ride the hot hand that got you here. Um, right. I, I, you could see a, you know, a counter picky matchup here. You know, both these guys are not afraid to go their secondaries and stuff like that so True. you could see you know uh you know some young link you could see some some corin or some bilith and you know i don't know it's good it's gonna be fun to, to watch regardless so yeah it'll be great i mean yeah i think the fact that uh maple mage plays so many different characters it's gonna be interesting and, and at a really cool you know high level so it'll be it'll be interesting to watch either way so yeah What's yes, going sir. on, chat? Okay, cool. Yeah, we are getting... Ooh, Zero Suit ooh, against I, Ice Climbers. How did I forget about the Ice Climbers? Gosh, I, it's easy It's easy to forget about other characters when the Toon Link just put on such a display in the last game. You know what I'm saying? That was a yeah, big no. One. So I'm, uh, we'll see how it all shakes out here, Has in the in the loser's semifinals part of this uh, uh, bracket. Now, I'm curious... Uh, you know, again, certain characters definitely have an easier time separating the Climbers than others do. Um... How do you think ZSS affairs in that uh, regard? So, to me, I feel like characters with good disjoints can do well against them. So, I think Zare, like, all you have to do is hit them a little bit, and then you can really mess with them. So, I think Zare is going to be an important tool here. And I also think the fact that Zerosu can delete stocks and therefore can delete Nano is going to be big. Like, a Nair flip kick and killing Nano is going to be enormous. And then you'll be able to recover and get up a ledge against uh, Popo as well. But, we'll see. And I think... Um, Belmonts do really well against Ice Climbers. I know that because I, I play I, them. It's a combination yeah. cross and, and whip, and I think, you know, uh, Zerosu does have the whip part of it, so I think she's going to do well in this matchup. She's so fast, too, dude. It's, it's so hard to, to say that she won't do well in this matchup. She's yeah. so quick. And especially, like, air-to-air, -air, most characters, like, I feel like fail in comparison to ZSS, Ooh. and the Ice Climbers definitely have uh, enough punch to get that done, though, so... Uh, you're seeing some instances... You're seeing a lot of cool stuff coming out from Google Maps as, uh... You know, they're able to yeah. hold on to this lead, but uh, uh, you know, you have to be careful with uh, Nana. Yeah, and I think like one thing that Google Maps is doing very early on is setting the pace of like he has a no fly zone established, and you can't jump here. Zero suits, you know, they're like frogs, man. They just love to jump all day, so you got to kind of establish that rule early on. Like it's not cool, you know, if you jump like that, you're gonna get swatted out of the air. All up air and then back air seems to be kind of the the pattern that Google Maps is doing so far, and it's working out. Yeah, and especially if you're Maple Mage, uh, when you, uh, you know, the from what we've seen in sets so far, uh, they have no problem uh, holding forward and trying to press their advantage, uh, you know, whether in neutral or off stage, uh, as much as they can. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you're Google Maps, you definitely have to be mindful of, you know, your uh, your other ice climber. And there you go, able to get the boost kick off right there, and you know, not much uh, to, uh, you know, complain about as you were at low percent of the second stock. Yeah, I think that was that was a great response there. I mean, Maple Mage does officially have the lead now too. Ice Climbers are spinning around. Okay. Ooh, nice little uh, desync right there. <laughs> that up tilt looks like it should do like a million damage with how many times it's gonna hit. Uh! That shield just gets, dude, it gets eaten alive by Blizzard. It's crazy. You gotta just respect the distance on that move, honestly. That's why I think, yeah, Zero Suit, go to the gun, go to the whip. You know, stay far away from them. Nair's also good, too. That counts. And they might shorten the range in a little bit, but it's still a very effective tool here. You see Maple Mage bet it all on, uh, you know, on red right there, going for the, uh, for, for the boost kick, but coming up short. Okay. Yep. Flip jump gonna connect. You know, both players just playing, you know, super conservative right now. You know, nobody wanted to overcommit. Ooh! Getting the reverse hit of the, uh, of the plasma whip, but it will prove uh, detrimental to uh, Maple Mage's health right there. Uh, you know, it, it's hard not to get tunnel vision when fighting the climbers. Uh, yeah. So you know, it, it's you know an uh -oh. unfortunate byproduct of the character, but that should do it. Even and that's kind of what I'm saying too. Like, it doesn't take a whole lot to blow up these characters. And Zero Suit, like, she's good at checking on the damage. Uh, she's also really good at hitting you with, with power. Usually up B, obviously, but Nair Flip Kick is also an incredible tool. Yep. Let's see ya. That's game. <laughs> I was. Yep. Yep. That's zero suit. <laughs> <laughs>
I can't. Yep. It makes me laugh every time. It's like <laughs> Vi Maple Mage said vibe check. I love that. I was like, someone in chat called a vibe check. It was Maple Maple Mage. Oh man. Oh, I forgot that the ice climbers cry in their victory in their defeat screen. Get it together. Everyone else claps. <laughs> yeah. Is there only like, one of them too? It's just a lead climber. Yeah. It's like when I. It's like when I look at um, like old like pictures of myself when I'm a child and like everybody else is like smiling and you're just like <laughs> you're just a dumb kid and you're just crying for no reason There's, I can't they only put Popo on that screen it's funny yeah that, or, or the weird. lead climber because it, it can be Nana too I mean like Sakurai said man putting in the ice climber is already pushing the limits of this game you think they have enough uh, PNG uh, room you know to fit them both in the defeat screen come on yeah yeah well that's called the vibe check officially yeah, no, that uh, my vibes are officially checked. Uh, so great stuff there from uh, from Maple Mage. So, hmm. Google Maps sticking with the ice climbers. I respect it. It's kind of like sometimes it just happens against Zero Suit. Like you, you'll be playing a great match, and then she'll she'll hit you with some of her nonsense because she does have nonsense. It's really strong and really good. The yeah, thing is, it like, can just happen to you though. You can't let it shake you up because that's just the character. Yeah, it's like hot sauce, you know. Like it, it, it'll lull you to sleep every now and then, but then you'll, you'll, uh, you know, you'll get a whiff of something too big, and you know you're yeah. sweating profusely. So true. Good pummels. <laughs> Forgot that Nana does that little scaredy cat animation. Yeah, na yeah, na Nana just quivers in fear because she doesn't know what to do. <laughs> well, we'll see if the if the like, switch. Well, hell. Whoa! <laughs> you can do everything else. What's up? You just see that Nana was just like the AI, the model just like moonwalked. Oh, did she that really? Was, that was wild. Yeah. Let's see. Secret tag. Oh, Maybe. I'm, gonna, I'm watching the replay right now. And I can't tell if I'm going delirious because I haven't slept in like 18 hours, or if that actually happened or not. But but we'll see if the um, switch to FD here is is, is fruitful for uh, Google Maps here. Kyle, uh, huh? did I miss the chat? I might have missed something. But anyway, first stock going. Two Google Maps. Yeah, no, that's here. Yep. Yep, you shoved there for Google Maps again. With this, with uh, the Ice Climbers able to play with the lead, uh, it makes all the difference. And a great save uh, on uh, Nana right there, uh, being able to pull them back with the side B. Whoop, oh, 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 landing in harm's way. Be careful. <laughs> that was perfect patience right there, just kind of waiting out like. Um, the Squall Hammer could reach uh, Zero Suit that distance. Just waiting it out um, from Maple Mage, it, it kind of forced the commitment, so it was really good. Here we go. Off stage. Yep, <gasps> having to be careful. Oh, he, oh, Maple Mage was hitting Nana, so was, uh, they were unable to assist Popo in the recovery. That was so good. Especially the electricity for a little extra hit stun, too. Obviously, it wasn't like, oh, I'm going to use electricity here for more hits, and it was like, I'm going to use a move that's going to land. But that did certainly uh, factor into that interaction there. Very nice job there by Maple Mage. Another no, vibe check, sure. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Uh-oh. But uh, Maple Mage trying to not get their own vibes uh, checked right there. And the up air will connect. So uh, we're back at even stocks apiece here. Um, so, you know, let's see who can, uh, you know, bring themselves out in the lead here and... Again, Maple Mage is playing just so solidly, man. Someone in chat said whoever loses has to take Lemma out of their name, L-E-M-A, because they both have L-E-M-A in their tags. Google Maps and Maple Mage. Okay, hold on. What are we seeing? Hold on, hold on, hold on. We see some craziness here. Uh-oh. Yep, able to get back to this, uh, to the ledge nicely. Whoa! Did you see how fat? That was a... Dude, that was a Randy Johnson fastball. <laughs> that thing's like blue. a curling rock coming back at you. Nana with a good air dodge? Who would have guessed? Uh oh. Who gets to grab and <laughs> Nana doesn't know what to do? Oh, down air. Oh, that was a brilliant down air. That was one of the best Zero Suit down airs I've ever seen in this game. That was amazing. That essentially potentially clinched this game out already. And that's game two. Yeah, so it will be Sopo for the remainder of this game here for Google Maps. Uh, does the Sopo have enough in the tank to get it done? Or will Maple Mage uh, extend their lead to 2 0 here? Uh oh. Well, not. That's kind of the crazy thing about Sopo is your motivation is through the roof with this character. Like you want this win so bad. You know what I mean? Like there's just some extra yep. mileage to it. But the side B is going to do it. Maple Mage, great job closing that one out. That down air was so clutch. That was so smart. <laughs> no one in Australia knows who Randy Johnson is. My bad. Give me a better <laughs> reference. I'll use it next time. Um, I got nothing. <laughs> we'll think.
Yeah. Oh, I'm trying to think. There's, there's definitely some Australian baseball players that have made it to the ma major leagues. Right. Um, oh, Grant Balfour. Yeah, he's a relief pitcher for the for the Tampa Bay Rays. At least it was at one point. There you go. Right, we'll see here, man. That was uh, <laughs> Ray William Johnson. No, that's, that's not. Oh, man. I suddenly feel old. Yep. No, but that was a great game, though, man. I these these ice playing ice climbers on Wi-Fi sounds like hell on earth. Like Google yeah. Maps is making it work uh, mm -hmm. well here. Oh yeah. It's every time I say like every time I say Google Maps, my phone just starts freaking out because I have really? an Android phone. Yeah. Like someone <laughs> answers does Alexa and it just throws everything off. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, okay. We are seeing the change back to the uh, uh, back to the the two Ooh, the link. Two link. So let's see if it is enough Three, of uh, two, enough one, of a change here. Go. The TL's back on the timeline. TL on the TL. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, keep it on the DL. And that's the TL. Wait, what's the L? I'm just making a joke. Two <laughs> link. <laughs> I can't even. Kill yeah, like, small. I like uh, Google Maps is a great, great tune link for those of you who are just joining us now. Got a lot of great wins with it today. His bomb confirms it up air super tight, so. Yeah, no, it's been fun, man. Again, this character is so often forgot, you know, especially in a game with, you know, five Zelda characters and three of them are links. Um, so it's definitely a, a refreshing uh, breath of air. But uh, yeah, uh, all the air has been exa exhausted from their lungs in that first stock as uh Maple Mage continuing on this tear right now. Okay. Oh, I see, I, no! I see why Google Maps might have wanted to avoid this matchup. This is not looking great, especially on his own counterpick at FD. This is not looking good. Yeah, uh, Maple Mage definitely finding the ways uh, to deal with uh, Google Maps' is, uh, Toon Link right now. So up air, okay. That's really where, and I feel like Zero Suit just has a good time getting out of the disadvantage state that, that Toon Link offers. You know what I mean? Like flip jump, down air, uh, move to the side. She's got a, you know, <laughs> wave bounce side view. Like she has a lot of different options to, to mess with the way that she falls down from the sky. Um, I feel like that's really where Toon Link takes off in the advantage state, so. Yeah, and especially because, you know, uh, Toon Link only has so many options to hit, uh, you know, above him. Uh, you know, he. You kind of have to be like really specific with your hitbox placement, and ZSS is just so like quick moving that you know it's always, it always, it almost feels impossible uh, to hit her sometimes when she's yep. above you. No jump there for Google Maps. He had to go to the ledge. Snags the bomb. Okay, gets it back. Gonna, gonna get back to the nice, back to the ledge nicely. And you know, at this point, Maple Mage is playing with house money, so you know. Uh, yeah. I think Maple's having a little fun with it, honestly. Two socks to one. Google Maps trying to make a big comeback here, though, Koopa. Yeah, I've, listen, I've seen oh. crazier things, man. Let's see if, if the round oh, has Oh, yeah. Oh. Man, the tether cancel. Get the momentum. Flip jump. The spike. Everything was great about that. What a way to close up that set. Maple Mage moving on. 3-0 fashion. Very nice job. And an exclamation mark to close that one out, too, Koopa. Yeah, no, that was uh, excellent stuff right there, Has. And like I said, you know, you're up that big. You take a second stock that early. You're essentially just playing with house money. So... All Maple Mage had to do was just not lose the game, and that's exactly what they did. So, yeah, some stuff to uh, to them as they continue this tear. As uh, we're gonna see a rematch of of our first winner's uh, final set of the night. Yes, sir. Should be good. Maple Mage. Uh, sorry about that. Maple Mage moving on in a, in a big way. I like the Zero Suit too because we kind of start off with the Byleth and Corn. Uh, but I think this, the speedy zero suit kind of fits the way that Maple Mage likes to play a little bit better. Yep. It looks it looks more natural. I'm not sure. Yeah, 100%, man. Mm -hmm. Maple versus Shirk's rematch. Yeah, we'll see. I wonder if, oh, uh, you know what it might be is because you don't want to play zero suit against Roy because I know that's a stressful matchup. But first things first, folks, uh, we, again, uh, have to give a shout out to uh, Couch Warriors. Uh uh, league.com couch warriors is now a fully fledged national organization across australia uh the couch warriors league which is our national circuit that is combined online and land events with amazing pricing throughout the season and again you can check out more details on that on couch warriors league uh, dot com or on twitter at uh couch warriors 
Um, but uh, before we get to that, folks, we're going to have one more break before we get to a loser's finals here, if I'm correct. So uh, stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back with more got it. Back Brothers action. Yeah.
And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are two, potentially three sets away uh, from finishing out here the uh, Smash World Tour Oceana Ultimate Online Qualifier here for you guys. As always, I'm still Koopa, and he's still Hazmat. And my man, we are we, we are, are uh, getting close to the end here, Haz, and uh, I'm excited. You know, we got some some bangers of sets coming up here, and yep. you know, right now in losers finals, we have a rematch. A winner semis between uh Srix and uh Maple Maid. Uh yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> we're going from Melbourne to Brisbane here, you know? What's up, chat? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just saying that the flex. Chat taught me a new thing today, so I'm feeling good about it. But yeah, I'm very excited. Uh oh getting into either I a rematch is something I want to see. We we're kinda of talking about it before. Uh and I feel like you know, Maple Mage really prefers to go with the Zero Suit Samus, but the problem is, is I feel like Roy is such a problem for that character that Maple Mage is trying out some other things. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see the Zero Suit game one up to Maple Mage, of course, uh, and then kind of see where they go from there. So, it'll be yeah, good. I mean, and there's plenty of data to prove that at the top level, too. I think back to, you know, uh, get on my level, uh, Tweak versus Mars, and uh, Tweak had to win that set with Roy. So, yeah, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's definitely a, a problem matchup for ZSS. You know, Roy, uh, it hits so hard and zss isn't known for her durability so yeah you know it, it's definitely a factor here but do you like i said has do you play the hot hand you know you haven't played you know corn or you haven't played corn or uh you know or byleth you know in pre yeah, a couple of hours at this point yeah. and you know i i feel like there, there's definitely something to say about playing a character like zss that can just move at her own free will Versus mm -hmm. going back to a character like, you know, Corrin, where you have to really be mindful of your positioning and stuff like that. Yeah. So, I don't know. Uh, we'll, we'll see what, what shakes out here. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think, yeah, mobility is like the name of the game of Zero Suit. It's just Roy. He's so good in the air, like air to air. We saw that with Sharks a lot, even when uh, uh, Maple Mates was playing other Fire Emblem characters. Like the air to air, the dogfight, if you will, always went the, the advantage of Sharks, it felt like, like most of the time. Um, so... I don't know. We're in for a good matchup. Uh, it should be a lot of fun. I've been enjoying watching both of these players a whole lot throughout the day. I like all the characters that they play, actually. Um, yes, it is Zero Suit. All right, Maple Mage. Ooh. Let's see what you got. I know it's a tough matchup, but like we said, I think the Zero Suit is playing great right now. I think that's the way to get it done. Game one starting up now, Koopa. Battlefield is the uh, field of battle, believe it or not. Yes. <laughs> well said, right? <laughs> Professional commentator, by the way. Here we go. Grab the get over here. A little scorpion action for yeah. Mortal Kombat. Just the yes. range there. Yep, and the winner moves on, has, and the loser turns their switch off and potentially goes to bed. But you know, neither of these two players wants to uh, give in on that as uh, no. uh, Srix trying to, uh, you know, double eliminate uh, Maple Mage here in the last chance qualifier and guarantee themselves a higher seed. And, you know, we'll, we'll see. Uh, again, the change of battlefield is going to be a great stage for Zero Suit Samus. And, and also uh roy as well uh so we'll see uh you know who uh comes out on top here jab into back air it looks like a little bit of di in there shirks capitalizing though roy so good at the ledge koopa oh, yeah and that's where this match was won uh the first time for uh for Strix all the way back in winter semis um ledge trapping was absolutely uh you know key in that game uh you know for them and uh, you've seen it uh, very early on display here, and again, also from Maple Mage. You know, now playing a character that can, you know, get a little bit uh, more creative off stage and stuff like that. As the yeah. fair uh, connects, and uh, now we're back at uh, even at two socks apiece. Yeah, and on the other side, like Roy doesn't have too many ways to get back to the ledge. It's either do I up B immediately, do I jump and then up B, or do I go to high? Like, you know, there's not too many uh, mix ups that he has. So, Zero Suit, also phenomenal off stage. You know, you can capitalize with a flip kick uh, or, or a fair there, too, that we saw from Maple Mage just to cut Roy off. So, that was really good stuff there. Yeah, okay. the, uh, the the avenues are definitely cut off once Roy is committed to his second jump. So just a matter of hitting a moving target at that point. But just despite all that, oh, a great tech there from, from Maple Mage. That could have been disastrous for them. Uh, now able to get back to center stage and, you know, kind of uh, regain their bearings. But Srix not uh, letting up the pressure at all. Right. That's, I was going to say, I think that's going to wow. KO light zero suit. A decent amount of damage on her as well. That's going to do it. Double edge dance from the center of battlefield. This is where the pain is in the matchup. Shirk slowing it down a little bit. I like it, Koopa. He's got the lead. No need to rush in. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, you know, let the game come to you again. <gasps> Ooh, but wow. Wasn't a believer. You know what I mean? No. Maple Mage. Oh, okay. Down throw. Platform. 
Well, he had the, the right idea there, uh, you know, reading his uh, DI, you know, past the platform and trying to retrap uh, Maple Mage at the ledge. But again, slowing the game down a bit. Great tech roll away. You're seeing Maple Mage start to mix in those airs now uh, yeah. to now fit up those tech situations. Always, uh, you know, evolving the ledge trap game. Okay, showing the hand a little bit early. Running away, I think that was a read 100%. Down smash, run away, and punish to jump off the ledge, looking for a Nair. Royce likes to get aggressive off the ledge, and I think Shirks is no no exception to that rule. Um, it's just one of his better options, so. Good read, though, by Maple Mage. Ooh, getting a weak spot of the bear. If that, hit, if that was uh, solid, that could have potentially been a uh, game ending right there for uh, for Zero Suit Samus, but yeah. you know, both players want to be very, very careful right now. This uh, Maple Mage able to break zone slightly, but still uh, coming up a little bit short. Sure, it's the full edge here. So you got a lot of jabs. It's actually really tough pressure to get around. Still on the other side. Maple Mage not bailed out yet. Shirk's looking on the hunt. He takes what a trade right there. Jumping wow. right into the way of the action and then getting it up there. He didn't get the first one. I think he wanted the first one. But either way, the hit was negative. Uh, and he was able to get it up there for his efforts. Very nice shot by Shirk's. Good positioning. Yeah, no, uh, it's very uh, rare where you see, you know, uh, flip, jump, connect, and then you're the one that ends up paying the price for it. Um, yeah. yeah I, feel, I feel like that move is, is constantly on the winning end of most of these trades. But in that scenario, you know, Srix is the one that uh, comes out on top. Again, ledge trapping, a huge key of, uh, of the game right there uh, for Srix. Uh, Maple Mage, despite having all of these options, uh, you know, with Zero Suit Samus to get out of disadvantage and off the ledge, you know, uh, Strix is just proving to be very elusive with his movement and, you know, able to keep him uh, at bay in that first game. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's, you know, and chat's alluding to this a lot too. And I think we said this the first time that they were playing is that Strix really plays the matchups really, really well. And Zero Suit, he's doing that, you know, there's no exception because even if a matchup is in your character favor, if you don't know what the hell you're doing and you just you might not win it anyway. You know what I'm saying? Like if you didn't know about that positioning and he didn't get the KO right there, would have left the door open potentially for Maple to make a, a big comeback with uh, Rage Zero Suit Samus, which is a big thing. So yeah, it's really good. I didn't know yeah. that was a free punish. Yeah, yeah, you're just positioning, but you were positioning yourself, Shirks, in in a way <laughs> to to line yourself up for success <laughs> either way. You weren't necessarily looking for that trade, but you were looking for a zero suit to put herself in that position. I Is think you coaching? swung at it the first time anyway. But I appreciate the honesty. <laughs> Is, it, Is this coaching? Uh, <laughs> I've no. always want. I, I've I've truly always asked that. Like, what's stopping someone from playing and like pretending that they're listening to music? And then they're just like listening to the commentators Stop. in the between forbidden games. knowledge. It's the forbidden knowledge. You can't do that. <laughs> I guarantee uh, you yeah. that's happened. Not even the commentators, like just a friend of the crowd. I guarantee you that's happened. <laughs> that's just like the the esports equivalent of like SpongeBob putting the radio in his head to pass his driver's test. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> right? That's what happened. Yeah. Big toe. But anyway, <laughs> uh, small battlefield will be the stage of choice here for Maple Mage, so. Uh, we will see if the change of scenery, the uh, the riddance of that middle platform, uh, makes a difference here, or if uh, Srix will uh, continue to add on to their lead here. Up stage. Roy against Sirisu. Here we go. Jump. Yep. Good job saving the jump, avoiding the down air, too. Good mix up on the timing. Sirisu holding on, going high there, too. Maple Mage able to find her way out of uh, trouble. Whoa. Wow. Just able to make it back with those magnet hands. That's stock. That stock down smash into a beat. Very good confirm there from Maple Mage. Yep. Like uh, peanut butter and jelly, man. Just never gets old. Yep. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, actually, you're right oh. about that. <laughs> All right, goes right back to work on the ledge here. Ooh, being very loose with his movement, but Maple Mage again using uh, flip jump. Uh, you know, to just get out of this advantage and the F tilt uh, from the middle of uh, small battlefield. Uh, gonna uh -oh. take care of that stuff. Oh uh, if God. that falling, if that falling up air sweet spotted, uh, it could have been a lot of trouble there for Maple Mage. But fortunately for him, it worked out. Shirk, so look at this. All of a sudden, this is what Roy is like so capable of. His his offense and his advantage state is just so strong, man. So, oh, it, I was gonna say if he pulls the trigger, it might be it. It was very close. We did it the other way too. Okay, flexing a little. I like it. Okay, reverse hit in there. 
Mage. See, Maple Mage just trying to get uh, creative here. Ooh, but misses the ledge with the boost kick. Maybe potentially to try to, you know, keep uh, uh, Srix guessing at the ledge. But Srix, one step ahead as he finds himself up well, one stock uh, right now. I love that trade. Maple is so good at that trade, too. He just drops right down there. He knows where Roy's recovery is weakest, and that's where he's attacking Shirks a lot. So I like that a lot. Mostly with the fair. The fair is definitely the most... Um, Successful move so far that Shirks is or uh, that Maple Mage has used off stage so far. Okay, I'm gonna be very careful here if you're Maple Mage. Yep. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah, yep, why? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you you just keep going. And you brought that up earlier. Oh, it, it was, oh no. That was like a four piece separate. That was beautiful. That was just an amazing Roy play there. Four separate hey, calls, calls not into not a serious. stock, into a game win. That was super nice. Mercy. My gosh. <laughs> All right, Uncle Jesse. Man, no one's going to get that reference in this chat. Unless they get full house. I'm not saying that, man. Come Have on. mercy. Yeah, you expose me like this. <laughs> <laughs> You're exposing me multiple time zones. That's just not fair, honestly. Yeah, it's true. I was going to say they can't be coaching if we're in different time zones. He's in the future. <laughs> he should be coaching me. You know, like, what are the lottery numbers going to be 13 hours from now? <laughs> Can you guys tell me that? Oh, man. I'm sure there's a Rick and Morty episode that covers that. So, yeah. Two zero so far. Shirks in the lead. I guess we're kind of seeing why. I mean, this matchup has been a pain point for Zero Suit Samus since since the vanilla version of this game. So, she got hit with some nerfs recently. I don't I don't see why it would change at all. So, yeah, man. It's a uh, whoo. It's it's been a it's been a fun set so far. It's been a fun evening. I see some familiar faces in the chat. I know Ben Gold just uh, or uh, uh, just stopped by for a second. Oh, my man's Ben Gold. What's up, dude? Good to see you in the chat. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're enjoying your evening. Yeah. yeah. There you go. You're right. Nailed it. <laughs> yeah, ben Gold, phenomenal player, man. <laughs> Not for sure, man. Uh, absolutely uh, a treat to watch every time as uh, Maple Mage. Uh, thinking about it, uh, you know, a little bit harder uh, for this potential yeah. last game here. Yeah, I like the zero suit so far. Honestly, I was gonna say uh, I think the Corrin took a. Or did it? Did it go game five the first time? Uh, it was a three was, one last time. It was game four. Um, okay, okay. Yeah. And the so. Corrin, I remember the game that was won um, by Maple Mates was with Corrin because they had they had the chomp and then they also had the uh, the back air to clean it up on the on the platform. So and it was on the stage. So definitely respect this choice a lot. I like that Maple Mates gave it an honest shot with zero suit. Didn't just you know, one and done it. Like, lose the first game of Zero Suit and just give up. Like, trying again, I think I think was a good idea. Oh, jeez, what a forward smash. <laughs> done? Is that is this going to be a stock? No, okay, he had a jump. Never mind. Shirk is ready. That's definitely a combo that only works on the internet. <laughs> I don't know. It's kind of sick, honestly. Like, they'll never see this one coming. He's <laughs> standing the forward smash. <laughs> <laughs> Got him, GG's. Screw. Yep, GG's. Shake my hand. Yeah, but listen, I guess the, the out of range of Corrin uh, should, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure should alleviate some of the pressure that uh, that Srix is throwing out with uh, with Roy. But I don't know, man. You know, there's just, there's just these doldrums where, you know, Corrin isn't uh, able to secure the uh, the yeah. kill that I feel like it's going to be really frustrating for Maple Mage here. Mm -hmm. A little bit, trying to chill. Shirk knows he needs to hold onto this rage if he wants to take an early stock. Okay. Yeah, nope. I think Ooh, he was looking yep. for a stock there, honestly. Man, that back air is beast mode, honestly. Very nice job. Maple Mage again. Back air on that platform seems to be the go-to here. Yeah, so far the switch to Korn has, uh, has worked out dude. nicely. <laughs> Good tack. <laughs> oh, I oh. love the drag down idea. If that worked out, that would have been a whole stock lead gained and dropped off like 100%. That would have been so good. I love the idea. Yeah, no. This um, is not a third strike track. There's no third strike music in this game. Don't get my hopes up like that. <laughs> How dare you? All right. Down tilt. I like that. that. Somebody say that just to hurt you. Ooh. I know. Down air? Okay. Make it back? Yes, you can. Maple wow. Mage so strong. Yeah. Maybe Zero that's what they were going death. for. The... Yeah, I think that's might have been what they were going for anyway, honestly. Yeah, that, that, okay. that tracks. And after three straight uh, three O's has Matt, we are in position to see a potential fourth game between these two again. But uh, down air again? Oh, that would have been sick. Yeah, that would have been curtains for sure uh, for for Strix right there. But um, you know, still able to get a second chance here. Good roll away, uh, knowing that the down smash would have covered uh, roll in, uh, or I believe uh, tech in place. So. Ooh, 
looking for the double-edged dance again, looking for forward smash. Dude, the back air is MVP right now for Maple Mage for sure. Spacing, getting a KO, it's just it, it making it look like a broken move. Yeah, that was oh, the original that... DLC, DLC move, baby. Oh, jeez. Wow. Heart piercer right there. That was nuts. Two stock for Maple Mage? I did not see that coming. Shirks has just been in such firm control so far. But we did see Maple Mage take a game. I think it was almost the same exact situation. I think Maple Mage was down 2-0 and switched to Corn and took a game. And then Shirks took care of business and ended it. So we're going to see if uh, Maple Mage can change the future here, though. It's definitely yeah, possible. That, that was sick. That tracks. Three hours ago feels like a week ago, though. So we could be totally wrong. Yep. But... <laughs> Either way, though, uh, Srix is, uh, you know, still one game away from uh, from coming out on top here. Um, and but again, the character switch for Maple Mage uh, proven to be super effective right there. Uh, yep. Now, is it is it a is it a one game party trick or do we see Corn for the rest of this set? I feel like it, I feel like potentially it's the latter here, but we'll we'll see. I don't know. Oh, no. Oh, fake out mm -hmm. again. Unless what do we got. Do we see the potential counter pick from uh, Srix right now? Doubt it, but it could it could happen. I think they said this last. Maybe maybe said that Shrix would take some time uh, with the counter pick, which is fine. Yeah, you know, there that's you go. A, oh, the purple uh, Roy. Yeah, see, this is the one that I love. This is one of my favorite colors. The in the game. Oh, this one's great, man. I mean, I don't really think that. Roy has a bad palette, honestly. I think they're all nice. No, I agree. Like, I even say that as, like, a, a, a known hater of green-colored alts, green, but Roy's two, green is, is great, one. so. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. All right. Game four here. It's going to be on Smashville. Uh, I got to say, I think this is Shirk's favorite stage. Because he, uh, he's come here a lot with Roy. He's won a lot of games as Roy here uh, since we've been commentating this bracket, so it's been great. Yeah. And this is just, a, I feel like, just a great Roy stage in general. Jeez. Um, you, you might have seen a couple instances where Srix might have gone, like, a little too ham off stage uh, and, you know, lost a couple of stocks that they probably shouldn't have lost, you know, uh, way early on in the, uh, in the game, in, you know, in the sets. But, you know, uh, so far, you know, so good so far. Comfort pick's a comfort pick, man. Mm-hmm. All right, Shirks has to get out of the corner here, though. Oh, okay. Having to be careful here. Ooh, just Ooh. missing that last hit of uh, of Nair. And ooh, having to be careful here. If you're Maple Mage, the damage is mounting. But starting out in your little comeback of your own. Nice falling up right through the platform. Nice try. That trick worked a couple times actually in the in the first set that they played. So it's nice. To it's nice to see Shirks make the adjustment and uh, not get caught by the little chainsaw at the ledge there. Very active hitbox. Ooh, Back and here, though, good, good on this stage as well, Koopa. Yeah, Srix going to lose that... Uh, uh, he's going to lose that first stock here in a game where Maple Mage, again, needs to win to keep their bracket luck alive here. Mm -hmm. um, ooh! <laughs> poor poor it's, Cord sounds like she's in such pain, man. Yeah, that sounded like it's so delayed, too. You know what I mean? It seemed after the fact, but there's the instant pin at the ledge there getting it canceled. Maple Mage with the pressure, Koopa. This is looking really strong. 174 is a, a very high percentage to live on the stage against Roy. So something like a falling up air. If you sweet spot it, will KO. Shirk's back on the board. We've seen him do this a million times, though. Only yeah, day. No, yeah, Roy is a, is definitely has the, the, the engine uh, to mount those back, especially those falling up air combos, man. They are so yeah. disgusting. Oh, no. Are you serious again? <laughs> oh, no. Man. Maple Mage at the ledge with Corrin down air putting on a clinic. You love no, that, to see it, man. No, that, yeah. that was great stuff from uh from Maple Mage, man. The the pick has, has proven to be an excellent counter pick right now. Mm -hmm. Maybe we were wrong about Zero Suit. I think that's pretty safe to say at this point. Yeah, maybe. Would it be the first time I was wrong at 9 in the morning? That's for sure. Yep. At the ledge? Nope. Trying to challenge it from above with a down arrow, the read with the down smash. The positioning right now for Maple Mage has been incredible. Yeah, 100 percent man. Oh. Yeah. Smash Yahoo. four? Is that you? That's what I'm saying. Instant Make it core and look godlike. This is man. this is insane. <laughs> We're looking at the Sharks was looking at a sure thing, moving on into Grand's loser side, <laughs> and now it's looking like a like a reverse 30. 
You, you see Maple, Maple Mage, Mage popping in the chat kills me every time, dude. It's so funny. Who do you think you are? I am. <laughs> <laughs> That's the Maple Mage now. The, yes. I think I, I think Shirks has got to say the course. I would take a second in between the games, though. Yeah, and I was gonna say before the game started. Um, that's such like an underrated um, like tactic, you know, not immediately jumping into the next game. You know, give yourself the give yourself the time that you've been allotted to like collect your breath and and, and chillax. You know, give yourself some uh some some time. But where do we go for this last stage, Haz? Where do you think we're gonna we're gonna end up? I think Smashville. I think we go back. I think that's I think that's Shirks's pick, but he's he's looking at the stages right now. I don't know if they're looking at bands or whatever again, but can be anything. It has gotten significantly lighter in this room since we started. Okay, it's Roy again. You know what bro, I mean? Like this is natural sunlight, dude. It's coming in. Bro, I could it's turn weird. my ring light off probably. I, can't, I, can't, I, like I know. I oh yeah, we can get some natural real natural sunlight in here. That'd be great. Anyway. Let's see what happens here. Yeah, 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 Smash Bill. I I figured. Yeah, like outside of that, like uh, that down air stock, everything was working pretty well for for Strix right here. So, again, if you can avoid those gnarly early percent uh, docks, um, you know, from down air, uh, you're in business. And already a quick 51 piece to uh, to start off this final game here in losers finals. Uh oh. Ooh. That down air, it's been so good this set so far, Koop. I'm surprised that one didn't connect, but it must have just been off the mark. Ooh. Oh, nice high recovery there from uh, Maple Mage. Mm -hmm. Ooh, not getting crossed up by the uh, by the side B, though, so that uh, F smash is going to miss. Okay, at the ledge. Maple Mage showing the back air a lot and throwing it out. See what can happen here, too. Looking for forward smash. Missed timed a little bit, though. Good mix up there by Shirks. And okay. you see and you see Srix is still not afraid to just run uh, run off the stage drop zone and you know and go for a low percent edge guard like that, despite the fact that he could yep. potentially die for it. And you know, a uh, huge stock right there for, for Srix. You know, whoever's taking the first stock in these games has you know it's, it's been kind of a theme all night has. Whoever's taking the lead tends to hold on to it. Um so we'll see how it uh, how that all uh, works out here for for Maple Mage. Yeah, and, and just to be clear here too, there was a little bit of set history between these two players. Shrix has the set count by an 83% win rate, is 39 to 8 in terms of game in terms of sets won. So this would be quite uh, the momentum you know pickup that Maple uh, Mage would be looking for going into the regional bracket for for. Uh, uh, the next bracket. It would be really nice to take out someone like Shrix, who has kind of had your number for a while and who's a phenomenal player, obviously. So, see if Maple Blades could do that, but right now it's looking like the Shrix show. Did we say Shrick and Morty? I mean, anyway. <laughs> no, someone said Pickles. Uh, Pickles Shrick. Shrick. Okay, yeah. I might as well. Might as well just I'm, a, I'm a fan of Tiny Shrick, personally. So. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Terrible. Either way. Huge stock right here, Koopa. This is game five. That is going to be a double edge dance. Again, another stock. Last stock for Maple. This game of the set. Win or lose. This is the last one that uh, Maple has available. Yeah, no, for, uh, for sure, man. This is the uh, your, your tournament point right here. And, uh, you know, Srix is shown to go uh, off the wall, uh, you know, in these uh, game crunch situations. When, when uh, they smell blood, uh, they're not afraid to you know, to dial it up to 11. Okay. Good patience right there. Uh, Shrek's not pulling a trigger on a defensive. Oh, I think he had it right there. He just didn't swing forward tilt. This could be it. Down air to close it. You'll love to see it. Koopa, the dunk. I don't even think it was necessary, but moving on with a statement. Shrek's almost getting reverse 3 0 but closing out that game five in a dramatic fashion. Very well played by the Roy main, but you got to give Maple Mage a lot of credit there. Switching to Corrin, getting two game wins, and then keeping a, a competitive uh, game five there as well. Very nice stuff from Maple Mage. Love to see what they do in the next bracket as well. Get some well earned rest and, and save yourself up for that next bracket as well. So yeah, good man. games I for sure. Yeah, absolute banger of a set right there. Again, these yeah. two played a great uh, set you know, earlier in, in the block uh, in winter semis, and it continues on through here as... Uh, you know, we have now reached the uh, potential final bracket uh, match of the night, folks. Uh, is, you got uh, Kanga 
uh, Ghost sitting up in the winner side of Grands, and they will be going up against Srix, who has uh, rode the wave, you know, through a brief season yeah. losers bracket, and now finds themselves, uh, you know, with in position for a uh, potential, you know, uh, upset here, or not an upset, a run back against the person that sent them there in the first place. So it's going to be fun, man. Yeah. I'm so excited. Yeah, and I think one of the questions is, you know, which character is uh, are we going to see out of Ghost? You know, is it going to be the me brawler? Is it going to be, you know, Minecraft or Steve from Minecraft? Or is it going to be some other character that we might have heard of? Uh, I know that he also is playing Min Min. I think earlier in the bracket today we saw uh, that that had happened. So we'll see. A lot of different things that I want to see from Ghost. Uh, definitely kind of stole the spotlight in this last chance qualifier, but but uh, Shrix as well has had quite the run. So you see, it's going to be a good set either way, Koopa. But this is going to be our last set for the day, unless there's a reset, of course, and we'll get two sets, which would be great. Um, get some more of this amazing uh, Smash World Tour action here. It's online qualifier. It's been a great time, Koopa. It's been a lot, a lot of fun. I do appreciate that we put the patch notes, uh, which patch we're on in, in this, because this is like this is like a timestamp, because the Smash World Tour is going to be running for a long time. We're mm -hmm. going to go through other patches. We're going to see potentially new characters come uh throughout this whole the life cycle of this thing so it's gonna be awesome it's yeah, gonna be look, really cool this is this is going on for 10 weeks they, they, we could be, get to the you know the north the north america qualifiers you know in the beginning end of may and it could be a completely different game we're playing by then who knows and mm -hmm. uh I, I love every second of it you know this has been uh it's been a treat so far you know these first two weeks you, know, you and myself have had the uh, as, as the pleasure uh you know to to uh Yep. You know, to commentate here so far and, and the, the level of talent has been absolutely amazing and yeah you know again shout outs to the uh you know to everybody competing in the bracket today i'm so looking forward to see how everyone uh you know squares out when uh you know we do eventually get back to a state of uh you know of offline tournaments whenever that may be and uh yep. yeah i'm stoked man it's, it, it's gonna be so much fun it feels awesome man it just it's it's so good to feel you know really connected to the community and even a bigger part of the community than ever before so it's just been a great initiative and i'm happy to be a part of it too man so you guys want to keep it going appreciate all the mentions and follows on twitter and stuff you guys have been amazing uh chat it has been really fun to interact with you truly like we were cracking up even during breaks like dude, this chat is hilarious so we we're having a lot <laughs> of fun you don't mind dropping a follow uh, i make some youtube content twitch all that good stuff so you know support me and uh, happy to support back to you guys and follow koopa as well so we both do our yeah. own things, uh, podcasts, uh, Smash stuff, Twitch stuff, uh, and everything in between. So you guys are great. Uh, we're going to get into Grands very shortly here, and it's going to be an awesome set to close it out for the day. Yeah, I'm, I'm stoked, man. Again, uh, and uh, this isn't going to be the last to see of me and Hazmat on the circuit, at least for uh, the rest of this month. Hint, hint, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Um, maybe. And all that fun stuff. So maybe, maybe. I don't know. I don't know what tomorrow brings. I just know. Well, in fact, I don't even know if it's tomorrow yet. I haven't gone to bed. But, you know, it's uh, there's, I can't there's... wait to sleep. I'm so excited <laughs> to sleep, but I'm more excited for this uh, grand finals that we have coming up. Uh, we have two crazy players, Ghost, who has played a couple different characters. Uh, what, what an assortment. Me, Brawler, Steve, <laughs> and I feel like I'm missing one. Oh, <laughs> duh. Min Min. There you go. Oh, duh. Yeah. I, I feel like uh, I feel like Steve is the name that you would give your Me Brawler. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, right. Like the real character in Super Smash Brothers. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, everybody has those like gag me's that they have on their, you know, Switch that like you forget about. Yeah. I've got Steve Harvey on mine. I love that one. I use that <laughs> I one a lot. That. That's Super a good funny. One. Shout out people to people uh, make really good memes, dude. Yeah, really good memes. Like whoever does that. No, I gotta give a shout out to my man. Uh, yeah, a shout out to my man. Uh, why do bad things happen to good people? Uh. He is uh, the pristine, like, he's he's made some of the best memes I've ever seen, man. Like, Guy yeah. Fieri as a robot and, and, and stuff like that is absolutely fantastic. He's a great player. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, great player. Great memes, uh, for sure. So it's been, a, <laughs> it's, it's, it's been a treat so far, man. And again, that character I still feel like is, like, hella slept on and, and stuff. So it's, it's proven to be very effective so far tonight. But you know we are awaiting uh, our uh, you know our, our combatants for uh, for grand finals here as uh, you know uh, we are, are looking to to finish things uh, off for you guys tonight and yeah you know, I gotta say uh, yeah. it's, it's 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 very it's very weird to commentate when the sun's coming through uh, it's like even in even in real life like 
most tournaments and like the commentary stuff is like so dungeoned off in the back that like natural light yep. is like a, a thing of like it's a myth. Like I can only think it's of a, a handful. Of, it's a luxury. Yeah, I can only think yeah. of a handful of venues where uh, you know we've been able to take benefit of, of natural sunlight to really bring out how great these these webcams that we work with are. So yeah, it's very true. Whew. It's been a time, Koopa. It's been a, it's been a great time though. Yeah, really no, fun absolutely. stuff. Uh, I think we're gonna be getting to the set here soon, guys. So. Yeah, I mean, dude, this was another amazing qualifier right in a row. Uh, and there's going to be a lot to talk about from this one as well. Uh, a lot of awesome characters were used today. A lot of uh, interesting top-level play, like we said. I think one of the, the most interesting highlights is there was a Dark Pit Ditto in Winter's Finals, and it wasn't any secondaries or anything. So, oh boy, here we go. All right, the DLC era is officially taking over. Ghost versus Shrix. Sephiroth versus Pyra and Mithra. Three, You're starting on the yeah. Mithra, though. Speed of this character is insane, Koopa. Let's go. Yeah, here we go, baby. Grand Finals, as my uh, our good friend Stu, the announcer, would say. Uh, uh, although no one can do it like Stu, though, you know? I can't. I don't God, have enough No one can. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's the, the, man is, the man is gifted. Uh, shout out to that man, for sure. But yeah, uh, we're seeing, uh, you know, new sword versus old sword here in uh, Mithra versus uh, Sephiroth and... Again, I haven't seen a lot of Sephiroth in these Wi-Fi tournaments. This character, I feel like, is getting kind of a, a, a rap as a bad Wi-Fi character, but I don't really see that has. I think really? this character is still... That, that's what, from what I'm hearing from you know people online, but may I suggest you follow Tweak and watch what he does with this character. So, Right. Oh, jeez. What a punish right there, too. What a call up there. Burning end. That was an amazing spacing option right there. Good call out. Okay. Good recovery. Yeah, Shrix Aqua Flash is barely getting back to the what? to the ledge right there. Oh, what, what? Yep, see ya. <laughs> see ya. Yep. Ow. It's so painful sounding and looking, you know? It can't be good. Yeah, that that, that move is is, is uh painful. Mm -hmm. Alright, Pyra's out. Edge guarding her specialty. After Mithra puts him in the disadvantage, Pyra comes over and takes over. Ooh no, the downer. Yeah, missing the re-grab right there. I feel like F-Tilt would have uh, definitely connected, but, you know, Ghost just coming up short on that uh, on that punish. Down it. Dude, that down air is ridiculously good. I Honestly, it's probably her best. I, I, I feel like that's kind of a strong statement because her up is really good too, but, man, her down air is crazy strong. Yeah, it's like Arsene, uh, it's like Arsene down air, but it just never goes away. <laughs> like, it's like yeah. the, that, it's it's a super strong. The the, the spike hitbox on it's insane. Um, it, it it combos at almost all percents. It's wild. That move is a problem. Mhm. Mm a lot of moves are problems. Honestly, it hits so hard. As you see, uh, Strix trying to get something uh, going with the uh, with the side B for of Sephiroth right there, but. Yeah, that, that move, as good as it is when it, it, it when it connects, it definitely leaves you open uh, if you're not paying attention. Ooh! Down tilt the buster. At the ledge again. I like the double fake out, you know what I mean? Like, I'm going to pirate, JK. Try to trip him up, maybe get, get a little speed bonus in there. Ooh! Oh, goes for the flaming end, but... Uh... Gonna come up uh, short once again. The upper, though, will catch Sephiroth on landing, so... Uh, Ghost able to regain the lead here. Yeah. Grab, yep, that should be good damage here. Nope, a little too much rate. Wow, no follow-up. Okay, good. And again, follow up with the uh with the neutral air. Uh oh. Yep, there we go. Reverse octo slash back to the ledge. That is a huge uh again, huge uh advantage right there for Sephiroth. That move is dumb strong. Mm -hmm. I like the way you approach that right there. You have the orbs on you, but you can still go at Sephiroth. What he's kind of anticipating you doing is picking a defensive option and hiding away from him. So if you come at him and hit him a couple of times, create some space for yourself naturally. Okay, looking for the blaze again there. Try to footstool too. But like if you if you kind of swing at Sephiroth when he doesn't expect it, it's obviously a good time to do it. So it doesn't hurt to swing at him even if you have the Shadow Flare dots on you. All right. I'm gonna go for the up throw here. Ooh, but nice landing there uh, from uh, Srix. Ooh, oh, oh my god, every oh. Wow. Yep, the orb saved him. Pyra yeah, is Shadow... out though. Shadow Flare MVP, man. Okay. Almost getting a KO here. Pyra at the ledge. What is she gonna do? 
I be. Yeah. Whoa! Okay, trying to create some space here. Strix Ooh, can't find his way back into the ledge quite yet. There he is. Can he get his feet back on the ground though? Side B again. Is that gonna oh, do it? Maybe? Yes. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That was a good hit for sure. Caught him in all of it. Very nice job. Ghost taking down game one. Pyra and Mithra. Pyra closing it up though. I mean, that's, I feel like that's how it, it is, yeah. man. You know, uh, <laughs> to bring it back to baseball again, Mithra's your uh, <laughs> Mithra's your Andy Pettit, and uh, you know, Pyra's the Mariana Rivera. So. Yeah, you gotta yeah, bring, bring in the closer, throw nothing but heat, baby. Literally. Mm -hmm. Cut fastballs, you know? Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> do you think do you think they uh uh Pyra Mithra have any idea who Metallica is? I think they're fans. If I had to guess. <laughs> Alright, Strix back to the drawing board. I appreciate that he does this in between games. It's worth it just to take some time and recollect your thoughts and think about what you could do better. But uh even even more than that, think about what character you're gonna go and what stage you're gonna go, so no, it, that the game one Sephiroth could have just been a, a test, or maybe these guys are like, oh, you know what, you know, we've, I'm sure that they both put a could, you know, could have potentially had top two seeds on their on their minds, so they're just like, all right, let's just, uh, you know, nobody gets hurt, let's just take this easy. These guys are talking American. <laughs> I can't understand. <laughs> I feel like when people think American, they think like like Texas accent. You know what I mean? Like kind of Southern drawl or something like that. Yeah, I mean, but, uh, they don't know about they don't know about the Boston vernacular or the uh, fast and yeah, <laughs> wicked. Which is kind of going away, honestly. Which is sad, but it is what it is. You you never lost your your khakis and your, or your car keys? Nope. <laughs> Imagine losing your khakis. Anyway, <laughs> Strix <laughs> and Ghost both now have, have taken their time going over there. See, let's hey, see what they got. It really could be it? anything. Code. <laughs> I apologize, I got a blazing end. What? Is what I, call I, not flaming end. Uh, thank you for uh, correcting me, Jack. Hey, you're good. I messed it up last week, that's why. Yeah, I, I, I can't have the Zeno blade uh, stands down my throat. Not again. Yeah. The worst one I had was double edge dance for sure, because I call it dancing blade, but it is what it is. Either way, that's how you learn. You get better at stuff. Oh, he taunted. That was a mistake against against uh, Mithra. She's so fast. Oh, Diddy Kong. Holy yeah. crap. That's, that's what I'm saying. Good shield work right there. It, it's easy to try to swing after the first time you shield there. So that was really good. He, he knew that uh, Ghost was good, or he knew that uh, Search was going to approach with uh, a yeah. second attack. Yeah. Now this might look like a th pe people might look at this and, and think it could be a throw, but I don't uh, know, man. I I, I I never sleep I on anyone. Dead. Yeah, she's dead. That move doesn't send you as far as you think it does. Like, it, the, the animation looks like it sends you way farther. Yeah, they definitely fall into that cloud category where, like, your recovery's okay, and then when you lose your jump, like, you're kind of just screwed. Yeah, but right now, just like that, uh, Strix's getting a, a gift right there as, uh, as Ghost is already down a stock here. And, you know, I never sleep on Diddy Kong, man. This character is still no. capable of, you know, of mauling your face off, you know, uh, comboing large strings again. Look to Tweak. He's, he's putting a lot of work with this character. Um, yeah. Between Tweak, Rivers, and Aaron, like, there's just so much good Diddy Kong content to, to watch and digest. Oh my, I thought that was going to be it, honestly. It was close. The fact that it's close is insane. <laughs> that, that's where your money's going, man. Ooh, okay. Oh, he turned it around. It was smart. It was smart. Cheeky. Yeah, I forget you can do that sometimes. Playing the keep away game very well here. Oh my god! Diddy Kong oh, getting nice. the hottest haircut of all time. Oh jeez, nice job there by Ghost capitalizing. You can see again, looking at some matchup proficiency here, using the banana to extend the... Okay, I'm getting hit by it now. To, to extend his advantage state and ultimately getting a KO is really nice. Op option coverage, baby. Gonna miss the uh, the Chroma Dust right there, but still able to set up a great positioning for himself is, uh, is Ghost. Ooh, Ooh, the barrels on top of the platform. Nice job poking his head through. I didn't know that that uh, Cirque's had a uh, a Diddy. This is crazy. I feel like most people have a Diddy because Diddy's pretty True. like in gameplay. It's pretty straightforward. Yeah, at I least on like a that. at least on a surface level, his Diddy's pretty straightforward. But no, nah, Strix definitely looks like he knows what he's doing with this character. Mm -hmm. Ooh. 
Uh, Evan, be careful here. Uh, Ghost trying to get uh, themselves back on the board here, but uh, Sprix doing a great job just extending this lead, man. Diddy Kong, you know, a Banana still needs to have your respect as one of the best items yeah. in the match. Like, That's true. Off stage here. Okay, just go for a simple recovery. Go to the ledge. Rinse and repeat, though. Uh-oh. Wow, all the way through him. That was good. Yeah, that was risky, especially with the banana on the other side of him right there. Yep, exactly. You had to go behind him there. No other option, really. Oh, okay, switches back to Mithra, but uh, Strix able to just break zone, get the grab, and you know reset the situation. Uh oh, okay, down smash. Strix on the board here, one to one right now. Ghost, and I, I want to see what Ghost does. Let's see what else Ghost has. You know, Strix is getting a little bold here in the pocket, going to the Diddy, who I haven't seen all day. Let's yeah. see what let's let's see what Ghost can come up with. <laughs> the pocket Diddy Kong, man, like it still feels like Diddy Kong is like anti-meta, but he's still like really good. It's weird. He's really, like, really good. Even when Diddy Kong felt like he wasn't that great, I still felt like Diddy Kong was good because banana and you know, among other things. I, yeah. I, I, I think I've heard other people echo this statement, like uh like rivers and stuff like that but you know uh they feel like that diddy is like one major buff away from being like a top tier character yeah um but even then i still feel like this character still has like a lot of you know juice to work with yeah for sure yeah he needed a little help but he got it he should be all set now so Strix in Strix in chat saying he hasn't played that character in seven months by the way hey sometimes it's like riding a bike sometimes you just don't forget <laughs> Listen, man. Anyway. You never forget. You never forget that your coconut gun shoots and spurts. So, mm -hmm. if he shoots you, it's gonna hurt. You know, just how it goes in the DK rap bars, baby. Mhm. Mm Truly. All right. Game three should be starting up soon. Ghost yep. choosing his character. I wonder if he's gonna go meet Brawler because I know that. You know, Mario, a brawler type characters can do well against Diddy Kong. So I wonder if that's kind of what he's thinking. Or maybe he wants to zone him out a little bit more. This could be a Min Min. Trying to recover against Min Min as Diddy seems very scary. Yeah, so we'll it, it, it it sounds pretty pretty rough. Um, yeah. But this is, this is the, the game we sign up for, man. These guys are our counter pick. Uh, we could be in for a counter pick war here. As uh... <laughs> It's true. It's true. But we shall see here, man. I love Diddy Kong. Diddy Kong's one of my favorite characters, just not even just in Smash, but in, in video games. And I feel like it, it feels wrong when Diddy Kong is not like a viable, like competitive option in Smash. It feels kind of yeah. nasty. I like him in, in Donkey Kong Country. I do not like fighting him in Smash. And, and I think he's lucky that some of the sauciest players in the game play him, like Tweak and, and Aaron and, and James. Like, I think he, they, that he's lucky that those characters play them. Oh, they're both on the sidelines now. Where do we go from here? <laughs> Billy, get in there. All three of us. We all have <laughs> throwing pages a, to make. Throwing a towel, Rocky. <laughs> okay, we've re-entered the arena. What is the is the vibe going to be? Uh-oh. What? Well. <laughs> Don't cover the arena ID. I want to join. <laughs> it isn't covered. There might be a password. Oh, the ID, yeah. <laughs> The double? Okay. Wow. This is that? honestly, I feel like, what the matchup should be. Yeah, I think they both have had their fun. They're just like, all right, now it's time for uh, to get serious with my Team Rocket and me. One, yeah, but watch how this thing moves. This thing is no joke. Like, you might think no. it just because it looks kind of silly, but this thing is no joke. At least like this it's like a default me face. It's not. It's nothing like obscene yeah. or disgusting. Yeah, I'm fine <laughs> with that. Rapid jab at the ledge, a little extra damage there. Yeah, listen, we saw, we saw this meat brawler earlier in the tournament before, man. And uh, yeah. I think when it's he's playing, yeah, this, this character is is no joke, for sure. That, that there is going to be uh, detrimental to uh, to Srix's, uh health. But the jab, the F smash, or the Jeff smash, depending on who you talk to. Uh, will convert on that stock right there as uh, as uh, Srix once again uh, off yeah. to an early lead here. 
Strix is looking really strong right now, Koopa. He, he looks like it. Okay, suplex. It's good damage. I like the stage for me, Brawler, too, especially with the, the suplex special. You know, you get the platforms, you kind of trap them on them for sure. Yeah, it could also be a, a, a kamikaze option uh, if that potentially comes down to it. Yeah. Yeah, especially against Roy. I mean, we've seen Ghost do such a good job against Roy's recovery, so. Could definitely happen again. Oop, okay. Strix continuing to uh, add on the pressure right here as uh, Ghost having a hard time getting this first stock off. That'll happen. Oh, looking for the back air. Down tilt. No air dodge. Yep, that's going to be it. Not having that air dodge there. I think he didn't have a jump either, but it was good timing from Ghost to clean up that stock. Tied even on stocks, you just got to be careful. Okay, suplex. Look for a yeah. nair. Man, that nair hitbox is crazy. Look at this. Up B. Wow, Ooh. that was an enormous <laughs> combo. Dude, I wish I kind of wish it KO'd. I mean, I kind of don't because that would be very toxic, but it looks really cool. <laughs> that's your Ken Min coming out. Yeah, right. That's your KO. It's like, oh, well, he's at 40, so I don't know why that's your KO. But okay. <laughs> nair. Look for the ledge pressure now. Is he going to up B? Nope. Back air. Good job. Yeah, Ace, he, man from Ghost is crazy, Koopa. Yeah, and a, an amazing uh, uh, reversal of fortune right there, but the last hit of the up smash will convert right there. So despite the, the percentage uh, comeback from uh, Ghost, he's still down stock-wise. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> he went flying. Again, Ghost is trying to... Jockey your position here, but Strix coming up uh, dangerously close to another uh, jab F smash. Yeah, oh jeez. Swinging right there, Strix on the hunt. I like the way he's, he's going back a little bit. Not giving up too much stage control or anything, but just not allowing him to get hit. Double edge dance going up. Damage and the stage control for an aggressive bear. Can't find it, Koopa. Yeah, just coming up short, man, and the longer. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> okay. Oh, you're done. It. Ooh, there we go, folks. Uh, Srix is up two games to one here in the first set of grands. Has we are on the doorstep of a reset here, my friend. We sure are, and I mean, Srix has really earned it. Uh, I like that when he went to his main, or when he, when he kind of started taking it a little more seriously, he started winning games. So we'll see what Ghost could do on the on the clap back here, because he definitely, I mean, Ghost has played phenomenally all day. Uh, mm -hmm. You gotta just see what's left in the tank, because that's the hardest part about closing out the tournament. In the beginning, you're all amped up and you're ready to play and all that stuff. You get towards the end, and you're like, man, I'm kind of feeling it. I'm feeling a little tired right now, but you gotta you gotta push through it and kind of see what you're made of. So, I'm excited to see what Ghost comes up with here. Yeah, man, I agree. Um, you know, we could see another character counter pick. Maybe I doubt it. I think the Me Brawler is probably your best, uh, you know, your best hand going forward. But I don't know. You know, yep. uh, both these care, both these guys. I'm sure are impossible to read because they both have so many characters in their arsenal they could play. Yeah, and just as a reminder to the chat, so the setup for um, uh, the me brawler uh, on Ghost side, so it's one three three two, which is shot put for neutral B, suplex for the side B, which you saw a lot, the thrust uppercut, which you also saw on the up special, and then down B is the the zero suit one. So really, really strong me setup in my opinion. Yeah, that's pretty solid. That suplex is an underrated move, man. It's really good. So good. Yeah, I agree. Although my favorite me special of all time is the one where he just like dives head first into the ground. Like really fast. I don't think I know that one. The head on attack. It's so stupid. Oh, <laughs> I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he just falls like a rock. It's absolutely hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> Three, two, all right, man. One, go. All right, we will not see a... St oh. <laughs> I, I thought they were trying to reset the stage, you know what I'm saying? Okay, suplex. It's a good 20, almost 23 damage, honestly. It's pretty nuts. Another grab, too. Uh-oh. Look like me grappler, you know? <laughs> That'd be brawler. It's like, a, it's like a new class. Me Zangief? Yeah. <laughs> a B. That's... Ooh. Oh, very close wow. to stock. I think Sirx really knows how to how to DI that, though. Or Sirx, he really knows how to DI that, so that, that helps a lot. I get so shocked when that move just, like, straight up does not kill. It looks like it yeah. should. <laughs> mm -hmm. I agree. Okay. All right, but again, nice percent lead here for uh, for Ghost in the early phase of this game. And, you know, we, we've seen what that Nair can do on these, on, you know, at these high percentage uh, 
land traps and stuff like that, they'll eventually start killing. So, yeah, mm -hmm. if you're Srix, you definitely have to be careful right now. Trying to get back to the ledge, avoids the shot put, but narrowly. Hold on. For back air, something with a little power up B. I think he could have let another one rip, honestly. I think it would have oh. connected. Ooh, Ooh bashing your dash too, I like it, yep. Truly Go tragic, ahead. man. Yeah. Okay. Wow, the first stock going to Ghost, actually. Very nice job by the Me Brawler. I think this is a tough matchup for Me Brawler, too. Like, you, you want to get up close so you can do your stuff to Roy, but he also wants to get in close, so. And he hits so hard. Yeah, any sort of character that has to, like, engage near Roy's wheelhouse, I, I feel like has that, like, constant fear yeah. of, like, just getting hit by, like, a rogue F smash or a rogue F tilt at, like, 80 or 90, just exploding. Yeah, that. Oh, is that going to work? Oh, man. I was gonna be, I thought it was gonna be stock. It's so close every time with Ghost. Okay, double chance. A little too delayed there. Unable to get the KO. Ooh, okay. Soft hit in there. Not gonna be enough just yet. As nice. Uh, that'll do it though. Yeah, that's a great defensive fair there. Just kind of protecting the ledge and beating out a hitbox that Ghost threw out. That was so smart. Okay. Let's see what Ghost can do here. They're gonna be on the hunt for the KO, but they, I think they gotta play chill. Yeah, get a couple grabs, set them up off stage. Yep. You Wait can just a second. Repeat them too. What's up? I was just gonna say, that was uh, definitely too close for comfort if you're Strix right now. B. Ooh, the up me again to get a connect, but... Oh, uh, just barely gonna wow. be enough. You know, uh, Shrix was not able to make that bag. Magnet hands are nowhere for Roy. I mean, his recovery, I feel like it's not exploited enough by, by players at like a lower level. You know what I mean? Top players all know how to exploit that recovery because it's actually pretty lackluster. Yeah, I was also going to say, I feel like the, the fear of the of the shot put potentially raining down yep. uh, might have played a factor into that as well. Definitely. Certainly possible. Oh, you never know what a Ghost is going to do when they get a grab at like low mid percents. It's like, is this going to be a down throw into some sort of up B read that kills? It could be, but speaking of killing, Strix yeah, looking to he's looking to reset the bracket here, Koopa. Yeah, no, and uh, that was a great read on the platform right there, reading the roll away without much space to go. And uh, again, Roy can make up this percent deficit uh, very, very easily. He needs, oh, a B? Man, again, it's just not going to KO. I really do feel like Strix has played this matchup because he's DIing that like really well. We saw yeah. kill other characters around this percentage anyway. It looked pretty easy. Ah. Uh... Uh, might... Oh, no, that's it. Yep. Okay, oh. we're going to game five, Koopa. Track Big and game field five. Equip... Yep, track and field equipment straight to the dome, man, as uh, <laughs> Ghost comes out on on top there. So I imagine if you, if Strix is playing the, the rocket grunt, the shot, but it's just a heavy ball. Is that how this works? Yes. <laughs> Thank you for humoring me. <laughs> Sorry, I had my mic muted, so I just tried to jump in, tried, tried to jump in quick for you, so. Chat, we're out of game five. If Ghost wins, we pack it up. Ghost is your champion for the last qualifier bracket. If Strix wins, we're going to another set. Either way, the outcome is good. We watched some amazing Smash Ultimate today uh, during the qualifier. It saw so many good players and so many different characters and stages. All sorts of things to kind of you know capture this, this meta that we're currently living in. I love it. I think it was a fantastic day today watching all the different streams and regions. Uh, or sub-regions, I guess, kind of go at it. So it's been great, Koopa. No, I, I agree, man. It, it's been uh, a great journey so far. Uh, it's a shame that it could potentially come to an end here. And um, it's been great to go through it with you. It's been great to go through with the chat. They've been very, uh, you know, helpful, not only just with, you know, uh, <laughs> keeping us awake with the last, but also very informative, you know, on on uh, players and, and stuff like that. And Again, got to give that shout out to production here while we still can, of course. Uh, Brig and everybody else, Cact and all the TOs, uh, you know, putting in all the work and burning the midnight oil right now. So, we're well, we're, yeah, we're, well past, we're, well, we're well past the midnight oil. We're just at straight oil. I forgot. This is, yeah, this is this crazy oil for sure. We're going to power through this Koopa. It's going to be a great game. And if we move on to another set, it's going to be a great set number two. But for right now, let's focus on this game five as our competitors are. Ghost versus Cirques. It's going to be a game five, Koopa. Let's get into it. PS2. Yeah, we'll see if the, if the home stage advantage technically <laughs> works out for 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 Ghost right now. Um, but again, this stage is just as good for Roy as I'm sure it is for me, Brawler, uh, as well. You know, 
Okay. Whoa, Jesus. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, the suplex. Being the meat, meat grappler is so good. I think the it's awesome. <laughs> the meat grappler. Shrek's off to a good start here, though. Off to a lead, and he's doing the thing where he just backs off a little bit. Go ahead. He wants you to make a mistake, then he's going to swat you away for it. Yep, just do that. Playing a little tag, you know what I mean? Come up, bop you, run yep. the other way. Yeah, again, man, like like you brought up in the last set, having to play within Roy's wheelhouse like this is so dangerous. Uh, yeah. You know, for, for the me, bro. <gasps> no, 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 no. That's not what you want to see. A little too far with the air dodge there. I think he thought he had attacked. We saw that a little bit earlier from Srix, but not a good time to do it. But he can make a comeback here. No problem. With the aggression off stage, he is good at it. Ooh. Yep, just hold that shield. Yep, just don't even give him a chance. Yep. Even if he grabs you, it's like, all right, that's fine. That's better than getting, you know, destroyed by the double edged dance there. Yep, and, but you also bring up uh, Srix's willingness to run off stage and edge guard. Again, you have to be careful with Roy, um, especially in the circumstances that you're in where you're playing for the reset. You don't want to accidentally, you know, gimp yourself and put yourself in position to lose. Mm -hmm. Ooh, not gonna connect the last hit of the double edge dance, uh, and not gonna connect the uh, the jab yeah. to back air either. He could potentially be out of range for that has. Definitely, I think the combination of the Rage and the Roy, and then also obviously the 163. Oh my goodness, it was almost a stock again. Up tilt, looking for it. He already air dodged. This is trouble, Koopa. Ooh. Okay, up B. Yep, yep, I love it. Pull the trigger. Although if that was shielded, it could be down two stocks to, to none right now. Yeah, Yo. no, for sure. Ooh, goes for the shot put, but good air dodge past the ledge. Ooh, you see him go for the up smash right there. Kind of a yep. seldomly used option so far. Yeah, he's saving it. I, I like that. Ghost is one of those players that saves options for when they really matter. And I mean, we're in a game five where if he doesn't win, he's going back uh, to the drawing board and trying to figure out how to fight uh, Shrix through the rest of another set. So I think he's going to want to take this one home, Koopa. Yeah, no, absolutely. You want to capitalize on his lead where you can. Oof. Wow, but nice back air right there to catch the landing. Yeah, the whiff punish master, man. It's so good. I mean, he's fighting against the sword. Obviously, it's Roy, so the, uh -oh. the range isn't that long, but... Sword against Brawler is just never good for the whiff punishment for the Brawler. Dash attack to trade? Not oh enough, though. God. That was so dangerous, man. Looking down the barrel of a side B from Roy. Oh, you are a brave soul. Yeah, no way. Oh, jab. Back air. Is that going to do it? Oh, yes. We got Strix oh, with a comeback. 167 on the Roy. This is insanity. One thing we haven't really seen from Go so far is the grabs, Koopa. I feel like they were so good earlier, but now Strix is the one calling the shots. Yeah, no. Um, having a hard time, uh, like you said, converting a grab uh, here. Here we go. Low percent Roy combo. So dangerous. Oh, wow. Man. Wow. Don't count Ghost out yet, though. He has some crazy tricks up his sleeve as well. Koopa, last stock. We're going to either see a second set or we're going to... Hold on. At the ledge. Strix had good positioning there. He couldn't capitalize, though. Yep. Has Strixo mode been engaged once again? Has, man. <laughs> I do not know yet. Look at these snares down tilt. Ooh, no follow up though. No capitalization. Oh. That one hurts. It was such a good position right there for, for Ghost to take over the game. Okay, still looking good though. Ooh, okay. That air dodge <gasps> uh, away. Gonna be huge there, but gonna miss the F smash. Oh, that's there. gonna be it. That's gonna be another set. Oh, no, he's good. He's good. He's good. Up B. Okay, goes past Whoa. the ledge. <gasps> Finish it. Oh, my goodness. How is Ghost oh, still alive here? God. This is ridiculous. There, that's. It's, Seriously? Okay, there you go. Okay, another set we have unlocked. Well played by Srix there. Insane stuff at the ledge, but we've been seeing it all night and morning and day. <laughs> it's McDonald's is going to stop serving breakfast soon by the time this set's over. <laughs> Are they 24 hours now? <laughs> and some places. Wow. That was insane, man. Talk about yeah. uh, a nail-biter set. You, you know, you got two uh, phantom kill screens as... As our good friend Ajax always says, uh, the red lightning has lied to you this whole time. So, um, yeah, and just like that, uh, great ledge trapping is what ends up being the uh, the great equalizer there uh, for uh, for Srix as we as Srixo mode was yep. engaged, and we are now moving into uh, true finals uh, here between these two. Oh um, yeah, these two are, are, are jockeying for that top for that better seed, man. And, and I gotta say, like you know, this is the end of the rope here. Like these guys. Uh, have been playing all day. They've been playing to first qualify, which they both did, and now it's all about the seeding. So you can tell that this means a lot because either these guys, they can kind of goof around right now and they can kind of play some funny characters or whatever. Maybe they got that out of the way earlier in the set, but they're clearly playing now. They're playing, playing. Now let's see what happens. Yeah, it, this is this is gonna be uh, this is gonna be fun, man. Um, 
I'm I'm super duper excited. Now, what do you what do you do if you're uh, if you're ghost right now? Do you go back to uh, you know uh, one of your other Ooh. characters? Do you maybe break out the Min Min? I don't know. You know, at this point, do you? I, I I'd say stick with the hand that got you here. You know, the me brawler w was uh was working, but yeah. Um, at the same time, you know, uh, you you could be in a scenario where you could just throw something against the wall and see if it sticks. A Shrix DQ'd from the first qualifier. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, oh, that's wild. <laughs> How about that? Um, well, I think the characters should be Brawler and Roy. I think that's been the most competitive that we've seen it so far. And both sides, like, going your best option to win. I would like to see the Min Min. Uh, I feel like you should have done that in the first set, though, if you were going to try it. Um, because then you have the second set to fall back on and be like, all right, I'll go my main the whole time. But either way, you know, it's never too late. And honestly, you've gotten into the qualifier. Okay. Yep. Forgot that's about what the zombie. I forgot about the zombie. <laughs> yeah, Alexa, play the cranberries as uh, we got the the zombies coming out. To uh... mm -hmm. that's a, no one's gonna get that joke either. God, I got it. it. You know, because <laughs> I'm in your head. Yeah, okay, exactly. there we go. There you are. Okay. Strix with Maybe? Sephiroth too. I like it. Strix or Ralph? Strix. <laughs> We have pickle, pickle. Never mind. Anyway, <laughs> game one, We're losing it. set two. Here we Woo! go. I gotta say, I do really like Ghost Steve as well. What the heck was that? Whoa! Did you see him go on the other side of that? Yeah, that was weird. He like warped through the. Uh, it's like a Sephiroth teleport trick. It was weird. Down smash. Yeah, I wow. like it. Uh oh. Okay. I was okay. I, I feel like Octoslash should go higher than it does, but for some reason it's it's it. I don't know. I'm always afraid when you dip too low with that move, you're just never gonna make it back. Yeah, I feel you. Oh, is he gonna do it? Yeah, he did. I nope. love that move. The way it kind of deafens the sound is just incredible. So. Yeah, aesthetically, that the give that guy a raise. Whoever programmed that move, that's awesome. Okay, first stock though is going to go to Ghost on his Minecraft zombie. Oh, jeez, he's playing with fire here. And he jumps in and shields it. That's insanity. Look at this mix right now, too. What? 40%. That was insane. That was so cool. Ghost playing amazing right now. Yeah, he's playing like he just saw a ghost. Like, my lord. True. Oh. <laughs> yeah, again, again, this is what I mean by this character having, like, one of the best disadvantage states, man. Just being able to just, like, recover high and just gently put a, a block of dirt, like, below you. It's absolutely insane. Down smash again, this time a little bit late. It does have good startup, especially that back hitbox, so. Okay. Shield should be a good punish here. Yep, throw. Going for the materials. He knows what he needs. He didn't get any diamond, but he did get the redstone, which does help him make more cards, so that is good. If I remember correctly, I'm pretty sure that's right. Yes. Ooh, okay, the minecart, uh, just being able to get out of range of the Nair right there, and that will be, again, huge lead right now for, uh, for Ghost as, uh, Srix, yeah. uh, trying to get himself back in the thick of things here. I wonder if, um, I wonder if, like, the, the Steve is, like, the real main, you know what I mean? Like, I, I know his me, uh, Brawler is obviously super sick, and I'm sure his Min Min's great too, but I think, like, his Steve is also, uh, it could be any of them, honestly. Yeah, no, all of all of Ghost's characters have been absolutely uh, solid. Uh, so I feel like either one of these characters could be considered the main versus not. Oh, wait a second. Okay. Good air dodge out of the shadow player. He did, he, he did that on purpose. He got the cart and threw it in his way, trying to, you know, get him to force attack or something like that. Okay. Oh, he got right into that. That's exactly Sakurai loves that. You know, that's exactly what Sakurai wanted to see. Hell's Gate. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Okay, Shadow right. Flare. It's out again. Oh, I thought the cart was going to connect there, too. Ghost kind of did it. Whoa! <laughs> Wait a second. No, it, <laughs> it would make a back the up be going to at least buy uh, Ghost some time here. But Srix is uh, right back yeah. in the thick of things right now, has. All right, Srix. Oh, no. He does fall into it. Doesn't need enough hits off the, the lava to get KO, though. Oh, jeez. He's just swinging at this boy, man. The the angel the angel wings out too though, so don't forget he will get armor on those as well. But it does not matter. The first game going to Ghost with diamond pickaxe, very nice, very very nice. 
Aesthetically, this matchup is absolutely hilarious. It's wild. It's it, it's crazy. <laughs> and they came out. Um, they were characters that were released back to back. Don't forget that either. <laughs> Isn't that weird? It's, it's so it's it still blows my mind that this is like a real thing. <laughs> yeah, that screen right there. Yeah, just nutty <laughs> stuff. All right, man. Game one. Yeah, so take it down. The the uh, the holding on to the um to the Steve uh you know till the second set you know could be a, a long con sort of game could the, 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 yeah. the me brawler game could have been all data could have been stubbornness or something too who knows I mean I think that's the first time we really saw the Sephiroth as well right oh no we we saw the last set too yeah they started the he started the last set with uh with Sephiroth um as that's he did right this time that's right either way both players trying to figure out their next move here. Yeah, no, we will. Uh, we could potentially see a run back here. I don't know. Neither, neither player, yeah. both these players are good at leaving the ring in and out. So, <laughs> hey, who knows? We're gonna take their time here and try to figure out their next move. Though every game is super pivotal at this point. Yeah, you, utilizing the utilizing the uh, the corners of the of the boxing ring very. Uh, <laughs> uh, <clearly. laughs> We await the, the start from both players. An intense staring contest yeah. between Daisy and the Yellow Devil. <laughs> <laughs> Yellow Devil is such a good icon. Not that Daisy isn't, but I feel like Yellow Devil is such a good choice. I feel like there's just so many better options for, like, arena pogs that you can choose from. Yeah. And, like, what are you, you rocking? I rock with Shovel Knight. That's mine. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, I've uh, I've used Shovel Knight since, since launch. I oh, tried nice. Yeah, he's cool. That. I love that game. That's one of my favorite games. Yeah, it's really good. Oh, there we go. Ghost blink, blinked first. Uh, he is the first one to leave <laughs> the ring. I'd love to see their uh, Smash.GG chat, you know, like what's going on on there. <laughs> Probably a lot of, uh, I don't know, GG's stuff. True. What did they just start? What did they just started um, playing by like the dragon ball rules where if you leave the ring you, you're out you lose the game the ring out yeah <laughs> that's kind of what smash is isn't it like that's you leave true the, you leave like you leave the arena and you, you lose a stock or whatever yep yeah, except there's no uh, think about out. it damn wow you just blew my deep. mind you you blew whatever's left of my brain that that's that's true it, 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 it's wild all right but like we predicted uh it is gonna be uh zombie and uh sephiroth still uh in the second game interesting so. No, very interesting for sure. Cause Strix, I mean, dude, his Roy is looking very polished. Like, I think the first time I watched it, I was like, all right, you know, he's kind of missing some jabs into into backers at the ledge, but he wasn't missing anything towards towards the end of the last couple of games. So I'm a little surprised that he's switching to Sephiroth, but maybe he just likes the character and wants to work on it for um, later in the bracket and you know, kind of making that long term investment instead. Oh, you, uh, it, that could uh, most definitely be the case. And again, you can say the same thing about. Uh, Ghost on his end. That Shadow Flare is going to add us some damage. But uh, Ghost wasted no time going right back on the offensive. Yeah. All right. Okay, dash attack. Trying to make his way back. Uh oh. Jesus, man. That up air yeah. is absolutely ridiculous. Oh, I was going to say the down air. That's really funny um, that we were both looking at different moves there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so like yeah. Steve's down air. I was like, oh, yeah, that move is crazy. But you were talking about I, Sephiroth's up air, which is also yeah. insane. Yeah, I just feel like Sephiroth's up air just isn't, like, a real thing. I still can't believe this character has, like, a sword this massive. Yeah. Up smash. It should do it. Ghost on the board first here. And Ghost Big not opportunity opting to, for him. And also not opting to make the, the diamond weaponry uh, just yet. But, again, smart choice. You know, hold your resources. Yeah. Uh, take advantage of your invincibility. And uh, now we have uh, Diamond Hands, baby, uh, out to play right now. So this is where, if you're a Strix, you got to be very, very careful. What a parry. I mean, honestly, that probably would have shield poked. If not, I don't think it does a lot of shield damage, but it could have shield broken. But I think it, I think he definitely would have eaten the hit if he didn't parry right there. So that was really nice. <laughs> okay, throw okay. some mine card out. Dude, pretty typical, like, Steve stuff right now, you know. Uh, yeah. You know, sit back, sit on your resources. Um, he's probably, I think he's like very close to getting another diamond. Oh yeah. Okay. Yep. Uh, one, two, what? three. Yep. He should be good. Yeah, yeah he's good. 
Up smash though is gonna do it again. Calling out Sephiroth above him, very nice job. Ghost again has a lead, but we saw what what, uh, what Strix did last time he had a lead. Okay, he made the comeback very quickly. Yeah, no, for sure. You, you definitely can't sleep if you're Ghost right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, down throw to the dash stack will combo. Yeah, you, you want to keep building a lead just as he is right now. Good interruption of that counter too. You got to be ready for that one. Oh! <laughs> oh, he's going out there. Oh, I love it. I love that he went out there though, Koopa. Oh, is that gonna do it? All the way from the other side? Are you serious? Ghost up 2-0. Wow. I'm telling you, that, that might be the best move in the game. I'm telling you. It's close, man. Like the more I look at it, the more I'm just like, man, they really. <laughs> I would love to talk to the intern that played with Sakurai at lunch when they were programming that move. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I wonder where to keep finding these guys. The like, oh, yeah, that's fine. Would yeah. you be? I'd be really nervous to do that because it's kind of like like your boss invented this thing and you're trying to play him and beat him at it. Like I'd be kind of nervous, honestly. <laughs> this is too hard. I want to go home. Wait, aren't you home already? Wait a minute. Hold on a second. <laughs> can I get a? Can I get a judge? You are home. It's true. <laughs> Seth loses saying, this man. matchup. I don't know that, about that one. I, I couldn't tell you. I've seen so I've I've seen so little of both these characters so far. It's like I don't know. It's weird. But they're gonna <laughs> in a set that saw a lot of counter picking the first time around. We are indeed uh, could potentially be seeing uh, in all Seth and Zombie uh, grand second set of grand finals as. Three, yeah. I don't know. I, I could definitely see on paper why uh, this matchup would, would be uh, rough for Sephiroth, but I, don't know, I feel like when you have that sort of range, nothing can be like that uh, impossible. But I don't know. Yeah. We'll see, man. We shall see. I mean, Ghost is making Steve look really nice right now. Love everything he's been putting out there with this character. Up air. Block. Yep. 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 Ah, it's so cool. Like, his little combo strings like that, the first time I saw him, I was like, this is actually pretty sick, honestly. Yeah, it's definitely one of those things where it looks cooler when you're not getting hit by it. It's very thing. true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I agree. Ooh, okay. Ooh, oh my, off the heezy with the back air. That Nasty. was wild. For a down smash, tried to catch him air dodging in. Big, big call up, but I like the idea. Again, uh, Ghost kind of locked off in the corner, just going to get his resources together. Uh, Srix just trying to you know, force some sort of approach and now has himself a uh, slight lead here. Yeah, so I think here, um, if you're Ghost, and this is kind of the interesting thing, is you go and you try to take the stock without, what a god, like that is just ridiculous. Okay, is he gonna get a kill off of it too? Man, that would have been such a cool clip. That would have been such a cool clip. Hold on, he doesn't have any intangibility. Oh, oh yeah, he did, he oh. did actually, he was off the wow, table. Okay. Okay, forward smash, it should be it. So I really like go. that he didn't use the diamond there. And this is kind of like Steve's whole plan is you take the first stock, you mine a diamond, and then you're like kind of like pseudo ahead for all the next stocks as long as you farm a diamond. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, no. I, it's kind of like it's kind of like WAF, but you farm it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you're, you're fear mongering with, with the, the threat of a really strong like, yeah. offensive weapon. Jesus Christ. Excellent stuff right here from uh, Ghost as he's continuing to add on to this lead here. Srix just trying to generate something. <laughs> parry again, Ooh. man. His parries are on point right now. Like, what what a time to turn up your parries. You know what I mean? Right, right at the end. Oh, there we go. That's going to kill off the top. For a second, it looked like it wasn't going to, but... You know, Ghost built himself a nice little lead here. Uh, again, now has uh, Diamond at his disposal. And this is where he's been the most dangerous. The stock, uh, every stock after, uh, you know, Ghost uh, respawns and is able to immediately craft a Diamond weapon, he's been absolutely, like, ridiculous. What? Okay. <laughs> right. Don't say good. Go ahead. Go. I was going to say, Go just ahead. like, don't say quit just yet. Uh, there was a couple of nice exchanges there from Strix. Yeah. Okay, go for the recovery. Oh, look at that, the extended hitbox of the sword there, the Masuma. Lingering a little longer because it was off the, oh boy, speaking of off, off the easy there, <laughs> dropped the angle yeah. on him, Wily Coyote. Yeah, Masamu meet Acme. 
Careful with that shield. He's got to be careful shielding or even trying to roll with that because the down smash there will just, just pop that thing. Yeah, that's a setup that feels like kind of fake sometimes, but even then in that scenario, like the threat of it was way yeah. too good. That forward air is so good. I think I think uh, Srix is really finding a uh, new home with that that fair in this matchup. I think it's helping him a lot. Good grab there. Oh. Wow. <gasps> oh, that could have been dangerous. What a setup. Going for the block into the up smash. Really smart. Okay, got him in the cart. What's the follow up? Okay. <laughs> I keep waiting for him to go for the up, for the up smash, but it keeps coming up. Uh, I think yeah. the fear is not what he's playing with. Well, I think he wants to. Yeah, it's gonna be good damage. It's not gonna quite kill yet though. He needs to. He could get this diamond. Like if he. <gasps> yep, just hold that. Yep, diamond. Yep, upgrade your armor. Here it comes. This could be the end of the tournament, Koopa. Looking at some diamond armor, some diamond equipment here. Four ghosts. Trying to find. Oh, rolls. What's he gonna do? Oh, looking for the cart, of course. <gasps> up smash, very nice uh -oh. option there from Strix. F2, oh, did he tech that? Are you I kidding can't. me? There's no way. Okay, oh, you're oh, seeing all the DLC features here right now. This is a, oh, with the back, that's gonna do oh, it. Are you God. serious? What a display <laughs> right there. Absolutely you crazy, got, so. You got like $8 worth of DLC showcasing right there. That was like yeah. absolutely insane. Yeah, that was just a great oh, ad, honestly. God. All the way at the end. Yeah. <laughs> it's just one big advertisement that's just... Oh man. That was listen man. Just just when you think uh Strix might be at the end of his rope, you know, we could potentially be seeing the end of Hercules where they're about to cut his uh cut his cord and you know, he turns into a god. So What a story that, that would tech be, was insane. That tech was actually incredible. Is what I have to say about that. Run it back. Let's see it again. Close it out in the stage for sure. By the way, I've a, I've officially reached the well, technically because I took a nap. Uh, I'm officially at 24 hours awake right now. You gotta get some sleep, bro. I'll be fine. I'm built different. It's all good. Minecraft versus Final Fantasy is pretty crazy. That's true. Chat, what's going on, guys? 2,500 yeah, of chat, you. I, I love it. Yeah, how you doing, chat? Everybody holding up all right? Everybody, Everyone's everybody good? be nice. Anyone need any snacks, coffee? <laughs> Whatever you need, guys. We're going to make it work here. 1.15 a.m. I <laughs> can't relate. <laughs> it's so weird because, like, it was 1.15 a.m. for us not too long ago. You know what I'm saying? A brawler against Sephiroth? That doesn't seem good. <laughs> oh, no. Whew. Hey, guys. You like a tea with two sugars? All right. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I'm I went sorry, to bed, man. woke up, and the tourney is still going on. Yup. Yup. Anyway. Is that the best feeling? Team Rocket grunt against Sephiroth. You know? <laughs> kind of what we're looking like, at here. This feels like, a, like an NCAA like, fantasy bracket matchup. Yeah, like, right? Of, of, like, e of like evil teams. Like yeah. the Rocket grunt versus Sephiroth. Like the 16 seed versus the number one, basically. <laughs> well, let's see if you're Duke or if you're Virginia from uh, 2017. True. More sports. Sorry, guys. I don't mean to lose you. Video games. Here we go. True. F tilt. Okay, good pressure here. No way. Oh, wow. The movement. That was so bold right there. And that's going to be a loss of a stock. Ghost. That was, that was sick. I know it was an SD that, that got him the stock ultimately, but, dude, that was such sick movement. That was some Matrix stuff right there. Yeah, he definitely got his ankles broken so hard he had no idea what just happened. This is a Mugen matchup. <laughs> That's funny. Ooh, okay. Counter gonna connect right there. Jeez. Oh, God. He keeps hitting <laughs> that, man. It's like, oh. I wish Sephiroth could get hit by that, honestly. Like, I wish you could knock him into it. That'd be super funny. That's like Final that Boss move, Reflecting that move is so satisfying. Oh, yeah. Okay, Sephiroth. Right. And Wing is on deck right now, so... Is that good, dude? Nice, okay. Peek himself. I thought we were going to see another SD, man. Up throw. Pressure. Okay, I like it. Oh, I don't like it, oh. actually. I really don't like it. Uh, I, I did like it, back. and then I didn't. Yep. I take, I take back that, like, you know. Up smash, not enough. Not enough power. 
Ooh, okay, 20. I can't believe that does 20. That's the craziest part about that. Yeah, that, that that's your hard-earned uh, taxpayer dollars, baby. Mm -hmm. Oh, the chat said homie stock for that. <laughs> that's not what that was, but I love it. <laughs> oh, from deep. Nope. What again? <laughs> what the hell is going is on? The third S deepest game? Yes. Okay. Not that I'm keeping right. track, but. Right. Homie stock. It's just they, it's like who can out homie each other, you know? That's how you win. Oh my god, this is gonna go to 10 games. He faced right. the timer the wrong way? Or the, the counter the wrong way? Oh, maybe. Well, what, let, let's see what okay, you got. Play. All right, I'm just nervous they're gonna SD out of nowhere again. You know, counter not enough. They're they're kind of weak. No, gonna get back to the ledge. Oh my gosh, I'm shocked that up smash was not uh, within range right there. Yeah, Chad, yeah, that's a good point. Is like at this point they've been playing for so long. You gotta be you gotta be feeling that exhaustion at some point. I know I'm feeling it on commentary a little bit too. That back air though is gonna do it. A uh, game five oh. again. A ten game grand finals. For seeding, <laughs> let's go. Type. <laughs> oh man, this is just what I signed up for, man. This is this has been this has been absolutely uh, stellar. So, do we see the change back to zombie? Do we stick with the me brawler? I don't know, Has. What are you? What I are just you doing? Don't want any SDs? That's where I'm at. They gotta pull it together. Honestly, this is a this is actually really good practice. They they need to pull it together and have a clean game ten. You know what I mean? Because it's been pretty sloppy since since game three. I feel like there's been been blunders on both sides. So random. Yeah, I feel like I, both of them could potentially be feeling like the the fatigue as well, man. Like they yeah. Between the two of them counting this uh, being the uh, yeah, there that's five games. This is gonna be ten games, thirteen games between them so far tonight. Yeah. Like, that's wild. <laughs> Indeed. Here we go, man. What, what's Here left? we what go. They, what, what, what if they just go, like, wild characters? Like, I don't know, Dr. Steven Mario. Sephiroth. I don't know if it gets <laughs> any more wild than that. That's pretty Steven crazy. <laughs> if I'm... All right, hold on, hold on. Because if you're... If you're Srix, who do you go? You go Roy? Or you go Min Min now? Oh my god. The absolute last resort, the Min Min against Sephiroth. More DLC against DLC. This is the future. This is the present, actually. <laughs> FD, truly the final destination, not only of this stage in this game, but of the tournament itself. This will determine the highest possible seeding for this last chance qualifier between Ghost and Srix. Let's get into it. Min Min against Sephiroth. Should be a good match. A lot of range going on here, Koopa. And I think this matchup could be potentially disastrous for, for Sephiroth, man. Min Min has so much non-committal range that she has she gets to play with yeah. that I, I feel like it's, it's going to be impossible wow, nice. for, for Sprix to get any offense generated outside of, like, stuff like that. But Yeah. Uh, that was all calculated, too. I think getting, in, getting, getting the Shadow Flare on him is going to be really, really important. Like, I think getting that uh, debuff on... Ghost is going to be an important part of this matchup. Oh, whiffing the grab, trying to read another spot dodge or defensive nervous option, but Ghost gets out of, out of harm's way. Oh, okay. Oh. Could have been rough, but again, uh, despite the range <sighs> advantage. Oh, but a great read on the roll, and Srix gets first blood here in game five, Hazmat. This is absolutely insane. This is what I want to see, dude. That like game 10. You know, the seating is on the line. This is important. And then they're both trying. You know that because they're, they're going all out. The Min Min is out. It's the first time I've seen it today or gotten to commentate it. So that thing's been been a little, you know, resting on the bench a little bit. But back against the wall, this is what he's going towards. Srix's Sephiroth is certainly warming up a lot, though, Koopa. Yeah, no, it looks like he's just getting started. You see him <laughs> going for some gnarly angles down with the, uh, uh, with the upbeat, but... Again, Ghost is trying to get to some offense generated with uh, with Min Min. He's doing a good job getting the damage, but having a rough time getting that killing blow. Grab just barely not reaching. Okay, good punch right there. Sending out the dragon arm. Getting the extra distance, so important. Okay. Zoning out. Going with the big hitters now. 
Yep, yeah, okay, good nair right there. Again, the longer that I feel like Ghost like, plays with... I don't even want to say he's playing with his food, it's just I just... He's having a hard time can't getting find, that, that... Yeah, the Mega Watt's not kill. connecting, I think, is the big thing about it. You know what I mean? Like, he's playing at that... The thing is, Mega Watt being shorter, I think, is kind of a big dis deal in this matchup. Like, you're going to need to see more of those counter pokes rather than throwing out Mega Watt to, like, kind of straight up beat him in the range. I mean, Masamune's a very, very long sword. It's a, it's a big thing of uh, Sephiroth's character, so... Yeah, it's going to be interesting, but first stock is... Oh, jeez, that was a read. That was a read and a half. He, he knew that was coming. Yep. Srix, huge lead here now. Big time earned this one so far. Looking good for Srix. The Sephiroth, is this the truth, Koopa? Is this going to be it? I think so, man. Uh, the one wing Angel is here uh, to play. And uh, uh, let's see what Ghost has left in the tank, man. It's looking really grim right now. Yeah. Okay. Woo. Okay. As long as Strix isn't as deep. Okay. I think we're good. Okay. A little more zoning out here. Strix again. I love the way he plays with the lead. This is the way to do it. Just run, not run away, but just like kind of force your opponent to do something and then try to punish them for it, you know? Oh, right, here we go. Wait until the ledge for Shadow Flare to go away. He immediately <gasps> goes to the back throw. What if he went for an SD down air right there to end it? That would have been so amazing. But either way, grab throw chipping away this has to be frustrating ghost feeling the pressure has to get off the ledge can he do it megawatts out trying to find something good timing on that one though Koopa. yeah and again um oh, ghost refusing to say oh man he showed his hand there all right ghost for the forward throw he does have the enhanced dragon arm now so he has to be careful octo slash Lots of pressure here. Oh, I love the idea, but <laughs> however, however, now we're both on a final stock here. 124, Ghost, trying to make a comeback happen. He's got Sephiroth off stage. Can he do it, Koopa? This is crazy. Missing the grab, good tech in place. Vote. I am at the edge of my seat, Has I honestly I think the pressure's on, on Srix right now. I really uh -oh. do. Oh, up so, yep, that's gonna be it. Srix is gonna take it down in the, in the last chance qualifier. He is the winner after a 10 game grand finals reset. What a marathon for these guys. They've been playing for like, I don't even know how many hours, Koopa. Like, it's just unbelievable the amount of hours they put in today and all the work that they did. Both these guys absolutely killed it. And it has been so much fun to be here today with them to watch this unfold. And I'm glad they stuck it out and really, really fought it out. That was so much fun, man.